I survived 1,000 days in total across Minecraft's biggest mod packs. In these days, I built gigantic high-tech machines, explored some of the best dimensions, and defeated the biggest bosses Minecraft has to offer. These videos collectively took me 300 hours to make, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. I survived 100 days in Hardcore Better Minecraft Plus. My goals were to take down three bosses. The Netherite Monstrosity, the Ender Guardian, and the Void Worm. Day one, just like regular Minecraft, I collected some wood to make the basic tools. Good thing I was right in front of a massive structure, so I also upgraded to stone tools really quickly. Then I made my way over to an abandoned house, but some creature let out a huge roar. I quickly grabbed the books and all the random stuff on the first floor and went up to the attic. The chest in here had 10 iron ingots and iron leggings. After equipping whatever I could, I made an iron pickaxe, some bread, torches, and a shield. When I tried to leave the house, I noticed an overworld drake right in front of me. So to outsmart it, I stayed under the door and slowly lowered its health until it eventually died. After that, I went my merry way until I saw some invisible skeletons. It took a little bit to defeat these guys, they were really tough. I then made my way towards the structure to see what was up. Turns out there were even more invisible skeletons, so I hid and slowly took these guys out too. The good thing is that these chests were really nice. I got an iron chest plate and even more iron. After almost dying, I went to the other side to loot that chest too. This is where I got two diamonds and more food. Then I went to the top floor and killed the final skeleton here. The final chest was also really nice. I got a sharpness one iron sword and some extra iron tools. With all the loot, I decked myself out in iron armor and cooked the food and went to sleep. Once I woke up, I made a bucket and went out to explore some more. I ran through a very colorful biome and found this rundown structure. These look like graves, so I dug them up and it turned out to be really good chests. They contained golden apples, enchanted books, coal, bone, and more importantly, enchanted armor. I also fully lucked out and got a mending diamond helmet. If that wasn't cool enough, I also got Icy Thorns 4 on my chest plate. No clue what that does. Yeah, this place basically filled up my inventory with tons of loot, so I went inside to see what was up in there. This place was really scary though. Uh, turns out there was a basement also here, but I wanted to check out the top floors first. I cleared some bookshelves and found a chest hidden behind them. Then after all of that, I went to the attic which had strings and a chest, which I used to make a backpack for all the junk that I had collected. I also had tons of iron, so I was able to upgrade the backpack to the iron version. Then with all this new space, I went straight down to the basement to check out the situation. This urn had some really rare items, which I snatched up, and I found a mending bow in the barrel. The other barrel had a flame bow, and then I freed the two villagers that were trapped here as well. The next day, I made a boat and went out to explore again. I ended up finding a wizard's tower. I collected everything I could, and I started making my way up the tower and broke these bookshelves. It turned out that this place was trapped with TNT. The main chest also had tons of enchanted books. The best ones being mending and whatever this life mending thing was. On the way out, I found this crazy bird which shot its feather at me. And I stumbled into a pillager outpost. This place was filled to the brim with pillagers. And they were tearing my shield up. So I had to make a new one. And also, they did tons of damage so I had to eat my golden apples. I managed to fight them all night. And I even got attacked by this OP enderman which I had to place the water down just to survive. Once the enderman disappeared, I had a new challenger. This absolute tank of a skeleton. Lucky for me, it was very stupid and I hid behind blocks taking shots until it was weak enough to take out. The reward though was incredible. I got a protection 7 iron chest plate. Now that I was better equipped, I went to ruin this pillager outpost. Uh yeah, turns out they were still kind of strong, so I retreated, made a sleeping bag, and went to sleep. Day 5, it was time for a different strategy. I mined some cobblestone to make some furnaces, and then I chopped down this tree for sticks. I needed to cook some more food and remake some iron armor though. Once I stocked up, I went right back to the outpost. This time, it was no mercy. I managed to take them all out on the bottom floor, and even we made my shield. Then I went into the tower and the first chest had these things called tattered tomes and like a bunch of other random stuff. The next floor had even more food plus some arrows and the top floor basically had the same stuff. I got tons of wheat, carrots, and some iron. I used these tomes to get like 8 levels and plus you can turn these things right back into paper. Then that night I found this really weird ocean monument structure which had a portal frame in the center. After waking up I realized I had the bad omen effect so I ran to find some cows. Then after running through this entire swamp I found another one of those creepy houses. These places tend to have tons of really good loot so I was already filling up my backpack really quickly. The upstairs chest had the best loot ever, a mending diamond chest plate. But for right now the protection 7 iron chest plate is still better. Also, there was an efficiency 8 diamond shovel in the same chest. The bottom floor had diamond leggings, so I was already getting kind of stacked. That night, I left to find a nice area to build a house. 
I actually managed to find a village and fought a bunch of mobs. There also turned out to be another underground village right next to this village too, which I obviously went down to explore. Down here, I found some iron blocks, made an anvil, and then I grabbed some stone to make a grindstone. I tried to disenchant the iron chestplate, but it didn't really work on this update. I also just kept the iron chestplate on, which turned out to be a good choice since I met this very OP mob. I was able to block this dude named Bob over here and I took him out. My reward was a sharpness 5 iron sword. And the chests in Bob's lair were filled with some really nice loot like the Slayer 4 and Mending Sword. I used the anvil to combine them together and make one super sword. While exploring this underground village some more, I found another one of these OP mobs. So with some quick thinking, I trapped this guy as well. This time I shredded through the mob and got even more OP loot. This chest also had a Protection 4 book and with all the gold, I upgraded my backpack into a gold backpack. Turns out there were two more of these OP mobs here. The first one was easy to take out and the second one had a bow. So I had to keep my shield up and take this dude out slowly. The reward was a power 4 flame bow with a special ability. Day 8, I combined the mending bow with this new bow and then I got out of this village. Well, I ended up finding another underground village and of course I jumped right in. Then you guessed it, there was another one of those OP guys here. After taking this one out, I got an even better chest plate. I tried to combine the two chest plates together, but it took way too many levels. While I was down here, I got caught in a trap, and these ores were all part of this huge TNT trap. I still got the diamonds though at least, but I was super lucky that I had incredible armor. I then somehow fought another one of these OP dudes and got an insanely good shield. Day 9 to 10, I was out to find a place to live again. I found this protection 8 iron chest plate and then went down to this dungeon. This place was packed with tons of zombies, and the bottom floor had tons of spawners as well. I went around destroying all these spawners but there were already tons of zombies that were already spawned. There were also a bunch of chests here, which had some really good loot like golden apples and enchanted books. So from breaking all those spawners, I had tons of spirit orbs that I got from them. And I had found this goddess statue where you can deposit these orbs to get more hearts. After that, I went to the other side of the dungeon and collected more orbs, killed more zombies, and looted more and more chests. That was until I met this fully diamond out OP mob. I was really careful and slowly started attacking this beast. I managed to block it in and I was able to fully take it out and my reward was an insane diamond helmet, which I combined with my current mending one to perfect it. Then I used the rest of my spirit orbs to get even more health and the dungeon was fully cleared at this point. So I left and then a blood wound happened that night, so I hid out in this little dirt shack. As the mobs from last night burned, I accidentally started a raid in this village. I really wasn't ready to take on these pillagers, so I went up this tower instead and grabbed the paraglider plus the waystone. I then jumped down gliding on the paraglider until my stamina was running out. After that, I went up this hill and noticed a dragon's nest, but no dragon, which was a bad sign. Since this windmill was on fire, I knew the dragon was near, so I ran the other way and glided towards this mesa biome. Around the mesa, I found another one of those zombie dungeons, but I was more in the mood of trying to find a nice place to live. While moving around, I found a huge bone structure with husk spawners inside and some emerald blocks. There was also a pillager outpost right next to me, which I cleared, and then the next morning, I went across the ocean and finally found the perfect place to live. Day 14 to day 15, I cleared out an entire area from all the shrubs and replaced this meadow grass with regular grass. But that's when tragedy struck. I recorded 40 minutes of making the house, and every time I tried to open it, my game would crash. So I can only show you the almost finished project. It was basically all stone and oak wood, very simple design. I still need to fill the walls and windows in though. To fill out the empty spots, I made more stone bricks and just placed a simple pattern around the house. Then to fill the holes, I needed more sand to make glass panes. Then once more stone were smelted, I filled out the other sides and made some cool looking doors. After that, I went to collect some squid ink. With that, I was able to make tons of black stained glass panes and filled every spot with that. I also started a mine for more stone and I made a pathway. This process took really long because I was looking for more squid ink while gathering even more stone. Eventually, I had most of the house done and made some bookshelves which I placed on the top floor. Then I needed a storage area, so for now, I just used a bottom floor to place all of my junk. To finally solidify this as my base, I set this goddess statue down and then the waystone down. For the rest of these days, I sprinkled lanterns around and placed a grindstone and an anvil near the enchantment setup. I also really tried looking for more squid ink, but no luck. Instead, I made an enchantment table. Day 18 to 19, I used some diamonds to make boots and a pickaxe. I enchanted the pickaxe and got a pretty nice enchantment. The boots also got some really good enchants too. I had a looting three sword, which I combined with my old sword to enhance my super sword. Then to make the base nicer, I bone mealed a flat area around my house. Also this way I can get purple dye from the lavenders. After the housework, I gathered my gold 
golden apples and found an underground village right next to my base. I ended up finding one of those OP mobs again and swiftly took them down. Again, I got some more really good armor pieces plus a really nice bowl. Aside from that, there was nothing else here, so I went to hunt more squids. I'm pretty sure since these dolphins were here, they killed the squids before I could. I really needed the black knife for the windows. Lucky for me, in the morning, I found tons of squids, and with looting three, I got even more squidding. Now I was able to make tons of black stained glasses and finally finish the house. Also, just out of impulse, I started upgrading the storage system. I made tons of these tier two chests, which hold way more items. Then I started working on the remote storage system by making network cables and link cables. I linked all the chests together and then made a nether portal since I would need some quartz blocks. I then teleported into the nether and got a really weird spawn, but I got some quartz really quickly. It also turns out that I'm in front of a stalwart fortress. I got attacked by these little mushroom guys and I went to check out what this fortress was actually like. I almost got a heart attack, but even though these mobs looked cool, they weren't that strong. These blazes also always drop blaze rods, which is going to be really handy. After the fighting, I ended up in the loot room and these chests were really nice. They were filled with diamonds, gold, iron, emeralds, and nether warts. I then somehow ended up in the basement of this fortress, which was very amazing like and had tons of spawners. There were also tons of chests here and I picked up a bunch of good loot. Before I left though, I actually found in more quartz and then it came back home. I used the quartz to make a storage system route and then I needed to make one more thing to be able to access the storage system. To get what I needed, I went down to the mines and found that one trap which had gotten me before. But this time I didn't step on the pressure plate. I gathered every ore here and then made my way right back up. I was able to make a storage inventory and ultimately a storage request table so I can access all of my chests from one place. Now that the basics were set up, I made more tier 2 chests and placed those in the storage system for more space. Then last but not least, I needed to make the remote. The last ingredient I needed was glowstone dust, so I dove straight into the nether again. I built up pretty quickly, gathered tons of glowstone, and then popped right back home. This really wasn't the remote I wanted, but it'll have to do for now. I then connected it to the storage route and then force loaded my chunks, so I should be able to access these chests from everywhere. With all that set up, I started a weed farm. I built the outline with cobblestone and sprinkled water all around. Then to make sure mobs don't drop in, I placed walls, slabs, and more blocks around the perimeter for more texture and of course safety. Once morning came, I hoed all the land inside and replaced a bunch of cobblestone for stone and stone walls. Then I topped it off with a fence gate. Oh yeah, and the main reason for the wheat farm is to actually plant the seeds, which of course I did. Plus I used a bunch of bone meal to fill out as much of the farm as I can. Later that night, I killed this mob, which gave me a pretty stacked shield. I spent the next day making warp scrolls because I couldn't find any endermen to make the warp stone and I disenchanted some armor that I wasn't going to use. I also have some mending books which I used on my boots and I slept in the house for the first time ever. Day 25, I picked a direction and went off to explore. I then noticed on the minimap that I was right above a boss. So I dug straight down to take this boss on. It took me a little bit to find the dude's lair, but it turned out to be the Ferris Rotnot. I made a little panic shelter and then went to swing at this behemoth. Once it woke up, it swung its giant axe and threw me across the room. It was taking tons of health down, so I had to go to the panic shelter and eat my enchanted golden apple. Now that I was healing a little, I waited for this monster to do its big swings, so the back was exposed, which was its weak point. I'd gotten it down to half health, but I'm stupid, and this thing ended up healing right back because I was in my panic shelter. Luckily, my shield was indestructible, so I was able to block a bunch of major attacks, and slowly but surely, with the help of these gapples, I was able to take down the Ferris Rotnot. It did take all but one enchanted golden apple, though. The reward was an unbreakable helmet and axe. The axe? For sure, I'm keeping. There were also quest rewards, which gave me another really cool axe, but this one wasn't indestructible. Then later that night, I found a witch's tower that had a nice enchantment set up. So I placed one more bookshelf on here, grabbed some lapis, and enchanted my diamond leggings. Right after the witch tower, I went to find another tower, and this place had what I needed, tomes of scrapping, which can remove enchantments. The main chest had some insane leggings, which I was definitely going to take the affix from. And after exploring some more, I found this graveyard structure again, where I took whatever I needed, and I found another tower, which meant more tomes and affix books. I then ransacked this monastery and found a map for Thornborn Towers, which I went to follow. Along the way, I got attacked by a cyclops and activated another waystone on a tower. Day 28, after running through a desert, I ended up gliding towards Barako the Sun Chief's village. I quickly dropped down into the water and took out his minions. Once I saw the chief, I lit him up with the arrows and knocked him into phase 2. The chief was healing from the minions and after taking them out, I rushed Barako and easily took him out. My reward was a mask and a totem of undying. I also found another waystone here too. As if things couldn't get crazier, I found a dragon's nest. 
not just any dragon, a lightning dragon. This one wasn't too big, so I started dumping arrows towards it. Once it caught on fire, I ate my gapple and took this dragon on toe to toe. I picked up the scales and bones and then went forward following the map. That night I found a ruined battle tower and went to the top floor which had blocks of iron and gold just laying there. Day 29 I realized the Thornborn towers would be way too far so I just came back home and first order of business was to harvest all the wheat I had and fill out the entire farm. Then I chopped down a bunch of trees to make even more tier 2 chests which would expand my storage system even more. I also enchanted the new axe and got efficiency 3 on it. So because I also collected those tomes of scrapping, I looked through all of my enchanted armor to see what I could disenchant. And oh yeah, I picked up my quest rewards for the lightning dragon, which was a sapphire dragon egg. I'll have to hatch that later. For right now, I made a dragon scale chest plate and leggings and then spent the night killing mobs so I could get up to level 30 and enchant these new pieces. Day 30 to day 32, my silk touch pickaxe allowed me to get spawners and I managed to get a zombie spawner. So to make use of it I went down to the mines to build a 9x9 area for all the zombies to spawn. Once the main area was complete I made the killing chamber where all the zombies would drop into. I placed a hopper down and some chests to gather the loot. Then to finally top it off I placed a sign right on top of the chamber and broke all the torches. I placed a waystone down right next to the mob spawner and now this whole farm is fully operational. I also started decorating the area by placing stone bricks on the floor and placing these oak logs as support beams. When mining out the walls I dug right into the mines which made it way easier to go back and forth. Last but not least I placed some stone brick stairs and lanterns around the chamber. I then placed a fence so baby zombies don't sneak through and then I fixed up the mine entrance. On the way down I placed even more stone brick stairs too. The weed farm was also working super nicely so I made an automatic composter for all the leftover seeds. To end these days off I had enough levels to enchant the dragon scale armor pieces and the chest plate had protection 3 and projectile protection 4. The leggings had protection 4 and fire protection 4. I used one mending book for the leggings and then scrapped my diamond leggings and put that book on the chest plate. And of course I finally put a mending book on the chest plate as well. I wanted to scrap my iron chest plate so I made more tomes and then went down to the spawner to get some more XP. I spent a good little bit grinding the mobs out and I noticed I got tons of rotten flesh. I moved the rotten flesh to the other chest too. I got up to level 21 and looked through my inventory for more armor to scrap. I picked one with protection 8 and tried putting that on my dragon scale chest plate but I needed even more levels. After grinding out tons more zombies, I made a little area for a cleric villager to be right next to the spawners. This way I could trade rotten flesh. But to grab the villager I needed to go down to the mines and get some arcane crystal blocks. I actually ended up getting a decent amount of them. Day 34, since my pickaxe was silk touch, I placed them all outside of my house and made another pickaxe to mine it. I got exactly 9 and made an arcane crystal block. Then I combined it with some spawner scrap to make a quantum catcher. Now I was able to kidnap a villager and placed it right behind my brewing stand. I used like 8 stacks of rotten flesh to get like 15 emeralds. Anyway, I had tons of emerald blocks and I had started advancing the villagers trades first by buying lapis and then trading the rabbit's foot I had collected. Last but not least, I also bought tons of ender pearls, which is exactly what I needed to make a warp stone for myself. I then got up to level 23, I put the protection 8 book on my chest plate and since I had collected tons of silk touch blocks, I mined them all. The rest of the night I made glass bottles and brewed potions of fire resistance which I put in my backpack. Oh yeah, and some mob dropped a banner which I placed on my shield. Day 35, the goal was simple, make these hell shelf things. First I drank my potions of fire resistance and then I went over to this stalwart fortress to grab loads of nether bricks. I then came right back home and started making tons of glass bottles which needed to be turned into potions of regeneration. Lucky for me, I had tons of gas tears. With all that set up, I made my first 5 hell shelves. So I removed some of the old bookshelves and placed these bad boys instead. With 5 of these, I could already enchant with 35 levels instead of 30. I spent the rest of this day making even more potions of regeneration, grabbing more sand for glass and chopping down trees for bookshelves just to fill out the enchantment area with hell shelves. It was all worth it though since now I can enchant tools with 42 levels instead of 30. The only issue now was getting the levels, which is why the mob grinder is a lifesaver. Day 36 to day 37, I teleported around to the waypoints I had discovered and I found a tower which had even more gold and iron blocks for me. Then I found this tower where I got more tomes and the top chest had a sword with a cool affix. I went into a Miramex colony and the only thing that was there was the queen, so I took care of that very easily. 
I then found even more tomes and enchanted books and then the next morning I fought this tank in diamond armor. This fight took a little bit but I got some insane diamond boots and a diamond chest plate. While exploring some more I ransacked the village for their food and picked up this empty spawner then came back home. Since I'd also picked up this enderman spawn egg I had the idea of making an enderman spawner but obviously it wouldn't work in this cave since there's water down there. Instead I doubled up the zombie spawner to increase the rate and boy did it work. There were now more zombies flooding through. So while grinding these mobs out I had a wither bone which I used to make a dragon bone sword. I then got up to level 32 and combined two of my boots together. Day 38 I grinded up to level 19 again and then I had a genius idea. I just needed a knowledge of the ages book. So I grabbed a lectern and set up an area to place the villager in for now. Of course I had to kidnap the locals and bring them back to the chamber. Once I trapped this guy I was in a really weird position since I got a mending trade but for now I think it was better to get the knowledge of the ages trade. It took a little bit of rolling but I managed to get knowledge of the ages 4 which means mob drops turn into XP. I quickly grabbed this book and went to put it on my sword. I picked the dragon bone sword to put it on since the enchantment already gave me looting too. Now I was getting loads of XP every time one zombie died. In about no time I got up to level 46 but I kept going until I got up to level 60. With all this new XP I made another dragon bone sword and wanted to make this one OP. So I rolled through a few enchantments until I got a sharpness 5 one with bane of the illagers. After that I enchanted some books and went right back to grinding levels. Then I hit level 60 again, enchanted this new pickaxe and got fortune 2 and efficiency 5. Then I enchanted a book and got looting 2 which I combined with a mending book and put that on the new dragon bone sword. A 39 to 40 I grinded more levels obviously and traded some gold to the cleric. I then got up to level 64 and enchanted tons of books. I also placed these skulls on the bookshelves and I grinded for more levels and mined down lower to get some ores. I used my potions of fire resistance and basically mined every single thing I could. I ended up with a huge haul of just random stuff and this tellerite piece. Before I stopped mining I tore through this amethyst geode. Once I came home I made even more chests to fit into the storage system and I smelted basically everything I collected. Then, with some spare emeralds, I wanted to advance this librarian's trades, so I started buying some bookshelves and lanterns. To end these days off, I made a few obsidian with iron and turned those into obsidian ingots and all of that into an obsidian skull. Luckily, I had a stellarite piece, but I needed one more expectrified orb, so I went back down to the mines and ended up finding the last one I needed. With all of that, I made an eternal stella and combined that with the obsidian skull to get permanent fire resistance. Now I wanted a new bow so I made a dragon bone bow and got really lucky on the enchantment. I put infinity on it but I didn't know that regular arrows don't work with a dragon bone bow. After that I grabbed some ender pearls from my cleric and went into the nether. The first thing I checked out was this new structure. So this was a stalwart dungeon and it was filled with these reinforced blazes and incomplete wither skeletons. The blazes dropped tons of weird ingots and I picked up some of these tungsten ore too. The real kicker here were these incomplete withers who always managed to drop wither skeleton heads. So this gave me a great idea. I silk touched two incomplete wither skeleton spawners that I wanted to farm. I then killed tons more blazes and found the center where there was an awful gas altar that needed a nether star to activate. Once I was done with the dungeon I ender pearled around looking for more cool structures. I ended up in this piglin tower thing which was filled with piglin brutes and tons of gold blocks. I also made the dragonborn arrow somewhere around here. From one of these structures alone I got like 16 gold blocks and the top floor had 5 more gold blocks and a netherite ingot. After that I found a nether boat which had even more gold blocks and the bottom floor I got a piglin divinity gem. From this one trip I got like 40 gold blocks and I found a waystone which I used to come back home. Day 44 to day 45 I removed my nether portal and smelted tons of tungsten ore to make the armor. Then all that gold was used to get even more emeralds from the cleric. While I was down here I got the idea to make an oceanographer. This way I could get tons of sea lantern and make the crafting remote instead of the basic remote I had. After that I placed these incomplete wither skeleton spawners instead of the zombie spawners and made the killing chamber one block higher. I basically killed a few of these skeletons and I already had 13 wither skeleton heads. These dudes had some insane loot. I now basically have infinite wither skeleton heads and coal. Also the knowledge of the ages sword is now even more overpowered. After a whole day of grinding I got up to level 84 with like 2 stacks of wither skeleton heads. I had enough wither skeleton heads for an entire lifetime so I removed those spawners for now and I teleported far away to build a new nether portal here. 
I ended up spawning right next to another stalwart dungeon, so I mined as many tungsten ores as I could see. The enchanted books here were also really good, so I grabbed a bunch of those as well. I then stumbled into another nether ship and got 21 more gold blocks. While moving some more, I found another nether waystone and saw a mutant wither skeleton underneath me who died from like 3 shots with my bow. So I got this cool withered claymore. Then after some more traveling, I realized that I have close to a hundred gold blocks in storage. So I then set my sights towards the netherite monstrosity and traveled for a real long time. As I went across this nether waste biome, my health bar popped up over me. I looted and got on top of this tower to get a better view of what the netherite monstrosity looked like. I couldn't see anything, so I built down towards the structure until it came out. Immediately, this monster started launching magma blocks and I had to grab my golden apples. I managed to get some hits in, but it kept deactivating my shield, so I had to be really careful. This guy was ferocious, but once I realized that it was kind of weak to arrows, I managed to do tons of damage and eventually, after keeping my distance and eating the apples, I took down the netherite monstrosity. This behemoth dropped a hammer called Infernal Forge and a monstrous horn. I then picked up the leftover ancient debris and collected my quest reward which was a nether star. So I came back home, rebuilt the portal in front of my house and I wanted to take on this awful gas while I was here. I made my way over to the center of the dungeon and placed the nether star into the altar. Then the awful gas summoned. At first, I thought how hard can this boss be but my god, this thing keeps disabling all of your weapons and I had to retreat. While I was out here, I found out that you could just cheese the boss very easily so I took it down using my bow. The reward was this thing called an awful gun. I also grabbed all the tungsten ore here as well. I couldn't end it there, I needed to fight one more a boss and this one was the wither. I went very deep underground, cleared an area to fight this wither. I summoned this bad boy and lasered it with my bow and in no time I managed to defeat this guy too. My reward was also a nether star and a heart container which I can't even use because I maxed out on hearts and I ended up getting a witherite ingot. To end these days I made a full set of tungsten armor and I started enchanting it. I got protection 4 on the helmet, protection 3 on the chest plate and protection 4 on the boots and the leggings. Then I made a tungsten shield which looks sick but can only have the unbreaking enchantment. I actually realized that my diamond armor was just so much better than tungsten stuff, so I made netherite ingots instead and upgraded the helmets and boots. So the cool thing you can do with the netherite helmet and the monstrous horn is to combine them together to make the monstrous helm, which was even cooler. So for the tungsten armor, I just placed it on the armor stand since I'm probably not going to use them at all. I decided I'm going to keep this helmet and that means everything else has to match, which means I enchanted this diamond armor and scrapped the enchantments off the dragon scale armor to put on the diamond ones instead. I also had a mending book for the chest plate and I turned it into a netherite chest plate. Then I needed more levels to scrap the dragon scale leggings so it was time to grind even more levels. I ended up getting up to level 47 and scrapped everything off the dragon stuff and moved it to the diamond stuff. I also put mending on it too. I then got up to level 49 again and wanted to remove some of the affixes from this crazy iron armor. The next day I got up to level 50 and put the mythic affix on my chest plate. After that I made tons of tomes to use my levels. I also got up to like 70 levels and I tried to get really good in chants. The best one was the sharpness 5 and looting 3 that I used. Then I went to the nether to get some netherite to upgrade my leggings. I tore up these piglin tower things grabbing all the gold and hoping I get netherite ingots or scraps on the top chest. I ended up getting one on the first tower and then came right back home to upgrade my leggings. Now things are fully uniform. Last but not least I put looting 4 on my sword and sold tons of gold and then I realized I had more than 100 pieces of gold blocks. Day 51 to day 52 I made a tool belt plus some pouches to store my equipment and then I upgraded my backpack to a diamond backpack and I also wanted to make this thing called a feeding upgrade so I got some of these melons from the underground village and I made one plus the advanced version. Now as long as food is in the backpack I would automatically be fed. With that finished I had the genius idea to find a vindicator spawner since they always drop emeralds. I knew that there are spawners on pirate ships so I went out searching for some. Along the way I killed some sirens and got attacked by sea serpents back to back and what saved me was my OP bow. There were way too many mobs here so I slept on this slime island and the next morning I actually found a pirate ship. I curled onto it, destroyed the and then I took the spawner with my silk touch pickaxe. To add insult to injury, I burned this place down and moved to another pirate ship. This place also had a vindicator spawner which I took and burnt this ship down too. Now I was able to place the vindicator spawner on the farm and get unlimited emeralds. I mean this thing was working like a charm. In a few minutes I already had a stack of emeralds which I used to level this librarian up. But its trades kinda sucked. 
I ended these days off by putting Sweeping Edge 3 on my Dragon Bone Sword. With the new influx of emeralds, I started to prepare a trading hall. This was going to be right across the mob killing chamber and filled with tons of unique new villagers. The first thing I did was dig out little areas for the villagers to be placed in and then I put oak pillars around it to give it some more color. After that, I fixed up the roof by raising it a little and then I put oak logs across it. After all of that, I put magma blocks underneath where the villager workshops are going to be and I placed glowstone all around the center for lighting. The first First residents were obviously my librarian and my cleric. I wasn't really happy with the floor so I went and grabbed a bunch of deep slate and started messing with that. I filled out the floors with deep slate tile slabs and deep slate brick slabs which looked nice but were too neat so I randomized them a little. I liked this design so much that I made the killing chamber floor the same thing too. The final thing I did was fix the back wall and match the ceilings up. After that, I just started filling up the trading hall with a bunch of villagers. First guy was an oceanographer, the second villager was a weaponsmith, the fourth was a farmer, and on the other side I put another librarian plus a hunter. This time I was also leveling up the guys as well, and I ended up getting a mending trade. Day 56 to day 58, I made a stairway all the way down to bedrock and I collected some cold deep stone which took me way too long to get. I then used all of my spirit orbs to max out on the paragliding stamina which apparently is a big deal and I made a light and dark chest which I placed on bedrock. This way I could go to the deep dark dimension. It just took one diamond. I had this cool remote that shows you where these mobs are which is really helpful because I'm trying to get tons of diamonds and kill all the wardens here. After collecting some diamonds in the spawn room, I followed the silhouettes of these mobs until I reached a cave. Inside the cave, I got even more diamonds and ended up alerting a warden. I stayed on top of these few blocks and I was able to take down this regular version of the warden without losing any health. Almost immediately, another warden saw me and oh my god, this guy packed a punch. It basically took most of my hearts every single hit. I tried to climb out these blocks, but I was blinded. Eventually, after slowly hitting this warden, I took out the big warden type, but I almost died. There was one more variant here which was the bone type and this one was nowhere near as bad because I managed to get it on high ground and just like that I completed the entire deep dark dimension in like 30 minutes. The reward was a netherite ingot and I got a bunch of the ores that I mined here too. I then came home, placed pedestals around the main bedroom and then put some cool artifacts and rewards down on top of the pedestals and the armor stands. Day 59, I unlocked this chainsaw trade from the other librarian and I put it on my giant axe. Now I can tear these trees apart from one log. I also basically got master trades from all the other villagers. Day 60 to day 61, I turned these piglin divinity gems into piglin divinity essences and went to the nether to grab even more netherite. I prowled around the nether looking for the structures that give those netherite ingots. I found a tower first and got a netherite ingot plus tons more gold blocks and then I made it to a ship which had even more gold blocks and then finally a second ship where I managed to get some extra netherite scrap and an ingot. I made one too many of these divinity nether ingots but I upgraded all of my armor except the helmet to the divinity netherite version which just makes it stronger and matches to the sick helmet even more. I also made a bunk bed because I'm no longer a peasant now. Day 62 to day 64, I grabbed a waystone and went to find a stronghold. This ended up taking a few days but eventually I found the stronghold which was underwater. I broke in through a staircase and started looting these barracks for every single thing they had. It was just a lot of foods and sticks. I ended up finding the treasure room where I snatched everything up and then eventually found the portal room. I placed the waystone down and made more eyes of ender to finish the portal. Before I jumped in, I came right back home to make more golden apples and then get some more ender pearls. I then enchanted a new pickaxe which I combined with my old one and added mending to it. Now that I was fully set up, I teleported to the end portal and jumped in. I spawned on a platform and built up until I could pearl to the main island. Then I started raining arrows at the crystals. Some of them were highly protected so I got the ones that were exposed first. Once most of the crystals were gone, I pearled up to the tower and started destroying some of the protected ones. With that, it was just me versus the dragon and my bow did tons of damage, basically reducing its health down to half until it perched again. This cycle, I managed to get it to a third of its health and then I took it out using the bow. I picked up like 8 dragon scales and got the ender dragon egg. Now came the annoying part of finding the end city. This is also why the ender pearls were very important. I built over to the end gateway and then checked my quest rewards which gave me a black dragon egg. Also, one of the quests was to defeat a mutant enderman and lucky for me, there was one right here. This guy was a freak though, doing more damage than the ender dragon. I had to eat my golden apple but I tanked it and took this guy down. The reward was a nether star and then I went onwards to find the end cities. For the next few days, I prowled around looking for any structure and I ended up finding one which had tons of shulker boxes filled with some insane loot. Basically every enchantment you could want on a piece of gear. 
plus void totems and these orbs of temporary flight. After basically forever, I found an end city but no end ship. I still started making my way up the tower though, breaking these shulker spawners and looting these stacked chests. I got to the top floor and got even more shulker boxes, void totems, and enchanted gear. I did however get this Eye of Nebula soul stone, which seemed way too complicated since it teleported me out. A while later, I found another end city and went directly up to the end ship and picked up the elytra wings. I also got whatever was good in the chests, made some fireworks, and flew back to the main island. Before I left, I wanted to collect tons of end stone, and as soon as I got home, I made a purple altar so I could get an Endarian villager. Day 71, I started trying to hatch this ice dragon egg, and I didn't have any more dragon bones to keep this thing safe, so I made the quantum catchers again. I also made an eternal Stella and put that on my elytra so it's indestructible now. While waiting, I made tons of dragon meals and fed this dragon as soon as it hatched, and I snatched this little guy up to keep him safe. After that, I leveled up this Endirian to unlock the firework trade, and eventually the dragon breath trade. With that, I could make a bunch of end shelves, so I upgraded from the hell shelves to the end shelves. This meant that I could enchant items with 80 levels. I ended up getting some nice enchantments on a spear sword and put knowledge of ages on another sword. After that I grinded a bunch more levels so that I can use level 80 enchants and it was not good at all. So instead I made the trading hall a few blocks wider so that I could sneak in two more villagers. One of the guys I needed was a scribe because I thought they sold dragon bones. While I was traveling to another village I met a fire dragon. This dude had already noticed me so I swapped to the bow and started firing. It took only a few arrows and I managed to take it out. This time I grabbed my glass bottles to take the blood. As if that wasn't enough while flying some more I landed on an ice dragon's nest. Now these guys are super annoying since they slow you down to a crawl. But I still managed to take it out and grab the scales. With these bones, I made a dragon horn and placed my dragon in there instead. I also grabbed the quest rewards, which was a gem that bounded dragons to you and a wand. Then I noticed a forest on fire and saw another dragon, but this one was very different. It was a royal red dragon. Oh yeah, I found this stupid lectern, which makes scribes. And here's where I messed up a little. I disenchanted my leggings and got some really nice enchantments, but it had life mending, which I thought worked just like mending, but it did not repair my armor at all. I had no idea so I did the same thing to my chest plate as well and it had some really good enchants but no mending. Then I went to fight mobs and realized that these pieces were not healing at all. I found these weird underwater creatures named Mother of the Maze and then I found the Thornborn Towers where I took all the loot on the top floor. Last but not least I found a shipwreck where I got the shell horn. This horn allowed me to summon the ghost of Captain Cornelia and just the way this boss moved and attacked was super cool. The ice floor would constantly raise and launch me back but at the end of the day it wasn't nearly strong enough to handle me and I took it out without losing much health. My reward was a cool helmet and a submarine. Day 76 to day 77 my armor was torn up so I put some mending books on them and then I wanted to take on these ender golems next. So I looked up the ruined citadel on my explorer's compass and flew over to it. I reached the citadel and fought these weird bugs and then when I made it inside I kept stepping on these trapped blocks. I eventually found these golems and I thought it was the boss since it had some really cool moves and its own chamber. But after I took it out I realized it was just the beginning. I looted all the chests around and found these trap doors which led underground. And yeah it turns out those golems are protecting something way bigger because I had to fight about two more of them. My hunch was right because I found some more trap doors and dropped even lower. Turns out this was the altar for the elder guardian and this guy had all the moves of the ender golems plus double health. I tried using my bow but eventually that stopped working so I went head first and started slicing at the monster. I slowly got it at half health and it broke the platform we were standing on and knocked us down to the bottom floor. But for now it was way too weak. I was able to fly away from its pull and start lighting it up with the arrows to kill it. The reward was a gauntlet of guard. And I got this larva plus something called a capsid. These are needed to summon the void worm, the last boss of the end. Before I came home, I grabbed some more elytra wings and random loot in this end city. Day 78 to 80, I needed to put these wither skeleton heads to use and I summoned even more withers. I summoned them back to back and took each out until I had like six nether stars. I also kidnapped this little goblin who I used to get a fortune five pickaxe and combined it with my pickaxe. After that, I expanded my storage system with tier three chests for even more storage. And I realized I wanted dragon bone tools instead. So that's exactly what I did. I started enchanting these dragon bone tools but I needed more levels. So I got up to level 65 and started trading with this scribe who was a scam artist. But on the bright side I got up to level 89, enchanted my dragon bone pickaxe, then combined it with an unbreaking and mending book. Because I was so indecisive I made a flame dragon bone sword and rolled the enchants for this thing like a hundred times. I even had a pretty good setup but I didn't like the bane of villagers. So after combining tons of these books I realized it had knowledge of the ages which I did not want at all. So this amazingly beautiful sword had to be disenchanted. Day 81, I spent this entire day grinding levels and got some sick enchantments on the flame dragon bone sword. Only problem was the bane of arthropods. I really didn't want to grind levels again, so I enchanted some tomes and combined those books on this sword to make an absolute super sword. Day 82 to day 83, I went to the nether to collect more gold and netherite scraps. 
and also hopefully find the mutant blaze. This elytra helped me reach tons of places I never could, and the gold from these structures were insane. I'm pretty sure I can build a few beacons with just the gold blocks alone. I started with around 170 gold blocks and ended with more than 300. With all this new gold, I got another cleric to sell more gold into, and I made a netherite shield which I upgraded to blazerite, and then got some really decent enchants on the shield. I still had to combine it with some leftover books to make it perfect. Day 84 to day 88, for these days I flew around these ice biomes looking for dread dungeons. This is because they have Dragonforge stuff in them. I found one of those dungeons and killed a Dread Lich who dropped a key. I was able to get into the dungeon but my god was it packed with mobs. I swear these spawners were like supercharged because they really never stopped spawning. I was on the staircase thinning the herd for the longest time ever. I did manage to get down, break the spawners and then come right back up which worked like a charm. And then that meant I could go to the main room and pick up all the Dragonforge blocks. I found another Dread Dungeon and did the exact same thing. This place was a nightmare but I got through and picked up even more blocks and left. Later that day I killed two ice dragons and got some more ice dragon blood. To finish these days off, I hunted tons of cows and sheep to make dragon meal and grow my ice dragon. Also to help with that, I made a pen for sheep. Before summoning the void room, I wanted to level up my dragon first, so I started breeding the sheep like crazy. Then I made tons of backpack upgrades like this crafting upgrade and a stone cutter upgrade. Also, I turned the backpack into the netherite version as well. So the stone cutter has very useful features like you can turn these emerald blocks into these rough emerald shards, which fully restocks villagers. Using that, I was able to sell tons of gold and iron I had it piled up. Then I fed my dragon some more with all the sheep. I also made the straw golem guy and a chest with a hopper to see how effective they were. They were useless. Then I had a great idea to remove a bunch of affixes from the loot I had been collecting. Day 91 to day 94, I learned how to summon the void worm. You put the larva into the capsid and it spits out a mysterious worm. After that, you need to drop this bad boy in the void. So I flew to the end and found the perfect place to start the fight. There weren't tons of endermen at the beginning, so I dropped the mysterious worm into the void. This summoned a portal which allowed the void worm to come through. This crazy boss did not stop attacking it, and once I shot it, it split into two. If that's not bad enough, I shot it again and it split into three. Luckily, I managed to just get the main worm by itself and then only took a few more shots to wipe out the void worm. My reward was a void worm eye and two void worm mandibles. These can be used to make a dimensional carver, which I have no clue what it does. The quest reward though opened up the abyss for me with tons of very useful information and blocks for the portal. To make this dimensional carver, I went to the nether one more time to get some netherite. Of course, I picked up all the gold I could. Then I made the dimensional carver, which was doing something when I right clicked, but I really couldn't tell at all. It just seemed useless to me. Day 95 to day 100. For the rest of these days, I bred my sheep and was able to feed my dragon until it was finally right. I also used all of my iron blocks to make some dragon armors to deck it out. Then I put a bunch of items on the pedestal and the armor stands. Last but not least, I cleared a huge area right in front of my house to hold six beacons. I spent most of the time collecting the extra emerald blocks. The first layer was gold, second was emeralds, third was iron, and the top layer I placed gold down again. Then of course I placed the six beacons on top and gave myself every single effect possible. Day 101 to day 102, the first thing I started doing was getting this dragon forge prepared. I had raided tons of dread dungeons, so so I just checked how many blocks I had. I also turned some dragon skills into blocks and realized I needed to kill more dragons. I then teleported over to some ice biomes and went out to look. While I was here, I made sure to kill as many sheep and cows as possible. Turns out I killed almost every single ice dragon in these biomes, but I kept searching in other directions. During these travels, I raided tons of battle towers, but had no luck on any ice dragons. That all changed the next day. Right after I burnt this pirate ship down, I stumbled into a dread dungeon. Lucky for me, I had a spare key and went inside. I remember now why I hated this place. These mobs are insane. The deeper I got into this dungeon, the more mobs spawn all the way until the bottom floor, which had so many mobs I basically just stood on the staircase thinning the herd as much as I could. I even fell down a few times and this was not good for my armor at all. Whatever I was doing was not working so I just ran in and broke as many of the spawners as I could and this made life way easier. And now I could pick up all the dragonforge stuff. It turns out I needed one more of these dragon scale blocks to make the core so I took off to find another ice biome. This one had a dragon, thank god, and after taking it out I used Use the scales to make some dragon forge blocks, which then allowed me to make the ice core. All these poor dragons were finally used to complete my dragon forge. I placed my ice dragon down and I was really paranoid that it would destroy my house, so I picked it up really quick. Day 105 to day 106, to stop this dragon from flying away, I made some iron chains and chained it up. 
This worked like a charm and my forge was finally producing ice dragon steel ingots. I got about five. Then again, my dragon was not listening so I had to move the forge somewhere else so that my base would be safe. This was a much better place and I got enough ingots to make an ice dragon steel chestplate and leggings which were significantly stronger than my gear. Slowly but surely, I made the rest of the pieces and even a sword. All this left me with three ingots to spare. I then spent the rest of the night grinding out a bunch of XP which got me up to level 93. I ended up getting some okay enchantments the first round and the only piece that was decent was the leggings which had protection 5 and unbreaking 5. So I disenchanted the rest of this armor and started working on it again. The second time around was also pretty bad except for the helmet which was protection 5. The bad enchants were really not going away so I started using some of my enchanted books. Slowly but surely I was able to put unbreaking and mending on most of the dragon steel armor. After scrapping some of the old pieces I had, I actually ended up with a really nice set of enchanted ice dragon steel armor. Next up, I needed to make this ice dragon steel sword really strong. So after gathering some levels, I started fiddling with the enchants. And with all these levels, I actually ended up extracting some of these cool affixes from other armor pieces I had. I placed a rare affix on my leggings, which gave me more hearts and armor toughness. In between grabbing levels, I also killed some of my sheep, which meant even more dragon meals. The next enchant I got on my sword was insane though. Sharpness 7. I immediately started looking for looting books or looting gear that I could disenchant. I then started enchanting a bunch of tomes which actually got me looting and some other cool stuff. Day 109, combining all these books together gave me the perfect sword which I finished off with a mending book and a looting ancient tome. I tried this sword out on the mob farm and it was really OP since it somehow froze and put the enemy on fire. I then needed some more affixes so I went out to the desert to fight tons of apotheosis mobs. The desert ended up only spawning bandits so I moved over to the plains biome where I got some really nice leggings and some nice boots. Day 110, I extracted the good affixes which took most of my XP and started placing them on my new armor. These affixes cost tons of levels so I had to grind a bunch. After all of that, I had way more hearts. The only piece of armor that still needed affixes was my helmet so I fought tons of mobs at night and found a portal to a new dimension. Good thing I had tons of hearts of the seas for my oceanographer and this activated the portal. It turned out that this dimension was called the depth and I was taking damage at like random spots. I even swapped to the scuba gear but I was still taking damage here. I already completed the quest so I just came home because I had no idea what this dimension needed me to do. The next morning I found out this dragon egg was a lightning dragon. It also started raining so I placed this egg down and waited for this little man to hatch. I snatched the dragon up as soon as it hatched and moved my nether portal down to the spawner area as well. Across the nether portal, I also made an under garden portal which I lit up with a catalyst from killing some nether thing. Before I hopped in, I made a diamond shield which matched the armor and then enchanted it. I put some nice books plus mending on it and it was set. I then jumped into this new crazy dimension and had some mobs to kill while I was here. First up was this thing called a stoneborn, so I started flying around and checking out the area. I killed a bunch of these weird looking mobs and flew over some really dark biomes. This is where I found an actual strong looking mob. It was a brute. I also realized I could just use this explorer's compass and find wherever these mobs spawn. This helped me find this rot beast whose reward was some really cool swords. Right after that, I ended up finding a stoneborn who just dropped pebbles. Next up, I needed to take down the forgotten guardian. Now this guy spawns in the catacombs, which I used the compass to find. I broke into this weird structure and made my way down the staircase. This guardian looked like a transformer, but it was no match at all. I also grabbed whatever I could from the catacombs and got my quest reward, which was a masticator spawn egg. This was the final boss of the dimension. I summoned it on a cool looking biome and oh boy was this thing ugly. It also had some crazy reach but all it took was a few arrows and it was a breeze destroying this dude. My reward for this entire dimension was a scarab which allowed me to go to the Atum dimension. Day 113 to day 114 before I went down to the Atum dimension I killed tons of my sheep and then while hunting for even more animals I found this blue skies villagers house. This is where I grabbed the blocks for an ever bright portal. I also bought this zeolighter which activates these portals and then I realized I only had level 1 beacon effects the entire time. So I upgraded all of that and then started doing decorations to the base. I started with a path connecting all the way down to the mines which I added texture to. And right after that I wanted to make the walls of these mines look good. So I started by placing oak support beams around the walls and in between all these oak logs I placed deep slate which made the area look slick. I didn't like how uniform it was so I replaced the centers of each of the deep slate area with deep slate tiles and the outer edges with deep slate bricks. 
I replaced the rest of the Deep Slayer patches all around the mines as well. And then to end these days, I grew my Lightning Dragon some more and placed more diamond chests in the storage system. The next morning, I broke the Undergarden portal and set up the Everbright portal. I also jumped in really quick to get some quest rewards and see what was up. This reminded me to explore a tomb first. I then came right back to collect some more sand to make sandstone. The portal was really simple and I set it up right on the beach. All I needed to do was drop a scarab into the pool. With that being said, I jumped in and spawned in a tomb. My ultimate goal here was to take down some pharaohs. The quest also asked me to kill a bunch of random mobs. First off, I wanted to take out a mummy, but I ended up killing the surgeon instead. This dimension also had tons of lightning strikes, which means there were more OP mobs and crazy affixes. I then eventually ended up killing a mummy and then got two rewards, which were all dirty artifacts. Later that night, I found a pyramid, but I couldn't open it yet since it required nebu torches. I searched this village hoping for some torches in these crates, but sadly there were none. So these Nebu ores also spawn underground, so I hopped right into this cave and tore through huge parts of it. Sadly, I ended up getting no Nebu ores. Once I surfaced from the cave, I got attacked by a bandit patrol and ended up taking out all the bandit types. I still needed to kill an assassin though. So while I waited for more bandits, I cleaned all these dirty coins and jewelry, and then I finally got marked, which meant assassins are coming for me. I stole the iron golem's kill and had two quests left in a tomb. One of them was to take out a pharaoh. I then flew around looking for structures where I could get nebu torches. I ended up finding this pretty big abandoned structure and found some nebu torches here. With this, I opened up the pyramid, broke the spawners on the top floors, and once I started getting lower, I had to fight through some of the traps and mazes. Eventually, I found another set of ladders which led to the bottom floor. I knew where the pharaoh was, so I explored the other two sides first and then went to the sarcophagus. This just required four nebu torches to activate, and once I tried to open the sarcophagus, a pharaoh spawned. Now I eviscerate the pharaoh and everything else that was summoned there. Then I also cleaned some of the artifacts and equipped a ton of them. Before the night ended, I took out another pharaoh and got some even more items. Day 117 to day 118, I got everything I needed from this dimension, so I teleported right back home. I had collected tons of ores, which I put in the furnaces, and then all the enchanted gears I collected, I put into the chests. After that, I fixed up the rest of these mines with deep slate and oak logs. Then I started working on the roof. I started by spacing out the glowstone on the roof and then filled the roof with stone bricks. After all of that, the mines were fully decked out and looking kind of nice. I ended these days by expanding the furnaces and even made some blast furnaces as well. Day 119 to day 120, I grabbed tons of levels and went to this gatekeeper villager to buy the blue book. This was an overworld quest and it gave me the Everdawn portal blocks too. Real quick, I went to grab tons more meat to make dragon meals and I found a pirate ship while I was searching, which I of course burnt down. In total, I was able to make 8 dragon meals from tons of cows and sheep that I killed. At least I fought a fire dragon though, which meant I could get a bunch of fire dragon scales. The next day, I found some more waystones and fought another fire dragon. This dragon was trying to eat the cows that I needed. Later on that day, I found another waystone and an ice dragon. I was also close to this pillager windmill, which I recognized from almost a hundred days ago. I had to take out another fire dragon here first, and then I explored whatever was left of the windmill. I also accidentally activated one of the traps and a bunch of TNT exploded. The loot on the top floor was actually really nice. It was tons of gold, iron, and diamonds. Before these days ended, I somehow fought another fire dragon and found a glowing forest which had a waystone. Day 121, I found a bunch of these cyclops caves and it was a gold mine for sheep and mutton. The chests were also filled with mutton and this gave me 24 dragon meals. All of that finally made my lightning dragon rideable. Later that night, I also saved a village from a fire dragon and got more sheep from another cyclops cave. Day 122 to day 124. To prepare for more dimensions, I went to collect some sand so I could make more potions. I then made an iron fishing rod so I could start brewing water breathing potions. The enchants on the rod were really good. I fished for a little bit and even with high luck of the sea, I only caught a few puffer fish. At least now I had some spare water breathing potions, but this fishing trip gave me an idea to expand the base towards the beach. I started by covering this lava pool first and then I placed dirt over the obsidian to match the rest of the landscape. After covering as much as I could, I removed the trees that would be in the way of the path. Then from the main path, I branched all the way down towards the beach. To spruce things up, I started sprinkling cobblestone, stone, gravel around the path as well. Since all of that was done, I placed fences around all the path to hold torches and lanterns since just having them on the ground 
man was ugly. Last but not least, I made it dock to stand on while fishing, and since I only had oak wood, I tried to make it not look super bland. I also put a waystone here too, but now that the outside was done, I placed some more armor stands and pedestals inside of the house to show off more loot. Then I used some more ice dragon blood to make more ice dragon steel ingots. I wanted to make a dragon steel pickaxe and an axe. I spent the rest of these days enchanting these two items and they ended up being really good. The pickaxe was efficiency 8, fortune 5, and unbreaking 5. Day 125, while enchanting the axe, I tried out this new pickaxe and it tore through literally everything. I collected as many ores as I could and got up to level 81 to enchant this axe. It took me a few tries, but I got some really good enchants for it too. Unbreaking 4, efficiency 4, and chainsaw. I then smelt every single ore that I collected and placed a lectern under my bed to be fancy. I also upgraded a goddess statue, but it just became a light source and nothing else really changed. Day 126 to day 127, I discovered that you could make oak posts and I placed it everywhere because I just thought it looked cool. I then expanded the sheep farm and placed these end stone stairs leading down to the mines because it looked really cool. After that, I bought a trident from the oceanographer and I started enchanting that. The chants I got were crazy, I didn't even know you could put looting on it. And and last but not least, I found this pillager castle and placed a sleeping bag down. As soon as I woke up, I barged into this castle and started destroying the illagers. By far the most annoying dude here is the illusioner who blinds you and splits into five versions. Aside from that, the loot over here was incredible. There were tons of ingots, ores, totems of undines, and some super rare artifacts. At one point, I think I was attacked by like a hundred vindicators. And once the bottom floor was cleared, I grabbed everything, even the bookshelves, and I noticed these chests had some really nice ancient tomes. The next floor was pretty much the same thing. Tons of pillagers, loot, and tomes. And finally, I tore through the top floor, grabbing everything, and spent the majority of my time just converting nuggets into ingots and ingots into blocks. I would say this dungeon was a success though. On the flight back home, I hunted some more sheep and cows, which gave me 10 more dragon meals. But more importantly, my ice dragon was stage five now. It was gigantic. Day 130 to day 131, I wanted to complete some overworld quests like taking down Frost Maw. The compass couldn't find a spawn anywhere near me. Instead, I fought like three ice dragons whose blood I harvested and then farmed some mobs during this blood moon. Once those mobs burned up, I found a crazy mining system with these pickaxe holding zombies and skeletons. I made my way up this structure fighting tons of these dudes. Since it was a mining system, the loot here was a bunch of ingots and ores. As I made my way higher and higher up, I ended up mining some of these ore blocks too. The top floors had diamond armor wearing zombies and skeletons. In total, I had like three stacks of raw iron, two stacks of gold, and even more ingots on top. On the way back, I ended up fighting like my 10th ice dragon. Day 132 to day 134, I really needed to grow my lightning dragon, so I explored some areas I had never been to. I immediately found some cows and a fire dragon who was trying to munch on them. I then found a battle tower which had a heart of the golem, a pretty good spellstone that I equipped. After that I took down two more fire dragons back to back. The next morning I found a mushroom structure and got attacked by these crazy looking mobs. So in total I had 13 dragon meals which I fed my lightning dragon and it was rideable now. I did one more round of dragon feeding and now this lightning dragon was almost stage 5. While traveling some more, I stumbled into an abandoned prison and went inside. There were a few spawners here and some barrels, but the loot was all right. I took whatever was good, made my way back home, and fed this dragon some more. So this dragon was also huge now, and it needed one more meal to be stage 5, which was super annoying. With most of the overworld stuff done, I quickly went into the Atum Dimension to finish off the entire quest line. I needed to take out a stone guard, and these guys spawn underground. So I dug down really quick and used my mini map to see where they would be. I ended up finding one of these guys and completed the entire dimension. Then I lit the ever bright portal again and went into the dimension. My first goal was to collect four dungeon keys and they're all in this wizard's tower which I breezed through and picked up a key from every floor. I placed the four keys on top of the tower and the summoner spawned. Regular weapons are weak here, but I collected some wood from this dimension just in case. Even then, my ice dragon steel sword did tons of damage whenever I did manage to hit the boss. I played cat and mouse with this summoner a bunch of times as it just started teleporting around but slowly I was able to take down its health. The golems though were pretty annoying and some of these attacks make you levitate. But other than that, the fight was pretty simple and you just have to keep hitting the summoner until it's dead. I ended up getting a trophy and a loot bag which had an arc. This one makes me 10% faster.
Next up, I needed to fight the Starlit Crusher, and I made a pretty big mistake by not making an axe straight away. So this structure is much bigger and way more annoying since there's so many rooms. I went through every single one and it took me a super long time. Since some of these rooms you can only enter through like a specific direction, and the chests are hidden pretty well. Even then, I ended up getting the four dungeon keys and made my way up to the boss room to put the keys in. This fight took me forever because I thought my dragon steel axe would do fine. So the Starlight Crusher puts up these walls and makes it impossible to hit and you're supposed to use an axe to break down these walls. I really thought my axe would do some damage but it barely made a dent. Eventually I stopped being stupid and crafted a blue bright wood axe which did the trick breaking down the walls and exposing the crusher. Then I experienced my next challenge. My sword barely did any damage. Luckily my bow on the other hand did tons of damage plus lit the crusher on fire. This guy also summons vines from the ground and did tons of damage to my armor. Once you break down the walls it also does a weird spinning move and it stops moving for a while. This is when I did my attacks. Slowly after repeating the process a bunch of times I got his health down to half. I had to make a few more of those axes though and my strategy changed a little. I set the crusher on fire and then attacked it with the axe. This did tons of damage and I was able to take this very annoying boss out. Now this guy gave me another arc plus a nether star. The arc gave me like two more hearts. Just like that, this dimension was conquered and I then came home to set up the portal for the Ever Dawn. Day 140 to day 141, my armor was damaged so I started repairing those. Then I was running out of food so I used a bunch of emeralds for golden carrots. After all of that, I started scrapping armor pieces and placing really good ones on my armor. I put some very high level protections and unbreaking on my ice dragon steel stuff. To really enhance some of the gear, I also used a bunch of those ancient tomes that I had. The trophies were also really cool so I I put them up to display and made some of these furniture which I just sprinkled some in the house and some outside. There was also this very ugly thing in front of my house, the six beacons that I started to move underground. I dug down five blocks and started making an area to house all of these blocks. The bottom needed to be 11 by 11 at least. I slowly but surely managed to get the entire beacon underground and reactivated all the effects. Day 142, I made a good amount of night vision potions and I slaughtered all of my sheep. I wanted to replace it with cows instead so I snatched some up and got the farm started. I then made this dog bed for whenever I can get a wolf. Day 143 to day 147, now it was time to take on the Ever Dawn dimension. First up, I needed to find the alchemist. I flew around this cool dimension collecting some of the ores on the mountains but more importantly, I grabbed some wood in case I needed weapons. Then I found the alchemist tower and it was the same as the one in the Everlight dimension so the keys were basically in the same places. Once I grabbed four, I went to the top and summoned the alchemist. Now this guy was significantly less annoying than the Everlight dimension boss because there were no minions. But the alchemist did teleport around way more. This guy dropped tons of things from the ceilings and even blinded me. That's not all though. Once the alchemist's health was halved, it started poisoning me more and more. I kept hitting this dude and eventually the alchemist was also taken down. My reward was another trophy and an arc that gave me invisibility while I was sneaking. Next up was the final boss, the Arachnarch. Just like last time, this dungeon had way too many rooms and took me way too long to find all the keys. Thank goodness for those night vision potions at least. Even though it took me so many days, I got the four keys that were scattered around and unlocked the layer. The Arachnarch just stood there and I got some really good hits in, but it immediately slowed me down and started doing some mad poison damage. After that, it jumped on the ceiling and started spitting at me, which actually looked really cool. Once it came down, I did some more damage and got more than a quarter of its health down. While hitting it, I noticed that my Ice Dragon Steel Sword stopped doing a lot of damage, so I swapped to this Dimension Sword and that ended up doing some serious damage. In the final stage, this spider launched even smaller spiders, so I had to take care of those little things first. Once I took care of that, I laced the Arachnarch with tons of arrows and finished it off using my bow. The reward was another trophy and another arc which made me stronger while being poisoned. Just like that, the Everlight and Everdawn dimensions were complete. Day 148 to day 149, I came home and wanted to make a new bow since this one was almost broken. So I went into the nether to grab more netherite ingots. There were a bunch more piglin towers and nether ships for me to raid and every single time I'm here, I get like tons of gold blocks. Oh yeah, and I'm super stupid. I accidentally turned on another overlay in OBS so you get to see this little square for the next few days. Uh, then I found a bastion, ripped through the fortress and came home with two netherite ingots. I chose to make a goldorite bow because it can get looting and it took up all those netherite ingots that I just got. As soon as I enchanted this bow it was absolutely insane. Power 8, unbreaking 6, punch 3 and looting 6 
plus infinity. So just in case I needed to heal this bow, I made some mending mixtures too. Day 150 to day 152. So from completing those two dimensions, I got this traveler's logbook and it shows you how to make a portal for the twilight forest. It was kind of embarrassing how long it took me to set this portal up, but I got it eventually. I had to go and find poppies, but I'm pretty sure any flower would have worked. I just needed to throw a diamond in there. That ended up opening the portal, and after all of that, I decorated the area real quick, made even more dragon meals, and gold dragon armor for my lightning dragon. The next morning, I scouted some of the area around my base, and I found a spider cave, and you won't believe it. Turns out this cave was on top of a stage 4 dragon's nest. I drank my night vision potion, and jumped down to take this dragon out quickly before it flew up. I had to be really quick because I was worried about my base burning down. I killed it pretty quickly, but there were a good amount of mobs here. After all of that, I harvested the dragon and it dropped a fire dragon egg, which completed my dragon collection. I hatched this dragon underground so my house wouldn't burn down, and I snatched this little guy up and went looking out for more food to feed it. Then I used this ice dragon steel to make an ice dragon steel hoe, and I got some really good enchants on it, which made harvesting the wheat so much easier. Day 153 to day 155, I fixed the overlay, but because OBS updated my recording messed up, I only did a few things though. Number one, I made this stack upgrade three, which was really easy to make and it opened up way more space for my backpack. Number two, I got this void crystal from killing a weird mob in the end, which could only be killed by TNT. But forget about all that because I finally found a wolf too and I linked it with the bed and I also put wolf armor on it too. Now it was time to take on the twilight forest. This dimension has tons of bosses and needs to be done in order. First I set up a waystone in here just in case. Then I went to find the first boss, the naga. So there are tons of biomes here that you can't even go into without taking damage and you need to take out some of the bosses first. I was careful, I found the maze, and I started firing some arrows at this giant snake and did some really early damage. Once the naga came closer, I was able to use my sword and completely demolished it. My reward was a bunch of scales, a trophy, and a cool miniature of the dungeon. Next up was a twilight lich who spawns in some cool looking castle. Thank god for this explorer's compass. I was able to locate all these structures and just fly over to them. I broke into the tower through a little hole and found the main staircase. At the top of the tower is where the twilight lich is located. So this fight's kind of complicated since you can't do damage to the lich without breaking its shield. It also has some minions that you have to take care of as well. But as long as you bounce these ender pearl looking things back at the shield, you can slowly start breaking the defenses. Once the shield shattered, I was able to wipe the lich out with just 3 hits. My reward again was a trophy and a cool miniature of the dungeon. The next boss in line was the Minnow Shroom, who spawned in the labyrinth. It looked like a huge well and I just hopped right in. The mobs in here were like scorpions and beetles and of course minotaurs. I navigated through the labyrinth going deeper and deeper underground until I saw the room where the Minnow Shroom was supposed to spawn. The boss saw me and broke the fence but it was no match at all to the new bow. Make sure you're not as stupid as me and you eat the meat stroganoff because this is supposed to make you stop taking damage from the weird biomes. I had no clue though and I went to take on the Hydra which was the coolest boss I've ever seen. I'm pretty sure I was supposed to take damage in this biome but I guess my fire resistance kept me safe. The Hydra, just like the Lich, is another boss where you have to launch its projectiles right back into its heads. My bow was only doing slight damage, but the real chunks of health started going down when I timed the fireball. I ended up taking out the Hydra, I picked up my reward which was another trophy and some dragon scales. Next boss was the Knight Phantom, who spawned in a Knight Stronghold. So I found the Stronghold, but I had no clue what to do since I couldn't break blocks or kill any mobs around the area. Turns out you had to place a trophy on the pedestal, and it opened up the rest of the dungeon. Now the dungeon itself was also super stupidly complicated, and it took me a really long time just to find out how to get to the bottom floor. I did end up finding the graveyard for the Knight Phantoms anyway, and these guys were very weird. They were just a bunch of floating armors who held a bunch of different items. They were actually super weak and I picked up the trophy and collected some of the armor pieces. I then teleported straight home since I needed more night vision potions and while I was here I placed down all the trophies I collected in my house. Day 161 to day 163. Before I went back to the twilight forest I brewed more night vision potions and stocked up on more food and rockets. I then quickly looted some more structures while trying to make more dragon meals and I was pretty far away and decided to search for the frost maw again because I needed it for the overworld quests. Again, no luck on frost maw but I did get a good amount of dragon meals for my fire dragon. Then I had a genius idea. I made a smoker which gave a villager the butcher trade. I ended up trapping one guy but the food he sold couldn't be turned into dragon meal, so he retired. 
For the next guy, I used the rough emerald shards and a weird book to improve the trade. This guy gave me cooked chickens, which can be turned into dragon meal. So I bought an inventory full of chickens and had 32 dragon meals. I then swapped this butcher with my weaponsmith. Then with this new trade, I was able to non-stop feed my fire dragon and get rid of the cow form. After all of that, my fire dragon was almost stage 5 as well. The funny thing is that now I'm short on bones. Day 164 to day 166. It was now time again to finish off the Twilight Forest. I started looking for a dark tower to challenge the Urghast. This dungeon was really cool. I jumped in through an opening and started making my way up. As soon as I got on top, this giant gas spawned and started launching fireballs. I got some good hits in, but the punch in my bow kept moving the Urghast further and further. So I tried to fly towards it and do some damage in the air, but it still only kept pushing it away. I then tried to come back hoping it would follow me and then I found these weird contraptions that ate up these smaller gas. Eventually this thing just teleported back to the tower and I was able to see what this redstone machine did. I killed a few mini gas and the machine pulled the ergast in. With that I took it out no problem and my rewards were some fiery blood, a trophy and a nether star. Next up was the Alpha Yeti, who spawns in the Yeti cave. I flew over towards it and this fight was very simple. A large Yeti just spawns in the center and you have to take it out. The reward was a helmet and some Yeti fur. Uh, this is when things started to get a little complicated. I had to fight the Snow Queen, who spawns in the Aurora Palace. I made my way towards it and started breaking some of the top towers, but none of the main ones had the Snow Queen. I explored basically each of the really big towers and only got like chests up top. This alone took me a few days though, but I fought a bunch of cool mohabs on the way. Eventually, I made my way towards one of these towers in the corner and this place had ice staircases. So I assumed I finally got the right spot and slowly making my way up, I found what I needed, the Snow Queen. So the Snow Queen can't be hurt from the bottom and gives slowness 5, it's pretty bad. I would sneak in some shots when the queen would go low though. Then finally, the queen broke down to the bottom floor and I was able to use the stairs to land some hits. I then just waited for the moments for her to bounce down and I was able to take out the Snow Queen. My reward of course was more trophies, a bow and a nice dagger. So if you thought that was complicated, it gets even more complicated now. Turns out I needed a giant pickaxe to mine this huge obsidian box and get a lamp that can burn through these thorns. But since I didn't eat that meat stroganoff thing like 20-30 days back, I was still taking damage in the highland biomes and in the giant clouds. I even made my way down these caves thinking that I'd be safe from the damage, but no. Uh, then I thought to try to take down these giants, but again they didn't take any damage. After some more research, I finally decided to eat the food that I needed and I got tons of new resistances. Now I could finally explore these stupid biomes. Before I moved on to another cave, I fought these giants and got myself a giant sword and a giant pickaxe. The next cave had the huge obsidian box, which I used the giant pickaxe to break into and pick up the lamp. So I used the lamp to burn through the thorns and I found a huge castle. I also made my way into it and then I saw some signs that said it was not yet implemented so no more boss battles. Turns out getting the lamp was like the last boss type thing to do because the final quest was in some place called the quest grove. The questing ram over here needed every type of wool and I already had a bunch so I gave those over to it and it added onto the ram's torso. I also used all the flowers I had in my inventory to make more dyes and gathered all the wools I didn't have and then I scoured this dimension to pick up all the flowers I could. It took a little bit but I'm pretty sure I gave this ram every color of wool. Well, let me know in the comments if I missed one. Even then, I didn't get a quest word or anything so I snatched this ram up with a quantum catcher and brought it right in front of my house. I tied it to a fence and tried over and over again with most of the wool to see if I missed anything but still no luck. On the bright side though, all of my dragons are stage 5. Day 175 to 178. I expanded my storage system again, but it took up way too much space on the bottom, so I had a better idea. I made tons of tier 3 chests and went down to the mines to create a huge storage room. It was going to be a pretty decent sized chest monster, and once I cleared out an entire area, I placed down some tier 3 chests and linked them all up. I brought down the network route and the request table too. After that, the next goal was to move as much of the stuff down here as possible. I was pretty stupid and didn't realize I could have just used a remote to transfer stuff, so I kept going back and forth. This way at least I was able to add more tier 3 chests while I kept moving stuff around. This thing took a couple of days but I had even more chests in here, raised the roof up and actually got everything into these chests. I had to force load these new chunks and then put the tier 2 chests in the back. With all of that done I started decorating. I was on top of my mob spawner so I just used deep slate tile slabs on the two sides closer to the walls. 
I also sprinkled glowstone on the floor, and then in the center, I used stone brick slabs separated by oak logs. Then I sprinkled some lanterns around and made all the walls stone bricks. I also textured it with some chisel stone bricks, so at least it doesn't all look the same. The last little bit of stuff is where I snuck in some glowstone in between the slabs on the roof, and then I covered the link cables as much as I could. I also put a waystone down here, and uh, this is probably where I'm going to be spending most of my time now. So I moved my furnaces down here, and then I made the bottom of my house another trophy room. Day 179, while I was decorating, I wanted to see what kind of furniture there were. So I made some chairs and tables, and then sprinkled these blinds around the windows of my house. After that, I tried out these upgraded fences, which looked cooler than the posts. Last but not least, I actually made my bedroom into a room, and not just an open space, so it has a door and a roof now. Day 180 to day 183, there are a few more dimensions I needed to explore before I take on the abyss. First was the afterlife. Now this dimension is very weird to even get into. I started by getting some void rocks and moon crystals down in the mines. Then I made a ritual altar and just kept this thing outside for now. Next up I made this thing called a mundane hammer to smash these moon crystals into moon crystals dust. So this is the recipe to make strange obsidian or whatever it's called, but the ritual just wasn't working. I found out that it was because it was still day, so I moved the altar down to the store storage room and once it became dark I made a bunch of a strange obsidians and the staff of moonlight which activates the portal. I also ended up getting some lore books and I swapped this everdon portal for the afterlight one and lit it up. This dimension was really empty though and there was nothing to do except kill some mobs and pick up some of the neat looking blocks. I then quickly came home to set up for the Miviral, I don't even know how to say it, the Miviral dimension, which sounded cool. So in order to get to this dimension, you needed the Forgotten Tail, and I just needed some warped warp block. Boy was I stupid, I completely forgot those blocks just spawn on the warp trees. So guess what I did? I traveled around the villages to get a villager who I could turn into a lumberjack just for the chance to get the warp warp block. I even maxed this dude out, so it was not my brightest moment. I eventually stopped being an idiot and just went down to the nether to grab these warped warp blocks. Now I had the forgotten tale and started reading it. It was a story about a beautiful dimension which was ruined by like a young wizard and I was getting excited. It then gave me the option to go to the dimension, which I did, and it turns out the bosses were coming soon and not implemented yet. So I used the new book to come back home. Lucky for me, I spawned pretty far away and decided to complete another quest while I was here. I found an ice maze biome and started destroying these pillager structures. The main goal was to get the bad omen effect, which I did eventually. I then flew back towards the village and started locking villagers in their homes. Then I took out the first wave of the raid, which was really easy. The only problem I had were these stupid spawns. Aside from that, I started decimating the pillagers wave by wave. With the help of whatever guards were left, I got to wave 3 pretty easily. This is when ravagers started coming in, but it was still pretty easy. Now this is when the annoyingness was turned up. Tons of evokers and of course these stupid illusioners. I took out those guys easily and as night started, the next wave also started. So I think I found the most annoying mobs here. These jesters. They give you weight 3, which means you can't jump for a bit. Also, the evokers were now wearing diamond armor. My inventory was filled to the brim, but after taking out this one last dude, I became the hero of the village. One quest left in the overworld. Day 187, I quickly teleported home and placed the abyss portal down. I also lit that bad boy up and then I used these ancient tomes to get power 10 on my bow. I added some posts in the storage system and I made an area to show off the cool armor I had. For now, I put the tungsten armor here and made some naga armor with all the scales I had. I then moved all the twilight forest trophies down here as well. Now everything's been leading to this moment, it was time to check out the abyss dimension. I ended up spawning in some cave which wasn't that bad of a spawn. It was also next to a mine shaft. Immediately, I started mining whatever I could. I got some regular iron and this lorn ore which basically is used to make every single thing from this dimension. I then got this thing called Glacerite, which looked like it would make some really nice gear. I spent a decent amount of time in the mines because my pickaxe was insta mining everything. I got a little carried away strip mining. My vision cone though was turning blue, which I think meant the fear effect was happening. So I came home and had tons of ores to smelt and lots of night vision potions to make before I hop right back in. This time I mined towards the abyss overworld and set my waystone down. I explored this crazy place and found two bosses in a bind. The first one was an Abyssor, which gave me nausea and fear, but it wasn't too tough. And the second one was the Roka, who wasn't affected by my bow, but it did get shredded by my sword. It also dropped a Roka horn, one of the five ingredients to make an Eye of Abyss. After exploring this dungeon, I ended up circling right back to the mine shaft I spawned near, went right back down to the mine I made. I kept mining for a pretty long time, but eventually my vision got way too blue and the fear effect started doing tons of damage. Also, this meant I couldn't use my warp stone, so I had to fly out and find my portal. At least I I got some new ores like this in Karaith. For the next few days, I kept mining to get some of this cool new ore and I started exploring some of these different biomes. I actually ended up clearing out a 
huge chunk of the mines at diamond level, but I had no luck with any of these cool ores. I didn't get a single one. Instead, I did find the elder who was a boss I needed to take out. This guy was just chilling on a mountain and I was able to freeze it with my sword, take it out and then collect the elder eye. This was another ingredient for the eye of abyss. Before the fear took over, I found a ruined structure where I think I would have to place this eye of abyss once I craft it. Day 193 to day 195, the goal for these days was to simply challenge the final boss of the abyss. Before that though, I would have to take out the other mini bosses left. First up in this very colorful biome, I saw the crystal golem's health bar pop up, but I just could not find it and it eventually just despawned. Over this mountain was another one of those biomes and I managed to find the crystal golem here. This one was just hiding in a tree, pretty nicely camouflaged. I took it out easily and picked up the crystal hand. My fear was getting out of control, so I teleported back home and made an eye of abyss. There was another mini boss, but no matter what, I just could not find it and the wiki didn't even have an entry on it. On my travels towards the altar, I fought these soul guards who dropped these soul hearts and this would be needed to even start the ritual. I started the ritual by lighting the pillars with this soul fire and once they were all lit, I sacrificed the eye of the abyss. After the lightning barrage, the night blade spawned and I was finally able to do some damage to it after a little bit. Until another lightning bolt launched and it launched every other mob around the area into the air. The night blade was barely taking any damage and when it did, it would just launch me back in the air with a bunch of other mobs. I still pressed on and attacked as much as I could, slowly lowering its health down to half. Since it also brought other mobs closer to you, I had to take out a bunch of these guys too. As soon as the Nightblade let go though, for a few seconds I was able to do tons of damage while dodging its lightning bolt and finally take it out. My rewards were two Swords of the Abyss and a whole lot of quest rewards which included some slime fusion and unirife. I quickly did a sweep around to check if I could find a magician, but even after going through some cool structures there was no luck. So for me there's always going to be one boss left in this dimension. When I came home I wanted to make an arcane workbench but it required a weird type of wood that I didn't have so I had to go right back and pick up some baru wood. With that I placed down this arcane workbench and looked at what rings I wanted but the good ones were really expensive and I didn't have much time so no rings for now. Day 197 to day 200 I did didn't have much time so with all the waystone I had collected I just traveled thousands of blocks looking for this frost maw. A few thousand blocks away my explorer's compass finally picked up a frost maw spawn. But right before I took it out I wanted to make something cool. It was called a spectral eye so I came back made these weird named dust things and that made arcane gold ingots and with those ingots I was able to craft this one thing. Now this spectral pendant thing highlights a bunch of mobs and entities for me. This item is really cool. The only problem is is that it completely tanks your computer. Every time I turn it on it would get like weird chunk errors. I did end up finding the frost mod though and I took this behemoth straight on. After it died, I had fully completed the overworld quests and most of the other dimensions. To end these days off, I placed all of my stage 5 dragons right in front of my base to just see how far I've come. I survived 100 days in a fantasy world in hardcore Minecraft. This world is filled with epic quests and insane mobs. My goals for these 100 days are simple, take down as many bosses as I can and start my own colony. Day 1, I started my journey right next to a desert with this compass right over me. Then I checked this quest book I had and it asked me to pick a class and I chose Swordman. This gave me a barrel of some raw meat, sticks and a starter sword. But after that I made a crafting table and crafted the rest of my tools. While looking around I found this ravine and started scaling down slowly to pick up any exposed iron. In the meantime I upgraded to stone tools which allowed me to pick up whatever was left on these walls. I then gathered some coal and then used these sticks to make some torches but I needed more wood. So just in case I chopped down some of these acacia trees to make torches and then went right back down to the mines. After collecting some iron I cleared out a small area to set up a furnace and start smelting the stuff. While all this was going on I went around sprinkling torches and collecting some coal. I then had tons of iron in total and used it to make a shield plus a full set of iron armor. While exploring this area some more I stumbled into a mine shaft and much larger caves. Oh yeah and I also put some points into constitution which gave me like one extra art. To end this day off I made an iron pickaxe and an extra stone one as well. With this new stuff I felt confident to explore this mine shaft. I immediately fought some creepers and this crazy looking ghost thing which did tons of damage to me. Then I collected as many things as I could down here and also made a bucket. Deeper into the mine shaft I killed a zombie and got some really cool stuff in these chests. Later on I found an area that had a zombie villager spawner and decided to break it for the spawner scrap. And in the chest I got this thing called a midnight cape and one diamond. These relics all unlocked some quest rewards and trust me some of the rewards are super OP. 
Because I had some obsidian with iron and obsidian ingots, I was able to collect these rewards and I chose two diamonds for now. As I got deeper into this cave, I found a zombie spawner which was on top of a chest and the armor in here, despite it being iron, had some affixes which made it way stronger. They gave more armor toughness and another heart. I then found even more chests, which meant more relics, which meant more quest rewards, and my inventory was packed to the brim so I had to be really picky of which items I wanted to carry. As I was leaving, I found this goblin which gave me another quest reward. Then once I surfaced up, I got attacked by these ridiculous wolves and trust me, these things end up being worse and worse over time. I spent the rest of this night running away from tons of mobs like these weird mask wearing dudes. I eventually found this wizard's tower which had some cool enchanted books up top and tons of affix and tomes. That wasn't even the best part. I ended up finding this NPC's house where all the basic stuff was already set up and I went to bed. I had 5 skill points from all the mob killing and used it on constitution and strength. Then I ripped all the bookshelves apart in this place and placed all the valuables in a chest. After that I made a double chest and I went right back to collect those tomes that I couldn't get in the wizard's tower. This unlocked tons of quest rewards for me, one of them was a boss summoner. So I made a quick little trap to summon this boss so it couldn't hit me. I summoned this dude and started laying down tons of hits. It actually took a good amount of time since these guys all have like really good armor. The reward was a helmet which wasn't that good aside from the protection 4. After collecting another quest reward, I set up an anvil and a furnace to smelt some useless armor pieces. I was also right next to a village as well, which had a waystone that I stole. Right after that, I found this cool desert structure and got attacked by some of these smaller crazy looking wolves and these dudes do tons of damage. Turns out this was a staircase and as I went down to the bottom, I realized there were way too many mobs so I ran back to the village. Here I grabbed some more stuff and even found a random spawner which gave me more spawner scrap. To end this day off, I fed this NPC guy some food so it follows me now and he yells if creepers are near. I also placed down my waystone right inside of the house. The next morning, I chopped down some trees and made some bookshelves. I placed these bookshelves on the second floor of this house and something exploded which happened to be the sky fragment thing. So to fill out this enchantment setup, I made a diamond pickaxe to get some obsidian. I went to the nearest cave which was right under the village and started looking for lava. I got tons of iron and coal plus I put one more skill point into constitution. More importantly, this chest underneath the spawner just had an enchantment table in it. I placed the table down and I needed like one or two more bookshelves to finish it all off. One of these boss mobs also spawned and I had to be very careful taking this guy out. I crawled right underneath my house and used that as shelter and this guy dropped frostwalker boots which I combined with another iron boot. On day 6, I needed some more levels to combine two pickaxes, so I went out to kill more mobs and hopefully find some rabbit while I was at it. As I was exploring, I fought tons of these wolves and learned that they also have a ranged attack which makes them even more annoying now. I didn't find anything, so I came back to that one desert structure which scared me off last time. There were tons of spawners here for husks and I took them out plus broke all the spawners. Then I found a secret room which was filled with more zombies and spiders. After clearing this room out, the chest had some awful loot. At least I was level 13 now. Now. Once I surfaced, I got attacked by a crazy wolf which almost ruined this entire world for me. With these levels, I put a skill point into strength and lit up as much of the area around my base as I could. The rest of the night, I spent killing a bunch of mobs and this one boss mob dropped a really crazy shield. I then got chased in my house by this absolute tank wearing diamond armor who had just been taken out by my guard. The drop was an indestructible helmet which I equipped. The next day, I went around killing the residue mobs left over from the night before. Then I found a ravine which had an exposed mine shaft so I made my way down into it. The chest had some ingots and a supply camp which would help me start the colony. I also picked up some more relics which meant more rewards and I took the diamonds for now. After that, I got down to some lava lakes and this was a perfect level to strip mine real quick. Also, one of my quests was to get down to bedrock level. So really quick, I dug down to get my reward and that was just one diamond again. In total, I literally only got three diamonds. That was all I could find. And since I got these uh, expetrified orbs, I also got a quest reward, which I chose the plus 10 levels and I was level 30 now. Before I came home, this disgusting creature almost killed me. For the rest of the day, I used another chest for all the ingots while smelting my loot. I also made these warp scrolls as well. Right after that, I filled out the last bookshelf I needed and the enchantment that was shown was vein mining. So I quickly made a diamond sword and got the vein mining enchantment plus fortune 2 on the pickaxe. I also had some obsidian with iron and two obsidian ingots so I could make this obsidian skull which would give me fire resistance as long as it's in my inventory. In the meantime, I ran right back into the cave to pick up more ores. And uh, more importantly, I actually needed to get some more obsidian. There was this boss mob here who was trapped under the ice from my frostwalker boots, so I was able to take it out pretty easily. The drop was some really good leggings. Then I got what I needed, the obsidian plus some quick diamonds. I then explored some more and picked up these arcane crystals, which was more than enough for me to teleport back. 
all of that stuff allowed me to make an obsidian skull. I started the next day making this thing called Amitrine Alloy and used that to make a chest plate. I then needed one more level to enchant my sword, so I killed the mobs left over and went out to explore. The Frostwalker in my boots helped a lot to go through this swamp. And I then got attacked by a bunch of birds who launched feathers at me, so I had to be very careful and take them all out. On top of the hill, I killed some yaks and saw an ogre who hit me from really far away. I then finally found a structure which was a wizard's tower so I got more tomes and in the main chest were more enchanted books and a diamond shovel. I also picked up the last affix book I needed which gave me a quest reward and of course I chose the boss summon again. Once I set up the trap for this boss I started attacking it. This dude had thorns though so it was super annoying but the chest plate it dropped was pretty good. I teleported home and had to make another chest for all the enchanted stuff. With my 31 levels, I enchanted my sword with sharpness 3 and equipped the new iron armor instead. Then I put 1 point into constitution and disenchanted a shield which had unbreaking 5 and put that on the iron chest plate. To end the night, I made a grindstone. Day 10, I made some food and warp scrolls, then went out to explore in another direction. I found a mineshaft leading deeper underground and started exploring this place. There was nothing here, so I kept it moving, and I finally found a single rabbit. Then I got attacked by these wolves who still managed to do tons of damage to me. On the bright side, I got a single rabbit hide, but as I kept moving, I found another NPC's house, which was right in front of a dragon's nest, so I had to teleport home really quick. I spent this night slaughtering some mobs for XP and farming these boss mobs for their gear. I got this absolutely incredible iron helmet and a quest reward which allowed me to get another summon who I trapped again. This one managed to be an archer but I was able to get tons of really good hits in and take it out. When I used my pickaxe it almost broke the entire house, at least the diamond helmet was really good though. I combined it with my old helmet which was indestructible and now I have a pretty stacked diamond helmet. Later that night, I took out another boss mob who dropped a good sword and combined that with my old sword. I wanted some quick levels so I went down to the mines with this vein mining pickaxe. I grabbed everything I could and started strip mining until I ran into this absolute maniac. I somehow managed to trap it and take it out anyway. After a little bit more of mining, I came back home and started farming mobs right in front of my house. The next morning, I picked up some ectoplasm which will be important for later. After that, I picked one direction and started traveling through vast stretches of nothing until I found a village which was actually run by Barako the Sun Chief. Really quickly, I tried to land a bunch of hits on the Sun Chief before it could start doing projectile damage. I even ate a golden apple which helped like crazy and I pushed Baraka to stage 2 where I had to take out all his lit up minions. I then managed to tank all the damage I could and just kept attacking non-stop until I took this boss out. The rewards were his mask and a really good shield bash book. I explored around this area some more and found this cool library which had a waystone and the vein mining in my axe allowed me to grab these bookshelves super easily. I came home with like 8 stacks of books so I had to make a whole separate chest just for them. The next morning I made a warp stone and went out to hunt rabbits again. This time I got attacked by the big giant wolf and oh boy this thing was even more annoying than the little ones. I also killed this cockatrice which dropped wither bones. My rewards for all these new things were some torches and a diamond. That night I moved around the desert and fought an absolute tank who dropped a really nice helmet. After that I think I started getting attacked by a mutant skeleton because the arrows were poisonous and it went through blocks so I had to teleport home. I also didn't know what to do with these schematics so I just hung them up. Day 14 to 15, I scrapped a really nice helmet for a sick book but needed way more levels. To get those levels, I hit up the cave real quick and started mining everything. I even found another spawner on top of a chest which had even more loot. Then I found this TNT trap thing which has tons of ores as bait. So I deactivated it and collected all the good stuff. It basically had a few of each ore and as I mined deeper into this cave, I found a structure that spawned a boss mob and panicked to get this dude trapped. It almost killed me but I got it trapped anyway. So all I had to do was just keep hitting it. Eventually I took this guy out too, dropped some sick leggings. I then came home, made some tomes of scrapping just in case, and I also put the unbreaking and mending on my leggings which made it kinda stack now. I grinded tons of mobs that night and had to repair my armor really quickly. Before night ended, I fought this absolute behemoth of a mob. It was an apotheosis mob who was also enchanted for some reason. It took me forever to take this thing out and the rewards were not good. Once morning hit, I had a plan. I used the arcane crystals to make an arcane block and then made a quantum catcher. After that, I snatched up a jobless 
this villager real quick and cleared out an area in my house to put this guy in. It took a little bit to set up, but I eventually got it. The next morning, the villager finally took the job and I started rolling for some good trades. For now, I needed the books trade since I had eight stacks of them. The first trades were all paper, so I ran around looking for more sugarcane. I got about 30 and almost advanced the trade. When I started looking for even more sugarcane, I found this weird icon on my compass, so I dug down to see what it could be. Turns out it was the Feroz Rotnot. And I tried to cheese this boss, but it was really strong and I had to warp right back home. I fought mobs the entire night for more levels and I fought another boss mob who dropped some really nice leggings and also one of those enchanted mobs dropped a key for some of these dungeons. At this point my armor was almost completely broken so I wanted to work on a mob farm. I used all of these spawner shards to make an empty spawner which I wanted to place down underground. Uh, at first I had no clue how to use this but I eventually figured it out. So I dug down kind of deep right in front of my house and made a 9x9x9 nine by nine by nine area. The vein mining was actually super annoying for this but I did manage to clear out a super large area. Once the area was made I placed some water down leading down to a funnel. Now the basic area was finished, all I needed to do was activate this empty spawner somehow. I tried placing the spawn egg in, but it did not work at all. I did however found out that there's some stuff you have to put into it. Mining out the area gave me tons of blocks so I had to make another chest for all the random stuff. Oh yeah, I also had two rows of full hearts now. But after when I was killing a bunch of mobs, I thought I would need uh, each of these mobs ashes. I only had ashes of zombies, so using my fire aspect, I made sure to kill every single other type of mobs as well. Fighting all those mobs broke my chest plate, and I double checked how to activate the spawner. For now, I didn't know that you just had to surround ectoplasm with four of the same ashes of just one mob. I then advanced my villager, but I didn't get the book trade, so this guy was basically useless to me. And right after that, I fought this tank of a pigment in diamond armor, and it dropped a crazy diamond helmet. Then really quickly, I swapped out the villager and started working on this dude. This time, I was much smarter and I went underground to get some magma blocks and also more obsidian for later. The magma block was for the villager to restock quicker and the obsidian was for a future nether portal. Again for the night I went out to hunt for more ashes of mobs. This time I actually ended up getting even better armor. In the morning, I tried to do this ritual and confirmed that it is supposed to be ectoplasm and ashes. Then I started rolling these villagers traits for a pretty long time. I even skipped through some really good books. The main book I was looking for at this point was Knowledge of the Ages and oh boy dude I was not getting it at all. Once morning hit, I put more points into constitution and combined two leggings together to make one really good one. After that, I rolled some more trades with a librarian who finally gave me the Knowledge of the Ages book. I locked on the trade quickly and started working on advancing this dude. Since I needed more sugar cane, I teleported far away and started exploring this area. I found another wizard's tower, got more affixes, and I found this huge breathing beehive thing. Once I broke this thing using my axe, it expanded to a giant queen bee. And that's not even the worst part. More bees summoned plus that stupid feather firing bird was there too. I had to eat my golden apple and take out the bird first, which made the fight a lot easier. As I kept going and putting the queen bee on fire, I was able to reduce its health quickly and eventually attacking it non-stop, I was able to take it out. The only bad thing is that I didn't get a quest reward for it, which means I'd have to do it again. I did get this cool shield though. Day 22 to day 23, I finally learned how to activate this stupid spawner. You have to surround the ectoplasm with four of the same ashes and then light it up with a flint and steel. I tried lighting it up in here like a million times and no matter what it just wasn't working. I even lit up everything around it as well. So I picked the spawner up and brought it out to my house and started messing around with it until it finally randomly just lit up. So now there's another problem. I could not pick it back up because I think it's an entity now. So I lit it up to make sure mobs don't spawn and I started looking for the silk touch enchantment which I got after a little bit of rolling. I just needed levels then. So I fought tons of mobs and even took out a mutant skeleton who end up spawning a lot for some reason. After all of that I got my silk touch pickaxe which I used to mine the spawner and placed it back into the room. The spawner was working like a charm just the rates were kind of slow but that could be fixed using other items. Finally I had a reliable way to get levels and the bonus was that these guys also dropped the treasure bags as well. I stayed down at the spawners for a good amount of time and only went back up to advance the villagers trades. Since I was gonna be down here for a while, I smelt some stone and started making some staircases down towards a spawner. And with these levels, I combined another sword with this one real quick. The next morning, I started off by killing this tank who dropped an even better chest plate, and I finally managed to decorate the spawner area just a little. I then had tons of these bags which I opened and went right back to grinding these mobs. And since this mob farm was working really well, I had tons of rotten flesh. I also managed to pick up a brewing stand from somewhere, and I started trying to get an alchemist to buy rotten flesh. While I was in the village, I grabbed this smoker, which was part of a quest line, and instead of the rotten flesh trade, I actually found this engineer who bought tons of redstone. I'm also so stupid, I somehow just 
just drop my emeralds. Remember how I told you mutant skeletons spawn a lot? I managed to take another one of these guys out and this one gave me a quest reward which was nice. Oh yeah, and right after that there was another mutant skeleton right behind me. Luckily I'm strong enough now so I took out this one too. My quest reward was 15 levels and in order to complete the next quest I made myself a set of mutant skeleton armor which gave me a protection 8 book. I also completed another quest really quickly. Uh, this was about furnaces and I crafted a blast furnace. I tried to get some decent boots but I had no luck so I scrapped some old armor pieces for later. Then I managed to turn a villager into an alchemist but I could not find it when I came back. Instead I killed more mobs and completed the quest for the ashes which gave me a boss summoner. I trapped the boss inside of the funnel where the zombies were and got some armor that I could scrap later. Before these days ended I teleported around and explored in another direction. This is where I took some loot from this graveyard and hunted this ghost. I also raided this hot air balloon which had some really good loot in there. Day 26 to day 28 I made the biggest mistake of this entire 100 days. My recording messed up and I did so much for these two days. First of all, I started working on this remote storage system which I literally went to the nether for and got quartz to make the crafting request table. And that wasn't even the best thing I did. I actually managed to take out that fire dragon in front of that village and one of those ferris rot knots. But don't worry about that, I'll take on even more dragons and the ferris rot knot again with proof this time. Oh yeah, and I also unlocked the book trade which gave me tons of emeralds and with those emeralds I got this librarian to be a master level. Plus I even started farming nether wart as well. To make up for those two days, I went out to challenge some of those bosses again. First was another fire dragon which was roaming around the desert. I swept in and started laying tons of damage to this thing and I was super easily able to take it out. For now I just took all the scales and explored around this area some more. That night I found a pillager tower right next to a desert temple. But first I had to take out some of these mobs and this one boss mob dropped the best bow I've ever seen. After that I made my way up to this tower where I found a corrupted eye, one of the 12 I needed to go to the end. I actually ended up with 3 of them from this tower and then I jumped into this desert temple. Now these chests also had an eye that I needed, the old eye. The reward for this eye was a pretty high level knockback book. When I came back I realized that I still don't have a remote yet so I have to put away my loot manually. And with all of my dragon loot I made a dragon bone sword which is gonna be my good sword because I wanted to put knowledge of the ages on the diamond sword. I tried rolling some enchants but again no luck. Instead I used some of the scales from the first dragon I beat to make a dragon scale chest plate and boots. Both of which I had to enchant now. I actually used my brain this time and started scrapping all the armor pieces I had to get books. I had a protection 6 indestructible chest plate now. Then I needed more levels so I went right back to the grind. Since these mobs dropped tons of bags, I had a bunch of random loot and one of them was a supply camp. I placed this thing right in front of my house but had to flatten out the ground first. After some tinkering I got it placed and now I could start building the colony. The next morning I traded my books and rotten flesh for some emeralds and I bought tons of knowledge of the ages books plus some sea lanterns from this oceanographer for the remote. With all these books I now had knowledge of the ages 3 and while grinding out some more levels I cleared out an area to place down the town hall. First I needed to make a builder's hut though to get some builders to come to the settlement. Right now I only have the framework and none of the buildings so these colonists just started spawning. None of those deaths really mattered to me until my villager died. I don't even know what happened but this villager was just gone. Day 32 I picked up the town hall since it was making me furious and I started grinding levels so I could improve my armor. First of all I put the knowledge of the ages on my sword and now I was getting tons of levels from these zombies. In no time I was up to level 20 and I went to check these spawner stats since you can make the rates way better. I had uh, tons of sugar so I turned down the spawners minimum spawn delay all the way down. I also tried to do the same for the max delay but this was way more expensive since you need to make clocks. This really did improve the rates and now I needed to improve the spawn count which took fermented spider eyes. With these 31 levels I scrapped some more armor pieces and I was able to make some good boots. I also managed to scrap some mending books and put it on the boots as well. The next morning I grinded tons of levels again and used up my tomes of weaponry. Since I didn't get anything good I went out exploring and found a desert pyramid. This one was much larger and had even more loot. Inside of it was filled with husk spawners which I tried to pick up but obviously couldn't and this place was also very maze like so it took a bit for me to get down to the actual loot rooms. The chests here were pretty good, lots of diamonds and other ingots plus it always has more relics. After that I wandered around killing some mobs until I got up to level 41. Since I killed this death worm over here I got a random high level enchanted book. There was also a mineshaft near me which I hopped into and took out even more mobs. These places also always tend to have good loot or cool relics. And speaking of good loot and relics I got a sharpness 9 book. 
and there was that cloak in here again, but I didn't have space for it. I then defeated this boss mob whose chest had the lost eye and some ancient tomes. I took the levels as my quest word for the eyes and I was level 53 now. I rummaged around the cave that was connected to the mineshaft then came home to dump the crazy amount of loot I had. So with some of these levels I started scrapping some swords that I had for their enchants and putting them plus the sharpness 9 book on my dragon sword. Really quickly I hopped into the nether to grab these brown mushrooms so I could make fermented spider eyes. I also put 3 levels into strength and explore the nether real quick. When I came back and made those fermented spider eyes I was able to increase the spawn count of the mob spawner. Once I got some more levels I was able to put unbreaking 5 on the sword but then the house felt empty so I cleared some more area for some more villagers. This village was tapped out at this point so I had to find another one. Along the way I took out a smaller cyclops whose quest reward was an indestructible greatsword. It wasn't that good. While exploring some more I found a sign which led me to some structures. This place was getting attacked by the bigger cyclops. Cyclops. At least my bow was good enough to take this dude out, but right behind it was a mutant skeleton that spawned and I had to take this guy out too. And if that wasn't bad enough, there was another mutant skeleton right next to it who also got destroyed. Right after that, I actually ran into a lightning dragon nest. And this guy wasn't too much of a hassle, I got rid of it pretty quickly. I took all the lightning dragon stuff and activated this random waystone. Then I took my quest reward for killing the harder cyclops which was 20 levels. After that I ripped apart every single bookshelf in the library and brought it back home. Day 36 to day 37 after all of that I went right back to the nether to grab some more brown mushrooms and glowstone. That's where I dropped into this castle looking thing too. It had some really cool mobs and just a wither skeleton head laying there for me. Aside from that I couldn't find anything else so I came home to make more fermented spider eyes and supercharge this spawner. Then I quickly made a witch eye with this witch pupil which got me 15 levels as a reward. 8 more eyes to go. Since there was like 2 more eyes that I could find in the nether I hopped back in hoping to find those things. While searching I built up to this tower and these places had some really nice chests. It had tons of really good enchanted books and some really good armor that I could scrap. Along my journey I found another castle which didn't have the wither skeleton this time but it was connected to a piglin tower thing. Inside these chests I picked up a relic which unlocked a reward and of course I took the levels. In another structure I got a mending book and then after some digging through this entire mountain and passing through all types of biomes I still couldn't find a single end crystal or a nether eye. So I just came home, made more golden apples and crafted another spawner which I had to activate again right next to my old one. It was a miracle but after 10 minutes I finally got the hitbox and activated it. I also enchanted another pickaxe this time without vein mining which was awesome. My storage room was looking kinda bad so I started using stone bricks to make it look better. I also pushed the walls back to fit even more chests in. Next up since I already bought those sea lanterns I could now make a remote to access the storage from everywhere. All I needed to do was make this ender chest and boom it was all set. With that being done I made 2 separate double chests for all the enchanted stuff I had. Then with all these levels I ended up getting a smite 3 book which I comboed up with the sharpness 9 and my sword. Later that night I killed this mutant creeper and destroyed another mutant skeleton this is like my 8th one at this point. My reward for the creeper was 10 levels. I also had these nether keys and just to see what these dungeons were like I used one of these keys. This was a huge mistake I wish I didn't play it on super hard because even with my good armor and golden apples these wither skeletons were not taking any damage and on the other hand they were also destroying me. I was super lucky and used my warp stone to teleport away. Since I became safe again I started exploring around. I made these glass bottles just in case I found more dragons and kept moving forward. I actually forgot I even made these bottles since I fought this lightning dragon immediately and harvested its scales instead. That night I fought this tank but geniusly trapped it on a boat to kill it. I also found another fire dragon's nest and harvested this one's blood. I really regretted not harvesting the lightning ones. The next morning I found another fire dragon right next to this one and also demolished this dude. Then I stumbled into a house which had tons of brown mushrooms and right outside was another library dwarf blacksmith house combo. Before that I found that huge beehive thing again and this time I should be able to get the quest reward. I summoned the queen bee but she was enchanted this time but at least I was much stronger too. For some reason while I was taking damage sometimes my health bar just disappears but I did manage to take this queen bee out without taking much damage and took one of the waste while activating the other around here. My reward for this queen bee was 15 more levels. 
Before coming home, I of course ransacked the library and as soon as I got back, I wanted to upgrade the second spawner as well. First I gave it some sugar and slapped off the top, then I used up all these bags which filled up my inventory. Now these spawners are getting kind of ridiculous. While I was enchanting some tomes, I got one with looting on it and I actually used it on my XP sword instead. Day 41, I had tons of rotten flesh that I needed to trade away but I couldn't find the stupid cleric anywhere. So I teleported back to where I was exploring and I managed to find a village. Of course I got this cleric and started getting rid of all the rotten flesh. I also quickly snatched that villager up and destroyed the old waystone I used. Then I brought this guy over to my house. Right next to this dude, I also cleared out another area for another villager. For now, I just trapped a little baby villager over here. Now this is when I started with the mine colonies mod and oh boy was this thing super complicated. The first thing I needed to do was make this builder's hut and I placed it right next to the supply camp. In the menu it showed me exactly what I would need to do to build this place but I needed a builder to come first. While waiting for any builders to show up I started collecting all the materials I needed. Since I chose the wooden builder's hut it wasn't too complicated and I got all the things pretty easily. I also ended up placing this town hall wrong but some of the colonists started spawning anyway so I just left it for now. Instead I just started flattening out the area surrounding it. I quickly went to sleep so the colonists wouldn't die and as morning came I asked the builder to build the building. I needed a shovel so I made a golden shovel real quick and this builder was actually working on this thing. This dude was burning through shovels so I made tons of wooden shovels just in case and for now I picked up the town hall and just watched this builder start constructing his own hut. Turns out these guys don't work at all at night but uh good news on the other hand the baby villager grew up. I also slept a lot so my colonists wouldn't die and this builder's hut was almost finished. Now I was able to make the town hall and any other building I wanted as well. This town hall though was super expensive and I started grabbing materials immediately. All the materials end up being listed in the builder's hut which made my life way easier. Slowly but surely I was able to fill out most of the items except for the clay shingle stuff. I also messed up using the build tool and I think I made this town hall one layer lower than every other build. I spent most of these days gathering all the random materials needed and to get those clay shingle stuff I realized I could get bricks from a villager so I made a stone cutter and grabbed a mason instead of this librarian I was going to use just for now. While my villager was looking for a job and the builder was digging down one layer I filled out some of the items and finally was able to buy bricks from this guy which made getting those clay shingle stuff so much easier. The last thing I needed were two spruce doors. Yeah because I messed up and built a town hall one layer lower this builder was just clearing out tons of sand and because it took so long I just decided to help. Once that was cleared out though the building finally started being worked on. I was still missing two spruce doors so I looked around the map to see if I could find any regions where I could get spruce wood and before it turned into night I ran to the nearest cold biomes. Along the way I found an underground dungeon where I placed down a waystone real quick and after going over this hill I snatched up this spruce tree and a saplings. Then I made some spruce doors which basically completed all the items I needed. I was afraid my time folk were gonna die so I went to sleep really quick and now the construction was fully underway for this town hall. I spent the whole day watching this building get built and it was actually pretty close to being finished. It had a roof so most of the colonists slept inside for the night. Day 48 I was just waiting for the final things in the town hall to be done like the roof and all the torches. So far it was looking pretty good. As I was just staring the roof was being constructed right in front of me which was really cool and before I knew it this place was basically done it just needed the torches to be placed. Even though it was one layer lower this town hall was the first step to advancing the colony. Really quickly I also started checking off the quests. Just in case I also started a work order to upgrade this builder's hut. This one didn't require too much additional stuff. I basically had most of the items already except for the regular birch logs. Before going to bed I managed to put as many items as I could into the logbook. The next morning the builder started upgrading its own hut and I think now they can use iron tools instead of the wood ones I gave them. Also I fought like my 10th mutant skeleton. This upgrade was cool and it was very quick to finish so I was now able to make a bunch of iron tools and give that to the builder. Next up I wanted to upgrade this town hall too and this one was kind of expensive. It took a surprising amount of spruce wood. On the other hand I was actually super smart to buy those bricks because it seemed like most houses use these clay shingle stuff for their roofs. Since I was too busy gathering wood my builder accidentally died so I had to take all the items from their grave and give it to the replacement. Before the night ended I gathered most of the items for the town hall level 2 and even planted a huge spruce tree for more spruce wood. As the builder was working on the town hall it started raining and turns out these colonists don't work when it's raining even though we're in the desert. So instead I released my mason after buying tons more bricks because I needed a librarian. I snatched up a random villager from another village and brought them over. I needed these two specifically so that 
that I could sell rotten flesh and books to get tons of emeralds, of course. Oh yeah, and this guy also managed to sell like protection five books. The rest of the night I spent down at the mob spawner grinding out more rotten flesh. Oh yeah, and the supply camp always had some food, so I grabbed a bunch. Day 51, another day, another building. I watched my builder expand the town hall back and up. It seemed like now it's gonna be two stories. As that was going on, I checked the quest and saw that you could make guard towers. So I got right on that and I would need at least three to surround the colony. The first one was placed right in front of the town hall and the second one I placed behind the supply camp. I had to chop down tons more trees since each of these towers needed a good amount of wood and I'm sure the upgrades also need tons of wood as well. This time just to be safe, I was placing all the items within the guard tower inventory so I knew for sure that I had enough. Later that night, I enchanted some tomes of weaponry and managed to get one good book for the 11th time i took out another mutant skeleton i swear these guys are not supposed to spawn this much at this point i was just throwing away the mutant's loot speaking of crazy loot this netherite wearing boss showed up and it was enchanted so it took forever to take out once it was gone i actually got the netherite boots and the chest plate another rainy morning so there was no work for the builder but i did find out that you can keep all the items in the builder's hut rack once the skies cleared, the builder was back up and ready to finish this town hall. This time, the longest process was actually breaking the blocks apart, which was needed to access the second floor. Literally right before this town hall was complete, it was bedtime for the colonists, which was very, very annoying. So I had to sleep as well, but in the morning, this town hall was fully complete. Next up, I wanted the builder to start making these guard towers so less colonists die. The first guard tower was made very quickly, and while that was happening, I was covering the lava pool right next to it. After that was done, I quickly gathered the stuff for the next guard tower and noticed a guard roaming around the colony, which was really cool. Since these guys were like level one, I think they only wore leather armor, but I had no leather. So so I actually tried to give them some iron armor, but of course they could not wear that at all. Day 54, uh, these days where I work on the colonies go very fast because I have to sleep constantly since these guys only work in the morning. While they were working this time, there was this gigantic creeper hole right next to the guard tower, which I started filling up. Then as the builder finished, I lit up as many areas as possible and tried to find out why those stupid wolves spawn so much. I even went to the source and lit that area up. So it turns out that the guards can wear iron armor. The tower just needs to be level two. I took a break from these stupid guards and went out to look for some more leather just in case. But along the way, I remembered that there was a ferris rot knot near me as well. I jumped back in the hole that I made and immediately got attacked by this giant. But that's sand pillar I made before kind of helped. My shield on the other hand was getting totaled, but before it broke I was able to land a big hit on this thing. Since this dude lodged itself in the corner, hitting its back was really hard and it broke my shield now, so things were looking kind of rough. I managed to swipe at its back one more time and took its health down to 10%. Then I waited for one giant swing which allowed me to take this behemoth down. This was also like my second pair of its loot. When I came home, I combined two shields together and I teleported pretty far away because I haven't been exploring in a long time. I found an absolute boatload of mobs that night and I made my way into this jail looking thing which had tons of barrels inside. Once morning hit, I was out in an exploration around. I then found a lightning dragon's nest and this time I actually took the lightning dragon down and harvested his blood. Right after that I found another village run by Barako the sun chief who I also took down super quickly. I was pretty far away so I warped back and sold some books. I then teleported to that zombie dungeon I had marked before. Now this place was jam packed with mobs and loot. I had to fight through waves of zombies while destroying more and more spawners. This dungeon had like 4 stairs leading deeper and one of those stairs had a boss mob who was dealing tons of damage. I had to be careful but I took this guy down and then I also found another one of those chambers which spawned another boss and took this dude out as well. Also this dungeon connected to a mine shaft where I found a leather belt and this thing allows me to equip talismans. Since this entire cave was huge I found a ruined portal and the chest inside had a magma walker boot which gave me tons of rewards. I got sick of the cave and explored the rest of these colder biomes looking for ice dragons because I needed their blood. While I was exploring I also made an explorer's compass and then before I came back home I ended up fighting a fire dragon. Day 57 to day 59 I needed to get some eyes of ender really quick so I built this portal in a whole other village far away. I then hopped in this portal and started searching for those two eyes in the nether. While traveling through some cool biomes I found a giant tower which I of course had to climb. This place had a wither spawner which I lit up and made a waypoint on so I could come back another time to grab. 
After that, I started making my way up this tower and looting these chests where I just grabbed all the things I needed and any of the really good armors with uh, good enchants. I did this all the way to the top and the final room had five wither skeleton skulls and a few chests. The chests were okay though. I also found a fortress right in front of this structure which I hopped into and in one of those chests I found my first talisman. Great news though, I found a nether eye in one of these chests in the fortress. For some reason I just could not find those end crystal blocks just yet so I teleported back. Once I got home I farmed mobs until I got up to level 50 and made more fermented spider eyes. With some of those spare spider eyes I actually ended up maxing out the first spawner. In order to reduce some lag I made these redstone comparators and put those into the spawners as well. This way I gave them a switch to turn them on and off whenever I needed. And then when morning hit I set up another guard tower next to the town hall and spent this entire day gathering materials and watching this one get built. Next up I started upgrades on the guard towers so these guys can start wearing iron armor. Also hopefully these keeps the guards from uh, getting shredded by the wolves. Since it was raining my builder was being too lazy so I just started uh, trading tons of books, rotten flesh and gold to get a good amount of emeralds. I then grinded mobs again until I got to level 44 and uh, made the entire storage room look a lot more uniform with stone bricks. The next morning this builder finally decided to work and I got my first level 2 guard tower which meant one of these guys could now finally wear iron armor. I had to do the same thing with the other guard towers really quick too. After the second tower was done I had to work on the final one and while all that was working I made tons of iron armor and gave it to these guards so that they can wear it. I also made some iron tools too because they were using this weird zombie arm thing. Later that night I took out another boss mob who dropped some insane leggings that I had to combine with the ones that I was already wearing. My guards decided to take on a mutant skeleton and I lost two of them so of course I had to avenge them by defeating my 100th mutant skeleton at this point. A 62 I I waited for all my guards to come back to the colony and give them their iron armor and weapons back. During this time the third guard tower was also upgraded so every one of my guards should be able to use these iron gear. In order to upgrade my new building some more I had to upgrade this builder's hut and oh boy it took so many new things that I didn't even have yet. A lot of these items were super weird so I actually had to go around to get them. I had to go mining for tons of andesite, gravel, granite and after I got all those things I had to hop right back into the mines to get some vines to make mossy cobblestone. When I teleported back some wandering trader popped up and this guy had a pretty crazy trade for me. It was a looting four sword exactly what I needed. I gave this scammer as many emeralds as it needed and killed this llamas and elephants for their leather. The next morning I actually disenchanted this new sword and I got exactly what I needed looting four and unbreaking five. This however took 57 levels to add on to my sword so of course I had to spend a lot of time grinding up to level 57. But once the morning hit I also gathered tons of things to start this builder's hut level 3 upgrade. While the builder got to work I kept grinding these levels up until the builder's hut was done. Then I also set this guy up to work on the town hall upgrade too and this one was the most expensive I've seen. I tried to put in as much stuff as I could but it still wasn't enough. Good news though I got up to level 57 and had looting 4 on my sword. I wanted to get this wither eye too so I went very deep into this cave to summon it. I summoned this bad boy but I didn't have any arrows so I just rushed in it with tons of attacks and had to take it down this way. I got 2 wither eyes and unlocked some quest rewards. My rewards were just a waystone and an enchanted book but I did get 25 extra levels. 6 more eyes to go. When I came back my leather belt was broken so I enchanted it which also managed to repair it. That night I teleported really far away and built another nether portal to get those stupid end crystals. Almost immediately I got some end crystal ore right away on some blackstone. With my fortune this was a good amount. After all of that I dug through some more mountains and somehow managed to explore every single biome in the nether. Once I made it out I found another giant tower where at the top there were even more wither skeleton heads and golds in the chest. Then I found one of the better structures, another temple which actually had really cool relics. And of course more gold. I had tons of quest rewards for those two relics and I equipped this bastion ring. Later on I also found a mutant blaze and these guys are super annoying. They weren't too strong but all the loot burned so I couldn't get the second quest reward. On day 67 I came right back home and I was uh, determined to upgrade this town hall again. So it took a lot of time for me to craft most of the items needed. It ended up turning night so I was grinding out mobs and then remembered that I had some end crystals to turn into eyes. It took four and I made the end crystal eye. Five more to go. Rest of the night I sold tons of rotten flesh and out of nowhere all of my guards were dying. Turns out it was a mutant zombie attack. So I had to lure this guy away from my other colonists and take it down. But this beast needed to be taken down like three more times 
times until it's done for good. I did manage to fully knock it out and pick up its hammer, but the rewards were like only a few diamonds and this marksman book. Not really worth it if you ask me. When I came home, my villagers were turned into zombies somehow, so really quickly I made fermented spider eyes and started brewing potions of weaknesses. The next day, I splashed these potions on my villagers and started curing them. While waiting for that, I also filled out more resources for the town hall, and then my villagers got cured and my trades actually got better. Usually these mod packs have that disabled, so I was super surprised. I then used this explorer's compass to locate the jungle to do two things, take on the iguana king and hopefully get the rogue eye. On my journey to find this jungle biome, I found this haunted house structure which always has some really good loot. Plus the basement had tons of insane things that I could use on the spawners. After that I kept moving forward till I found the village and right after that I found a battle tower behind it which I of course obliterated and made my way towards the top of. I took the gold and the waystone and I thought I ended up getting a buried treasure map but it turned out to be a buried dungeon map and I very stupidly followed it. I traveled the entire night through tons of different biomes and fought these giant birds who actually started these forest craft quests for me. For fun, I started completing a lot of these quests since I already had most of the items. I was actually able to get pretty far on this quest line with both the boots and the wings. I stopped when it needed iguana scales. Then while looking for what I thought was buried treasure, I fought a dragon and found the spot on the map. Obviously there was no treasure, but I started digging anyway because I had no idea. Since this ended up being a lost cause, I kept exploring and found another battle tower, which I of course took down and then literally after like 6,000 blocks past this mega tower, I finally found a jungle. Once it became morning again, I found a huge egg just laying there. This was where you fight the Iguana King. I mined the egg and this giant just spawned. Now this beast was launching blocks every stomp and more annoyingly it spawned these wasps who do tons of poison damage. I ended up getting it in the water but that kind of backfired on me and all that did was just basically make it more angry. I was being chased around the jungle. I had to jump on top of this house to do some more damage. I kept firing at my bow at a distance and this was doing the job really well. Its health was at a third now. Then I jumped in with my sword and attack this giant head on, killing it. I'm telling you, these wasps are the worst thing in the world. My quest reward for this fight was 8 diamonds and a Bane of Illagers 10 book. For the rest of day 71 to 73, I wanted to really complete this town hall. So I went to look for squids to get black dye. And along the way, I picked up some cactus and phantoms because it was raining. It took me forever, but I waited on this river until I got about 16 squid ink sacks. With these, I was now able to fill out a bunch of the orders needed. I also I managed to fight another mutant zombie who terrorized the colony. Then I planted these dark oak saplings that I got from the nature bags and grinded out a lot of dark oak wood. Next up was all the stone stuff, which is why I took a lot of those stone as quest rewards for a little bit. I also had to go mining for a little bit of the rest. Then slowly but surely, while smelting these cobblestone, I was able to fill out the final stone and stone brick stair orders. By the next morning, I had everything set for the town hall. In these days, all I could do was wait for the builder to finish up. I also made uh, this house too because the builder was just complaining that it didn't have a place to live. I then traveled around some villages looking for hay bales to feed my colonists. I ended up in a village that was getting attacked by a fire dragon who I hunted down. I took all the scales and then came home to scatter some leftover food in every guard tower. One of these guards also managed to pick up a Knowledge of the Ages 4 book. Then for some reason, these guys really didn't want to equip their iron armor so I made chainmail instead. And this one they actually wore. It took super long but the builder almost had this town hall fully complete and you'll never believe what happened next. I got attacked by a crazy lightning bird. This thing was tearing everything up and shocking me. I was so lucky it didn't hit any of the buildings because they were all wood. It made a huge mistake landing though and I slaughtered it picking up these thunder feather things. Right after that, this town hall was fully complete and I started building a house so even more colonists would show up. This building didn't actually require too many resources and I got it up and running really quickly. For now, it was just for the builder, but once you upgrade it, more and more colonists can stay here. I ended these days by making all the materials to upgrade this building right away. Day 76 to day 78, for the next few days, I marked the eyes I needed to get and started searching for them. First, I made a fishing rod to get some puffer fish, which could make water breathing potions. I chose to get this cold eye first and along the way, I took down these sirens and had managed to deal 10,000 damage. So I stupidly took this greatsword as a reward, which literally didn't have anything good. On the bright side, I did find a snowy taiga, and past the village and the igloos, I actually found a snowy temple as well. So I messed up really badly and activated the trap, but lucky for me, I managed to pick up the cold eye anyway since it didn't immediately blow up. There was also some decent loot around here, and I then went back to the old jungle that I found to look for a jungle pyramid or temple. I ended up finding an even bigger structure and made my way through this thing, looking for the loot room. It was kind of maze-like and had some lava traps, but the only thing that was confusing was the last room which had some redstone doors controlled by levers. 
I just randomly moved some levers around and it ended up being the right combination. Inside I found a crazy good loot room with some emerald blocks and a diamond block. Also the chests were really nice and one of the chests actually had this rogue eye. Three more to go. Before I came back home I took down more bookshelves from this library and I got a buried treasure map from here. This meant that I could get a black eye here as well. I rode my boat over to an ocean and landed on a little peninsula. This is where the X was. I just started digging and also it became night so it was a blood moon too. I just kept my head down and I cleared out a pretty big area just looking for this chest. It ended up being worth it since I actually found that black eye here. Also because I was right next to an ocean I could get this guardian eye as well. Before that though I had to take down this sea serpent, my first one ever in this world. I spent the entire day just looking for this stupid ocean monument and then when it was looking hopeless I finally found it. I grabbed my water breathing potions and realized these guys do tons of damage. It took a little bit but I found the room where the elder guardian was hanging out and I took this guy out to pick up the guardian eye. One more to go but for right now this one might be the hardest to get. On the bright side I actually ended up getting some new colonists because of the house. From day 81 to day 85 I made tons of items and placed them all on the rack because I wanted to upgrade all the guard towers. This process took a few days but I was watching these towers get fortified. As the first one is finishing a colonist grew up. One guard towered down, two more to go. While the second one was being upgraded, I started working on another house upgrade so more colonists would come. The second tower also ended up being finished and I think at level 3 guard towers these guys can wear diamond armor. Before I was gonna go to sleep for the next day some barbarians attacked. Well more like two and I looked around the northeast area and defended the colony from this really simple raid. Also the house upgrade materials were all done now. I had to sleep a bunch in these days and uh, all the guard towers ended up becoming finished and the house upgrade was getting worked on. The next morning the house was up and running and I got a netherite ingot from a smelter's bag which I used on my leggings since they were already really good. I also combined it with some gold leggings to make some gilded netherite gear. To end these days off I started to upgrade this builder's hut to level 4, the final level. Then another wandering trader spawned and I was able to buy a totem of undying. Finally my colony was able to hold 6 people. Day 86 my colonists were complaining so I made a restaurant and gathered tons of blocks for that. Also my builder's hut is maxed out uh, and then I cleared out an area behind the guard tower to place this restaurant. Now this place needed tons of stone so I had to mine some of which I already had and then go to the caves to mine even more. This process took an entire day. I then wanted to upgrade most of my tools to dragon bone tools so I made a pickaxe, axe and a shovel with dragon bones. I spent this day rolling for enchants, grinding out mobs, scrapping some old gear and then putting that into the dragon bone stuff. I didn't even have to fix up my axe a lot though, it was already pretty good. For my pickaxe I used a fortune 7 book and then most of the new gear was already basically set. After that I wanted to put these things to use so I went out to look for a pillager outpost or either get some rabbits because I still needed to make a backpack and get this last magical eye from an evoker. I ended up fighting some dragons and taking down battle towers but no luck on rabbits or evokers. Day 89 for this day all I did was just use up these ancient tomes to make my armor much stronger. I also put different types of protections on top of my armor to increase my resistances. Day 90 I waited all day for this restaurant to be built so that I could supply it with food and stop my call colonists from complaining. I made sure to fill up all the racks as soon as it was built. Day 91 to day 93 I wanted to take down one of those mega towers and I teleported to the nearest one. At this point my world was so buggy for some reason it just wasn't capturing any audio. Now these brass towers have a bunch of floors and in each floor there are spawners which you have to break to access the chests. In these chests you can get these things called monolith keys and you need three of those to challenge the tower golem. So I just went around looking through every nook and cranny for each floor to hopefully get these keys. It took a really long time but once I got them I made my way all the way to the top, put these key into this weird thing. This summoned the land guardian and I had to take it down to access the loot chest up here. Now this boss wasn't doing too much damage to me and I was able to take it out easily and grab the loot. I left before the tower collapsed and got to keep the land guardian's eye. Then out of nowhere a mutant enderman started attacking my base and taking out all the guards I had. And this was by far the strongest mutant I've ever seen. That's not all though, there was a diamond armor wearing piglin that I was also fighting which was even stronger than the mutant enderman. So I had to fight both these guys at the same time. I took out the mutant enderman first which I didn't get a quest reward for and then I took out the piglin who took way too long to even take out. Day 95 to day 97, this was the home stretch. I needed to find this magical eye now or never. I literally looked everywhere and finally found it in these 
these badlands behind a pillager outpost where two evokers spawned. I was very lucky and both of them dropped the eyes. Before I left to find the ender portal, I made these wings with iguana scales and then journeyed really far to find the stronghold. It did take many days of travel and along the way I even made a blindfold to take on a gorgon. My reward for defeating the gorgon was a gorgon head and literally just oak wood. But luckily I did find the stronghold and maneuvered my way inside through all these traps and after finding this suspicious room where I heard zombies, it turns out that that was a maze that led right to the end portal but I just ended up breaking all the blocks to get to it. Really quickly I set up a waystone and then went home to grab some bottles and prepare. After the final preparation, I grabbed all the eyes and started placing them into the portal. Once I got to the end, I built up from the spawn platform and made my way towards the main island. I was able to use my bow to easily take down the crystals and even portal to the ones that were protected. It took a few rounds of the ender dragon purging which allowed me to get tons of damage off and take the dragon out. The rewards were crazy, I got tons of XP, some orbs of temporary flights and a very high level enchantment book and some loot crates. I also got this capset thing to summon this void worm and way more quest rewards. Next up I put this capset thing into this block to get this mysterious worm. I then took the nearest gateway portal and with these orbs I was able to locate an end city really quick. I fought a bunch of mimics and shulkers then looted the ship getting these elytra wings and every other random thing in these chests. Because there were so many relics and weird things I had so many quest rewards to redeem. On top of that there was another issue, my remote storage was also filled to the brim. Before I left I threw this mysterious worm into the void and summoned the giant void worm. This gigantic worm was summoned from a portal and I was able to take it out pretty easily because I was flying. It was supposed to drop something but I could not find it at all. On the final day I redeemed all of my quest rewards and jumped back into the main portal. Before this day ended I expanded my storage with even more chests. Day 101 I started this journey by brewing some potions of regeneration. This is because I had way too many books and I needed to make this thing called an enchantment library. Turns out the library needed infused hell shelves which were super expensive. Also the mod pack updated so I had a bunch of new quest rewards. The rewards are rabbit hides which allowed me to make backpacks that I definitely did not need now. I then equipped my elytra wing and while smelting these netherrack for netherrack bricks I also chopped down a bunch of trees just in case. Since the smelting process was taking too long I made some fireworks and went to the nether. I managed to find a structure really quickly and made some of these hell shelves. I also had to enchant them to infuse them but it turns out my enchantment table did not have enough power. So in order to juice this enchantment table up I went to the end to grab some endstone. I turned a bunch into endstone bricks and then I went to look for purple blocks which I found in the end city. Before I came home I went inside this end temple and looted the bottom chests which gave me tons of rewards. I came home by the next morning and snatched up another villager to turn this one into an enderologist. Once I got this dude to max level I got tons of this dragon breath and I was able to make myself some end shelves. All of this just to enchant these hell shelves but I did manage to get them all infused too. Finally I got this enchantment library which also had quest rewards and I took the indestructible book. This way now I could store all of my enchantment books in one place and even combine these books together or choose which level of enchantment I want without wasting levels. Someone in the comments of the last video also told me you could trade these useless greatsword in for rewards. I used one to get 20 levels and then another greatsword to pick up some dungeon keys. The next day I grabbed an indestructible book and put that on the elytra wing. Then I used one of those dungeon keys and put it on very hard mode to see if I can handle it. I ate my golden apple and waited for these mobs to spawn. In the beginning it wasn't too bad I was able to quickly kill all the mobs. As I got deeper into the waves these dudes started wearing armor and holding weapons. Once I took out about 76 of them they spawned even faster and had their gear enchanted. Lucky for me my sword was insane but a few random hordes ended up being spawned at the end. These last few dudes took forever but I was able to complete this dungeon and even clear my inventory out real quick. The reward though from this villager was awful. The dungeon ended up being self-destructive but it gave us levitating which dropped me back down slowly. I opened up all those treasure bags that I got and I even made a draconic end shelf which I put in right in the center of my enchantment setup. Day 104 I started completing some forest craft quests like making these random boots and I found one that said craft a demon heart. It needed a nether star and luckily I had tons of wither skeleton heads. I went down to the mines, dug in deep and summoned the wither. Don't mind the compass though that you see on the screen I fixed it after this. I took out the wither very easily and made this thing called the demon food. Now it was telling me that this thing can only be summoned in the nether so I went over there to summon whatever it was. This guy was also on the boss's quest line so I had no clue what to expect. I got to a somewhat flat area and summoned the nether scourge. Now this thing was terrifying, it looked like it was straight out of a horror movie and the noises it made was awful. 
Regardless, I was able to take it out without taking much damage, and I picked up this gun called the Demon Buster, and this thing called a Possessed Skull. For my quest reward, I chose an Efficiency 9 book and 30 more levels. Later that night, I set up the university by my colony, and this time I was gonna build it, eventually, I promise. I placed it wrong, by the way. For the next few days, I set up some guard towers, and just to make sure the colonists had enough food, I farmed a bunch of carrots. Uh, it turns out that they don't even like carrots, they like potatoes way more, so I had to go right back and farm that as well. And this way, this restaurant's finally cooking food, which was really nice to see. After sleeping, I stocked up my guards and made this tavern since apparently it can hold four colonists. I put that right beside the town hall. The materials weren't too much, so I was able to put down most of the materials without even going out to grab more stuff. I did, however, have to go out looking for sheep since I had no wool at all. While out traveling, I tore apart another library, and once I came back home, I filled out the rest of the required materials. I had to go to sleep one more time to hopefully get rid of the rain, and uh, this finally got the builder to start working. While that was happening, I had a little mutant issue, which I took care of. As the builder was working on the tavern, I flattened out the area around the colony to make it a much better place to start building new structures. I also filled out that gigantic creeper hole and put smite 9 on my sword. Before spending the night grinding mobs, I actually decorated the entrance of this mine. Once it was morning, I extracted a bunch of affixes and put them on the armor pieces that weren't fully maxed out. I used the hearts one on the chest plate and a toughness one in the boots since the boots aren't indestructible. Also this tavern was coming along very nicely. The supply camp on the other hand was absolutely useless to me. It took up some real prime real estate so I started clearing it out. I started from the center and then the fences and after that I took all the wool which ended up being really helpful later on. As I was almost finishing up a blood moon happened which means like three times more mob spawn. Since I couldn't sleep I had to minimize all the deaths by flying as far away as possible. I flew around to another desert and there were just so many mobs. I also fought like a bunch of mutants. This random village over here was basically overrun by every type of mob. If that's not enough I also ended up fighting a dragon as well. After surviving the night, I went into this desert temple and picked up some more relics. Then I broke into a supersized version of this pyramid and fought this stacked zombie pigment. Also in here, I found a new relic and came back home. Just to be safe, I placed more armor pieces into the guard towers and waited for this tavern to finish. I looked away once and this builder ended up just dying. I had to go to sleep so that another builder would come in. And while waiting, I got rid of the last few pieces of the supply camp. Then finally, a builder showed up and while this dude was working, I also placed down another house right next to the tavern to hopefully get more citizens. In the town hall it said I needed more guards so I made another guard tower as well. After another sleep cycle this tavern was finally done and it could hold four colonists. I also got started on this second house as well. I already had most of the resources so I got it started quickly. While waiting for these buildings to be done I chopped down tons of trees and flattened out more land. I was very surprised no one died during this time. With this influx of new colonists it was time to start building bigger things. First off was this warehouse which fit perfectly where the supply camp used to be. Before I got started on that, I started upgrading the second house, which was way less expensive. I spent the night watching this place be upgraded, and right before the builder stopped, it was halfway done. The next morning, I decided to take on the next boss on the list and went out searching for the ice maze biome. It just happened to be 3,000 blocks away from where I was. I got very lucky and I found that shipwreck structure, which I had to defeat a bunch of pillagers in and got the shell horn. Now it was time to summon the ghost of Captain Cornelia. I blew this horn right next to some water and this scuba diving monster popped up. The fight was pretty straightforward, uh, I tried not to drown and kept hitting the ghost. And once I got its health below half, it summoned a bunch of these cool looking drowns and it turned into daytime. I kept pressuring the boss though and eventually took it out. The drops were a frozen key, a cool helmet and this thing called Echo of the Ship Graveyard. My quest reward for defeating the boss was a short bow which I could trade in but I forgot exactly where right now. Then while exploring I found another boss mob called Frostmaw. There were also some dread knights here who dropped some keys for me. I then finally saw this gigantic yeti thing and started shooting arrows at it. Eventually the arrows stopped working and I got frozen. Once I broke out I was able to obliterate this thing. It did not give a quest reward though. Then as I was about to come home I started a raid and basically just used this way zone to get out of there. Day 114 to day 1. 15 I started the day by getting another guard tower started and then bought tons of fireworks. Then I turned all of my fire dragon scales into dragon forge fire bricks. I also made the apertures as well. Turns out I was still pretty far away from making a full fire dragon forge. When it turned night I went right back towards those ice biomes to explore some more. 
underneath the ice, I found a mini boss that I needed to take out. This thing was called the Mother of the Maze. The question word I took was the Greatsword, but I realized just now that I created an extra step just to get 20 levels anyway. Across this ice maze, I found a gigantic structure, and I think this place was called the End Castle. It was filled to the brim with a bunch of loot. There were also tons of pillagers inside it as well. While I was just breaking random things, I stumbled into like a redstone contraption. This is where I also found a secret chest. The loot in here was really nice. I went around exploring basically every nook and cranny of this place and picked up tons of really cool stuff. There was even an ancient debris just laying there. After an entire day of exploring, I had an inventory filled with enchantment books and I got another bad omen effect. Then in the center building, there was an ancient portal that you could put some eyes of ender into. I didn't have enough of those uh, unique eyes yet though. So I set a waystone here just in case and I spread the bad omen to the random village. The next day, I actually wanted to see if I could defeat a raid and I went back to the first village that I left the raids on. At first, it was pretty simple. I fought through all these mobs and started just progressing the waves. Then some cooler and different types of pillagers started spawning. None were too hard to beat but eventually i got to the last few waves and the raid just randomly stopped and didn't tell me i defeated it so i'm pretty sure all the villagers probably just died after that though i came back home placed these indestructible pickaxes in the chest and put all those enchanted books into the library i then started some guard tower upgrades and filled out the holes where this university was gonna be once it turned night, I went back to the ice maze biome and found the structure where I could use the frozen key. It was some underground bunker looking thing with some pillagers inside it. And uh, inside one of the rooms, there was a frozen chest. The other chest also had some really good loot as well. I used this frozen key to open the chest and I got this thing called Rune of the Storm. One of the quests told me to summon Hilda. So I used this rune on an enchantment table and an NPC showed up. Apparently Hilda needed shards, so I gave it the rune and the book in the quill, but I just got a manual in return. Day 117, I didn't do much but fight mobs and gather soul sand. I wanted another nether star since some of the bigger bosses can only be summoned with it. I also went underground to take out another wither. In these next few days I upgraded these guard towers a bunch and in the meantime I also learned that I would need to make a courier's hut alongside the warehouse. So I filled out the last few items for the guard towers first. That night a bunch of mummies attacked the colony but they were very easy to take out. Before going to sleep I placed this courier's hut down and in the morning I went to this floating island right next to my house to grab all the stone from there. I then grabbed as much wood as possible and as soon as the guard tower was upgraded I got started on the courier's hut. Now this place was a lot smaller so it didn't take too many items but to be safe I chopped down a ton of trees. This night an absolute tank killed a bunch of colonists but honestly it might have been my sword's ability instead. So now this builder also had to repair this tavern as well. On the bright side though I was able to get the courier's hut up and ready by the next day. However this warehouse needed so many items I had to get started immediately. Eventually the only items I needed for the warehouse were all spruce related and luckily I had tons of spruce logs. I was able to fill it out quickly and just watch this builder go to work. I had to watch it of course because the dogs attack all the time and also the courier needed the warehouse but I thought it asked for an upgrade on the hut so I queued an upgrade up as well. Since this seemed like a huge build I helped a lot by cleaning the bottom layer just so this dude could actually start the building. Of course by the time the building started it was already night time. The next day was pretty much the same. I protected the builder, gave potatoes to the cook, and fought tons of wolves. The warehouse though was making some serious progress. Finally, after all of that, the warehouse was up and running. It was very funny to see the courier basically going to each of the buildings, grabbing items in their inventory and placing it back here. While all that was happening, I made sure to get some upgrades done as well. First up was the courier's hut, which I already had set up. This was basically useless. Then I also upgraded the tavern and the restaurant. While waiting, I made a lightning dragon bone sword and I got some really great enchantments on it. Before I started working on this sword, I got all the materials for the restaurant upgrade. The stones were the ones that took me forever. And once I got all that done, I chopped down all the trees next to my house, which literally took the whole day. The next morning, I checked the warehouse and all the items had been put into its place. This career also drops off items too, which is really nice. Then I got to enchanting these tombs to deck this sword out. I had a book with smite 6, which I put onto the sword, and then one book with some higher sharpness and looting as well. I then used these ancient tomes for higher looting, but I eventually ended up just running out of levels. More good news though, the restaurant was upgraded and the tavern was also being upgraded next. I just needed to make some more stuff. I had tons of spruce, which was awesome, but I looked at the materials list for the university and my heart sank. 1800 oak planks were needed. Day 126 to day 127, I bought a bunch of fireworks and had to fight this mutant enderman. 
This is when I realized that this lightning sword might not work long term. At least I managed to take the mutant enderman out and get the quest reward for it this time. I got 10 levels and I was very happy that only one colonist died. Then the tavern got finished and I cleared out a bunch of sand around the university area. The colonists were unhappy because there weren't enough guards so of course I placed another guard tower and filled out the resources. That night I went back towards those ice biomes to take on this dread dungeon. I opened the main door and fought a bunch of mobs but I realized the lightning strike basically burned a lot of the loot. Also this place was really dark. So really quickly I picked up another key from these guys and made a pit stop back home to brew some night vision potions. With that I swept through each little room in the dungeon breaking all these spawners and looting all the chests until I got to the bottom floor. Again this sword was super annoying since tons of things kept getting burned. The final room had ice dragon forge blocks but as I was mining these blocks I fought a mob which caused some items to burn up. By the time I was out it was morning and I kept exploring around these biomes until I found another dread dungeon. This time it was much quicker but when I got to the bottom floor I realized why it was like that. All the mobs seemed to just be chilling here for me. Oh yeah and I also managed to deal a total of 50,000 damage which had a reward. You know what I took at this point. The main reward for me was these Dragonforge blocks. Plus this bag gave me a netherite ingot which was awesome and in one of these chests was ice dragon blood. Now this one gave me a quest reward too. But more importantly the ice dragon sword is the best in my opinion. Before sleeping I started some more upgrades in the colony. The next morning I was waiting for a bunch of new buildings to finish and I then had to put a ton of stuff into this house upgrade and went down to the mines to get even more cobblestone. I also upgraded that first house I made and this place required the weirdest things like a bunch of random flowers. So I went on the hunt to find three different types of flowers. Before flying off though I fought another barbarian raid and then I actually ended up finding the flowers I needed and spammed them with bone meal. I also started a forest fire here. When I came back home I made a flame dragon bone sword and an ice dragon bone sword to complete the quest. This gave me 25 levels and a sharpness 9 book. Now I could finally work on this ice dragon bone sword. I was grinding tons of mobs and also trading in the short bow for levels. With 101 levels it took me a few tries to get the perfect base enchantments. Then I started putting all the books on. First up I grabbed a sharpness 8 and looting 5 book. I was also able to make this sword indestructible which was awesome. I also realized I could have just put the sharpness 9 book on it, yeah which I did eventually. And last but not least I disenchanted a smite 8 book to put on this bad boy but it took a lot of levels. Before the days ended I had the best sword ever. Well there's two that are still better. Once that was done I used a netherite piece on my helmet and turned it into gilded netherite. Day 131 to day 132 I needed to clear out some more bosses so I made this thing called a scarab and I made a, a tomb portal which I threw the scarab into. Once I got to the dimension almost immediately I found a gigantic structure and started taking all the loot from these crates. On the bottom floor were spawners that summoned bandits and I wiped them all out. Then I cleaned all the dirty jewelry which unlocked a bunch of quest rewards for me. In order for me to complete some of these quests I needed to smash melt some of the sand here and uh, I got this dead wood but when I made the display it didn't give me the quest reward so it had to be some other type of wood. That night I fought some mummies and made this spinning wheel. After flying around some more I finally found the village and a palm tree which I used to make another one of those displays. This one though actually gave me a quest reward and a bunch of gold coins. I spent the night killing mummies to get some cloth scrap and spinning that into linen cloth for this dimensions armor but it took way too long. After that I set a waystone down and came home to drop off tons of enchanted books. While I was here I also filled out some materials real quick and of course had to get a bunch more cobblestone. While I was getting some fireworks I noticed that my librarian died so eventually I needed to get these dudes into a safer area. Since it was night I went right back into the Atum dimension and raided another structure. I found one Nebu torch but you need at least two to access the pyramids. So I went down to the mines to grab some Nebu ore. This however took me forever and I legitimately only found this ore as I was leaving. I smelted it, picked up these Nebu drops so I could make a bunch of torches. After that I found the closest pyramid and placed these two torches on the entrance. I cleared out the top floors and started making my way through the maze dodging all these traps until I found a ladder leading down to the final rooms. Once I cleared the rooms to the side I placed some torches around the sarcophagus and summoned the pharaoh. The pharaoh was a cakewalk though and I absolutely destroyed him. On the way back to the waystone I grabbed my reward which was 20 more levels. Day 134 to day 136 I extracted some mythical level affixes and started finishing up the upgrades on these guard towers. Once it became night I formed tons of levels and I was able to put this affix on my sword. Now it swung faster and did more ice and fire damage. Before sleeping I got up to level 14. 
Now all of my villagers are getting super sick, so I really needed to get started on this university so I could unlock the hospital. I gave the builder some carrots and potatoes, which apparently can cure the influenza, and just waited for them to finish the guard towers. Now the university was being built and it required so many items. I was able to put a ton of stuff down for this building and then my builder just ended up dying and I had to wait for another one to pop up again. By the end of the day, I already had filled out most of the random items. The only thing that was really hard to get were the oak planks. Oh, and because I'm very stupid, the bell was was super hard for me to get. The next morning, I helped this builder clear out all the sand and after that, I chopped down as many trees as I could again. I needed a thousand more oak planks, which means every one of these trees count right now. Using up all of my wood, finally crossed off the 1800 oak planks. Now it was time for the logs. I also went down to the mines to clear out a huge section for more cobblestone. I did this trip about two times and that checked the cobblestone stairs off. Now there were some logs, dirt, and a bell left. I found a random patch of dirt, which I just shaved the top layer off of, and that ended up being enough. I then bone mealed all the saplings to chop the trees down again, and this ended up being enough logs. Here's where I lose all my brain cells. There's a village right in front of me with a bell, but instead I go out and make an armor to buy a bell instead. Now of course this guy ends up not selling me the bell, so guess what I do? I spent the next few days cycling some villagers by moving across all these different waystones. Some of them of course didn't even take the job. I even pass bells while I'm doing this. While this is happening, I have to periodically check on the builder because if I look away, they just die to these wolves. Eventually, my brain works and I snatch the bell from a village to fill out all the materials. Day 140, I spent this day watching this building get built and right now the base was basically done. And then I looked away for 5 seconds and my builder died and the replacement had influenza. This basically meant no builder could work, so I just spent the entire day waiting. Day 141 to day 146, this might have been the longest I've ever waited on a building to be finished so first of all you have to stay close to the builder otherwise the building would not even start being built and then you have to defend this guy from these stupid wolves the entire time the only thing cool is watching the entire building slowly take shape and seeing every single room being built along this time my builder died a bunch of times and once they die i have to pray the next one doesn't get sick otherwise an entire day is just wasted but i did manage to pick up a netherite ingot from the smelter's bag which was real nice then since the builders put the torches last the roof port of the building held all the mobs since it was super dark in there. I then fought some of those thunderbirds as well. The first one was pretty far away and the second one was right in the colony. Luckily not much caught on fire and I was able to take it out. Finally all that waiting was worth it because with this university I could start the research that would unlock the hospital in the colony. Oh yeah and this also takes 30 minutes to finish. The next few days I went down to the spawners to use my looting sword on these zombies. This was to get a bunch of treasure bags and rotten flesh to trade. I was rushing to get this hospital built because because all of my colonists were getting sick non-stop. Eventually I got bored and I went to the nether to find this netherite monstrosity and I ended up finding my first ever bastion. I took out the piglins and looted the top chest which were actually very nice. They also had arrows which I really needed. More importantly there was ancient debris in the chest. I then broke into the center of the bastion which didn't have anything too good other than just gold blocks. So after all of that I went out to look for the monstrosity again and I could not find it. I looked through a bunch of different biomes. Two more bastions and even a nether temple. No sign of this dude anywhere. I did manage to get uh, one more ancient debris though. When I came home, the research was almost done and in the meantime, I was smelting all the ancient debris. Day 148 to day 149, because I hadn't been out exploring in forever, I just flew around to these undiscovered places on my map. First off, I took out a dragon and took his scales. Then I finally traded with these dwarf blacksmiths. But it took way too long to restock, so I wasn't able to advance the trades further. After that, I stole everything from another library and fought my first crocodile. Before the day ended, I destroyed two more dragons and of course took their scales. Then I came home. Since I couldn't fight the netherite monstrosity, I chose to take on some end bosses. So I popped through the end portal and started flying around. Lucky for me, it did not take long to find the citadel. Now there are two bosses in here, the end golem and the elder guardian. As I got deeper into the structure, I found some cool relics and ancient tomes. I took the ones that I liked. Then I fought my first end golem and these dudes launched some crazy purple fangs from the ground and launched you into the air. I took it out though and picked up the void core which should have unlocked a quest reward but didn't. I was very worried that the guardian fight wouldn't count but eventually i found the center of the citadel which had a lever and that dropped me into a floor lower now this place had even more end golems waiting for me and still after taking these dudes out i could not get the quest reward as i navigated the rest of the structure i found some iron trapdoors, which led to another floor even deeper 
Now this is the Ender Guardian layer. As I approached the center, a giant purple dude started hitting me with punches. I tried to get back and fire some arrows, but that did not work. I had to rely on my melee damage, which eventually got its health down to half. This made the Guardian break the floor and sent us both down even lower. This was a huge mistake though, since now I was able to use my bow, and that made the fight so much easier. I took it out, picked up the cool gauntlet, and started getting my way out of there. Some more great news though, this fight ended up counting for the quest line, so I wouldn't have to take this bad boy out ever again. I got an Unbreaking 8 book and chose the Power 9 book for myself. Before leaving the end, I grabbed a bunch of rose crystals because I wanted to take on another boss real quick. With those rose crystals, I could finally make end crystals and summon the dragon again. I thought I had more gas tears though, so I could only take on the ender dragon like one more time. Once I placed the crystals down, the game kind of bugged and placed more towers above existing ones. So to take these crystals out, I had to fly up really high. This was kind of annoying because now the dragon is also higher up as well. It ended up not mattering much anyway. I cleared those crystals quickly and focused the attack on the dragon. From one perch, I was able to take half of its health down. Also, the freezing on my sword made this dragon very slow slow for a little bit. After freezing the dragon every once in a while, I was able to take it out using my bow and completed another quest. This gave me only 16 diamonds and barely any levels. For some good news though, the research was almost done. I also had 17 colonists and I started upgrades on the second house. Day 152 to day 153, in order to clear more space, I started to break this entire tower down one layer at a time. This ended up working super well because the house upgrade also needed a bunch of stone bricks. To finish the rest, I went out to search for clay and red tulips. The clay was super easy to find, it was just in a river, but the red tulips took forever. I had to use my compass to find a flower forest just to get this little thing. I quickly came back home and smelted all this clay. While that was happening, I cleared out the rest of the tower. Then the research for the hospital was almost done and I was trying to find the best place to put it. I basically waited the entire day because I thought it would have been complete by now. The next day though it finally happened and the research was fully complete. Immediately I got to work on the barracks research too and then I started building this hospital. Then as I was filling out the materials I found some mummies who raided from the northwest. Now with these raids, they're sending even more dudes, but they're still super easy. As I was defending the colony, I was able to complete huge chunks of the required items until the only thing left were like cobblestone stairs. This took an extra day, but now the hospital was ready to be built. For the rest of these days, I was right next to the builder defending them from these stupid wolves. I made sure to sleep really quick to get this dude back to work, but that was a mistake since the second I stopped looking at this builder, they just died. Now since the builder was being replaced with a new guy that was sick, I couldn't get this building started at all. Instead, I went deep into the mines to look for these things called divine stones. This way I could make the second best sword in the game. I was also trying to get some stellarite pieces, but no luck on those. At least I was able to get enough of those uh, divinity stones though. The next few days, for some reason, the builder wasn't available at all. I don't even know what happened to the last one. And since I really didn't want to wait, I started exploring and found this gigantic pyramid which I jumped into and started taking whatever I wanted. The next day, a builder finally showed up, but I had to keep firing and rehiring this person because I needed to find someone that wasn't sick. At least this day, the base of the hospital was being constructed. But since it was already getting dark, I had to sleep again really quick. This day, I was going to get this hospital built. I was hanging out there the entire time until it was done, but really quick I started clearing out a bunch of the inventory I had in the storage room and then I went to the nether to grab some basalt. This way I was able to make a runic hammer and a runic anvil. Both of them gave me quest rewards which were 15 levels. With these two I was able to repair this belt that was broken and also this ghost skin talisman which was also very damaged. Since I had so many random relics I started equipping a bunch of random new ones and first up there was one called the soul devourer which was pretty nice. Update on the hospital it was almost done as well. While everyone was asleep I disenchanted and got unbreaking 6 on most of the relics. Rest of the night, I went out to kill mobs and when I came back home, my combat research was done. Again, while I was still waiting for this hospital to be fully built, I made a runic altar and decided to complete all the other quests as well. Which meant I made this bloody feather, a bloody lectern, and some coal parchment. These all gave me some solid rewards, nothing too good. The best news though, was the hospital being done. And once the doctor took the job, literally every single colonist was coming towards this place to get cured. So in order to get all these people cured, I had to farm even more potatoes and I gave all of my carrots, kelps, and dandelions plus some poppies towards the doctor. Once I fulfilled that, every single citizen was getting cured. Hopefully I never have to worry about that stupid sickness again. Then as it was turning night, I wanted to see what this bloody lectern could do. 
I placed it right above my house and then put the cold parchment on it. And once I clicked on it with the bloody feather, it took some of my health and gave me a relic contract. If anyone knows how to use this and the altar, please let me know. Now that I didn't have to worry much about colonists, I started working on this divine sword. It took a little bit to get the right base enchants, but then I was able to put tons of my books on it. Since the base damage on this sword was already insane, with all these enchants, the sword ended up becoming super overpowered. The only downside was that it wasn't indestructible, it had mending. At the end of it, the sword ended up being sharpness 10, looting 6, and smite 8. Day 162 to day 163, with that new research, I set up these barracks to increase the number of guards I would have. I built it behind house number 2 and it was a pretty big build so I had to flatten out a pretty large area. Then as I requested this place to be built, my builder was sick and lucky for me, I finally had the hospital. That night I teleported really far away to build another nether portal. It was time to look for the netherite monstrosity one more time. Once I got to the nether, I just started flying around waiting for the boss bar to show up at any time. As I moved further and further across more biomes and structures, I still could not find this place at all. The journey wasn't all that bad though since I did find a mutant blaze and unlike last time, its loot didn't burn up in lava. I picked up this thing called the Mutant Blaze Core and it allowed me to make a Rodling Checker which completed the Mutant Blaze quests. I saw that I could make a Mutant Snowman as well which I started to work on and this process was kind of complicated. I needed to make this thing called Compound Z and Compound Z can only be made by Formula Y and then Formula Y needs to be made by brewing some high level negative potions with Obsidian. The easiest way I did it was by making Potions of Poison 2, turning that into Instant Harming 2 and getting Formula Y that way. After all of that, I used my Mutant Skeleton Skull to get Compound Z. With all that stuff ready, I went over to the snow biome and started making snowmen. I built the first one with compound Z and that ended up killing it. So just to be safe, I made two more snowmen. But I got attacked by a snow dragon along the way and I took this dude out very easily and carried on with the experiment. On the second try, it worked and this regular snowman became a mutant. I thought I had to fight it so I was getting my bow ready but it turned out to be a friendly mob. My reward was some honey bread, was definitely not worth it. I like this guy so much, I picked him up and brought him home. But I think it was dying in the desert biome so I made a very hard choice and placed it back into the home village where it was already cold. I then put the last few items needed for the barracks. Day 165 I fought another mutant enderman and made this thing called the eye of the storm which summons a boss. I then watched this builder start constructing the barracks and as soon as it was turning dark I built an ever bright portal to take the bosses out there. Just because I really didn't like the portal, I set a waystone inside of the dimension and got rid of the portal on both sides. Also for the bosses, I grabbed some wood from this dimension as well. That night I went out to grab blocks for the Everdawn portal, the reverse of this, but I could not find any one of those lunar stone bricks at all. Instead, I just started collecting some XP while I was out. The next morning I made my way back home, started on some more research and waited for the barracks to be done. Even after the whole day, the barracks were only like 90% complete. So I went down to grind more levels and once I got up to level 70 I noticed my colonists dying so I had to fight off a mutant skeleton. Right after that I took out a mutant creeper and the next morning I even fought this mutant husk who gave me a quest reward. It also dropped a cactus jug which can extract water from a cactus and once you drink it it gives you some really cool effects. Then while I was rolling in chance for this sword the barracks finished up. Now apparently you can build four barracks towers here so I got started on one since I already had most of the materials already. One of the barracks towers finished and I started on the level 2 upgrade for the barracks to get another tower over here. These were not expensive at all so I was able to get it started immediately. By the next day I had the level 2 barracks started. This way I get extra guards without having to build way more houses. I checked up on the town hall and there was only one red circle which is a really good sign. It was almost night but the barracks upgrade happened and I placed a little bit of extra stuff needed for the second tower. The rest of the night I spent chopping trees just in case. Day 169 to day 170 it was now time to take on a bunch of bosses. I'm pretty experienced with the blue skies mod so I breezed through these dudes. I found this blinding dungeon pretty quickly and I went to get the keys. For every single dungeon on both dimensions, you need four keys to be able to go to the boss's chamber. For this dungeon, they happen to be all in the side rooms. I then got to the top and fought the summoner. Now this dude's moveset isn't that complicated. I started off by using this dimension sword and that did some really good damage. But when I switched to the divine sword, it also ended up doing the same amount. So I just used that sword instead and kept attacking the dude. Now this one might be the most annoying out of the first bosses because of the minions and the poison damage. Even through all that, I was pretty easily able to take this dude out once I got some really good clean hits in. I then got tons of rewards. This included a bunch of enchanted books, a trophy, 
some treasure bags, and my quest reward as well. The main thing you get are these arcs, and the benefits are really good. For the summoner, I got a 15% movement speed increase. On the way towards the next dungeon, I found a village where some dude sold a really nice axe that I could use against the next boss. I bought a bunch of axes and swords and then found the gigantic structure I needed. Now these bigger dungeons are super annoying since they are way too big. There's like a million rooms and four floors. You have to find a key in each one of these floors. So it took me forever just going room to room. Eventually I got four keys and tried to set a waystone all the way up here but it glitched out. I decided just to move on and challenge this guy anyway. As soon as I got in I grabbed the aquite axe that I had and I got hit immediately. So this starlit crusher guy he puts up walls which I had to break using my axe. I managed to get some really nice hits in and even set it on fire. After that it did a spinning move but once that move is finished it was wide open to attacks. And my axe turned out to do the most damage so I was going to be using that the rest of the fight. The process was pretty simple. You break the walls and just wait for the spinning attacks. And I basically repeated that the whole fight. I also completed a really cool quest by dealing 100,000 damage in total. After doing this process a million times, the Starlit Crusher started getting out of its little area. Then I set this guy on fire and took him out. I got a bunch of bags that I opened, a new trophy, and of course, the Ark. I also took the quest reward for the 100,000 damage, and I got nothing. I think that was a glitch. On the bright side, I got myself a Protection 8 book and one extra heart from the Ark. Next up was the Everdon Dimension. But before the night ended, I actually took these random netherite armor and turned them into a gilded netherite instead. The chest plate had protection 9, projectile protection 9, thorns 5, and it was indestructible. I also extracted a really good affix for it as well, and then grabbed some levels to put it on the chest plate. Day 172 while messing with these armors, I put respiration 8 on my helmet and went down to grind a bunch of levels for the boots. Once I got up to level 23, I put protection 8 and blast protection 8 on the boots. While this was going on, my barracks tower also finished and I had 8 total guards now. Then after making another pit stop for the levels, I was able to finish the boots off with Death Strider 7 and Indestructible. Now I had full gilded netherite gear. The only thing that these boots needed now were affixes and a mythical affix took tons of levels. Extracting it took 36 and placing it on the boots took 24. This ended up giving me another row of hearts. Since everything was going too well, I ended up having a casualty. My Anderologist villager died. So now it was time to move the villagers to a decent area, finally. I dug out a section right next to my storage system to place some villagers into. I got my librarian in there as quickly as I could and started preparing the other sections as well. And I started decorating a little. While all this was going on, the research also finished. I ended up making the area fit for three villagers for now. I spent the next few days going around villages and finding villagers and eventually I got a guy to become my enderologist. I also had to level this dude up too. Then I made an area for a waystone here because I kept having to go back and forth. The rest of the day I needed to find those lunar stone bricks so I could go to the Everdon dimension. I spent the entire night searching but I only found one of those blue sky structure and this place did not have what I needed. I did find another one of those end castles though. So I just went all around this structure looking for a bunch of things. On the way back I finally found the lunar stone bricks that were set up in the house. I made sure to take all those blocks back home. Once I built the portal, I did the same thing as last time and placed a waystone down so that I could go back and forth. I also noticed that there was a quest that asked me to build a star emitter, so I kept a lookout for some frost spirits. I couldn't find any in this dimension, so I hopped back into the Everlight and I found frost spirits immediately. I completed the star emitter quest and placed this thing in the center of the colony, but it needed another item to work, and I'm pretty sure this is just another waystone type thing, so I did not need it. I then got some real good news the colony had 20 colonists now. I tried to build another tavern but apparently it's limited to one per colony and instead I started working on another house to bring more people in. I was able to get the items for this place really quickly. Later that day I wanted to do more research but I lacked the hay bales needed for this specific one and while I was going out to look for some my colonists died and I had to defend them the entire night. Then again I got distracted because I wanted to put this cool omni tool affix on my pickaxe which basically made it effective against all blocks. Day 176 I had grinded up to level 56 and made a dragon bow which I wanted to max out. The base enchants were power 6, unbreaking, and punch 2. I then put a power 9 book on this bow which made it ridiculous. The only issue I had was that it required dragon bone arrows which are kind of expensive. Lucky for me I had way too much dragon bones anyway. I made a few stacks of arrow and went back to grind more levels. I also used these levels to make a nice indestructible shield as well. Day 177 this entire day I spent just upgrading this one house. It ended up being built and I also started working on the level 2 of this place which didn't take too long either. For the next few days I kept upgrading this one house to fit more colonists in. This took a good chunk of these days since it was asking me for weirder and weirder blocks. 
At least this upgrade adds a lot of beds, which means more colonists. That night, I also mined a bunch of the stone I already had. Then, as I was trading with that villager, I started decorating the storage room. First up, I put an oak frame on the entrance, then I made the stairs connect a little. After that, I made tons of stone brick slabs and moved the ceiling up a block. I then wanted to extend the chests up one layer, so I grabbed some link cables, and while that was happening, I started a whole quest line. So I picked up all the items I needed real quick, I just broke them, and that managed to complete all the quests in one swoop. After that, I traded in a greatsword for 20 levels and I started looking through a bunch of these quests. I completed the waystone one, which was not worth it, but this trading post one was really good. This item was super cool. I placed it in my house and it basically just shows all the villagers trades within a little area. So with all of that done, I made a bunch of chests and pushed the walls back a layer. Once that was done, the most annoying part was placing the chests down and connecting them all. Day 180, while looking at my builds, I completed another quest and this one was to survive a full 24 hours. I think I've been sleeping too much in this game. I took the 30 levels as my reward and then once the house was done, I sent the builder to start working on the barracks tower so that these guards could start wearing some armor. Then I teleported around to get some hay bales, which would start more research. Day 181 to day 182, now once again I went boss hunting, this time in the Everdon dimension. For some reason this dimension felt really empty, I barely saw any structures or even any mobs. It took me so long to find the alchemist's dungeon, I thought it would never show up. This place was the exact same as the Everlight version, and I got the four keys and went to challenge the boss. Now the alchemist was way less annoying, the moves are very similar but this guy doesn't summon minions or poison you. It blinds you a little and it drops some things on you, but all of that's pretty manageable. This fight was enjoyable at the beginning, but it kind of drags on as you're just playing tag with this dude. I managed to take this boss out and I picked up the Dusk Arc which grants invisibility while sneaking. So as I was going out to find the next structure, I was getting really frustrated. It took so long to find this place. I literally traveled thousands of blocks and looted a bunch of these random structures. And as I was about to give up, I finally saw some cobwebs, which was a great sign. Really quickly, I found the structure set up a waystone so I could come back home and prepare. First up, I wanted to enchant this spike shield, so I grabbed some levels. Turns out it counted as a weapon, so it wasn't really worth it. In the meantime, I was brewing night vision potions. Getting prepared really saved my life because I'm not kidding when I tell you this, it took me forever to find those four keys. I thought the previous large dungeon was annoying but this one takes the cake by far. Even finding the stairs going down was hard. None of that matters though, I did end up getting the four keys and I used them to enter the boss's lair. Now this was the Arachnarch, a giant spider. And then using the blue bright sword, I was able to take out a bunch of its health really quick. Once it started climbing the walls, I had to switch to my bow. Plus now it was dropping poison on the ground. I was I was also running out of dragonborn arrows too so I had to be pretty careful. I basically had to bide my time until this dude started stepping down for me and that way I was able to do tons of damage with my sword. On the last third of its health it started picking me up and I had to hit it to free myself. All of this eventually got it to its final stage where a bunch of tiny spiders were launched. It only took a few more hits after all of that for me to take out the arachnarch. This gave me some really cool rewards but the best was the arc which made me stronger while being poisoned. I took another protection 8 book as well, which I put on my leggings as soon as I came home. I actually ended up having another protection 8 book, which I placed on my helmet. So now there are 6 bosses left, 4 of which I could summon or find pretty easily, and 2 of them were super hard to find. Day 186, I went out to look for wooded forest biomes. This is supposed to be where the conjurer spawns, but I could not find this thing at all. Instead I went towards a swamp to take on a hydra. I flew around until I found this thing's lair. Since the hydra can only be killed with fire damage, it being in the water was bad. I thought of a great idea though and snatched it up with a quantum catcher to fight it in the desert. This worked like a charm and I took this boss out. Plus I got its heart. The quest reward was 32 iron ingots. For the rest of the night I made this moonstone shield and grinded a bunch of levels. I ended up getting a bunch of XP till the morning and I used those levels to scrap older shields. This way I ended up with a really nice moonstone shield as well. To prepare for the Cosmic Fiend, I actually needed a bunch more netherite ingot, which I thought it would be easy to get the treasure bags from these mob drops, but it took forever. I stayed killing these zombies with my looting sword for a bit and then I went to a village to snatch up a villager. This guy was gonna buy rotten flesh for me. Rest of the night I collected tons of rotten flesh and opened a bunch of these bags and still didn't get a single netherite. 
For the next few days, I basically spent the entire time grinding out a bunch of mobs and selling tons of rotten flesh. I still got no netherite ingots even though I was getting a bunch of these smelter bags. Because grinding mobs was really boring, I locked up a bunch of villagers in this village over here and went to see if I could get the bad omen effect. One of the challenges was to defeat a raid. I fought a bunch of these pillagers inside of these end castles and was waiting for the captain to come in, but somehow the raid from a nearby village was also spawning here. I was in a huge conundrum, there were no captains spawning and for some reason I just could not beat this other raid. And I was basically here for an entire day. I realized it was useless and then came home. As soon as I was home I put Feather Falling 10 on my boots and went right back to grinding a bunch more treasure bags. This time I bought a trading post down here so I could sell the rotten flesh immediately. Day 191, I looked through the warehouse where the courier placed a ton of items and I found a bunch of treasure bags and opened them all up. Even with all those bags, I did not get a single netherite ingot. I did, however, get tons of ancient tomes, which I had to make another chest for. That night, I started researching something that would unlock shields for the guards. Honestly, I did not want to grind for any of these mobs, so I went to fight a boss real quick. I used this Eye of the Storm and out came a pretty big dragon. This guy, however, was not strong at all. I think I fired a total of like 6 arrows and that was more than enough to take this beast down. My reward was of course 30 levels but I also had some treasure bags as well. Then I came home to make some night vision potions and put a looting ancient tome on my sword. While I was there I also turned my bow into power 10 as well. I then spent a huge chunk of these next days trying to find another citadel so that I could cross off this end golem from the quests. I ended up finding another end city where I got some more cool relics and an extra elytra. Then I found an end temple with some more loot but even after all that traveling there was no other citadel. I then went home to drop a bunch of books off and then built a nether portal where this end portal was. This was to help me find the netherite monstrosity and I also started brewing some potions of luck. My plan was that these uh, luck potions would help me get more structures to spawn but even with 200% luck I only got the same structures. It was still nether temples, these wither skeleton towers and nether pyramids. This time though I was super smart and I abandoned the netherite monstrosity hunt to get some ancient debris. I only needed like two more netherite ingots to make this cosmic beacon. So I went down to Y equals 15 and found a chunk border to absolutely rip apart. Since my efficiency was super high, I cleared huge chunks of areas pretty quickly. So far, I only had one piece of ancient debris. As I moved further, I found a vein of three which would help like crazy. I then set a waystone here and smelted what I had. One more netherite ingot for me. I grabbed some more night vision potions and blasted my way through these mines again. This time after clearing out a huge chunk, I had three pieces of ancient debris. Everything ended up working out because I got one more piece of ancient debris and this nether goblin showed up which had a really good trade to give me 5 netherite scraps for 4 ancient debris. I could make these enderite ingots now. I got 5 of those ingots and used a nether star to make a cosmic beacon. My reward for the beacon was a food item called Poseidon's breakfast which was actually really good. With all that done I repaired my pickaxe, sold more things and put a smite ancient tome on my sword. There were only 4 bosses left, 2 of which were pretty easy to find though. Day 197 to day 198, I learned that the cosmic beacon only works at night and at a height of 150. So in the meantime, I wanted to check off another quest really quick. I needed to take down another land golem. The last one didn't count. I flew into this gigantic brass tower with one key already and started destroying all these spawners. At this point, I know where they all are and I basically just started grabbing each chest from every floor which ended up giving me four keys. Then I placed these keys into the monolith and some of the land golem who I wiped out really quickly and stole everything from its chests. For fun, I watched the collapse of this entire brass tower. My quest reward was the great sword which I immediately traded in for 20 levels. Now that it was night, I built up 150 blocks and decided to place this cosmic beacon down. A purple beam fired into the air and a monster let out a huge cry. I saw a huge health bar appear. This behemoth spawned and it can also break bedrock so I have to be very careful. I managed to hit it with my sword and it only did like 3 damage initially. It also non-stop shook my screen which was very annoying. Lucky for me though, the bow was doing a great job. It took until the morning time for me to finally do 200 damage to this dude. I also had to eat this Poseidon's breakfast thing which helped like crazy. This is why I was very glad my armor was indestructible. This might have been the first time but I managed to lit this guy on fire and even though it didn't do much damage, it was a good sign that I was hitting him. Slowly but surely I was able to take this guy's health down to under a thousand. From here on I just flew around and last minute I would turn around and fire the bow at this thing. If it pursued even more, I would fight it on the ground as well and doing all of that got its health down to 500. 
300 the home stretch. I then made the fiend super angry and it kept attacking me faster and faster which was super annoying. It all ended up working out though since I was able to put my thorns to use and do a bunch of melee damage. It took a full day but I did manage to bring this behemoth down. I have to say though it was 100% worth it because the sword it dropped was the best weapon I've ever used in any mod pack ever. Really quickly I put sharpness 9, smite 4 and indestructible on the sword. The damage it did was 41.5 hearts. Before the night ended I also managed to put looting 5 and sweeping edge 8 on it as well. For the last few days I wanted to do something that I could never do before. It was time to put this sword to a test. I used the skeleton key first on hell difficulty. Now this sword has two abilities. One is to launch fire and the other is to basically launch me in any direction. I was able to absolutely dominate this dungeon. I got 84 kills in 4 minutes. Then a horde of netherite wearing zombies spawned and this sword was still one shotting them. It didn't matter if it was the fire launch or the actual attack. It shredded through everything. I was super confident after that dungeon so I also opened up the nether dungeon as well. Last time I tried this dungeon I almost lost this hardcore world. This time it was a cakewalk too. The fire launch attack kept every single mob away from me. Not even the armor wearing wither skeletons could withstand the one shot. Last but not least I used the void key and I also dominated here but this one ended up crashing the game whenever the horde spawned. But by then it was day 200 in this hardcore world. I survived 100 days in the ultimate mod pack. All the mods 8 is filled with insane tech crazy armor and basically as many mods as possible. In these 100 days I want to be able to complete most of the quests. That includes ore duplication, power generation and mining all the modium ore. Day 1 I spawned into a little beach type area right in front of some tower. I also noticed this gigantic skyship in the air. So the tower was a roguelike dungeon and the skyship was basically an endgame dungeon. Really quickly I chopped down this birch tree and made some basic tools. After being set up I found a village right next to me and began looking through the chests. For now I just grabbed everything I could and checked off a bunch of quests. Inside the next chest I found some iron leggings, leather boots and these gems which would be really important for later. More importantly I grabbed all the foods and kept the gems that had 100% purity. Plus I also picked up this rare stone pickaxe. As I moved through the village I activated the waystone, picked up this little green thing and went up to this structure that had some beacon lights on it. The quests up here had some compressed iron armor which were super strong and it had these compressed iron ingots. Then as it turned dark I started checking more quests like the storage one and the bounty board. During this time I made a stone sword and saw these updated apotheosis mobs. This one was destroyed by the golem but the sword it dropped was pretty nice. One of the mobs also dropped inferium essence which allows you to start growing netherite much later on. There were more quest rewards though and I basically had no room left in my inventory. On the bright side I actually found the quest line that you're supposed to start on. The next day I used an iron ingot to make a shield and after eating some berries I ended up gaining two hearts. So eating different foods can increase increase your hearts but it's all up to a limit. Really quickly I completed the getting wood quests and started on the stone ones. I also randomly picked up this iron sword I guess a boss must have dropped it. I made the tools but I just didn't have enough cobblestone to complete the full quest. Before that though I went up this hill and found another village but this bottom part was basically abandoned. In this place there were some animals chilling but I focused on collecting cobblestone for now. The reward was more XP and torches. The next quest though was to make a chest which would help in me making a backpack for later. Lucky for me there were cows right here so I grabbed this hay and bred them. For now I just killed two of them for their leather and since there were smokers here I cooked a bunch of random food that I had. After moving up this hill I finally found some villagers and this zinc ore. That vein mining thing is super useful useful. Also I found this weird book and some condensed blood for a mod called Evilcraft. There wasn't really anything else in the villages so I moved around grabbing all the hay bales and eventually I made a bunch of pickaxes to go mining with. Once again this vein mining option was super helpful. The only problem is, is that it shreds through pickaxes. Eventually I made my way down to iron level and had to make a ton more pickaxes. This way I ended up making my way into a cave system as well. Right now it was super dangerous since I did not have much armor. Deeper into this cave I found a very dangerous room that spawned skeletons and spiders. Right behind that was another zombie dungeon too. In order to not die I made a furnace to smelt all the raw iron I'd collected. While that was going on I went in to light up this dungeon and it was super dangerous. Plus there was a zombie carrying a jukebox behind this dungeon that was uh, playing a lot of music. Eventually I made this place much safer and got my quest reward for killing these spiders. Plus some of these chests were kinda nice. I kept these spawners up just in case I would ever need them and on the other side of the dungeon I fought a bunch of zombies and took out the one that was playing the music. My iron also ended up being smelted which completed another quest. With all the iron I had I used it to make a chest plate and a helmet. 
The rest was used to complete another quest. So now I was a little more prepared and I dove into this zombie dungeon. I immediately took out the top floor spawners and looted the chests. After that, I made my way into the catacombs and started looting there, but there were way too many zombies attacking, especially this guy over here wearing netherite armor, which I had to outsmart. It ended up not even dropping anything good though. Then I basically got swarmed, so I had to make my way out. And along the way, I grabbed some quest rewards for killing 50 zombies. And I picked up this diamond axe from a chest. The first thing I did once I got back up was I bred those cows again and got some more leather. This way I was able to craft a backpack. From day 4 to 5, I fought these zombies and got a rare turtle shell. Right after that, I grabbed my quest reward and had enough iron to upgrade my backpack. With that, I went over to that roguelike dungeon to grab a bunch of loot. I fought an enderman at the bottom, which was very dangerous, and started making my way through these side rooms. My goal was to break these spawners as quickly as possible so that I could loot these chests. The chest mostly had enchanted armor, nuggets, and a bunch of gems. I also grabbed the brewing stand here as well. One of these chests though ended up having diamonds. As I made my way deeper into this dungeon, I got some more gold and ender pearls as well. My backpack at this point was halfway filled. Fighting these mobs also completed another quest and this one was another bounty. I then found more stairways leading deeper into this dungeon. Most of the chests had the same types of items but I did get an advancement for looting 50 containers. Once again after going down more stairs, I actually fought some tough mobs now. Plus these chests were getting so much better. The armors in here were actually pretty good now. Then I think I found one of the main rooms that had like 4 spawners in them and I accidentally hit an enderman which made this entire thing so much harder. This stray over here ended up inflicting poison and slowness so I had to be super careful. I think I might have missed the chest because there was nothing in this room other than these quartz pillars. Then on the other side I got one more golden apple plus some more ingots. Finally, after all of that, I found the last staircase leading down. The chests in this floor were stacked. No diamonds, but gold and a bunch of useful materials. I gotta say, my luck was crazy because the bottom of this dungeon opened up to a big cave, but the best part was that it was underneath a mining system. I built up and got there as quick as possible. The only thing you have to worry about in this place was the crazy knockback mobs. Every single chest in here had tons of ingots and there were also so many ores just left alone, which I of course vein mined. I spent the entire time just trying to dodge these mobs and gather every single thing I possibly could. I had stacks on stacks of iron, gold, and coal. My backpack was also almost filled up so I had to use a bunch of gold to upgrade it. After that upgrade, I did another run through grabbing everything I missed and I ended up with 2 stacks of iron ingots and 5 stacks of iron in like other types of forms. Plus tons of gold and cooked potatoes as well. In one of the chests I also found a diamond chest plate. Since my backpack was almost filled again I decided to make my way back up towards the surface. I ran through a good amount of iron pickaxes but I did eventually get out. I ended up in an abandoned mine colonies village but this place didn't have anything too good other than these cows. I used the leather to make a tool belt and there was also a quest reward for this as well. While moving along this village I activated a waste stone and this place had a weird meteor crash. I had an iron pickaxe though that couldn't break crying obsidian so I just left it for now. That night I went across the river and found a structure to sleep in. I'm pretty sure that this is also a roguelike dungeon as well. For now I just set up a bunch of furnaces to smelt the ores that I had and I made a bunch of iron blocks. The last thing I did was use my gold to make golden carrots and golden melons to craft a feeding upgrade so I wouldn't have to feed myself. Day 8 to 9 I basically used this time to remake some armor and smelt most of the ores to free up the inventory space. With the iron I had, I made an iron furnace and this is supposed to cook stuff faster, but I didn't know about the augments that you would have to put in. It was also a quest reward, which allowed me to upgrade the other furnace as well. While all that was cooking, I went out to find lavender for purple dyes, but I had no luck. I ended up getting like 90% of the stuff cooked up and decided to just move on. I found a really nice biome at night and I fought a bunch of mobs here. Right next to that, I stumbled into a grass filled biome too, which also looked pretty nice. The mobs were absolutely crazy the entire night. But in the morning, I found a spot. Well, I thought it was a good spot just for a little bit. Once I cleared out the space, I realized this biome has a ton of lag because of all the flowers here. So if I were to put machines on top, it would not be a fun experience for me. After that, I just went right back on the hunt and I took out this mushroom structure which had these mushroom warriors. Across another river, I collected a bunch of sand for a quest and found another meteor. This one I could break into. I ended up spending the night in a random village. As soon as I woke up, I started looting these chests and I grabbed the waystone. Then I ended up finding the perfect place to build a house. I started off by clearing a ton of dirt to make a flat area. I also filled these giant holes in as well. Once I was done, I wanted to set up a basic house. I had a ton of oak logs 
logs that I used to set up the frame. This was just trial one, and I went down to the cave that was behind the house to grab some cobblestone. There was also a wandering trader here which I tried to set up, but these guys ended up being so annoying later on. I then set up these furnaces to get regular stone and placed fences around to add depth. Once that was done, I used the stripped oak on the insides just for a different look. While I was repeating this pattern around, I had to expand the house just a few blocks more. Then I ran out of oak. So while planting some more saplings, I had a bunch of uh, creeper accidents. The next morning, I took out an apotheosis mob and I got some new leggings. Then I sheared a bunch of sheep which gave me quest rewards. Uh, I used the bone meal to get a bunch more wood and I went to the shore to grab a ton of sand. This allowed me to get the framing done and put the windows up as well. Now with the bare minimum of stuff done, I could place down the waste stone, the bed and the furnaces inside. Since I had a bunch of stone bricks from the dungeons, I almost had enough to finish the full floors. To get the rest, I had to go back down to the cave. Now the bottom floor of this place was basically done and I started working on the second floor. To save space, I used oak slabs to make the floor. I had to spend a whole nother day just gathering oak logs to copy the same design from the bottom to the top. With all of that, the framing was complete and I gathered a ton more stone to start working on the roof. The outline on the roof was going to be stone bricks and the main material was going to be a darker wood. I had to teleport back to that older village to grab these dark oak saplings and the wood. It took a little bit of time, but this place was basically done. I just needed a little bit more glass. I ended these days setting up the simplest storage room. Day 14, now this is where the real progress starts. For now, I still didn't know much about these mods, but all of that started to change. The first thing I did was make an oak drawer to complete some quests. For now, I actually didn't know how to use them properly, but they become really important later. Next up, I started working on this sophisticated storage stuff by making their chests. Now these chests can be upgraded, but they cannot be doubled up. I was able to make two iron chests and they were huge. Since I had tons of gold, I decided to upgrade them into gold as well. For the future, I made some upgrade bases as well and placed as many of these chests as possible. In fact, I actually replaced all those vanilla chests with gold chests instead. Once morning hit, I made a crafting upgrade for my backpack, but this ended up being very annoying. I also made tons of iron pickaxes to go mining. I used the cave behind my house to gather an absolute ton of ores. Closer to the surface, I picked up coal, copper, and uh, some useless things. As I got deeper down to this cave, I started finding things that would make really great items. For now, the thing I needed the most was redstone. I ended up finding everything but redstone though. On the bright side, I started the silent gear quest line. Now this would help me make some crazy easy tools and weapons. I ended up having to go very deep underground to find redstone. I ended up returning home since all of my pickaxes broke. There were so many items that I had that needed to be smelt though. While that was going on, I placed glass panes inside of my house. During this time, a wandering trader came inside and I had to take this dude out. This unlocked some really funny and helpful quest rewards. I got a special sword, a sign to warn off wandering traders, and a pedestal. After that, I completed another quest and this one was to make charcoal and tiny charcoal as well. Since I had a bunch of this infernium stuff, I wanted to create an area to farm this thing. For now, I was able to do half infernium and half another crop. I made a very simple cobblestone perimeter to plant these crops in. I only had like seeds, so I bone mealed a bunch and started expanding slowly. This ended up completing another quest. Next up was making the infernium seed itself. I had enough for exactly two, but the quest reward gave me two more. Day 17, I had to take out another wandering trader and its llamas. This time, I placed a sign down, so goodbye forever. I then planted some sugar cane down for paper and I needed blue dyes as well since I didn't want to waste any lapis. So I ran around picking up these corn flowers until I stumbled into this weird area. I picked up this mysterious cube and it gave me a bunch of random things. And the quartz stuff underneath started the applied energetics quest line. Now that I had a bunch of blue dyes, I made some blueprint papers. The first blueprint I made was for a sword and this gave me a blaze rod as a reward. Next up, I wanted to make a hammer for 3x3 mining and a paxel. Since I had this compressed iron, I ended up using those to make a new paxel and this one was significantly stronger. The only issue is that uh, compressed iron is very hard to get so repairing this thing is going to be a nightmare. I had enough blueprint papers to make a hammer blueprint as well. Then to make some of these repair kits I had to break a bunch of gravel down for flint. Day 18 I made a template board and this very crude repair kit. Since it was part of the quest line I also had to make the crude and the sturdy version as well. I kept
kept the sturdy version in my backpack, but I kind of forgot to store the materials in it. Next up, I ran around the village collecting hay bales and a bunch of random blocks. I then found this engineer's house where I just took everything. I was actually out to get these flowers to make purple dyes. This was so I could make some warp scrolls. One of the blocks I collected was a compressed iron block, which allowed me to make the compressed iron hammer. Now these tools ended up being very durable. They were like three times more durable than regular iron. With these new tools, I wanted to grab a bunch of resources, so I hopped back down into the mines. I really needed redstone and diamonds. I started digging down from the area I was previously at and grabbed everything on the way down. After a little while, I was finally at deep slate level. I also found a cave as well, which was super helpful. In here, I picked up this thing called Osmium and that started the Mechanism questline. Mechanism is going to be a huge mod for this mod pack. I then found diamonds and this monster box which spawned mobs that dropped ores. After lighting up most of this cave, I dug down lower to hopefully get more diamonds and redstone. This time I switched to a hammer and strip mine for a good while. Throughout this strip mining journey, I picked up tons of metals and lapis. Then after a good amount of time passed, I got the redstone and ended up completing a quest as well. On top of that, I got these prosperity shards and finally some diamonds. The redstone was now coming in bunches. The next quests were to start generating power so that I could duplicate ores. This strip mine ended up connecting to a pretty large cave and in here I picked up a lot of obsidian just in case. The rest of the cave wasn't too good though, but I did manage to pick up two bounties for spiders. The durability of my tools were running out like crazy and uh, getting compressed iron is not fun. I ended up grabbing a little bit more stuff and fought this mimic. These guys ended up always dropping uh, really cool relics and I picked up this scarf of invisibility. Before leaving, I tried to use this hammer as much as I could. My backpack was almost filled to the brim. With that journey being done, I teleported back home and used a little bit of my compressed iron to repair my Paxel and hammer. Then I had so many ores to smelt, I filled these furnaces up. Everything that couldn't be smelted, I turned into blocks and put it in the valuables chest. I had to clear my backpack as well and I realized I picked up the smithing table which I placed right next to my furnace. My infernium was also growing so I was able to plant more seeds. That night I upgraded to golden furnaces and smelt even more things. But I still had no clue about those augments. While I was making these osmium blocks, I realized that they can make some pretty cool armor. So I made a full set of osmium armor and even the shield. Next up, I made a few more template boards and I got a blueprint book. Then I made some more blueprints for binding, grip, the tip, and the coating. The coating was super expensive. Then I opened up the blueprint package, which ended up giving me a ton more blueprints as well. Day 23 to day 24, now I needed leather really bad. So I wanted to make an area to keep the cows in. I chopped down a bunch of trees and built a very simple little area. Also, most of my items had uh, been smelted now. I ended up grabbing one cow from the village, but I could not find any more. There was also another problem as well though. I did not have enough space in this little area for an enchantment setup, so I would have to move the storage system real quick. I ended up moving all the chests to the other side and had to remake the bookshelves. After all of that, I was able to make and place this enchantment table down. I just needed more bookshelves. Since it became morning again, I went out to look for more cows. I grabbed my sugar cane, which was going like crazy, and went around this entire area and could not find a single cow at all. I had to go up this hill to the right of my base. That's where I found a waystone and I finally saw another cow. It took a long time to lure this guy back, but I was finally able to start breeding them. Once I got back inside the house, I made a stack upgrade for my backpack and got started on generating power. I needed to make a machine frame and I was able to use a coal generator now. This machine was not expensive at all, but trust me, it starts to get way more complicated from here. Quest wise, I now moved on to part 2 of the getting started quest. Now things are going to be very serious. Day 25 to day 26, I built a patio on the left side of my house and cleared a path to enter it. Of course, I also had to decorate it a little bit. Then I used this Inferium, I think I've been saying it wrong the entire time, to complete some side quests by making different types of farmland. These farmland increase your chance of double harvests. I spent the entire night fighting this epic enchanted witch who kept healing. Now this was probably the scariest thing ever because this witch would non-stop poison me and that goes through your armor. Also what was even worse is that once its health got down to 6 hearts it would just heal. So I had to do a, a bunch of tactical retreats and try again in the morning. That's when I got attacked by this wild and hunter and I think this guy actually ended up killing all the cows. Before I took the witch on again, I made a katana blueprint and an osmium rod to craft a diamond katana. This new sword plus trapping the witch made it much easier to take this thing out and it managed to give no rewards at all. 
With all that being done, I crafted a metallurgic infuser and had to power it using my coal generator. This way I could get a bunch of these things called infused alloys. The first thing I had to do was place some redstone down and that would turn iron into the alloy I needed. I ended up getting the five alloys and then I put an osmium ingot in here to get a basic control circuit. Next up was to make two energy tablets which I already had all the materials for. All of this allowed me to make this wind generator. Now this way I could actually have a very sustainable power source. Source. To store the energy of this windmill, I needed to make an energy cube. This meant that I would need even more energy tablets, which required even more infused alloys, so I think you understand how this works now. The only new thing that it needed was uh, steel ingots. To get that, I had to do it in a very primitive way. I used a hammer to make iron dust and combine that dust with coal to get steel dust. And after smelting the steel dust, voila, four steel ingots and the basic energy cube. The next day I used some steel to make basic universal cables and this would be how I transfer energy most of the time. I had all the materials to make a building gadget as well and I did this just for the quest rewards. I also swapped to this energy pipe instead for now uh, because it was mostly a quest too and it gave me a free reward. The only difference is that you have to use a wrench on these ones to control the importing and exporting. Since I had the extra pipe upgrade I made the gold version as well and placed that into this pipe. So remember those wilden guys from uh, the day before? I just saw that they killed all my cows. While the windmill was making power, I expanded the farm out some more. I just moved the cobblestone perimeter back so that I could plant more inferium. That night I made even more steel dusts and wanted to make this thing called the enrichment chamber so I can get a stage 1 ore processing plant started. Once the enrichment chamber was made, I got ores as a quest reward and a diagram on how to set the level 1 factory up. I made an item pipe and grabbed the furnace to set this whole thing up. I did a practice setup on the patio and had the inputs and outputs ready. With the basics being set up, I placed a coal generator behind the enrichment chamber, but uh, all this would be temporary since the actual plant becomes so much bigger. With all that done, I ended up unlocking some quest rewards for getting diamonds and uh, this enchantment table as well. Also, the tier 1 plant only gives you like one extra ore per every three you put in. Before the night ended, I ripped the setup up and made a basic fluid tank so that I could collect a bunch of lava. Day 29 to 30, I made a heat generator and this unlocked a ton of quest rewards for me. I got a bunch of really useful items that I would need much later. I then set up this ore processing plant right on the bottom floor. For now, this would be more than enough space. To complete even more quests, I put down some coal in the enrichment chamber to get some enriched carbon. Then my energy cube was full, so I picked it up and got a quest reward for that as well. I also saw that you could upgrade this thing and it wasn't super expensive, so I got started on the advanced energy cube that just needed a bunch of infused alloy which weren't too hard to make. The advanced energy cube was basically like six times bigger. Next up, I used the metallurgic infuser to make steel dust. I had to swap the redstone for coal or carbon and then put the iron in and recycled whatever came out back into the machine to make steel dust. So I ended up having a bunch of steel dusts cooking. After that I took another look into the quest book and saw refined storage as well which needed quartz. That means I needed to go to the nether. So after crafting some flint and steel the quest reward managed to give me 8 quartz as well. Oh yeah plus my steel cooked up and I took the reward for that. Just to speed things up I built a nether portal and lit that bad boy up. The nether itself wasn't too bad though. I was able to grab a bunch of quartz very easily. Then I went out to explore. So it turns out I was in a magma waste biome which was super annoying but uh, nothing was too dangerous. Other than these apotheosis spawns, I ended up dropping into a little cave-like area and got tons of gold nuggets. Then I decided to use my hammer to burn through these netherrack. While mining, I picked up a bunch of raw nickel and inferium essence. Plus I fought these nether silverfish like non-stop. Because I was already mining, I went down to the ancient debris level and found some immediately. From this little area alone I had three pieces. I spent the rest of the day shredding through the hammer. While mining I found some lava and forgot to turn the fluid tank into bucket mode and that basically burned the entire thing up. After my hammer almost broke I had stacks on stacks of golden quartz. I decided to just go back home then. I ended up with so many items to smelt and slowly put it through the process. While that was doing its thing I turned as many items into blocks as possible and cleared out my backpack. Once that was done I started making these processor bindings which are also needed for refined storage. I had almost everything available for this raw advanced processor. The only thing I needed to do was to smelt this thing and to help with that I actually looked at these uh, furnace augments. 
For some reason, regular cobblestone just wasn't working for these augments, so I had to grab a bunch of diorite. With that, I had a factory augment, and this created another problem now. I needed power to go towards the back of this furnace as well, so I had to move all the machines one block forward and placed cables behind them to route the power. With this little change, every machine was getting power again, so now I just had to find better power generators. I used all of my Inferium and combined that with this gem to make a Prudentium Essence. The next morning, I made another fluid tank. This time, I turned bucket mode on and I collected a bunch of lava. I filled the entire tank up and put it all in the heat generator. Since I ended up having so much stuff, I ended up completing a bunch of random quests. After that, I found more augments to put into the furnace. One was for speed and the other was for blasting. These two augments took up a bunch of power though. On the bright side, the enrichment chamber turned three ancient debris into six netherites scrap. The rest of the night I was watching things cook and turned a bunch into blocks to store away. Day 34 to day 35 I forgot that I had another furnace so I basically made another one to cook this raw advanced processor and with that I was able to make a controller. This was basically like the brain of the storage system. Next up I needed to make a disk drive which wasn't very expensive. All of that quartz mining really paid off though. I got that disk drive made and collected my quest reward. In order to increase the storage I needed to make these uh, storage parts but they were pretty expensive. Well the good ones were pretty expensive at least. I placed the basic storage setup in the center of this area. To see my items, I would need to be able to make this grid. Number one, I needed to smelt these quartz for silicon, and then I needed to make a construction and a destruction core. All of those also need these basic cores. It was tedious, but already having a bunch of items helped like crazy. After grabbing some sand, I was able to make the grid. Now it was time to put some power into the controller. I did it in a very stupid way, but it still worked. Uh, this place was charged up, and I could put items into the digital storage system system. I did need this crafting grid though, not just a regular grid. I was now able to work on putting storage disks into the disk drive. The first thing I was able to make was three 1k storage parts and some storage housing. With those three 1k parts, I could craft one 4k storage part. Because I liked paint, I spent all night making a bunch of 1k storage parts so that I would have enough for at least 16k. Before the night ended, I removed this energy cube and placed it down below to the ore processors. This controller was powered by the windmill alone now. On day 36, I ended up finally having enough of these random items to craft the last 4k storage part, which would allow me to make just one 16k storage disk. For now, this was totally worth it since I didn't have a bunch of stuff. Uh, after that, I put this storage disk into the disk drive, which means 16,000 items items can be in the storage system. I moved basically everything from the chests in there too. During that process, a bunch of quests were also unlocked. After putting all that stuff into one system, it was only like 20% full. I had one more upgrade left though, and that was to turn this grid into a crafting grid. And that was very simple. Before this night ended, I was able to craft another 4K storage disk for even more storage, and I also made a wireless transmitter and some upgrades, but it still only extended like 32 blocks. Day 37, I saw that I had a bunch of C so I made a crusher. I put some seeds into this thing and went out to make an automatic composter as well for bone meal. While all that was going on, I completed a bunch of quests leading up to like the Tetrium farmland in the mystical agriculture quest line. I even made an infusion altar and a pedestal, but I would need like seven more pedestals. Before the night ended, I made it a whole nother crafting grid which completed another quest and I just needed ender pearls to make the wireless version of this thing. The next day, I used a bunch of the platinum ingots I had and replaced the hand and the Paxil heads. On top of that, I made a diamond tip for the Paxil and a quartz tip for the hammer. Then I began working on a jetpack. First up, I needed the wooden version. While crafting this thing, it needed leather, so I had to uh, put these leads to use and bring some cows back. I went up to that hill where I found the cows last time and discovered another village. So I took all their hay bales and everything from the engineer's house. After that, I activated the waystone and remembered that there was a meteor thing near another village. Now with diamond level tools, I was able to break into to this meteor and get the chest inside. There were tons of gilded blackstone and the chest itself had some pretty good loot too. I put everything away in the storage system and made tons of bread. Then with some spare chests, I put enchanted books, gems, and apotheosis gear in them. Since there was a new update with Apotheosis that changed a lot of things, I had to throw all these gems down and crush them with an anvil. Now that ends up giving you this thing called Gem Dust, which can start the mod properly. I was able to make this thing called a salvaging table, and that will let you get special material from these Apotheosis gear. Once I got that set up, I went back to working on the jetpack, and these things weren't too expensive. It was just super annoying to craft all the little pieces. 
I ended up making most of the things, but I was still short like three leather. And once the rain cleared, I grabbed some items and went out to get cows and sheep. This time I found a pillager outpost where I grabbed all the wool. Past that, I found uh, one of those meteors again and I broke into them. This one gave me more gilded blackstone and the chest had more loot. Past the meteor though, I found this weird beacon-like structure and the chests weren't too special. Other than this enchanted voodoo puppet and this thing called the bunny hoppers. So the puppet ended up not working for me, but the bunny hoppers were like the best thing ever. It gave me jump boost and immunity to fall damage. Plus, I learned that I could use these wilden wings to make leather. So I spent all night fighting mobs and targeting these wildens. Uh, I then chose to just sleep in this one uh, roguelike dungeon that I was in before too. Since I've never tackled a roguelike dungeon like this one, I made my way down this super long staircase. The floors closer to the surface were very similar to the other roguelikes. I just took out a bunch of spawners and lit these areas up. This way I could loot every single chest. Uh, while I was here, I made sure to grab everything now, gems and enchanted weapons since I could just dismantle it all. As I got deeper into this dungeon, I got even more golden apples and my backpack was starting to become filled. This was slowly becoming a problem so I made sure to only grab the purest gems and the highest rarity of these apotheosis gear. As I got closer to the bottom floor, not only was my backpack filled now, but my inventory was also getting filled too. Lucky for me, I took out a zombie who was holding another backpack. It was an iron backpack too, which cleared up a ton of space for me. Eventually, I made my way down to the final floor, which was like fully nether themed. The chest in here had tons of gold and even an enchanted golden apple. I also made sure to pick up these redstone blocks that were on the ground. I managed to fill basically two whole backpacks up. Some of the chests in here had like a whole stack of gold in them. It was pretty insane. Before leaving, I explored the cave connected to the dungeon and picked up some amethyst shards. I surfaced up near a village and slowly started to bring these cows along as well. The next morning, I had the cows in the pen and it was time to organize everything. I put all the gems and enchanted gear in a gold chest, everything that couldn't be smelted into the storage system and any ores in the processor. Once all that was done, I cleared some space in the storage room and salvaged any apotheosis gear that didn't have good enchants. I also made a book of disenchantment, but that would be for much later. Also in that dungeon, I picked up tons of books, so the enchantment setup was ready to go. Once that was finished, I ended up building another wind generator and took the quest word for that. Plus I plugged it into the ore processor down below. Then I got my first enchantment, which was all right. I had tons of levels anyway, so I just kept re-rolling it. I ended up with protection three on my helmet and leggings and efficiency four on my paxel. Day 43, I crushed a ton of gems to get gem dust and I fought this pillager patrol, but left the captain alive for now. Instead, I went to take out an enderman. I needed red dyes to make this uh, merchant summoner. I had no clue what it was. I placed it down and a villager fell from the sky, but this dude only sells like very basic seeds and saplings, so it wasn't too useful for me right now. At this point, I didn't know that you could uh, configure inputs and outputs within each machine, so I was fiddling with this basic energy cube since it wouldn't take any of the wind generator's energy. That just ended up making me mad, so I moved on to make this wooden jetpack. Now this thing was super cool, but it burned through fuel, so I had to upgrade it pronto. I think I might have messed up a little by making a copper jetpack, uh, but it was about 10 times bigger than the wooden one. I quickly hopped into the nether to fill this fluid tank, and uh, that was able to fuel this jetpack up as well. The next day, I learned that you could put ingots into the sturdy repair kit, but I put osmium in, thinking that it would fix my armor. My armor wasn't from silent gear, so of course it didn't work. On the bright side, this jetpack was working like a dream though, and I quickly went into the nether to grab more lava. When I came back, I actually used an anvil like a normal person and repaired the armor. Just to see what was up, I teleported to the first village that I spawned in and went to see the sky ship since I could fly now. The mobs here were pretty ridiculous, but I was able to check one chest out and they were stacked. I couldn't grab anything and had to retreat since they almost killed me. Uh, back at home, I salvaged even more of those apotheosis gear and crushed even more gems. Then I was able to use a bunch of those netherite scrap I had to make one netherite ingot. This actually ended up working out very well since I got a quest reward, which just gave me another ancient debris. I put that through the enrichment chamber to get two scrap. Now with all of that, I was able to make a reforging table. This meant with gem dust, the materials I salvaged, and a bunch of levels, I was able to re-roll affixes on my gear. It would also allow me to add sockets on my gear as well. For now, the affix on my Paxel and Katana were pretty good, so I just took those. I also put one on my helmet, but then I ran out of levels. Day 45 to 47, I planted five more Inferium seeds and completed this hammock and sleeping bag quest. Next, I saw that you could make a sink, which 
which is something that I would need eventually. I just needed to grab clay whenever I could. With that noted, I teleported back to that first meteor to go mining. I was able to collect tons of clay immediately and even fall into a pretty large cave. I made sure to grab every single ore down here and once I tapped that cave out, I started digging lower and found myself in another cave and did the exact same. This place though actually had diamonds. Now the cave under this one was absolutely gigantic. I could already see tons of valuable stuff. I ended up running out of torches so I had to place a waystone down and then quickly came home. After the torches, I ripped this place apart as well. This cave ended up having tons of redstone and diamonds. I was able to grab it all after lighting this place up. There was also an apotheosis boss room with a very OP zombie hoglin. This fight actually took way too long. There wasn't anything that good in the chest either. I went right back to stripping this cave clean. My backpack was almost filled, but I really wanted to set up an area to mine diamonds at least. I chose Y equals negative 51 and ripped through this entire area. I ended up having so many items that I needed to turn them all into blocks. I was still in the mines and totaled 24 diamonds and like thousands of everything else. I also ended up running out of torches so I wanted to mine really quick and then leave. I used this jetpack to fly around the caves. Even with this uh, inventory management I did, I decided to call it a mining trip. As soon as I got home, I started to clear out my backpack and there was just so much stuff that needed to be put away. I replaced all my tools and even placed all the ores in the processors. Just look at all the stuff I had. I mean, this wasn't even everything. There was also a bunch of stuff I had to put in the storage system as well. Then to generate even more power, I made some infused alloy to craft these solar panels and eventually make a solar generator. There's also an advanced version of this, but I decided to just use the basic one for now. While waiting for everything to smelt, I crushed even more gems and in the morning, I moved the windmills back a few blocks. This way, the solar generator would not be blocked by anything. Obviously, it decided to rain anyway. And then while messing with the setup at night, I decided to switch to the heat generator and this slowed everything down to a crawl since nothing was getting enough power. I had to remake the older setup again. A 50 to 51, I moved the windmill up on the hill for now. This was because they spin way faster the higher up they are, which in turn generates even more energy. That night, I relied on the coal generator, and in the morning, I made an extra energy cube and started working on an iron jetpack. Once again, these things aren't super expensive, it just needed so many random little things to be crafted. Regardless, I got it done, and this jetpack was about like four times bigger than the copper one. The coal generator was working surprisingly well, and I had so many ingots just ready to go. Also, now I had two advanced energy cubes being charged up as well. Day 52 to day 53, I made more infused alloy so that I could have an advanced fluid tank. With this, I was able to pick up way more lava for the heat generator, but I think the heat generator might have been the worst at getting power. I used all the lava to surround this heat generator with perpetual lava, but I think I messed up somewhere along the way and I uh, ended up burning a good bit of my house down. I absolutely didn't learn my lesson at all and the next morning, morning my house was up in flames again plus this time I had no power so for the rest of the day I just used an energy cube it was the one that I filled up to power the rest of these ores that night I had to infuse a bunch of alloys with diamonds to make reinforced alloys then guess who developed some brain cells all I basically had to do to power these machines was use two wind generators and that did the trick better than anything else I actually made two more windmills just in case so that I could charge uh, these energy cubes and uh, in case I needed them for the future I ended up using one of them to power the machines as well and one once again, I had tons of ingots to turn into blocks. To prepare for more exploration, I made all the materials for a pulverizer. With that, I placed some old diamond armor in here to get some diamonds in return, but this was mainly used to make sawdust. So after I placed a bunch of logs in here, I used the sawdust to make a bunch of cardboard boxes. This would allow me to carry spawners. Before the night ended, I made a diamond backpack and got four diamonds in return. Then I made a blueprint for all the armor pieces, the shield, rings, and even a bracelet. All of those also had quests as well. Day 55 to day 56, most things were already smelted. So with the insane amounts of ingots I had, I repaired some of my armor pieces. I then made all the materials to craft this osmium compressor, which wasn't too expensive. This was needed to make refined obsidian, which would be huge for me right now. One of the quests was also to make uh, refined glow stone as well, so I hopped to the nether to grab a good amount of glowstone dust. All of that allowed me to make this refined glowstone ingot pretty easily. So in order to make refined obsidian though, I needed to make refined obsidian dust, which is when you have to infuse obsidian dust with diamonds. It's not super hard to make. The next day, I waited for the last bit of ore left over to cook. Once that was done, I put some obsidian through the enrichment chamber, which gave uh, four dust. I got about a stack of that and also made uh, these enriched diamonds that I use on a metallurgic infuser. Once that process was done, I 
had a bunch of refined obsidian dust. The next day I had about 20 of those dusts ready to become ingots. This process was the slowest though and it used up a lot of osmium. I did get a quest reward for the refined obsidian though, which was some pretty useful stuff. I just let the process go and started working on this level 2 ore processor. First up was a pressurized reaction chamber. It was going on pretty well until it needed steel. At least the refined obsidian ingots were all coming in now. I ended up with 52 of those ingots before I stopped the process. Anyway, with all the refined obsidian ingots, I made a full set of armor and uh, checked out their enchants. That night I also made a good amount of tertium essence. Day 58 to day 59, now it was time for huge upgrades. This was so I could make a level 2 ore processing plant. First up I would need a much larger area and I chose to dig into this hill so I would be able to place uh, windmills up top. After putting three of these generators together, I routed the cables into the hill. I then plugged these machines to see if they would get power. Now in order to upgrade to level 2, I would need more machines. First up, there was this thing called an electrolytic separator, which required some weird things, but I had it all. To use the separator, I needed an infinite source of water, and I chose the sink, which would also give me quest rewards as well. I hung up the separator on the wall and placed the sink right next to it, which provided water. Now the separator takes the water and makes hydrogen and oxygen, both gases that we could use. The next thing I needed was a purification chamber which takes the oxygen in. I placed this underneath the electrolytic separator and connected it with a gas pipe. I had to mess with the cables a little bit to make them look better. Then to use the extra hydrogen, I made a gas burning generator which would fuel the entire system perpetually. I placed that in the corner behind the separator plus I put all the pipes in. The next machine was a crusher which I already made but I forgot so I crafted it again. Those are basically all the machines I needed for a level 2 ore processing plant. I had to do one little thing though and that was to set up the outputs so they go in from left to right all across each of these machines. That gas burning generator was pretty insane though, it filled up an energy cube super quickly. Now it was time to decorate. My main goal was to make sure this thing fit the landscape, so I terraformed it a little and crafted a chisel to make stone bricks and crack stone bricks. The floors are complete by the morning and already look so much better. I then put some oak logs up as pillars and used oak slabs to cover the dirt on the roof. Once that was done I used a very weird type of stone for the back wall. But left the cables exposed since I really like that look. I then expanded the sides uh, by one more block and used the same floor pattern on the side walls. Then to test things out I put 31 pieces of copper ore into the purification chamber but it actually turned out that I didn't have enough power. So I had to move a wind generator over here and I pushed the separators to the sides of the wall which made the entire place look so much better. Okay the process is this, the ores get turned into clumps, the clumps get crushed into dirty dusts, dirty dusts get uh, enriched to regular dust and then smelt. On the right side I also placed a few of those metallurgic infusers. Oh yeah and like 30 of those copper became like 81 ingots. Eventually I had 4 infusers on the right side and all of them were powered up by like one wind generator since they don't need too much power. I also made sure to stock up the first two with coal and the last two with redstone and diamonds in that order. Day 62 to day 63 the next big goal was to get all the modium ore. Before I went out to search for some I put speed upgrades into the machines. I also made a crafting table on a stick and then a nature's compass. With the compass I was able to locate a deep dark biome. This one was close and it's where the ore spawns. It was a huge cave between some mountains. Okay, Once I got inside I started digging around until I saw uh, any types of skulk blocks. I actually ended up pretty deep underground and still couldn't find anything but I did get a bunch of ores though. I searched for the deep dark biome again but then it said I was 400 blocks away. Uh, at least I started stumbling into caves though. Around here I immediately found some spawners and the chest underneath had a bunch of diamonds. The jetpack also helps like crazy to zoom around these caves. I ended up taking on another monster box and found one more chest under a spawner which was stacked. Then finally after all of that I found some skulk veins which meant that this place had some potential. I looked around and couldn't find these ores at all. Once I made my way inside this skeleton dungeon I ended up using this cardboard box to bring a spawner home. The chests in here were pretty nice and uh, they had a bunch of enchanted books. On the way out I broke some skulk blocks and hammered my way out of this entire area. Uh, I was pretty much following this compass and I collected a bunch of ores along the way. Eventually I found another little area filled with skulk stuff but even after looking around I couldn't find any uh, all the modium ores. The amount of stuff I had now was pretty ridiculous. I turned all the blocks into ores and put them through the processor. While that was smelting I went to put all the stuff away. I also ended up having power issues so I placed a solar generator with the wind generators plus I made one more windmill. But the real issue I think were the speed upgrades. So I had to remove a bunch of those speed upgrades and put energy upgrades instead. This made the machines way more efficient and hold more energy. That plus this energy cube kind of fixed all the issues. With all that running I put fences up front so that 
that mobs couldn't come in. Before the night ended, I had energy upgrades and a few speed upgrades in every machine. The next day, I found these huge amounts of sugarcane and grabbed a bunch of them plus the sand over here. I also had 53 levels and decided to use them to enchant this refined obsidian armor. I got protection 4 on the boots and the chest plate which was huge. I settled for the fire protection on the leggings and protection 2 on the helmet for now. With this, I think I was basically almost invincible. But there is even better gear though. Then I made tons of processors to craft this wireless crafting grid. Even if it only extends to 32 blocks away, I was now able to access the storage from my machine area. I also ended up making 4 more energy upgrades for the purification chamber and crafted a warp stone. Then later that night, I made an advanced feeding upgrade plus these warp plates. I placed one on the bottom of my house and the other in the machine room so I could easily warp between the two areas. Before the night ended, I crushed a bunch of gems and salvaged tons of gear. With that, I was able to put an epic affix on my helmet. Day 66, I socketed some max health gems into the helmet and I went to check on the ores. This time, I actually fully got rid of the speed upgrades and upgraded my furnace to a diamond one. I then learned uh, that I could check how many foods I'd need to eat to increase my hearts. This cooked chicken was something that I hadn't eaten yet, so I made sure to run around without my feeding upgrade and I got my two extra hearts. Since I don't need cows anymore, I got rid of the pen. My next order of business was making a refined obsidian paxel and hammerhead to replace the platinum ones. This basically doubled the durability. I also upgraded the sword as well. The hard part was basically repairing these items, so I had to put a bunch of refined obsidian ingots into the repair kit. And in order to help with that, I also had to make even more ingots. I added the osmium compressor into the machine area and let this refined obsidian dust turn into ingots. That night, I was more than ready to take down that sky ship. I flew up on top, broke a bunch of spawners, and took out those hoglin riding wither skeletons. These guys ended up not doing any damage at all to me. The chests here though were top notch. Every single one of them had golden apples and rare ingots. Using my jetpack, I was also able to take out those floating spawners as well. While loading some more, I made sure to take all the armors and food as well. I even grabbed all the furnaces here too. The bottom of the sky ship was the mother load. After clearing the area, I ended up with a bunch of gold blocks and tons of diamonds. I basically spent all night looting and decided to explore in another direction until I ran out of fuel. During this journey, I went across tons of biomes and found a pillager outpost. This place had evokers and witches though, so I was able to grab two totems of undying and complete a bounty for the witches. I actually managed to make it home before I ran out of fuel. Then I had the very annoying task of just slightly organizing the loot I had collected. I also picked up these uh, bananas that I ate to hopefully increase my hearts, but it turns out that I maxed out that option. That night, I completed some quests and one of them was to make advanced cables, so I replaced the basic one on my main machines. I then chopped down and replanted a ton of trees. This way, I was able to make a bunch of charcoal and charcoal pieces since I was running out of coal. After that, I spent most of the time crafting materials to increase my storage again. I had to make so many 1k storage parts just to get 16k more storage space. Once night hit, I force loaded my chunks temporarily and went out to grab coal from the mountains. After tapping the mountains dry, I even took all the coal from that meteor crash. This place also had tons of blocks of coal as well. So now I think I had more than enough forever. Day 69 to day 70, I spent these days waiting for all my ores to smelt. During that time, I did a few things. First off, I put a gas upgrade and energy upgrades into each of these machines. And once again, that ended up being a bad idea. So to help with the power demand, I had to bring a charged energy cube over. I removed some upgrades again, but at least the ingots being produced were insane though. To help with the energy demand, I also almost maxed out every energy upgrade. After all that, all I really did was just wait. Day 71 to day 72, this was all the ingots made from all that mining and processing. It was pretty crazy. I turned everything into blocks to save space, uh, which was surprisingly satisfying. Then on top of the hill, I expanded the area and started making way more solar panels and solar generators. Turns out this advanced solar generator might be one of the best generators out right now. The only negative is that it doesn't work at night. So to fix that, I had all of its energy input into the energy cube and that energy cube would output towards the rest of the system. This cube would even start stock up if the energy wasn't being used. I connected both sides together and replaced some of the basic cables as well. For some reason, I also collected a bunch of lava. Once I came home, I used the leftover netherite scrap to make netherite ingot. And with that, I made a netherite coating that I placed on the Paxel. This meant that I could mine all the modium ores now. I then used the sharpness four and unbreaking three books on my sword. Next morning, I upgraded the cube to the elite version. I was generating a real good amount of power now. Now my inferior side of
side of the farm was basically filled out and I used most of the inferior essence to make the highest level of the stuff, which for me right now was tertium. I then also set up the ore input properly with the chest and last but not least I made a mega torch to stop mobs spawning within 64 blocks from it. Oh yeah and to end these days off I actually ended up traveling to that first village I spawned near and started a raid. I even fought through most of it and it eventually just stopped so I'm assuming some of the villagers just died off. From here, I started looking for another deep dark biome and I was pretty close to one. I just needed to start digging down. I was collecting a decent amount of loot and basically just beeline it straight down to the bottom. I broke into a small dungeon and found even more loot. Eventually, I saw some skulk blocks and that was a great sign. That ended up just being a super tiny patch though and I actually broke all of it because it gave XP. After that, I found another zombie dungeon and this time I actually boxed the spawner up for later. Finally, I broke into a big deep dark area. I found this monster box plus I spread this skulk stuff around and then I woke the warden up. Not gonna lie, this fight was super easy. I didn't even take any real damage and just uh, by moving backwards, I was able to take this dude out super easily. This gave me so much confidence, I just stopped crouching. On top of that, the quest reward gave me an all the modium ingot. You basically only need one anyway to go to the mining dimension and grab more, but I decided to stick around. I actually ended up taking out three wardens on my quest of clearing all the skulk in this area. Eventually, after clearing a bunch, I found two all the modium ores in a random corner. This gave me one request reward and then uh, collecting that ingot also gave me another reward. So in total, I ended up with five ores. I came home, put all the items in their respective area and began processing the all the modium ore. So from those five, I ended up with 11 all the modium ingots. This opened up so much more to do. The first thing I made was a teleporting path to the mining dimension and I got an extra one as a quest reward. I placed one on the other side of my waystone and used an empty hand to jump in. As soon as I was in, I placed the waypoint and hopped right back out. Out. Day 75, since I had so many items smelting, I decided to work on a mob grinder. So I cleared out an area right next to my house and built this very simple little area. It just needed to be 5x5x5. Five by five by five. The floor had to be dirt and that was basically the only requirement. Next up, I made some Eyes of Ender with that one blaze rod I had. Using that, I was able to make an XP drain singularity tank. So I stood on this thing and it took my XP until I could pick it up with buckets. After that, I made this thing called a mob swap and got some DNA from this chicken. I actually messed up twice by making the wrong chicken feed and accidentally feeding it to uh, two innocent chickens. The one I needed had to be cursed. Lucky for me, I got those chicken spawn eggs and once I got the cursed feed, I used that to get this rotten egg. Trust me, it all starts to make sense soon. Since it was night, I hopped into the nether and placed one of those uh, mining dimension teleporters here. This takes you to the other dimension. And here, I had to dig my way out towards the surface. This place had crazy enemies though. I fought a bunch of blazes and this epic apotheosis boss who dropped a really nice helmet. One of the quest rewards also gave me ancient soul berries which apply night vision and I could finally see things now. I actually ended up picking up a wither skeleton head too and some more quest rewards so I decided to come back home for now. I needed those blaze rods to make more eyes of ender and to make this absorption hopper. I also needed this uh, mob masher as well as these vector pads to push all the mobs into that masher. Day 76 it was time to construct the mob grinder. I needed these uh, tinted glasses to finish it but I only had six. Before anything I wanted to make sure to decorate the area so I used some oak logs as frames and a bunch of stone bricks. While smelting more stone I I repaired my tools and managed to fill out most of the walls inside. I then placed this mob masher right on top of this lever. Since it was all working, I used that rotten egg to turn this dirt into dreadful dirt. Now on here, it will just constantly keep spawning mobs. But since I had the lights up, it wasn't spawning anything just yet. I then used these vector pads to lead everything towards the masher. Once that was done, I could only fit a few tinted glass in, so I went to search for some more. Even after searching all night, I couldn't find any amethyst geodes in this cave. I quickly returned back home to make an ender inhibitor so endermen couldn't teleport out of this trap. Then I went down to the cave right beside my house and found a geode with tons of amethyst shards. With that I removed the torches from inside of the mob room and boarded things up. I had to get rid of this mega torch as well but now things are working like a charm. Next up I placed this absorption hopper down and connected that to the XP tank. I also placed the ender inhibitor down as well. On the left side I made a diamond chest and placed that there for the items. Once I set up the inputs things were working perfectly. I just had to terraform this area a little bit to uh, basically make it fit. 
For now, I just had no idea how to use this XP tank. Then because of how many items was pumping out into this diamond chest, I had to make a level 2 stack upgrade. For now, I was also smelting things, so I needed to shut it off, otherwise I would just lag out of this game. I just put torches inside and that did the trick. Day 78 to day 79, I started off these days by making these ender chests and pouches. Then they gave me even more ender related items as quest rewards. After that, I wanted to start messing with these drawers. I needed to make these botany pots too. It turns out that you could make a very efficient farm right on top of these drawers by themselves. I also made the entire Inferium side of the farm filled with Inferium farmland. Once that was done, I made a configuration tool and a copper upgrade, both just for the quest rewards. I set up this 1x2 drawer uh, to house a mini wheat farm and it actually worked really well. It was really cool. I wanted an area of drawers to just farm a bunch of things that I didn't want to do manually. I ended up setting one for uh, sugarcane, oak trees, and carrots, oh, and of course the wheat one. All these are automatic, so I wouldn't have to do anything. Because of that, I ripped apart my wheat farm and uh, replaced it with all the inferium seeds. To automate this farm, I made a harvesting pylon and put that right in the center. This thing needed a hoe and a chest to get it started though. Day 80, I made a storage controller because I wanted to connect these drawers into the storage system. I linked all the drawers up to the controller and even moved it right next to the storage system. At this time, I didn't realize that I would need an exporter cable. In the meantime, I made that inferior farm into a true 9x9 farm and bone meal as much as I can even though I didn't think it did anything. Oh yeah, all the ore ended up also being processed and for some reason the compacting upgrade did not work super well in this chest. Before the night ended, I made tons of refined obsidian dust and ingots. Then I used these bottles to pick up the XP from this tank. Day 81 to day 82, to get infinite amounts of loot, I would need to go to the mining dimension. Uh, so to be smarter than that, I wanted to make a quarry as well. Before that though, I connected this external storage to the drawer controller and plugged that into the system. Since that was working, I made some compacting drawers for uh, deep slate and stone. This way, all those things wouldn't take up a bunch of storage space in the main system. Once that was done, I made this thing called a builder and with this, I would need to place a quarry card inside it. Since I had all the materials, I made a shape card, then a quarry card. I then needed to turn that quarry card into a fortune quarry card, but I had no gas tiers. So on the way to the nether, I checked on the inferior farm and it was working like a charm. This might have been the most annoying thing ever though. On my way to find a soul sand valley, I raided a bunch of nether temples which had good gear and I even found some vibranium ore which I couldn't mine yet. I also found a bastion which gave me ancient debris but for some reason I just could not find any ghasts. I did find something really cool though in this temple, night vision goggles. After all of that, I finally found a soul sand valley and in here I took out a ton of ghasts and even these wither skeletons and these guys ended up dropping a bunch of uh, skull fragments which can eventually be turned into wither skeleton heads. I actually ended up finding these gas tiers in a structure instead and decided to come home then. Finally, I was able to make a fortune quarry card and turn that into a clearing card as well. So in order to get this quarry, I filled up an energy cube and made tons of windmills, four to be exact. I hopped into the mining dimension and turned my chunks on. I placed this builder right across from a chunk and clicked the shape card on the builder. Now I wanted to only mine like this chunk to start off with. So I selected the two opposite corners of this chunk and started messing with the dimensions and the offset. I raised this thing up 256 blocks, which was the max. and I. I set it back down 120 blocks. This would have to be readjusted later. Now I had to power this absolute unit. Good thing I bought those four windmills and some chests along. I also upgraded these chests to diamond as well. The power setup was pretty basic. I just had connected all these wind generators to the builder, but setting up the chest took a little bit. Once I started the machine, it took all the power and mowed down a little section of the chunk. That alone gave me so many ores and tons of cobblestone. I placed a uh, compacting upgrade on the second chest, which is supposed to do a little bit of the compacting job for me. I spent that whole night making tons of solar panels to get an advanced solar generator in the mining dimension as well. All of that ended up giving so much dirt, cobblestone, and deep slate, so now I had to blacklist those items. Also, look at how cool this quarry is. It works so well. The next morning, I moved all those deep slate, cobblestone, and dirt blocks into compacting drawers. This was in case I would ever just need a bunch. After that, I force loaded the quarry chunk and now all I had to do was just wait. I did pop in here occasionally to add wind generators and uh, see the progress. Day 86, I found out there's upgrades for the mob masher and I made one that increased sharpness, smite, and most importantly, looting. With these upgrades, both the chest and the XP tank were getting filled up crazy fast. I then found out how to use this tank. I just needed an XP tab, which would uh, just drop levels to me. Yeah, this place was just giving so many items out. I wish I built it way earlier. I was now able to complete 
the quest tag needed ender pearls and eyes of ender. Before the night ended, I made this personal shrinking device and wanted to make this thing called a lily pad of fertility, but it was kind of expensive. Once morning hit, I put a compacting upgrade into the mob grinder chest and then I made a graveyard. Now once this place gets souls, uh, I could use a book of disenchantment to remove enchants off any armors. Also now this mob grinder was kind of getting out of hand. I actually had to make a stack upgrade level 3 since there was just so many items flowing through. My next goal though was to make wireless power and to do that I had to go underground all the way to bedrock to crush these redstone dusts. This gave me tons of flux dusts and I was able to craft a flux plug which grabs energy and a flux point which ends up transferring the energy. I placed the plug on the energy cube and set up the network. For now, I really didn't know how this worked, so I couldn't get it all done, but eventually I got it to work perfectly. Day 88, I swapped energy cubes in the mining dimension and checked it on the quarry. The quarries cannot mine all the modium ore, that's why it had to be clearing so I could just see it and mine it myself. I ended up with four more all the modium ores, and since I just repowered this quarry, it was moving at like light speed. The amount of items that was dug up was ridiculous. I think now I basically had just an infinite amount of uh, uh, ores. I took the ancient debris that was in here, and and uh, this quarry stopped mining. So that means I had to change the offset to go 100 blocks lower all the way down to bedrock. Back home, I turned those four all the modium ore into eight ingots and the four ancient debris into 12 netherite scrap. Then the mob grinder was also super stacked, so I cleared a bunch of space and used the inferium in there to enhance my farm. Day 89 to 90, I cleared out the mob grinder one more time and put a bunch of pouches in my tool belt. This way I could hold all these wrenches and random stuff. I then realized all I had to do was place a flux point and that would basically just give me wireless power from wherever I needed. Now everything could be a lot cleaner. So I cleared up the entire top of the hill and placed all the wind generators in line. I also connected all of that into an energy cube which that was connected to a flux plug after all that i also connected the energy cube into an advanced solar generator as well for the machines below they were all now powered by a single flux point the next day i put another advanced solar generator into the main system as well once that was done i went underground to grab a bunch of obsidian with that i made this thing called a flux controller which was supposed to like give energy to everything in your inventory but it just didn't work so i would have to power my jetpack manually from now on update on the quarry it would mine down to bedrock and this is what it yielded. It's pretty crazy. Day 91 to day 92 for the next few days I had to smelt and organize these things. It basically filled up my backpack and the input chest as well. I actually had to make another stack upgrade for all the stuff that needed to be cooked and a compacting upgrade for the output of everything. I don't think I'm gonna run out of items anytime soon. While that was cooking I had to set up this quarry for another chunk. I needed a bunch of all the modium ores. I chose the chunk right next to it and with full power this thing shredded through a massive amount of blocks. Really quickly I flew around uh, looking for a desert to get some cactuses or cacti. During my journey, I took down this pillager ship and very stupidly broke a vindicator spawner. That was just free emeralds. Eventually, I found a desert village, grabbed a cactus, and took the waystone back home. With that, plus these mob drops, I could finally make that lily thing. But of course, I didn't have the main material, a lily pad. I had to go out one more time to find a swamp. And around that journey, I also found some cool villages and fought some random structures. That journey ended up with me getting 19 lily pads, which should be more than enough. For now, I just made two lily pads of fertility. I placed one right behind the harvesting pylon and it took a while to work, but this thing was crazy. In 93, I spent this entire time just watching the ore processor cook. It was all worth it though since the quarry was also going on as well. That ended up giving me 17 ancient debris and then I had to reset it back down to bedrock. There was about 5 all the modium ore just chilling there though. The 17 ancient debris turned out to be 51 pieces of netherite scrap through the processor and with that I ended up making 4 netherite ingots. I then used the all the modium ingots to craft this thing called a salvager and on top of that I made a material grater. These were all just for the quest rewards. I had to make a bunch of weird items to use the material grater like these dusts. The material grater was definitely not worth it or I just had no idea how to use it. I also used a lot of those wither skull fragments to make five wither skeleton heads. In 95 I had 10 extra all the modium ingots now and that lily pad sped up the inferium production like crazy. I had seven stacks of inferium essence now. I used all of that to get like three supremium essence. More importantly, I was able to make a set of armor from the all the modium ingots. Stats wise, it's very similar to the refined obsidian one. The biggest change is that these ones are indestructible. The quest reward for making the armors gave me so many more ores, which meant that I could basically get all of my ingots back. On top of that, in the mining dimension, a second chunk had been cleared and I moved the quarry across one more time. This new gear looked incredible and I wanted to test it out in the other dimension. 
I ended up getting some mythical level gear here and I uh, got some more blaze rods for fun. Once I came back home, I salvaged the mythic gear and tried to see what affixes I could get. Nothing was too good though. I ended this day by upgrading my furnace and putting all of my ores into the input chest one more time. In 96, I used more Inferium to make Supremium. I ended up having enough to do a really cool ritual, so I made some more infusion pedestals as well. Once everything was set up, I surrounded this prosperity seed around Supremium Essence and four Netherite ingots. As soon as the ritual finished, I got Netherite seeds. I planted immediately to hopefully get it grown quickly. After that, I turned that farmland into Tertium and uh, drained that XP tank while clearing out my mob grinder. Day 97, I got good enchants on my boots and made an all the modium sword, which gave me three ores as a reward. Then there was a soul in the graveyard, which allowed me to disenchant my old sword. With that, I was able to put sharpness four on this new sword. After that, I made two super advanced processors, which took some netherite ingots. With that, I made an advanced wireless transmitter on the storage system that extended like 2000 blocks out. Later that night, I made a bow using refined obsidian ingots, fine silk cords, and a compressed iron tool rod. On top of that, I got power 4 on it as well. Day 98, I increased the transmitter to 3,000 blocks now. I then had 7 netherite essences in the farm, and I mined the leftover all the modium in the quarry. Once all that was done, I was able to make an all the modium pickaxe, and also get even more ores. That night, to prepare for the next few days, I made more eyes of ender, an extra energy cube, and almost died to this absolute tank. I think this guy was just supposed to be a traitor, but it almost killed me when I attacked it. Day 99 to day 100, this Grave Guardian was a traitor. I was able to trade with it once it stopped being aggro. I on the other hand was running out of time, so I took these Eyes of Ender to go looking for the Stronghold. Now this Stronghold wasn't far away at all, it was literally like two islands uh, in front of my base. I followed these eyes all the way down and broke into the structure. Of course I looted literally everything possible. Eventually I found the portal room and placed a waystone down, this way I was able to clear my inventory and charge my jetpack real quick. I then hopped into the end dimension and made my way towards the main island. The fight was super easy. I just flew around breaking the crystals. Then when it came time to take out the dragon, I was able to uh, basically defeat him before it even perched for the first time. I got some quest rewards from that and 40 levels plus the dragon egg. The big problem was I forgot to complete one of the quests before the dragon, so the main dragon line didn't complete. Since it was day 100, I decided to go back home. I enchanted my armor and I was able to make a netherite ingot now from my farm. Then to end these days off, I put some affixes in my gear. Day 101, I still had so many items processing from the previous days and the mob farm was filled to the brim. So I cleared the entire grinder out and grabbed all the XP. During this time, the mod pack was also updated and that ender dragon quest was completed for me. With all these wild and horns and wings, I set up new drawers since these turn into leather and bone meal. That night, I grabbed tons of Inferium Essence and more all the modium ingots to make a hoe for the harvesting pylon. For the rest of the night, I cleared even more space for the mob farm chests. When it became morning, I turned as many Inferium Essences into Supremium as possible. Then with that, I made a single Emerald Seed. This way, I could start getting the Emeralds automated. With all of that done, I went into the mining dimension to check on another quarry. And here, I only grabbed the gold and the Inferium Essences. After that, I also set this thing to run all the way down to bedrock. As soon as I came home, I started working on a diamond jetpack, so I made tons of these energy coils. After getting really deep into this, I realized I skipped a tier. I still needed a gold jetpack first. Day 103, that ended up not being super hard, and I got the two upgrades, and now this thing can hold up to 30 million FE. Powering this thing was a nightmare though, so I would need to upgrade my power generation next. In the meantime, I went into the mining dimension, since it had a full energy cube there, and I filled this jetpack up to 20 million FE. As soon as I came back, I grabbed all of the processed ingots, and it still didn't even make a dent toward everything else that was left. For now, I think it was more efficient to just regularly smelt everything. Also, now that this jetpack was filled, I went to collect some vibranium. I only needed like one anyway so I could make the potions and grab tons more. This actually ended up taking a surprising amount of time. I fought a bunch of ghasts, raided a bastion, and then finally found two ores. The quest reward also gave me one extra. While I was here, I decided to dig through huge chunks of this area too, but I had no luck. With just about three ores, I ran them through the processor and ended up with seven vibranium ingots. This actually ended up giving me more vibranium and the potion as a quest reward. My next goal was also to get this in infinity range booster, and eventually a dimension card. Later that day, I realized my lily pad of fertility could extend back one more row, so I moved my farm back one block. Then I smelled some more ores in the furnace, and the power draw was crazy, so I had to upgrade the power really quick. 
I grabbed some compacting drawers and melons to start. The next day I made some hopper botany pots to hopefully get a melon burning power source. With all the items gathered I set this up right next to the wind generator area. I started off with the compacting drawers that had melons at the very bottom. So these botany pots would automatically grow melons and add on to this drawer. Now all of that would connect to this crusher which crushes the melon slices into biofuel. Then the biofuel goes into the pressurized reaction chamber. But I actually had to clean up the rest of the area to construct this whole thing. I was actually having a pretty hard time setting up the pressurized reaction chamber. It took the whole night and it still wasn't even done. I also spent the whole next day setting up the electrolytic separator. Basically I needed to get the oxygen pumped into the pressurized reaction chamber and that turns the biofuel into ethylene. Day 107 to day 108 I got the system to produce ethylene and some substrates. Now I had to plug in the gas burning generators but of course I made some mistakes so I had to completely remake the system just a few blocks back. This time I routed the power from underneath which made life so much easier. I also set a drawer up for the pressurized reaction chamber to collect the substrate. Things were a little wonky for now but everything was working. I was then able to put a flux plug into the system which was generating some really good energy. Since the first gas burning generator was full, I decided to place another one. With all that being done, I placed some speed upgrades into the machines, mainly the pressurized reaction chamber. Also, all of my machines were now fully charged up, which meant we were fully operational. The best part of all of that was setting up the wireless charging. Now anything in my hotbar and my curious slots are going to be fully charged. That includes the jetpack and the crafting grid. I ended the night by putting some speed upgrades into the crusher and that just sped everything up. Plus I put a void upgrade into the substrate drawer. Now with all of that set up, I used the furnace one more time to smelt all the copper and it wasn't taking any power down. It was now way more efficient for me to just smelt these ores rather than process them all. I did this with basically all of the copper and then I realized I actually had ethylene left over. So I made some more space for two more gas burning generators. I think there were way too many generators now, but it was working so I just kept it. I then maxed out the speed upgrades on these machines and that also included the electrolytic separator as well. Day 110 I had a stack of netherite essence and some emerald essences. I was only able to make like 4 emeralds so far, but I did get like 60 blocks worth of inferium. Oh yeah, I also didn't realize that the ethylene only gets burned up when you need it, so all these extra gas burners ended up being uh, useless for now. Eventually they all get used, trust me. After that I moved the wireless controller into the house and only had a little bit of ores left. I let the gold go through the entire process cause those are a little bit more rare and then I cooked the iron manually since I had so many. With all that done I rerouted all the uh, gas burning generators power into an energy cube and shrunk down to clean up the cables underneath the system. After that a soul was trapped in the grave so I disenchanted my old boots. I actually ended up getting protection 3 on my helmet and with those new books I could upgrade that to protection 4. To get ready for more storage I smelt tons of nether quartz and made way more quartz enriched iron as well. Day 111 to 12 I hopped in the mining dimension to clear my chests in there. I got rid of the windmills and the other generators and set up the quarry with just flux plugs and some chests. At first it was working pretty well but I realized uh, I would have to force load the chunks where my gas burners were at. Once all of that was done this builder was at max power the entire time running at super speed. This thing was actually working so well it almost finished before it turned into night. My next annoying task was smelting all the ores. This time I decided to just skip the process and do it all manually. That allowed me to get a bunch of XP as well. While I was doing all of that I also went back and forth to the quarry and grabbed some all the modium. I also managed to send it all the way down to bedrock as well. After spending all day smelting I got up to level 94 and this was the yield from all the stuff without even processing anything. My farm was also running and I had tons of new items. I decided now to make a row of netherite seeds and and turn all of my inferium all the way up to supremium. Once that was done I grabbed my lily pad and moved it a block under my harvesting pylon to affect all the blocks above. Also my pylon was set to 3x3 but I didn't notice. Then I broke down my obsidian furnace to upgrade it and it gave me tons more levels. I turned that furnace into a netherite furnace and had enough all the modium ingots to make a all the modium furnace as well. Apparently this smelts uh, a fourth of a stack at a time. Day 114 to day 115 I would need so much silicon. So I had to do a ritual to make silicon seeds. I I planted that one right in the corner. I also upgraded the farmland to Prudentium, just the first two row for now. Once again I moved the wireless controller back so I didn't have to force load way too many chunks. After that I put a netherite ingot to use and upgraded my backpack. 
I also made tons of enriched carbon, redstone and diamonds to fill up the metallurgic infusers. Once that was done, I grabbed a bunch of sand for glass and began working my way up the storage parts. Oh yeah, then I finally fixed the harvesting pylon as well. Since I was already out, I also made a bunch of upgrades for the mob masher. After that, I realized I could use those hearts to make better heart canisters. I started the mob grinder back up so that I could get tons of string too. So to help with any overflow, I also set up another chest as well. Once that was done, I realized I had more than enough for an emerald jetpack and upgraded to this one as well. That night, I made mortar and pestles and crushed up some ender pearls to make calcinated vibranium powder. With that, I had some more vibranium sight potions. Inside the nether, I grabbed my nature's compass and for some reason, that gave me the ward and quest reward as well. Once I collected those rewards, I went straight for a warped forest and drank the potion. With this, the ores were highlighted and I got 5 ores from the first one I mined. I got another 5 and found a nice area with a bunch of vibranium too. I came home with around 28 ores. I ran these things through the processor and got like 5 blocks plus 11 which equaled up to like 56 vibranium ingots. Now that I had tons of power I wanted to make a gigantic quarry. I decided to make this quarry about 4 whole chunks and set it loose. I did very little on day 117 but here's the recap. These were the 4 chunks that were mined out. I grabbed all the aldermodium ores in here and I ran them through the processor already. This was the yield from the quarry though. Thousands of ores. Inside of the processor chest I had 3 one time compressed blocks of all the modium and 3 regular blocks that ended up being like 30 blocks of all the modium ingots. To bring all the quarry stuff back, I had to make a tier 3 stack upgrade for the backpack. This is what the backpack looked like after I collected everything. The rest of the night, I smelt up all the ores and I realized I could just smelt uh, the blocks of some of the ores as well. Since the furnace was so fast, I processed the ancient debris and cooked the rest super quickly. These were all the items after the compression. Then to end these days, I made the rest of the Aldemodium tools for their quest rewards. I even made the Aldemodium carrot and apple as well. Day 119. I looked at the recipe for the infinity range booster and the dimensional card. Both of them were pretty expensive. I also didn't realize that the recipe for these uh, enderium ingots could use ender pearls as well. So I did it in the most complicated way. At first, I did the right thing by going to the end dimension and looking for the end highlands biome. This is where you can find unobtainium. I looked around the edges of the island to see if I could find any exposed ores. I ended up finding a mineshaft instead, and there was nothing too good in here, just these chorus fruit. While exploring some more, I found this little dungeon area, and while fighting these endermites, my mythic affix activated and it gave me like a loot pinata drop. The drops from these guys were only some uh, weird apotheosis gems. The end also spawns tons of mythic mobs, so I wanted to take out some for the gear. This phantom though was so annoying and it didn't drop anything. On on the bright side, I found a ship and made my way towards it. The first thing I did here was break those phantom spawners and then I made my way inside. These guys weren't too hard at all. Also the loot in here was pretty nice. I got tons of really cool armor and a bunch of random ingots. I made sure to pick up a bunch of spawners while I was here as well. As I got deeper into the ship, I did the same few things. I just took out a bunch of wither skeleton, looted all the chests and grabbed a bunch of spawners. Turns out I spent the whole day there, which was well worth it. And uh, as I was right about to give up, I saw some purple ores that I had never seen before. This was unobtainium. So I built a safe area around it and got two ores plus more from the quest reward. Right across from the island, I saw even more. So I totaled up to 10 ores now. Before teleporting back home, I actually grabbed two more and then ran them all through the processor. I ended up with 37 unobtainium ingots. Rest of the night, I salvaged all the gear for the mythical materials and of course the regular materials as well. Then I crossed all the gems I had. I ended up getting a pretty cool mythical affix on my chest plate. Day 121, I made a structure compass, but I had no clue you were supposed to shift click. It actually took me forever to learn about that. In the meantime, I made these inferior growth accelerators and placed some of them below my crops. Remember how you could use those ender pearls for enderium ingots? Well, I actually started out by making this rubber so that I could craft a machine called a macerator just to get the ender dust. So I ended up getting the machine, but for some reason it wasn't taking any power from my flux point. Instead, I just used this single use battery to grab some ender dust. With all of that, I was able to make enderium ingots finally. That then allowed me to 
to make an infinity range booster. So this card actually doesn't work on advanced wireless transmitters, I think. So I had to go back to the regular one, which showed that everything was fully working. Then the dimensional card actually needed three of these infinity cards as well. I started the next morning by making potions of regenerations for hell shelves and eventually an enchantment library. Once that was done, I went out to explore another dimension to get blaze rods, but I stumbled into an ancient pyramid. Now this structure had so many mobs, but the loot in here was absolutely incredible. Every single second here, I thought my computer was going to explode from all the mobs. It was 100% all worth it because of the mythical armors and ingots I got in here. Plus, with all of my attack speed gems, I was able to just spam attack with my sword, which cleared out huge areas. I ended up flying around to the top to get to the main loot room here. This is where I got surrounded by mobs, and while killing them, I got some of those loot pinata things to activate. My backpack here was filled with all the loot I collected from in here. The best things I collected were these piglet hearts, which come from the bosses that spawn here. I actually fought a few more of those dudes, but I still only ended up with those two hearts for now. Plus, all the witches decided to spawn on me, so I just had to leave. This was actually so much loot, I had an inventory filled with enchanted books. I also had so many armors to salvage, I got like 25 mythic parts. With all those parts, I put mythic affixes on all of my gear. I was looking for health, luck, and speed upgrades. Plus, now my loot pinata affix is doubled with this new affix on my sword. I also changed up my pickaxe as well. Day 124, I made this energizing orb so that I could try and get different all the modium alloys. But to set that up, you need like an incredible amount of power. So I'd have to do that much later. I then went into the nether and traveled for a while since I couldn't find my previous fortresses. This was all just so that I could get tons of nether bricks. With that, I made four hell shells and needed to upgrade my enchantment setup to infuse these bad boys. Just to kill two birds with one stone, I actually wanted the end shells too, so I used a lot of my gas tears to make end crystals. Before I hopped into the portal, I disenchanted a sword and got looting two on my all the modium sword, plus I grabbed an extra 29 bottles just in case. Now I was ready to re-summon the dragon. I was mainly focused on grabbing tons of dragon's breath while I was here. The only problem is that you end up picking up this ender air stuff when you uh, spam. While waiting for the breath to come out, I ended up breaking all the crystals and then the dragon perched and in like four hits, I was able to take down a quarter of its health. I ended up grabbing 18 bottles of dragon breath and then took this dude out really easily. I picked up the dragon scales and some loot, then I just hopped back out. Also, I realized that the dragon left another dragon egg there as I was leaving. Now I made four end shelves to enchant those hell shelves and then I also enchanted my pickaxe as well, which got efficiency four plus fortune four. More importantly, I got that enchantment library and accidentally vein mined my whole house while placing it down. Day 125, I placed all of my books into the library and filtered out the ones that would be good for my sword. With all of that, I was able to make a god sword. I was just missing max sharpness. I wanted to make this dimension card as well, so I grabbed all of my soul sand and wither skeleton heads and went to the tunnel that I had dug out. In here, I cleared out an area to fight the wither. This was my first one, I think. Uh, the fight ended up being so quick, it actually took me longer to just set the wither up. The next day, I almost destroyed my house again, trying to fix the bookshelves. And uh, once I fixed that, I disenchanted my old chest plate and made some more end shelves. To max this place out, I would actually need two draconic end shelves. After all of that, I dug underneath the farm to place two layers of inferior growth accelerators. It wasn't too expensive and it should be a huge boost. That ended up taking the whole night and the next morning, I put speed upgrades for the metallurgic infusers. I then plugged in two more gas burning generators, but at this point, I don't think those do anything, even though it still took in the ethylene. With that being done, I got some more ender dust and that allowed me to make even more enderium ingots. With all of that, I made two more infinity range upgrades. Day 128 to day 129, to finish things off, I had to grab some more sand. And with that, I had four infinity range boosters, so I very quickly destroyed a wither and boom, I got the dimensional card. A reminder for anyone watching, you don't actually need the infinity range card anymore. I just kept it because I had no clue. To test this card out, I went to the end dimension and now I could access my storage system from anywhere. While I was here, I went out to look for end cities to hopefully get some dragon heads. I ended up finding my end city here. The only things that were good were these armor pieces. There was no ship here either, so I just moved on. I ended up following this map I found in that first end city and found a gigantic structure. I would have to explore that much later. Turns out there was an end city right behind it. And this place had a dragon head, which allowed me to make one draconic end shelf. I actually forgot to grab the elytra in here and just came home. 
After that, I placed the Draconic End Shelf down and made these Melon Shelves, which actually increased the Arcana. Once that was done, I harvested my farm, uh, which now gave me way more Netherite, and I was able to make a Supremium farm line as well, which progressed to the quest line. That night, I ended up with a stack of Netherite ingots. The next morning, I made another 4 trunk quarry and went back to the end. I realized that I missed the Elytra Wings. Once I got that, I was one step away from completing the main quest. This angel ring thing was super expensive though. I then checked back in the quarry and it was already two chunks deep. So I grabbed the all the modium ores in here and smelt them down really quickly. I also realized that uh, once the stuff is done cooking, all I have to do is just break the furnace to grab all the levels. Day 131, I made these night vision potions so that I could get the shelf of sight, which would uh, show me more enchantments. After that, I looked at these experience seeds, which needed these things called experience capsules. While working on that, I also made this fluid grid and some 64 k fluid storage parts for the quest rewards. I ended up getting the 1 million fluid storage part 2. This meant that I could store fluids into the storage system, but for now, it seems pretty useless to me. I also finally set the priorities right on the drawers, and then put some lava and water into the storage system. Before the night ended, I went to the nether to grab a bunch of soul stone. With these soul stones, I could finally make soul dust, which made these experience capsules. So to fill these four, I actually stood on that XP tank to collect my levels, and then ran the tap to get those levels back and into the capsules instead. That actually worked pretty well, but I realized that I could just get all the XP from a furnace. So I went to the quarry to get all that down to bedrock and then grabbed everything that was in the chests. After that, I just smelt everything. Some of these things had to be turned into ores, others could just be smelt as blocks. Once a good batch was done, I broke the furnace and filled two and a half capsules. The next round ended up filling the rest of the capsules. I then made some Imperium Essence and did the ritual for the experience seeds. I planted it on the corner. Then with all these fertilized essence things, I ended up just growing a bunch of them and got an extra seed as well. For now, I could only make like 15 droplets, but trust me, they start to stack up. Next order of business was more drawers. The first one was for silicon, since I was getting so many from the farm. I then moved the leather and bone meal 1-2 so that it would look nicer. Day 133, I had the mob grinder run the entire time, so I shut that thing down and grabbed the XP. I had like hundreds of more leather and bone meal now. Plus with the farm, I got 3 insanium essences. Then I was running out of storage in some drawers, so I upgraded them with gold upgrades. At the same time, my quarry just finished and I had even more things coming into the system. I also needed another drawer and this one was for arrows. That night my storage system was acting pretty funky, so I got rid of the furnace and the fluid grids for now. I also reverted the uh, setup back to the original. Turns out the issue right now was just the infinity range booster which I got rid of. Once morning hit, I smelt more of the ores I got from the quarry and this was all the stuff after it was cooked and compressed. The rest of the day I spent making a super wireless grid. This required all the other grids plus a super advanced processor, it was pretty expensive. It held way more power, but it was just way less convenient. Since my crafting grid now always remained charged, this whole thing was just useless. On the bright side, I was able to make this green heart canister. I had all the materials except for the nether star, which was super easy to get by smoking this wither. I put the green heart canister next to the amulet and had even more hearts now. Day 135 to day 136, I found out there's wither proof tinted glass. So I made tons of it and created an area in the mine tunnel to kill withers in. I don't think the area needed to be this big, but anyway, I summoned the wither inside of it and the explosions managed to do nothing. In total, I managed to take out 8 withers, which left me with 2 skulls and 8 nether stars. With those nether stars, I could now craft a blue heart container. This filled up my amulet, but I didn't know that you could have up to 10 of each canister into the amulet. Then to complete some more quests, I made a netherite chest. Once that was done, I started making 2x2 drawers, which seemed to be a much more efficient way of storing things. I put sugarcane, arrows, bone meal, and leather into one of these. Once that was done, I made a 1x2 for inferior essence and silicon. I then harvested my farm which gave me more experience and I filled the last two slots with the compacting drawers. These ones were for gold and iron since I would always need them in so many forms. After some more restructuring, I fit another 2x2 drawer and this one was for string, sugar, bone meal and ender pearls. Eventually I would need to move my entire storage area. Since I had been collecting tons of inferium, I now had 4 insanium essences. With that and some dragon scales, I could make these dragon egg seeds. This was all so that I wouldn't have to go hunting for more dragon heads. I planted this seed and it turns out it needs to be on a dragon egg 
Crux, which was just as expensive. In the meantime, I made these ethereal glass to put in the mob grinder. This was supposed to be solid to the mobs, but not to the players. But I think this one gave light to the mob grinder. So I scratched that for now. Instead, I made another 2x2 drawer. And this one was for carrots, rotten flesh, slime balls, and spider eyes. Then I got another insanium. Two more to go. The next morning, I set up an ender chest right above the harvesting pylon. Since I still wanted to save storage, I needed to filter items from my chest into it. I also used these ender pearls to increase the storage. Right now, I couldn't get these importers to work, so I would just have to wait for items to fill up and another ender chest and then place them manually in the storage system. Next, I put another pouch upgrade into the tool belt since I had this new create wrench. After all of that, I made a diamond pipe upgrade, which allowed me to whitelist all of the essences. This meant I no longer had to worry about all the seeds coming into the ender chest. Before that night, I placed a diamond pipe upgrade around every other pipe as well, and also found out that you could make tinted ethereal glass, which I put down in front of the mob grinder. Day 139, I figured out that you could use a creative importer to bring items from the ender chest in. So while working on that, I only got up to like the ultra importer. I ended up trying to use this one, but the way my storage system was set up kind of made it impossible. For now, I still had to do it manually. Then to complete some more quests, I made a storage monitor, network receiver, and a network transmitter. So if I want to build something far away, now I could just use those last two to connect to the main system. Day 140, it was now time to upgrade all of my ore processing machines. The first one I upgraded was the purifying chamber, which now had three import slots. Uh, I then went down the line and upgraded the crushing factory and the enrichment chamber as well, which now also all had three import slots. Once that was finished, I got another insanium essence. One more to go. After that, I realized how much stuff I already had. I was able to upgrade the machines to the advanced version, which now had five import slots. Then to put all that to work, I set up another four trunk quarry, and in no time, I had tons of items. This was all just to see how effective these machines were now. I had to turn on auto split for every machine. Uh, uh, which basically made the process pretty quick now. This was about 64 blocks of raw iron being processed. My limiting factor now was actually the electrolytic separator, so I had to put gas upgrades into this purification chamber. Day 141, I went back to the mining dimension to grab the inferium in the chests and all the all the modium that was left over. After that, I took my metallurgic infusers and gave these guys some upgrades. They were all basic levels now, which meant like three slots for the input. It also needed like way more of the enriched stuff, so I put tons of redstone, coal, and diamonds into the enrichment factory to fill these infusers up. Turns out the osmium compressor could also be upgraded too. So I did that just in case. For some more advanced mechanism stuff, I would also need another infuser filled with refined obsidian. So I placed another one of those things down too. This one was filled with enriched refined obsidian. Using that, I could turn reinforced alloy into atomic alloys. All of that allowed me to upgrade the energy cube to the ultimate version, which now held tons more power. To end that night off, I cooked all the blocks of copper I had and once again, I broke the furnace and I gained like 44 levels. With those levels, I infused two hell shelves and made one shelf of sight. This showed me another row of enchantments. Day 142, I ran the quarry one more time down to bedrock and this gave me even more infernium essence. After that, I made a melon shelf and had enough insanium to make the dragon egg crux. I placed that right underneath the seed and uh, over the growth accelerator. It took a bit to grow, but now I knew it was fully operational. Next up, I placed the last melon shelf in the corner. While waiting for those dragon egg seeds to grow, I grabbed more of the items that were dug up from the quarry. And once again, I cooked the copper manually, which ended up giving me even more levels. The rest of the items, I ran through the processor and since they were upgraded, it was moving so much faster. The next morning, I completed some quests to start the day and I wanted to craft this experience crystal eventually. As I was waiting for things to smelt, I got tons more alloys and maxed out the speed upgrades for these machines. Once that was done, I started getting these dragon egg essences. So to make some of these dragon heads, I also have to craft these uh, blank skulls. <laughs> After that, I learned I could make elite level machines. So I started making a ton of reinforced alloys and these elite control circuits. I let this set of items cook and then went down to the mine to grab tons of andesite. With all of that, I made 32 andesite alloy to complete some create quests as well. The next day, I upgraded the purifying chamber first and went down the line. Each machine had seven inputs now. Even with all the speed, the sheer number of items I had just took super long to process. Next up, I grabbed more amethyst shards and tons of obsidian. 
I then came home to turn all these essences into their main forms. At this point, I basically just had infinite nether right now. Once all of that was done, I rolled my enchants until I got some sick ones on my chest plate. It wasn't protection, but like vitality five, which increased my hearts like crazy. I wanted more enchants, so I manually cooked some more ores and got 19 more levels. Then finally, I was able to make the dragon head, and uh, this made sure that I could max out these enchants eventually. Before the night ended, I rolled more enchants and disenchanted these boots. Day 145 to day 146, now it was time for huge upgrades. I didn't want to force load too many chunks, but I had to expand my industrial areas really quick. I started off by smelting tons of stone, then I dug this entire area back towards the chunk border. Once that was done, I cleared the area and placed down oak slabs on the ceiling. Then with all this new space, I replaced the two side walls with stone bricks and cracked stone bricks. Next up were the floors, which I ripped up and replaced with deep slate bricks. I made sure to throw some cracked deep slate bricks in there as well. So now I wanted to move the machines too, but I was waiting for some of the processes to finish. And as soon as it finished, I grabbed everything from the chest and ripped the system apart. I moved it all to the left side of the cave. The setup was really easy and it was all powered from the back with a flux point. Once that was finished, I made a much nicer area for the metallurgic infusers as well. Then came the star of the show, the storage system. I put the controller right in the center in front of a flux point. Of course, I set up the full system here. Once that was done, I used some of the side walls to house the drawers. The right side was filled with compacting drawers and the left side was for all the oak ones. That side ended up taking a lot longer since I had to mess with the botany pots. Eventually, it was all set up and linked to a controller. Next morning, I got the bad omen effect and spread that to a village. Then my ender chest was packed with stuff. After all of that, I also made these uh, simple compacting drawers for items like lapis, redstone, and all the netherite I had. I also placed these gold upgrades into those drawers as well. Finally, after all of that, I set up two 2x2 two two drawers which would store all of the items from the farm. I filled those drawers with everything coming out of the ender chest and then piped the items from the ender chest into the controller. This way I wouldn't have to manually bring items in and out. With that being done, I could fill out the back walls now. Day 148, to improve the storage system, I went out to grab tons of sand and some cactus just in case. With all this glass, I made some patterns to craft a pattern grid. It was now time to set up auto crafting. I placed this thing right underneath the controller. The next machines I needed were the crafting monitor and of course the crafter itself. These things were kind of expensive but well worth it. I actually decided to upgrade the crafter first before even placing it down. I got the iron one, then the gold one and worked up to a netherite crafter. With this setup, I started making pattern recipes. First up was for processor bindings and next I made all the different types of processors. Most importantly though, I wanted the pattern grids to have as many storage part recipes as possible so I could hopefully work my way up to an infinite storage. I had all the way up to 100 million storage part recipes for now. Now, when I hold control shift and left click, I can craft directly from the grid. I got 10 1k storage parts in no time and slowly started working my way up. While doing that, I made even more recipes and another compacting drawer for diamonds. Day 149, my farm was producing tons of items so I had to turn a lot of them into their main versions. I also learned that you could shift click the uh, experience droplets, which was very convenient. I then needed tons more sand and while I was looking for some, I grabbed a zeal lighter from this gatekeeper and the blue book. I also grabbed these lunar stone bricks as well. Once that was done, I collected about eight stacks of sand. All of that was used for glass and to make some more storage parts. It took way too long, but all of that finally allowed me to make a 256k storage part. I actually wanted more of an upgrade though, so I made a few stacks of processors to hopefully get another tier up. That however required even more sand, so I had to go back to the desert to start excavating some more. Finally, I got two more 256k storage parts, and I could now make the 1 million storage part. This thing needed advanced housing. Also, I didn't know about the disc manipulator just yet. Oh yeah, I also got two more Insanium Essences as well. Day 150, I enchanted my leggings again and got Protection 5 on it. Then with those Dragon Egg Essences, I could make two more Draconic End Shelves and with those two, I had Eterna maxed. Meaning my enchants go up to level 100 now. Next up, I started working on these Ars Nouveau quests. First up, I made a Novice Spell Book. Then I already had a bunch of these Magical Wood. After that, I made a Scribes Table and put that in my house. With this, I could start crafting some spells. Really quickly, I upgraded my spell book and started working on the most important part of this mod, the enchanting and combining. In the beginning, I started with an imbuement chamber, which turned lapis into source gems. I ended the night by making two source jars, 
and trying to fill those things up. Day 151 to day 152, I moved those imbuement chambers into my house for now and made some spells. After that was finished, I made some more arcane pedestals. This ended up finishing some quests and now I could start working on the enchanting apparatus. I also found out how to fill the source jars. Since I had this auto farm running, I made an agronomic source link which would uh, get the source from the growth of the plants and put it into the jars. With that done, I chopped down tons of Ars Nouveau trees to make even more source jars. So in order to make uh, all the modium alloy, you actually need an enchanting apparatus with tons of source. It actually took me a bit to set this uh, whole apparatus up. Once it was set up though, I used gold blocks and the source blocks to make an enchanter shield. During the night, I used fertilized essence to grab tons more stuff. This way, I got another insanium essence. After that, I made some gold upgrades to place into the drawers for more storage. Then I finally learned about the disc manipulators, which can take all the items from one disc and place it to another. I did this so I could get all of my smaller storage parts back. The next day, I was able to upgrade to an elite disc manipulator and started clearing out all of my older disc drives. This is when I messed up real bad. I completely forgot to record two whole days of progress. And these days, I ended up doing some pretty big things. First off, I got all of my items into one disk drive. Then, more importantly, I used like 7 stacks of steel and a bunch of copper to make these thermal evaporation blocks, valves, and controllers. This was so I could make these huge thermal evaporation plants. This machine was super simple and I was able to build it to max size. That means it was 18 blocks high with 15 blocks being underground. The 4 advanced solar generators on the corner heat up the liquid inside. The first plant on the left actually grabs water from the sink and turns it into brine. It's the main plant. Then, with these mechanical pipes, the brine gets put into two different areas. First and more importantly is to this uh, electric separator and the chemical infuser. This ends up turning the brine into chlorine and that being mixed with hydrogen makes hydrogen chloride. HCL is what I actually really need. The rest of the brine ends up going to another tank which is also max size and that turns into lithium. That's for much later. So in order to get this HCL down to my ore processors, I needed to make a thing called the quantum entangler porter. For this, I had to make some atomic alloy. I made two and I placed one underneath this chemical injection chamber, which was a new machine. I placed the other one underneath a chemical infuser and set the name as HCL. Plus I had to figure out how the uh, inputs worked, which took me a little bit of time. Once the input was set up, I had to fix the output down below. Now I was finally at a tier three ore processing factory. Finally, my gas burning generators were actually being used since this process needed 55,000 FE per tick. In the meantime, I decided to upgrade this chemical injection chamber to the elite version as well. To test this thing out, I grabbed 66 copper ore and ran them through the machines. While that was happening, I decked this thing out with speed and energy upgrades. Those 66 ores almost became three stacks. Before these days ended, I upgraded those infusers to advanced versions as well. My next order of business was using the other thermal plant as well. This would have to be for lithium dust. The lithium would go to a machine called a rotary condensator. Oh yeah, sometimes the water dries up on the other plant because I have the sink connected to like two different machines. It's not too big of a deal though, since you actually don't need these machines running at all times. Back to the lithium though, the condensator turns liquid lithium into regular lithium and after that, I need another machine called the chemical crystal which turns the lithium into lithium dust. All of that I had output to a netherite chest. These machines absolutely drained energy and uh, I actually had to label some flux points to see which was which. If you're wondering what lithium dusts are for, it's for induction cells, which are massive energy cubes, mainly for huge reactors. Also, there's a tier four ore processing factory, but that's not worth it in my opinion. The next thing I did was make tons of energy tablets and uh, machine casings. This was to make a bunch of energy cubes, which is needed to make these induction cells. The basic one was already like 300 times bigger than an ultimate energy cube. Day 157, these recipes were super expensive. It takes four of the previous tier to upgrade the cell and the provider, which means more energy cubes and energy tablets as well. I was able to get the advanced induction cell, which had like 25 giga FE, I think it was giga. Then I was able to make the provider as well. At least the lithium dust were being pumped out like crazy. I took a break real quick to make these two insanium essences and went right back to crafting these elite cells. That's probably gonna have to be the max for me since uh, it already took so many amount of materials to craft. Of course, I had to make tons more basic induction cells and providers to craft four advanced induction stuff just to upgrade to the elite version. 
I had to repeat this process one more time for the provider as well. And now it was time to house these things. For that, I made some induction casings, structural glass, and induction ports. The setup was actually pretty easy. It was three by three floors, four block high with some glass and ports. The center was the induction provider with the induction cell on top. The particles came out, which meant it was all good. And all I had to do was just set up the inputs and outputs now. Once it became morning, I noticed my generators were pulling 100,000 FE per tick. Regardless, I set up a flux point in the induction matrix and it was barely charging. This thing could hold so much energy, it was really crazy to see. Once again, this setup was temporary because this was meant for huge mechanism machines. For the first time, I actually noticed all of the gas burning generators be used. Then I grabbed all the items from the farm, got up to level 100, and enchanted my shield, which was really nice now. Later on, I ended up getting some bad news. My power was basically all drained. I had to set a limit for the matrix, grab all of my lithium, and shut off some machines for now. This made sure my generators were back up. Rest of the night, I actually messed up trying to upgrade this uh, gas burning generator, so I had to remake the whole thing again. Day 160, the new setup was pretty similar. I just used these universal pipes instead with an ultimate pipe upgrade in each one. Plus, I also got rid of a few useless generators and just kept four. With that, I set up the flux point again and everything was running pretty well. Turns out I could even set up another gas burning generator. Now this matrix was pulling 10,000 FE per tick passively. Then to reduce even more lag, I removed some hopper botany pots. This ended up clearing so much space for more drawers. Once that was done, I went underneath my farm to place another layer of growth accelerators. Then I started on a pretty major grind. It was time to start getting energizing rods and the energizer set up. With these, I could make some cool reactors and eventually all the modium alloys. In order to really speed this process up, I needed a way to get blaze rods quickly. So I made some solium daggers to craft a soul extractor. I ended up needing some soul jars too. So I went to the nether to grab a bunch of soul stone. Turns out that soul extractor thing was just a waste of time. I ended up just making another solium dagger and went to the other dimension. Over here, I went on a blaze killing spree and slowly filled up these jars. Once I got the four jars, I grabbed some Imperium and did the ritual to get blaze seeds. I planted that stuff right away and used a bunch of my fertilizers. The yield from these things were actually pretty nice. Now I was able to start working on these energizing rods. I started with just a starter tier for now. The energizing ore was right in the center of my factory with three rods facing it. The rods were powered by a flux point. Before testing it out fully, I upgraded the rods to basic tier. For the next tier, I put golden iron into the orb, which made energized steel. I really wish I knew that I could use blocks for these, but I just grinded it out the old fashioned way. I even started on a reactor as well. I had 20 starter reactor blocks and I tried to place them, but it turns out I needed 16 more blocks. So with the starter reactor set up, I moved on to the basic one. Then it was time for the hardened one, which used energized steel. For now, I don't think there was a way to really fast track this process. So it was uh, moving pretty slow. I had to make the items manually and then craft the new reactor pieces. I even ended up running out of clay, but I did get the hardened reactor done. Next up was a blazing one. And this is where I was really glad I had the blaze rods. The next morning, I also got uh, hardened energizing rods too. Then I used a ton of blaze rods to get blazing crystals. Once again, I wish I really knew about the blocks. Regardless, this process was actually pretty quick and I got a blazing reactor. Next tier was called Niotic. And before moving on to that, I wanted to upgrade the rods. I could only upgrade one rod and I decided to just move on to the reactor. This one needed diamonds. And once again, I really didn't try the blocks. This reactor though could generate 25,000 FE per tick. So it would be a pretty great addition. I ended up using almost two stacks of diamonds and then just decided to make these uh, niotic crystal seeds because I wanted more than one reactor eventually. I was close to the upgrades, so I harvested the niotic crystals and the blaze essences. Then uh, I made these blaze crystal seeds as well, just in case. With all of that, I could now upgrade the rods. I spent the rest of the day energizing diamonds and got all of the blocks done. The next tier was spirited and this one could generate 100k FE per tick. This tier though took emeralds and a million FE to energize. I ended up doing the ritual for the seeds as well. Day 165 to day 167, I had some Supremium Essence, which I used on the farmland for some of these crystals. After that, I made some more reactor blocks and then I had these 
tertium growth accelerators for like two blocks. With all the energizing, I was finally able to get a spirited nitro reactor. Around here, I learned that I could use blocks now, so I was able to upgrade my rods to niotic and then spirit it after. Once all of that was done, I placed this reactor down to see how it would work. The blocks ended up building themselves and it was really cool. I also checked the final tier of this thing and it could generate like 250,000 FE per tick, but it requires nether stars. In the meantime, I put a uh, uraninite into the reactor, which started the whole thing up. It also took water as a one-time coolant and the other sides took coal and redstone. I put blocks of coal and redstone for now, but later on I just switched to the regular versions because uh, they're way more efficient. In order to really push this thing, it needs ice. So I went out to look for some colder biomes. Lucky for me, there was a little area uh, away from my base which had some snow and I could compress them using a compressor to make ice. I also used a basic generator to power this thing and it was working. I got four ice and did a ritual for ice seeds. With ice essences, you can make packed ice which works even better for the reactor. I made sure to set up a flux network on the reactor as well and to test it out, I made the induction matrix use its energy and everything was running really nicely. For now, I set this thing up right in front of the thermal evaporation plant, but I would need to find a better place later. After that, I set up an auto craft for packed ice and made some exporters and importers. Day 168, I found the perfect place to house the reactor uh, that has the ability to expand as well. I started off by clearing these chests and using all of these cool mob drops for more items. Once that was done, I cleared the XP tank, chests, and the absorption hopper. Then I got rid of the glass, the mob masher, and just everything else. Once all of that was done, this area had the perfect amount of space to place the reactor in. I filled that thing up and placed a flux plug in, then it was time to automate it. First up, I needed to make some more compacting drawers. One was for coal and the other one was for uh, uraninite. With that done, I placed an exporter on the back of the reactor and ran a cable all the way through the walls to my storage system. I also shrunk down too, but now I was able to create a whitelist for the exporter. I wanted it to pull in coal, redstone, uraninite, and any type of ice in the system. It all ended up working very well and then I used some stone to start uh, closing some of the holes behind all the machines. With with all that done, I placed a uraninite into the drawer and wanted to make some garden cloches next. Before the day ended, I also made some seeds. The next morning, I set up more source jars and set up the enchanting apparatus for all the modium alloy tools. Once that was done, I decorated the reactor area floors, placed tinted ethereal glasses in the center and tinted glasses around the rest of the area. Then to make these garden cloches, I made an engineer's blueprint for the workbench. With this, I made nine incandescent light bulbs and now I had to find out how to get treated wood. Also, I ended up getting like three giga FE into the induction matrix. I decided to make the rest of my machines get power from the reactor as well. Once that was done, I made a pyrolyzer, powered that with an energy cube and made a fluid encapsulator to get oil into a bucket. It took a little bit, but I got the inputs and outputs set up as well. Day 170, I finally got enough oil to fill the buckets and made the treated wood. With that, I made three garden cloches. I cleared an area next to my farm to place these things. It needed water, which I got from the sink. Uh, then it needed power. For that, I used a flux point and some cables on top. Once that was done, I set up uh, blazing crystal seeds with a uh, tier four farmland in one cloche. I actually ended up reversing the setup later that night. I moved the sink to the back and uh, this way the front would connect to an ender chest, which would grab any crop that was full grown. At this point, I also had tons of netherite, so I used uh, ultimate pipe upgrades as well. Inside another cloche, I set up the uraninite seeds. I didn't know what to do with the third one just yet. Day 171 to day 172, I now force loaded the farm chunks and realized I had four insanium essences so now i could also make a nether star seeds i did the ritual for the seeds and realized i would need a nether star crux which was just as expensive as the seeds in the meantime i learned how to use a structure compass and search for an ancient city this location was 3500 blocks away and along the way i found this cool flower pyramid this place was filled with creepers and i also kept a lot of the flowers here as well just for dyes after that, I found another structure and this place had the Everdon portal blocks. Then finally, I got close to the ancient city and started digging down. I picked up tons of stone, coal, and a bunch of random other ores too. I kept doing that until I stumbled into some skulk blocks. One layer underneath from that, I got what I wanted, the ancient city. In here, I was looking for echo shards. 
This place was pretty big and I already summoned a warden, I'm pretty sure. I started looting this chest in here and I also got some spawners here as well. Since I wasn't crouched through anything, I ended up fighting a warden and I tore that thing apart. Then finally, I got an echo shard and basically just rinsed and repeated that process. I did do something cool though. I used one of these uh, warden hearts to activate this giant portal. I quickly hopped in and realized I would need warden armor to get some good visibility. I had to come back and once I did, I tore through this entire place breaking as many skulk blocks as possible. After that, I got about 16 echo shards and I came home. So with those shards, I could make reinforced echo shards and those could turn netherite armor into warden armor. I was able to get some good enchants on these, especially the helmet and the chest plates. I had to manually put enchants on the leggings. Then it was time for the mythical affixes. I actually ended up getting really good one for the leggings. Once that was finished, I ran some ores through the processor and got tons in return. Then I planned on automating the furnace as well. First up, I put an importer on the side to pull any items in. Once that was done, I had a crafter face the furnace from above. After that, I connected everything towards the main system and it should be operational. I now just needed to put the smelted recipes into the furnaces crafter uh, like these processors and it would automatically just make and smelt these items. I actually tried it out by making 10 super advanced processors and it was working really well. Day 174, I was able to make one more Insanium Essence and I used that to make Insanium Farmland. That ended up being a big mistake since I actually needed the Insanium for Nether Star Cruxes. Then with all this power, I wanted to make some huge quarries with Silk Touch instead of Fortune. First, I set up the coordinates and then I made a clearing silk quarry card. I had to remake the area again and I chose to make this quarry four chunks wide. This thing was working very well. While that was going on, I decided to use some ethereal glasses to trap a mob. Day 175 to day 176, that little ethereal glass trap was for piglitches. Before I even tried to trap that thing, I needed some Drigme charms. In order to get those, I would need to find a Drigme first. Lucky for me, I had one Drigme shard in the storage system, but I personally wanted a few extra. It literally took me all day and I couldn't see a single one of these Drigmes. When I came back home, I realized the Warden armor actually took a lot of damage, so I switched back to the All the Modium set. After that, I set up the enchanting apparatus for the Drigme charm and used one of my Drigme shards. With that done, I finally started working on a seed reprocessor. I put it right next to my garden cloches because it already had power and was connected to an ender chest. Since I had so many seeds, this was gonna be such a huge help turning all the seeds back into essences. I messed around more with some other ender chests, but more importantly, I uh, was able to upgrade the reprocessor to Prudentium. Later that night, I was able to get a Tertium upgrade and make a mob yoinker. The reprocessor was working so well, I got it up to Imperium 2, which was super fast. Day 177 to day 178, I reprocessed more of my seeds and then tried to automate this thing, but that wasn't working very well. After that, I placed this mossy cobblestone down right in front of the ethereal glass to summon some Drigmes. Once that was prepared, it was time to grab the piglitch. I went to the other dimension and searched for an ancient pyramid. Then I grabbed this piglitch, which took a bunch of levels and came back. So I ended up making a few mistakes. Number one was not enclosing this farm, and number two was not name tagging the piglitch. Anyways, I summoned the Drigme and placed some source jars close to it. So this Drigme is supposed to simulate the drop loot by the piglitch and then place it into the ender chest. Uh, as this was going on, I ended up finding some more Drigmes near the base and I gave them these Wilden Horns to get more shards. Then there were way too many phantoms so I had to sleep. In the morning, I set up the ritual for more of those charms to speed up the process. While doing that, my piglets disappeared. Just in case, I ended up making the trap a little bit better and summoned another Drigme for help. I then had to grab another piglet, but first I hopped in the mining dimension real quick to see the Silk Touch loot and I also set the quarry down to bedrock. This time, I tried to pick up a piglet and ended up not having enough XP for it. So I had to do it the old fashioned way. I took out a piglet and one of them dropped three hearts, so I was super optimistic. I broke through the pyramid, tearing through the mobs and made it to the second floor, which was packed. Luckily, I was able to spam attacks and break spawners, which made everything a lot easier. Then I became the luckiest person in the world when a piglet exploded into a loop pinata. From this one guy, I got about 66 hearts. Once that was done, I destroyed this place, basically killing everything I could and breaking as many things as I possibly could as well. I took a break to put some items away and then went back for round two. 
Eventually, I made it to the top floor where I broke the spawners, grabbed the netherite blocks, and looted those stacked chests in the center. Day 179, I could start the process of making all the modium alloys now. This, however, needed a billion FE. That ended up being way too much of a burden on the spirited reactor. I actually had to stop the process for now. After processing most of my seeds, I used one of the nether stars I had to energize some nitro crystals. This process gave me 16 crystals each time, which is really nice. Once that was used up, I made patterns for uh, ace upgrades and uh, speed upgrades. The next morning, I cleared that piglish farm area and went into the mining dimension to collect the loot plus grab some all the modium ores. I had to run those evaporation plants again and started uh, putting a bunch of ores through the process. I also ran the lithium dust maker too, but this time I connected it to an ender chest. Some of these silk touch ores couldn't be processed so I had to mine them manually. The builder also picked up blocks of ores too and that had to be cooked manually. On top of that I ended up running out of HCL since there was no sun. I also learned the next morning that you could just energize raw uraninite which gave a much better return. Doing that gave me like 9 stacks of those things. Once all of that was finished I looked to see how many more materials I would need for a storage upgrade. Turns out I would need a lot more silicon, so I reprocessed those seeds. Then for glass, I tore through a desert again. After all of that, I put a recipe for glass in the furnace as well. Still, I ended up needing a little bit more redstone and glass. I ended up getting the redstone underground, and I also had a ton of regular sand. Just to make sure I had enough silicon, I went to the nether to grab tons of quartz. Then finally, I could actually start the auto craft. Things were running a little slow, but at least it was all automatic. After all of that, I had three 1024k storage parts. I also decided to just stick with the fortune quarry instead and this new quarry was six chunks big. Once morning came I made a 4 million storage part and had to run my old disk through the manipulator. Next up I started working on a creative importer and this thing was pretty expensive it needed a nether star. During that I also got my 1 million storage back. Plus I got 4 insanium essences which meant I could now make the nether star crux. I only need one more nether star which I got pretty easily by obliterating this wither. I used this crux in the last garden cloche I had. Day 184 to day 185 I had to swap the dragon egg seeds into the cloche and brought the nether star seeds out. This was because the actual farm ran way faster. Once that was done I did a ritual for quartz seeds and planted that as well. After that I made these uh, tertium growth accelerators but I'm pretty sure these aren't really worth it. I also grabbed more items from the quarry and ran them through the process. Since the mod pack had been updated there was also an XP augment for the furnace but I had no idea how it worked. While all that was going on I grabbed some wither skeleton skulls and went to the nether for a few items, soul sand and hopefully a blaze spawner. I could only get the soul sand but at least now I could fight a bunch of withers. I took out 3 and came home to make more nitro crystals. I needed like 36 of those nitro capacitors. Later that night I didn't realize that stacking inferium growth accelerators would be more efficient uh, so I actually ended up filling out that uh, tertium layer. In 186 I just messed around with the machines and waited for my crops to grow. I especially needed the nether star essences to grow. Uh, that night, the quarry had finished and I ended up grabbing all the stuffs to smelt. Day 187, after waiting for most of the things to process, I ended up replacing a layer of the inferium growth accelerators with prudentium. Now once again, I'm not really sure how efficient this thing is, but it did end up costing a lot of essences. Rest of the night, I waited for more items to finish up. Day 188, from all of that waiting, I finally had enough of those nether star essences to make a few nether stars. With all of that done, I made tons of tinted glass and grabbed a few more amethyst shards. Then I came back to make more nitro crystals with these two new nether stars. Once that was done, I built an everbright portal right next to the nether portal. I lit it up and spawned in the middle of an ocean. I also got some quest rewards as well. To help with the bosses, I ended up chopping down some trees to make some pickaxes and then started going underground for some cool materials. I actually wanted these uh, aqui tools to fight the bosses with. It took a little bit but I got 4 raw aqui which I cooked up. With that I made an aquite sword and I uh, came back home to enchant this thing. One of the enchants actually looked pretty sick so I stuck with that. It was then time to fight some bosses. I hopped back in and looked for the blinding dungeon. I made my way inside, grabbed all the keys and noticed that this sword was like one shotting these mobs. After that I grabbed my quest reward and went into the boss fight. This was a summoner and I actually hated both of the dimensions like first bosses. But with this sword I was able to wipe this dude out really quickly. I opened the loot bag and got some really cool items. The arc was definitely the most important thing. Next up was a scarlet crusher in a nature dungeon. The second bosses are way better but they're like super annoying to get to. Before I went into that gigantic structure I set a waypoint up and then I came home to put an affix on this sword. I even put like a crit chance gem on it too. Since I was fully prepared I hopped into the dungeon, I turned the hover mode on and 
and started looking through each one of these rooms. This ended up taking so long. Well, eventually I got the four keys and found the staircase leading up to the boss room. I went inside and I also had gotten this axe from one of the chests, which uh, actually helped like crazy. I thought that my sword was broken because of the affix, but I'm pretty sure this mod just wants you to use axes on this guy. Because I was worried, I actually made a new axe and a sword. The fight itself was actually pretty easy. I just broke the barriers and waited for the crusher to attack. Once it stopped, I would hit it for major damage. Halfway through, this thing gets out of the center and starts chasing you. In this situation, I was able to do tons of damage with my crit chance. I took a few more hits, but now this boss was fully done. Once again, the arc was the best reward. I then came home, got rid of the Everbright portal, and built one for the Ever Dawn. This time, I just speed ran the boss in here. I grabbed all the keys and spam attacked the alchemist. This fight only took a few seconds and I got the loot bag. This arc though was not as good, but I did get a cool shield. The next structure was the poison dungeon and this one was by far the most annoying. Anyway, I managed to get the four keys and I made it all the way down to the bottom. And of course, I went into the boss chamber. This was the Arachnark. Almost immediately, I was able to take tons of its health down. Once it started hanging on the walls, I had to hit it with my bow and that barely did any damage. The rest of the fight was super easy though. I got my final loot bag with another arc and I completed most of the Dimensions quests. All those mobs gave me tons of yellow hearts and I wanted to fill out those heart containers. For now, I could only fill out the red and yellow hearts. This gave me like a whole new color of hearts I've never seen before. Also, I had tons of nether star essences, so I made even more nitro crystals. The next morning, I set up an area to house a bunch of spawners. The floors were made out of stone bricks, the corners were made out of quartz pillars, and I used tinted glass to cover the rest. I then set up the vector plates and the mob masher. Once that was done, I made tons of fans that would uh, hopefully push the mobs down. I ended up placing them on the top of this entire structure. That's when I fully ran out of amethyst crystals. Before worrying about that though, I set up a column of spawners. Day 192, to get more amethyst shards, I learned that you could use these amethyst blocks on a cutting board. Doing that, I was able to fill out the sides some more. I also put these comparators into the spawners as well to make them redstone controlled. Then I filled out more of the sides and I made these brass casings so that I could craft these things called redstone links. I put the links on the side of the spawners and then another one on the outside outside to control the whole thing. It took a bit to set up right, but uh, it was working. To finalize it, I filled out the front wall and put some tinted ethereal glass as well so that I could go back and forth. Now I just needed spawn eggs to get the mobs I needed. I hopped into the other dimension and luckily there was a Vindicator there. I got its DNA and uh, also some blazing wither skeleton DNA as well. Day 193, using those swabs with those mobs DNAs, I could make chicken feed. I ended up finding two chickens right next to me and uh, this helped me get two spawn eggs, but I had to explore some more to grab the last one. Once that was finished, I came back home to place a redstone block underneath the mob masher and then put upgrades into it. After that, I changed all those spawners with the eggs I had. I actually wanted one more spawner, so I found the nearest roguelike dungeon to explore. I boxed the spawner up, brought it home, and also linked that one up too. With that being done, I put tons of sugar into each spawner, reducing the minimum spawn delay. Then I used these clocks to reduce the max spawn delay. After that, I set up the collection system with an absorption hopper. For the XP, I needed some lime green dye and black concrete. Day 194, I now had a netherite chest for the items and an experience crystal for the XP. Then I ran the spawners and the mobs started flowing through. The amount of items I got from that quick run were amazing. I no longer needed blaze seeds or emerald seeds anymore. The next thing I needed to do was get all of the good loot into my storage system. I basically just did that with an item pipe uh, that contained a netherite upgrade going into an ender chest. This way I could whitelist the items I wanted into the system. I basically just whitelisted everything other than the random armor and weapons. But now that meant I'd have to upgrade to a creative importer. I also no longer needed an ender chest going into the drawer. I could just connect the whole thing to the system. The only issue is that my uh, mob farm ender chest wasn't depositing anything. Luckily, I had tons of green dye and once I got every single one of these uh, to be the same color, it all was operational. Day 195, I set up a 2x2 drawer for some of the mob drops and then made a trash can to get rid of a bunch of the junk in the chest. Uh, after that, I ran the spawner again and got so many items. To help with the overflowing, I actually put an advanced void upgrade in the chest, but honestly, I had no clue how this thing worked. I even set up a blacklist, uh, then I had it match tags, and on top of that, I also ran the spawner until this whole thing filled up, but for some reason, I just couldn't get this thing to void any items. 
so I was just gonna have to do it manually emptying out things to the trash can. During the night, I had another nether star, which I turned into a nitro crystal. I also took out one more wither to finally get the last bit of stuff I needed for a nitro reactor. I set this beast up right away and it was working like a dream. Day 196 to day 197, I was messing around with the mob farm a little bit and I had to uh, restructure a few things. But after that, I made a small pool of water to activate the portal to the twilight dimension. This ended up unlocking all of the quests for the dimension as well. I then decided to speed run these quests as quickly as possible. First up, I grabbed some uh, brown mushrooms while I was in there. Then I set up a waystone. Once that was done, I started looking for a courtyard. I ended up finding a mini maze and here I grabbed some spawners plus some of the loot in the chests. Then I used this compass to locate the first structure. This boss was the Naga and I took it out with like five shots from my bow. I picked up the trophy and that completed the first quest. Next up was the Lich and this dude is in a tower. Since this place also had a bunch of books, I decided to work from the bottom all the way to the top just to grab all the loot. Up top was the Lich who takes damage when you reflect the projectile back. The second phase was pretty unique and it spawns minions so I had to make sure to take those guys out too. Honestly this fight was super easy and I picked up my second trophy. The third boss was a minnow shroom in a swamp. In order to advance this quest I needed to take out some minotaurs to make a map. I was slowly working my way through the structure looking for this thing called a maze map focus. Once I got the map I decided to swap to another weapon so that I could pick up a uh, raw meat. Finally I advanced the quest and found the minnow shroom room. This fight literally took like two or three hits. Inside of the chests, I got the trophy and some beef stroganoff, which allowed me to fight the Hydra now. This one was by far the coolest looking boss. And once again, this was about like launching the projectiles back. The only difference is I had to use my bow this time and I fired it at the heads as the Hydra attacked. Doing that, I was able to take him out pretty easily. Also, their lair had tons of ores, so I grabbed a bunch of that before I took the trophies. The next boss is by far the most annoying. They were called night phantoms and their structures were huge, but sometimes it could also just not spawn the lair. I ran through this structure and even decided to start breaking a bunch of it down for more visibility, but nothing. I ended up having to find another one of these structures to fight the bosses. These guys were super easy and dropped some cool looking armor. Once I got the trophy, the next boss was the Urgast. Now this guy spawns in a very cool looking tower and it's actually a very unique boss. I quickly fired an arrow, taking down a quarter of its health, and then I ran into the little side room where I had to take down these mini gas to power a machine. Once I stood on this pressure plate, it dragged the Urgas closer to me and I could take it out. After that, I grabbed all the loot inside that chest and started taking out a bunch of gas because uh, gas tears can be used on spawners. I used my bow since it was magnetic and then went out to find the Yeti cave. Immediately, I flew into the center and decimated this alpha Yeti. Then I grabbed the trophy and went looking for an Aurora Palace for the Snow Queen. For this one, I actually stayed really close to the towers to see if I could get the boss bar to pop up. That ended up working pretty well so I knew exactly where to break into. Since I could fly, I just attacked the Snow Queen easily and the fight was over in a few seconds. The chests, of course, had the trophy but it also had a really nice bow. The next Next few aren't really boss battles, so I used a nature's compass to look for a twilight highlands biome. Once I got there, I found a crater and started digging down. I ended up seeing a gigantic obsidian box so I knew I was in the right place. Then to finish some quests, I went around the cave and I found a smaller obsidian box. There was a chest in here that had magic beans. After that, I made my way back to the surface and here I planted the seeds underneath the clouds. That ended up causing huge beanstalks to rise from the ground. I decided to fly up instead and fight these giants that look like me. They dropped a giant sword and a pickaxe. With that, I went back to the cave to break open the giant obsidian box. It took a bit to mine, but inside I opened a chest that gave me the lamp of cinders. With this, I could burn these thorns. Then to complete the last few quests, I needed to grab like 12 of these thorn roses. This process was actually super annoying, but I got it done. With all that finished, I went to the final castle, which was actually a work in progress, and just took the doors. Uh, turns out that was actually part of the quests too. For the last few days, I energized these Aldemodium alloys. Uh, it actually took a really good amount of time. I finally had one of these ingots now though. While energizing another, I set up the apparatus to combine all of them for the alloy tools. Also while waiting, I let the mob grinder run for a bit and then I realized I had tons of brown mushrooms from the twilight forest. So with that, I made a bunch of fermented spider eyes and supercharged the spawner spawn counts. I also put wool into the spawners to make the mobs silent. And uh, last but not least, I used chorus fruit to get rid of the AI of the mobs. Then I grabbed the levels that had piled up and started placing some of these uh, all the modium alloys into the apparatus. 
The energizing process was so long, I was able to reprocess a bunch of my seeds and even upgrade the seed reprocessor to Supremium. I ended day 200 by just being a few ingots short of an all the modium alloy tool. I survived 100 days in the ultimate fantasy mod pack. Roguelike Adventures and Dungeons is a massive mod pack that turns Minecraft into a brutal RPG. In these 100 days, my goals are simple. I want to take down the Wither and the Ender Dragon, both actions which actually increase the game's difficulty. And last but not least, I want to take down a tier 5 dragon as well. I spawned into the world with a necklace and a cactus sword. Really quickly, I decided to uh, check these quests out and found these things called specializations. I chose the mining one since it gave some really good rewards. Then while grabbing some coal, I noticed that I was getting a bunch of XP for some skills. I had more important things to do first though, and that was just getting stone tools. While exploring around, I grabbed more coal and went into this cave. But it was way too risky for now, so I just grabbed whatever I could and made my way back out. I then realized I unlocked so many quest rewards, and some skills ended up being leveled up. Since I already had a bunch of stone, I decided to make a Paxel as well. Across the hill, I noticed a village where I grabbed a bunch of hay bales to make tons of bread. I also entered this scribes building where I grabbed the bookshelves and some of these manuscripts. For those items, I got this uh, experience gem as a quest reward. For mod packs like these, I always try to get a backpack quickly, so I made sure to breed these cows. I ended up taking a cow out, but I got no leather. After that, I decided to grab even more quest rewards and now my inventory was already filled. Once that was done, I found a smoker and here I cooked this raw beef. Then after that, I found an even bigger animal pen. Over here, I bred even more animals and finally got two leather. Later that night, I cooked more raw beef and then got attacked by vexes, so I made sure to run away and sleep. The next morning, I picked up these buddy card things, which are going to be important for much later. And I went to explore that place where I got attacked. I broke into the center and made my way up these staircases. The chest up here had a bunch of tomes, which gave me a lot of levels. I also had some recall potions and a golden apple. While exploring the village a little more, I grabbed an iron ore and picked up this quest reward for the buddy card. That ended up giving me a pretty cool knife, which I couldn't use yet. In the meantime, some more cows grew and I ended up getting some more leather from them. Another quest reward gave me this randomite ore which dropped a slime ball. But it did level up my mining skill though. While I was there, I smelted this iron ore and unlocked even more quest rewards. Here I learned that I could make flint tools and they were so much better than the stone ones I had for now. After all of that, I went down to this cave I saw right underneath the village. I started off by lighting this place up and then I realized I had this uh, night vision potion. With that, I grabbed 22 iron ores and found out I was on top of a zombie dungeon. I didn't jump down just yet, instead I lit up more of the areas up top and grabbed as many of the other ores I saw. While the iron was cooking, I was trying to level up my combat by hitting these zombies. I basically just stood two blocks above these zombies and hit them until I got up to combat level 15. Turns out for an iron sword, I needed level 25 combat. Day 3, I got my combat up to level 13, grabbed some more quest rewards, and found another direction to access this zombie dungeon. I was able to break one spawner, but I had to retreat since some of these enhanced zombies could just one shot me. I used this water bucket to push a bunch of zombies off and then start exploring the rest of this dungeon. Right now, I only broke a few spawners and looted a few chests. Uh, then I decided to make my way up and here tons of zombies decided to just spawn at once. Luckily, before I ended up dying, I drank this recall potion. While running around, I grabbed more quest rewards and then I had a choice between which skills to level up. I chose endurance and this helped like crazy. As I was exploring some more, I found a swamp where I picked up a slime nest and still couldn't find any strings. It turned dark so I had to use my recall potion real quick. When I came back to the village I found a chest in that one structure that I ended up missing. I also got hit by a vex and had to recover. But I did manage to get the magic mirror and some recall potions that were inside the chest. And now I had more than enough strings to make the backpack. On top of that I also upgraded it to iron. This ended up clearing so much space and I went to sleep. Day 4 to 5 I found this dirt house which had a trap door inside. This ended up leading to a basement with a zombie villager. I realized I could just farm endurance here so I basically just let this zombie hit me a bunch and then heal. I did that on repeat for a long time and I even grabbed a bunch of quest rewards to increase my endurance as well. Lucky for me, I had tons of food so the healing was no issue at all. This entire process got me up to level 15 on endurance which means I could wear iron armor. I made sure to grab the quest rewards, cure the zombie villager, and then take the brewing stand as well. As it was getting dark, I decided to kill a few sheep to make a sleeping bag plus a bow. With that done, I picked a direction to explore and slept midway through the night. In the morning, I found 
found this house structure where I grabbed the bookshelves and all the loot from upstairs. This place also unlocked some more quest rewards and of course I chose the XP for my combat skill. Oh yeah, so in this mod pack you also get a bunch of these weird little coins which you can use to buy waystones but I wasted 200 coins on a loot crate and got a useless helmet. As I kept moving on, I unlocked more quests meeting and defeating these different mobs. I also grabbed some glowstone and then these blue skies portal blocks. After that, I found a bunch of gravel and learned that you could use this cutting board to extract flint. I ended up doing that so I could craft a flint paxel. To end this day, I used up more coins for another loot chest which was still a waste and then recalled back to the village to sleep. Before going out to explore in a whole different direction, I decided to check out that cave under the village again. In here, I immediately fought an enchanted zombie and accidentally used up 30 levels to advance this specialization. I just needed 4 more levels on my mining stat, at least. While fighting off these zombies, I got my combat up to level 20. I still had to be careful though, but now I was able to get much deeper into the zombie dungeon. I ended up leveling up my mining ability a lot by breaking these spawners. After going around a good bit of this dungeon, I almost got surrounded by zombies. Luckily, I was able to fend them all off. The chests in here though were not good at all, they all just had like really basic loot. I did however get 9 gold, which meant I could upgrade my iron backpack to gold. This dungeon connected to another cave, which I slowly built down to get to. I grabbed all the ores I could and especially these source ores. Then while mining everything I could, I fell into another cave and here I saw diamond ores and these randomite ores as well. The randomite ores gave me a diamond and tons of mining XP. Finally, after all of that, I got my mining up to level 10 and unlocked tier 2 specialization. This gave me a new armor and a trinket which was supposed to increase my mining speed. These caves were also pretty big, so I spent a good amount of time just going around lighting the areas up and of course grabbing the ores at my level. All the stuff got my mining up to level 14. I also had tons of iron ore and as soon as my mining got up to level 15, I set up furnaces to smelt a bunch of them. Turns out, uh, mining wasn't the stat I needed to get up to level 15, it was gathering. But I was close on that anyway. Since things were smelting, I explored some more and a creeper explosion scared me, so I came back to restock. I made a bunch of iron blocks and extra stone pickaxes then went right back. Turns out there was another cave which had this monster box. I ended up getting too close and spawned all these mobs and after fighting for a little bit I had to retreat. Once things cleared out I finally got my gathering to 15 and switched to the iron pickaxe. I was finally able to mine these diamonds now. Then for some reason I decided to get all the way up to an iron bow without even leveling up my archery at first. The next day I waited for a good chunk of iron ore to smelt and made an iron paxel. Then I started making my way back to the surface and along the way I made sure to grab as much diamond and gold ores as I could though. I actually ended up back in that zombie dungeon where an elite zombie spawned and chased me. I had to find something really quick to jump on so I wouldn't die. After surviving, it was my cue to get out of there and as soon as I surfaced, I grabbed these bookshelves from this house and just picked a direction to go. This way led me to another dungeon and after clearing out the top floor, I just decided to leave and sleep. As soon as morning hit, I saw this battle tower. I climbed the stairs up and broke the spawner here. The top floor had blocks of iron and gold which was really awesome. There was also an illager tower here too but I wanted to live so I made my way up this hill on the other side. Over here I found this mad cow and killed a pegasus because I thought they would drop leather. That's not all though, I opened a haunted chest and took out the ghost. Then I probably found the biggest jungle biome I had ever seen. I basically got stuck here so I had to drink the recall potion. Since I broke the bed before, this ended up uh, bringing me back to the first place I spawned in. That night, I tried to make my way around the forest biome, so I was very carefully on a boat. I even ended up finding this underground water dungeon and I really didn't want to get hit by drowns, so I made sure to run far away and slept. Day 9, I was still on the search to find a nice area to live, but first I had to survive this attack from these trident throwing drowns. Once those guys burned up, I found a roguelike dungeon and started going down these stairs. It started off pretty easy and I was able to go through this uh, first floor, breaking the spawners and looting the chests. I found ender pearls, golden apples, enchanted books and enchanted gears just from one floor. I picked up some quest rewards and even uh, found this trap which I disarmed. This left all the ores to me and since they were pretty rare, my mining leveled up like crazy. The next floor though was immediately more dangerous. I was already getting hit by more stacked mobs. I was in serious trouble so I had to run away. Day 10 to 11, I found a great spot to start a base behind the previous dungeon. I started by clearing the grass and placed down the essential. 
specials. Then I used one of these copper coins for a loot box that gave me 16 dirt blocks. After that, I chopped down a tree and grabbed some more quest rewards. While my iron was smelting, I made tons of fences to outline a farm. It was just a basic farm for wheat to start. I also had good amounts of bone meal, so I was able to stock up on bread. Once that was done, I quickly went to sleep. As soon as morning hit, I placed down a good amount of chests and started clearing my backpack out. Since I had so much iron, I also put down an anvil as well. Next up, with these coins, I finally bought a waystone. That was the last thing I basically needed to make this place home. Really quickly, I checked off a bunch of basic quests. Then as I checked the surrounding area, I noticed a giant castle. It took me a bit to find the entrance and I heard a bunch of mobs somewhere. This place was pretty abandoned though. I uh, made my way towards the top where I looted tons of books and maps. It turns out though all the good loot was in the center. I ended up getting blocks of gold and some diamond gear. While searching for the mob noises, I woke up tons of silverfish and just had to fight all these little guys. Then after all that, I finally found where the mobs had been piling up and started to take a few of these guys out. Once the area was clear, I hopped in but there were more mobs coming from the basement, so I drank my recall potion to come back to the base. Since I had gathered 5 obsidian, I was also able to make an enchantment table. After that, I leveled up my endurance through a quest reward as well. Right next to the farm, I placed an enchantment table down, and because I had collected tons of books, I had this place up and running in no time. Before the night ended, I made this worn notebook so that I could start Ars Nouveau. With all that done, I enchanted my pickaxes and got efficiency on both. Then for the sword, I got smite 3. I also enchanted my armor and got protection 3 on my chest plate, feather falling 4 on my boots, and useless things on the rest. After that I grabbed this potion that had night vision and went down a cave next to my base. As I was digging down I ended up in a much bigger and more dangerous area. This was another roguelike dungeon and I was fighting tons of zombies. Oh yeah I also bought this uh, warp scroll from the coin shop just in case. I ended up clearing the first floor and uh, one of the chests had a copper coin that I traded for some leather. Another copper coin ended up giving me a stack of carrots. I then ended up actually drinking this potion, which uh, I wish I saved, but now I had full night vision and tons of other buffs. With that, I breezed through more rooms and started moving down. Last time, this level gave me tons of trouble, but this time I was able to clear out all the spawners. I even got some quest reward for breaking 25 spawners. I used it on combat, which was a mistake, but the other reward was this monster coin. This was a second last level and the loot was getting so much better. These chests now had ender pearls and diamond armor. In the meantime, I actually ended up using that monster coin for endurance levels. Once again, I picked up some potion with night vision and went down to the final level. Now this level has tons of loot, but it also has way stronger enemies. I started off by fighting a few zombies and then got attacked by a wither skeleton. It was pretty much worth it since the loot in here was really good. Things were getting a little too easy, so I quickly got humbled by a few strays. I ended up running and having to eat a golden apple. After that, I ended up coming home. As soon as I got back, I combined two iron chest plates and made these iron clawed gauntlets, which allows your hand to break all types of blocks. Later that night, I grabbed almost everything for a feeding upgrade, but I just needed these melons. So I teleported back to that first village I was in. I ended up not getting any melons, but I did pick up tons of wheat and a composter. Once it was morning, I enchanted another pair of boots and grabbed some stone. With that, I made a grindstone and re-enchanted a bunch of stuff. I also combined two swords together to get one decent sword. Uh, I did the same with these boots as well. After that, I made a regular bow that I could actually use and went back to the castle I was in before. This time, I went down to the basement and cleared out this whole section. First by breaking all the spawners and then looting all the chests. Turns out there was another room and it was filled with skeletons who were way more annoying. In the chests, I got an enchanted golden apple and more diamonds. Turns out there was another room connected to this room as well. Doing all of this leveled me up like crazy and I managed to break into another room which was actually a library. On the way back to the base, I used my bow to level up the archery skill. I also enchanted more leggings and helmets and then combined those together. The leggings actually increased my total hearts. After that, I got really lucky with this pickaxe enchantment. Day 15 to 16, I traveled back towards the first village I explored and went down towards the snowy tundra area. I made sure to check off all these quests as well. After that, I noticed this giant and started firing arrows at it. It ended up dropping its own head. Past that, I ran into a village and just started looting this place. I picked up a blast furnace in here, activated the waystone, and went inside this icy pyramid as well. This actually dropped me right into a mine shaft. Luckily, the first chest had torches which allowed me to explore pretty safely. Some of the chests in here were pretty nice. 
I ended up getting some relics and random ores. As I got deeper, I got more quest rewards from killing mobs and I was able to level up my endurance. After that, I took out this shade and stumbled into a large dungeon area. This place had three rooms, each with a few spawners. I was pretty careful, but I ended up almost getting overrun anyway. Uh, I ended up having to eat my golden apple and after that, it was so much easier to take these mobs out and break the spawners. The chests in here were definitely not worth it. Uh, before clearing the next room, I actually leveled up my magic. This room was a lot easier, but I don't think it had anything in the chests. The final room actually ended up having a monster box. I ended up having to retreat because there were so many mobs. But after that, I took them out pretty easily. Uh, those chests also had nothing. And on the way out, I found a zombie dungeon. This place had zombie brutes and I picked up a second magic mirror here. Then I grabbed this randomite ore and picked up these sunglasses, uh, which become very important much later. I ended up taking a little bit longer and ran through a whole nother sword, but I cleared the dungeon and used the mirror to come back home. After that, I used another quest reward to get endurance level 30. Rest of the night, I made two more double chests, set a blast furnace down, and cleared my backpack, which took a very long time. The next morning, I saw that I had 64 raw beef from one of those copper coin rewards and ended up cooking those. Then I used these bottles of XP and also bought a warp stone. Once that was done, I made extra iron armor and rolled some enchants on those. After some combining and swapping, things were looking pretty good. I also made this smithing table, but I had no clue how to salvage items. I did figure out how to reforge things though. The reforging definitely was not worth it. Next up for quest rewards, I made a watering can, which actually grew my crops a lot quicker. And then I made a tower shield and used a campfire for a bunch of endurance XP. I also inputted these bones to get more XP for endurance as well. Before this night ended, I stocked my backpack with bee cages and all the items needed for a feeding upgrade. As soon as morning hit, I used most of my diamonds to upgrade my backpack. Then I used these two clay balls to make marvelous clay. With all that, I crafted a novice spell book, but I was about two levels short from being able to use it. Since I really wanted to get into Ars Nouveau, I also made this scribes table. But for that, I had to run around uh, to find these flourishing archwood logs. Day 19, it was time to go back and look for melons. Along the way, I fought these pillagers and realized I had permanent strength. This was because of the different foods I'd eaten and the spice of life mod. I ended up finding this jungle biome and there were just melons out and around, which I collected. While exploring the rest of the jungle, I found some cool looking mobs like this uh, Amphitheer, which I took out. I also found this witch's tower where I grabbed the potions, defeated the witch, and looted through all the chests. I made sure to grab the extra enchanting table and the bookshelves. Right past this tower, I went inside a jungle pyramid and broke this glass, which just triggered the TNT trap, so I had to get out of there. I ended up staying on the outskirts of the jungle biome and took out more pillagers, and once it became night, I made my way back home. As soon as I was back, I also crafted these arcane stone and smelt glass to make source jars. I was able to craft two source jars and an agronomic source link. I waterlogged this stone slab and placed the source link on top. Then I put the source jars on the sides for now. With this watering can, I sped up growth and the source link were filling up my jars really quickly. To explore some more, I traveled back towards the villages. As morning hit, I ran through this swamp biome and found a house. In here, I grabbed the bookshelves and broke the urns, which dropped a blaze powder. On the way out, I fought a crocodile, and as I moved forward, I stumbled into a library. I made sure to activate the waystone and looted the chests inside. The loot here wasn't that good, but I still made my way to the top and took out these witches. Before leaving, I grabbed this magical brazier as well, and then just kept moving forward. Finally, after all of that, I actually found regular bees who I captured. Past those bees, I ended up finding another village, and while looting some of these chests, I got a really cool trophy. In that village, there was this tower that I recognized, so I decided to climb up. One of the chests had even more sunglasses and these buddy cards, so collecting a whole set of these things gives you permanent speed. I ended up fighting tons of zombies and found out I had an enchantment that fired snowballs. The chests in the center were pretty good, it had a bunch of tomes. I also opened up those buddy packs and they filled my inventory up. Then this enchanted mob almost killed me so I had to teleport back home. While putting all the loot away, I made this buddy card binder for all the cards and finally made the feeding upgrade and that ended up clearing out my inventory a lot. Day 21, I placed a bunch more dirt down, cleared even more space and made this farm a true 9x9 farm. I also placed the source jars on top of the source link to save space. Also, those copper coins gave me a stack of carrots, so I did a half wheat, half carrot farm as well. After that, I placed the fences down and moved the bed. Then I needed to make this thing called a glyph press. 
The only thing I actually needed to get was more stone. So I decided to explore this cave right underneath my base. While mining, my goal was also to mine a bunch of source ores to level up my magic. Even then, I also managed to grab whatever else I could too to level up my mining. Once all that was done, I made the glyph press and put it right behind the source jars. Then before the night ended, I made an iron paxel. Day 22, with this paxel, I chopped down tons of trees and made four magic clay. Uh, I put one clay plus a diamond to make an amplified glyph. I used another magic clay plus rabbit hide to make the launch glyph. And with these two, I crafted a spell to launch myself. Once that was done, I made another glyph for leap and also added that onto the main spell. Then to help with this food diversity stuff, I made a lunchbox and upgraded it to gold. Inside the lunchbox, I could pick 14 different types of food, uh, which would all increase my food diversity and give me tons of boosts. I decided to make an advanced feeding upgrade also, and then allowed this lunchbox. I actually learned this tip from a YouTuber named Dio Legion, so make sure you check out their video as well. I spent the rest of the day making another glyph for Mage Light. This one was just like placing torches. Then I moved all of my random foods into the lunchbox and went down to the caves underneath my base to light up as much as I could. Day 23, I came back to grab tons of torches and then went down to explore the rest of the cave. Immediately, I fought a bunch of mobs and ended up in a zombie dungeon. The chest though had a cobalt shield. I then tried to level up my endurance from this zombie brute, but it did way too much damage. The chest in here had way more buddy cards and other random stuff too. Past this dungeon, I got way too close to another monster box and had to fight tons of random dudes. After some tactical retreating, I cleared them all out. As I explored more of the cave, I found something cool. I didn't realize that this was a nether portal, but I did read something and I remembered to take this dimensional plasma in a bucket. After that, I decided to come back home and clear my backpack. The next morning, I went back to the library and found another empty house. In here, I broke the urns and got more blaze powder. As I kept moving forward, I found another roguelike dungeon and started going down the stairs. I managed to run through the first floor pretty easily. I grabbed everything I could from the chests and broke all the spawners. The second floor though was pretty terrifying since I ended up in a boss chamber. I had to run away and I grabbed these logs to create some separation. With that, I easily took the dude out and picked up its nice helmet. After that, I cleared the other rooms plus the boss chamber and then went down to the next floor. Here I fought elite skeletons who were pretty tanky. I also got an iron coin which I used on three randomite ores. Then I moved on to another floor and realized that this was uh, connected to a zombie dungeon and a mine shaft. There were so many chests to loot and I ended up getting even more tomes buddy cards and diamonds. Once that was done, I went back to the roguelike dungeon and tried to loot everything in here as well. Doing all of that, I got my combat up to level 40. Once I looted everything, I explored the surrounding cave, which uh, was connected to another dungeon that I hadn't seen yet, but I was getting surrounded by these mobs first. Once I dealt with all of them, I looted the chest and I got this balloon bobble, which increases jump height and reduces fall damage. Since I explored a bunch, I came home, used my quest rewards on endurance, put all of my buddy cards away, and then used all of my copper coins on loot boxes. Later that night, I almost died to some zombies, and once I took care of them, I made a bunch more chests and used this monster coin on magic levels. With level 5 magic, I could now use a spell book, and the first thing I did was sprinkle mage light all over the base. Once that was done, I tested out this launch spell and it was working pretty well. Finally, to end this night off, I equipped new armor and kept testing this launch spell for fun. Day 26, I enchanted some of the new armor and teleported back towards the villages to explore. This launch spell and balloon combo was pretty awesome since it reduced the fall damage I had to take. Don't worry, later on, I get rid of all fall damage. After exploring around some more, I found this ice woodland mansion structure. Right away, I went to the top floor and fought a Vindicator. Behind that dude was an Evoker and of course these stupid Vexes. As soon as those guys were taken care of, I equipped the totem and made sure to just launch these projectile torches as much as I could. Doing that, I was able to go from room to room clearing it all out. I also grabbed a ton of books from one room and apparently I had reached 200 total levels. Once I made it down to the lower floors, I fought this elite Vindicator which took half of my hearts every hit. It actually ended up taking me a long time to take that guy out. The mansion overall sucked though since I didn't get anything good aside from the totems. The rest of the night I fought through this pillager tower and took my quest rewards which I used all in my endurance. Then I fought mobs in this prairie biome until the morning. After fighting these harpies, I launched myself past these mountains and saw a giant structure. This place was filled with these mining mobs. I grabbed more levels for endurance from a quest reward and jumped up to see how many mobs there were. This place was absolutely packed and while lighting some of these areas, all the mobs started climbing towards me. I tried jumping to this structure but I had to retreat since I almost died. Then after eating a golden apple, I jumped to the top floor and started looting the chests here. Turns out the strongest mobs were on the top floor 
but I was able to handle them pretty easily. I almost died again, so I quickly made a harm spell and tried again. This actually ended up working and I cleared out the top floor. This chest in here were really stacked. They had tons of ores, enchanted gear, and food. Clearing the floor below was significantly harder, so I had to build down and then launch those projectile torches again. Doing all of that, I took out all the moths from above. I also picked up the pumpkins in here, which I actually needed. The next two floors I did the exact same thing and picked up whatever I could from the chests. Once morning hit, I cleared this place out and my backpack was filling up. I decided to move on and ended up in this rundown house where I killed this pixie for pixie dust. Oh yeah, since I had a potato, I also made this uh, Spice of Life book and looked at all the buffs I could get for the food diversity. While exploring some more, I found this house where I got some more buddy cards and swapped some of my armor for the ones in here. I also activated the waystone outside and then once again after leaping around I found the exact same structure. So I did the same thing and looted the entire place then just came home. I immediately enchanted this new armor and for the helmet I got mana boost and projectile protection and then for the chest plate I got protection and unbreaking. I spent the entire night basically putting all the stuff I had collected away. I even filled out my buddy card binder and made a scarecrow. I put the scarecrow right in front of the source link. Day 29 I needed to make a much better storage area so I started started by grabbing tons of stone. I had silk touch which made the job significantly easier. With that, I could make these network cables and this guidebook for a quest reward. To make the storage network root, I needed 4 quartz blocks, which meant I had to go to the nether. Since I didn't know how to go to the nether just yet, I actually tried making a nether portal and uh, there was this lava pool right next to my house and after messing up a few times, I got the shape of the portal up. I used a flint and steel and even tried using this dimensional plasma, but none of those things were working. After some slight reading, I went back underground to that nether portal area. So I had no clue how to get back home, but I still hopped in the portal anyway. I ended up spawning really high up in a soul sand valley and I used one of these huge basalt pillars to come down. After that, I actually beat a gas with my spells and purchased a waystone. While I was exploring, I noticed these weird structures on the ground and turns out that's how you come back home, but I didn't know about that just yet. Instead, I grabbed these gold blocks and launched myself onto a bastion. I really didn't want to fight those piglins, so I made sure to launch myself back towards a crimson forest biome. In here, I fought a crimson mosquito and finally grabbed the quartz I needed. Throughout this whole time, I kept fighting more mosquitoes and I even found some glowstone as well. I ended up hitting the mother load as I found myself in a quartz desert biome. In that biome, I got something like 70 quartz and then I fought all these piglins in this tower. My sword also broke, so I had to swap to an axe. During this time, I also decided to look for blazes. I actually ended up in this ember bog biome and fought a bunch of these guys. Even after taking out a ton of them, I only picked up like two blaze rods. I decided to call it quits though and started making my way back. I actually ended up getting pretty lucky and found a return portal with two gold blocks already in. With the two gold blocks I had, I was able to come back to the overworld. The first thing I did as soon as I came back was make the storage network route and I was able to upgrade my spell book to use tier 2 glyphs. Once that was done, I made two storage inventories and one storage request table. With all of that done, I crafted a few link cables and slept to get rid of the phantoms. Day 32 to day 33, I added some more dirt behind the chest and then dug down about four blocks to clear an area for the storage system. This area was about six blocks wide and then I made almost a stack of chests to place in there. These three layers of chests should be more than enough for now. I spent the rest of the time moving all of my items into these chests and then filling all the rows up. So with all that done, I linked all the chests together with the link cables and then connected it to the root with network cables. Once I set up the crafting grid and storage inventory, this thing was fully operational. In the morning, I made a storage remote, but I really needed this crafting one. That one was actually pretty expensive though. Now you guys let me know if this is cheating, but I turn on the LAN mode just to force load this one chunk my storage system was in. It also loaded a few extra chunks for some reason, but now I could access my storage from anywhere. To finish decorating, I cooked up sand and went to go look for squids. During my journey, I found a monastery and had a really rough time fighting those mobs. Then when I checked my map, I realized my base was pretty close to an ice dragon's nest. I slowly made my way back home without any squids, but I was able to make this glyph of slow fall instead, which meant my launch spell now didn't do any more fall damage. I ended this day by filling my storage area with glass and then getting my endurance to 40 and my magic to 20. Day 34 to day 35, I grabbed this diamond sword that I had in my storage since my combat level was pretty close to 45. After that, I made new leggings and boots to go out exploring. With my launch spell, I breezed through these jungle biomes and fought these two giants. Finally, I ended up in another roguelike dungeon. 
Once again, the first floor was a cakewalk. And since I had that remote, I had no issues with inventory space. I even traded with this little goblin over here for iron coins that I used on randomite ores. I also mined them on the spot. The next floor also wasn't too hard, but my axe broke and I used my fist since my combat level was pretty close to 45. That actually ended up working surprisingly well and I had this floor cleared too. Then the floor underneath was actually super hard to clear. But once I got my combat level 45, I put the diamond sword on. With that, I ran through the floor super easily and completed a quest for killing 100 zombies. I also explored the other rooms and completed another quest for breaking 50 spawners. But my armor was getting obliterated and there were way too many mobs, so I had to come back home. As soon as I came back home, I collected my quest rewards and grabbed levels for endurance. Once that was done, I also wanted to redeem all these coins I collected as well. Before I did that though, I placed these furnaces next to the root and used these cables to try and automate them. Not a single thing I did worked, so I just decided to redeem those coins. I accidentally submitted two of those monster coins for the 10 times reward, so those were all gone. The iron coins I just used on randomite ores. The next morning, I went towards that snow village and found an oceanographer. From that villager, I bought sea lanterns. Then I decided to use those copper coins on loot crates and squid ink. I set out to explore some more, but I had to make some armor first. During that trip, I also bought a loot crate and got a hunter's belt. After that, I found a tower which had some sick armor with affixes and the affix books as well. I came home and then after a little bit of research, I learned of a way to level up smithing. But more importantly, I actually looked at that Project MMO's XP bonuses tab to see what items boost what. I also enchanted the belt and went back to salvaging wooden swords since they turned back into sticks. Once I got up to smithing level 5, I graduated to stone swords. Before exploring again, I replaced this glass with black stained glass since it looked so much better and I made my way back towards that monastery. The chest in the front had like 11 obsidian which was huge for me, but I actually struggled a ton trying to take this elite skeleton out. The top floor though had a wilden defender, but that guy was pretty easy. After looting those chests, I wanted to go back to another structure as well. This place was some sort of drowned village and these mobs were crazy. I managed to take a few out and grab some sea lanterns and got really lucky also getting this uh, essence of undeath. So with that, I came home to make a grave and I used this knowledge of death thing to level up my scribe skill. I placed the grave down, made a crafting remote, and then uh, this grave would actually be the best way to disenchant items. Also to help with that, I made this Ankh of Prey and used it on the grave. Day 38 to day 39, I wanted to make my base look better, so I started off by making a path that connects to the important places. The enchantment area's floor was also replaced with stone bricks, and I randomized the path with stone bricks and cobblestone as well. That was already a pretty nice change, so I outlined my storage area as well with stone bricks. Once that was done, I made this glyph of break, but my gathering level was too low for now. With that being done, I teleported towards the library and started exploring. I grabbed a bunch of loot from this ruined portal and found another mage's tower. There were also these enchantment tomes in here, which I should have been using from the beginning. Anyways, I moved forward and explored another village which had those towers in the center. This place had an evoker and vexes, so after taking care of those guys, I looted the chests. The top floor chests weren't that good, but the bottom floor had a ton of those buddy card packs, which I of course opened and put into the binder. The next morning, I fought these Stymphalian birds and found this giant airship past this library. I grabbed a bunch of spruce planks and then managed to launch all the way up to the airship. Things were going pretty well as I broke a spawner and then I ended up getting stuck and what saved me was my magic mirror. I only had two hearts and I had to eat my golden apple. After that, I actually used this magma block to level up my endurance, but that wasn't working well at all. Instead, I made tomes of scrapping to strip a few enchantments. Since I needed gathering level 30, I decided to go down to the mines and grab everything I could. At first, things were going pretty well. I was able to grab tons of ores and even level up some skills. I also fought a monster's box, but as I went deeper into the cave, I fought another monster box and this one was significantly harder, so I had to come back. That night, I made tons of spruce fences and went around the perimeter of my entire base area, placing it all down. I also lit up a good chunk of those areas with my spells and then put fence gates around as well. Now that my house is protected, I went out to try and grind more endurance levels. I jumped in this lava pool to get more XP and then noticed a cave so I actually hopped in there and started digging around. This cave was connected to much larger areas so I hopped in and started looking for very valuable ores. The rarer the ores, the more levels you actually get. 
That meant I basically just stayed under Y equals 15 and looked for diamond or randomite ores. I also ended up fighting another monsters box and had to uh, magic mirror out of there. That night, I ended up using this campfire and a zombie to grind even more levels. It carried over to the next morning when I learned that an iron shield increases your XP. So I did the campfire trick and while recovering health, I salvaged stone swords for smithing levels. I was getting pretty close and I even had a set of diamond armor ready. As it was turning into morning, I finally got up to level 45 endurance and enchanted my chest plate and leggings. The other diamond pieces I scrapped the enchants off of. Day 43 to day 44, I started off the day by making this glyph of extend time and then I learned that you could just salvage these books for levels. It also turns the book into paper but since I had so many books, it didn't even matter. I also made this night vision spell as well, which was just casting mage light on myself with tons of extend time. Then I ended up getting my smithing to level 14. Also I had 4 netherite scrap already, which I turned into one netherite ingot. Before going out to explore, I made a diamond scythe, which actually collects heads. And then I went underground to grab some stone. With the stone, I made an arcane pedestal for quest rewards and a ritual brazier, which I actually needed. Also now with night vision, I was able to go through this cave very easily. I got my gathering and mining up to level 29 as well. I fought through a monster box, looted a bunch of dungeons, and then decided to come home. As soon as I was back, I went out to look for vexing archwood logs. This actually took a uh, pretty decent amount of time to get, but with it, I was able to craft a tablet of scrying. To use that, I went back underground, placed the tablet on the brazier, and then threw in a diamond ore block. Once the ritual finished, every single diamond ore block was lit up. This effect was on for a pretty decent amount of time, but I was still rushing trying to grab as many diamonds as I could. I ended up mining till the next day and I got up to level 30 in mining as well. Unfortunately, the effect ran out as I was getting really close to a 4 vein and my gathering was also really close to level 30 as well. In total, I think I got more than like 22 diamonds uh, and I put all my levels into this specialization once again. I decided to come back home after a bit and grinded out more smithing levels. Then after chopping down a tree, I got my gathering to level 30 and could equip this glyph of break. Once that was done, I dug down really deep to place this dimensional plasma down. When I got to obsidian, I actually made the break spell and found out I could break obsidian with it. Once that was done, I cleared out some space, placed the plasma down, and a waste zone right behind. I came back up to mess around with Ars Nouveau, and I actually made 4 enchanting apparatuses. Which was a mistake since you only need 1. Anyways, I set up the basic enchantment area behind the farm to turn a regular seed into mage bloom seeds. I placed that mage bloom seed in the corner of the farm and used a stack of bone meal on it. Day 46 to day 47, with all that mage bloom, I made fibers to try the mage armors out. This thing actually increases your mana, but it makes you really weak, so I just stuck with a diamond armor. I thought the other versions would be stronger, so I grabbed some gold blocks and went to the nether. I spawned pretty close to my old spawn and then went down to collect that reclaimer block. I decided to just build a return portal right behind my spawn and also set a waypoint there as well. My main goal in here was to get blaze rods, but I also made sure to grab these uh, crimson warp blocks as well. With launch and night vision, I went all around the nether. I found a nether pyramid which was trapped, then a little dungeon, and finally past those two I saw a fortress. In here, I was just grinding away at these blazes. I also ended up finding a bastion ring in a chest, leveling up my endurance through a quest reward, and then I just farmed this spawner until I had close to 20 blaze rods. Since magic mirror didn't work, I had to take the long way back home. As soon as I got back, I also grabbed another brewing stand from a village, and once that was done, I found the best way to level up smithing. All you have to do is basically salvage these crimson warp blocks, which turn into nether warts, and then you can turn that back into crimson warp blocks. Doing that, I got my smithing up to level 22. I also made 6 potions of regeneration. To make these hell shelves and eventually an enchantment library, I needed nether bricks. But I did it the stupid way by cooking nether rack. I was actually able to make one at least and then place it in the corner. Eventually, I filled out one row, but now I had to go to the nether. In the nether, I found a little dungeon area which had some nether bricks and was able to make a few more hell shelves. Then while I was trying to come back home, I stumbled into a stalwart dungeon. The only issue here was that it was halfway underneath lava. That actually didn't stop me, so I equipped my scythe and went down below. I ended up using a bunch of cobblestone to avoid the lava, and then fought my first incomplete wither. I'm kinda certain that these guys always drop wither skeleton heads, 
In total, I picked up 11 Wither Skeleton Skulls and also took out these reinforced blazes, which drop even more rods. Since I was already here, I decided to grab all the tungsten in the center as well. On the way back, I ran into the fortress once again and picked up a bunch of nether bricks. After all of that, I came back home, made more potions of regen, which made more hell shelves and upgraded the entire enchantment area. Day 50 to day 51, it turned out that I needed more potions of regen, so I used up two more gas tiers. With these hell shelves, I finally had enough power to infuse the rest of the shelves. I then used whatever levels I had to enchant my helmet, boots, and the scythe. I then grabbed some potions and went to take out this airship. The first thing I did was drank the mana regen potion and then flew onto the wings. From there, I broke the phantom spawners first. With that being done and Slayer on my scythe, I actually ended up doing a lot of damage to the mobs on the ship. Eventually, I had to drink this potion of undying, but after that, this place was cleared and I could finally start looting. These chests were really good. They were packed with relics, ores, and golden carrots as well. After that, there was a the bottom floor where I broke these spawners from above. As I was trying to loot the room, I actually got attacked by a ton of mobs and I had to teleport back home. With this nether coin, I actually used it on obsidian and then I used the copper coin on tons of random loot. Once all of that was done, I cooked up a stack of potatoes and a bunch of tungsten ore that I had as well. So with that being done, I filled up my lunchbox and went back to the airship. Now this place had no mobs and I was able to loot the chests. And the chests on the bottom floor were so much better than the ones up top. When I came back home, I made ladders going down to the storage room and then made a runic hammer and an anvil. This was all just to repair the hunter's belt and bastion ring. I also made this runic altar, but I have no clue what this was for. The next morning, I made this magnetic ring and upgraded it to a dislocation ring. I also completed some of these enigmatic legacy quests, which gave me more levels. I actually ended up needing even more levels, and to do that, I went out to explore. Of course, I went into this roguelike dungeon right in front of the place that I'd actually spawned in. This time, I was able to just breeze through. I collected everything in the chest like these tattered tomes as well. With those tomes and these rings, I got even more quest rewards from the Enigmatic Legacy quest line. In the next floor, the only issue was this Empasa who can still do tons of damage, but I used my spells to take care of that from far away. After that, the next floor was just as easy, but I did manage to open more buddy card packs which completed the base set and gave me a permanent speed 1 bonus plus a medal. So I finally made it to the final floor where I fought a boss in the chamber and grabbed all the levels for my endurance. Also, since I had like a 30% boost for endurance skills, I leveled up two times. Once I looted this entire structure, I came home to infuse the four hell shelves I had and made a full set of tungsten armor. I even enchanted all the pieces of armor and used up this soul in this grave to scrap this diamond chest plate. Day 54 to day 55, I forgot that I could grab obsidian with my spell book, so I actually tried rolling for really good pickaxe enchants. This was all just to hopefully level up my gathering ability. Also during this, I put mana boost into my chest plate and noticed one of my enchants actually just dropped emeralds on me. Later that night, I went back to that drowned structure and there was nothing else too good in here, so I just ended up taking a lot of damage for no reason. I also found this buried treasure map and spent the whole night digging, which was a waste since I didn't even find the chests. As it started becoming morning, I found this other airship and made my way up towards it. Now this place wasn't as hard as the last one, but it was more redstone focused. I grabbed all the quartz and coal blocks and then looted all the redstone materials inside of the chests. The top floor had way more mobs and the chests were actually pretty good. Eventually, I found the last chest which had an awesome bauble which negates fall damage and a map towards a mining system. With that, I could remove the slow fall effect on my launch skill and save on mana. More importantly, I was able to run through all these biomes just following this map. I ended up fighting these sirens and attacked this pirate ship. In here, my scythe broke and I had to swap to a diamond sword. And with that, I went down to the lower parts of the ship. The chests in these ships were pretty good too. Finally, the last room left was the captain's and after taking care of that guy, I looted all the chests. I ended up with diamonds, some eyes of ender, and two chorus fruits. As I got closer to my destination, I actually fought a sea serpent as well. The next morning started with another sea serpent fight, but now I was actually really close to the mining system. Once I got above the marker, I dug straight down and ended up in a pretty big cave. I looked around first to see if I could find the mining system, but I ended up getting jumped by a boss mob. Once I took this dude out, I picked up the really nice boots it had, and I went into its lair, where I got more tomes and a really nice pickaxe. I ended up finding the mining system right after. 
Now these mobs were super strong, so I had to use my projectile break spell to get rid of all the spawners from far away. I also had to hide since they did so much damage, but because all the spawners were broken, things just started clearing up after a while. The loot in these chests were incredible. Every single chest had enchanted armor, ores, food, and relics. There were also tons of diamonds in there, and for the relics, I got these digging claws and uh, drank from this random chalice, which gave me like every single negative effect just for a little bit. I even picked up this heart of the earth, which I turned into a charm of treasure hunter. Oh yeah, and all of this was just from one side. There was a whole other side to this mining system as well. On the other side, I picked up an obsidian skull, which I switched my belt for. Once that place emptied out, I came home to smelt all the ores I had. My tungsten armor was also almost broken, so I enchanted more diamond armor. And while doing that, I realized I could put these mob heads around the enchantment table, and that increased the quanta. So I just started trying out some weird layouts. Day 58 to 60, I changed the whole layout of the bookshelves to fit the mob heads in. This gave me 100% quanta, which makes enchants even more chaotic. I think that means I could get like really great enchants from low levels, or vice versa. For now, the only good thing I had was this new pickaxe. That night ended up being a blood moon, and all I did was clean up my storage area and defeat a single boss mob. Once it became morning, I learned that you could place glowstone to increase the recidification or something, which should help with the high chaos. With that being done, I went into the caves to level up my gathering some more, and I grabbed every single ore I possibly could. This also leveled me up quite a bit. I ended up fighting another boss mob as well and picked up this Heart of the Golem Spellstone from a zombie dungeon. I got my gathering up to level 34 from this trip and got to level 41. With those levels, I tried enchanting my diamond armor again, but didn't get anything good. Instead, I decided to get my smithing up to level 30 and I could finally salvage some of these iron level gear I had. Once that was done, I wanted to fight a mini boss. So I made this thing called a haunted bell and summoned this guy called a bell ringer. Now this dude was just like a giant vex, but the only difference is that this boss was somehow weaker. I ended up not taking much damage at all and just defeated this guy pretty easily. The boss dropped this thing called Phantoplasm, which I used to make some relic for quest rewards. I also completed a quest to make this Ectoplasm Orb. That night, I ended up taking out this Wraith, which started an undead army raid. These guys started flooding in from the north of my base, but honestly, they were not that hard at all. I took out two waves pretty easily, and the hardest part of all of that was just finding out where they spawned. I actually managed to take them all out before the night even ended. The next day, I hopped into the nether to go looking for more blazes. Once I found a fortress, I just grinded out blaze rods until I could craft a blaze gate pearl. On the way back, I actually tried taking this bastion on, but the piglets are way too strong for now. I did manage to get a lot of quest rewards though. So really quickly, I just launched myself over to the chest area and looted all these chests. In here, I got some ancient debris and a nether set of buddy cards. After that, I decided to come home to open this uh, blaze gate pearl in in this swamp biome. Now this was a big mistake since fire spread was on and uh, I made it so that I could never come back to this area without the game crashing again. But for now I actually opened the portal up and started the five waves of blazes attacking. I think my obsidian skull gets rid of like 50% of fire damage or something weird like that. It didn't matter anyway and I was able to just run through all these blazes. In total I got close to 30 blaze rods after all those waves. To end these days off I wanted to level up my gathering levels once and for all. So I teleported around until I found some and I started mining every single thing I could. I even managed to pick up a pretty cool bauble, so I had to swap some of my old ones out. Then, finally, I realized that I could just use this break spell to grab obsidian. So with all of that, I could finally make this enchantment library, and this thing was an absolute lifesaver with all the enchanted books that I had collected. Day 63 to day 64, I made an obsidian shield, but this was mainly just to help my endurance level, so it just stayed in the backpack for now. Once that was done, I made this mage armor set for quest rewards. Then I I learned about this slot memory thing, which organized my backpack pretty nicely. After that, I made this emblem of Monster Slayer, which is supposed to make mobs drop double the XP. I was doing all of this while smelting the ores I had collected and filling up this lunchbox. That night, I put in almost 40 levels to get to tier 3 specialization, but the armor it gave sucked, and I already had the artifact, which was supposed to be the reward. So now I had no levels and decided to go explore. I made my way inside this jungle structure where I fought a python, and I was already getting a bunch more XP. After that, I found a jungle pyramid, and this place was filled to the brim with silverfish. There were so many silverfish that I actually thought I was gonna die. They all ended up falling like one block lower, so I was able to loot all the chests. 
Once I came back out, it was morning and I ended up in a jungle fortress looking thing. This place eerily had no mobs and I ended up getting this cross necklace, which actually seems really overpowered. Deeper into this jungle, I found a temple, which didn't have anything too good and I fought through a pillager tower as well. Since I didn't really find any good structures, I made my way inside another roguelike dungeon and I breezed through this dungeon very easily and I got up to level 40 quickly. I made my way towards the bottom floor and then fought this boss mob. The chest plate it dropped was actually pretty good, so I equipped this one instead. I also ended up breaking a total of 100 spawners, which gave me tons of rewards. Then I ended up breaking that new chest plate before entering the final room, so I had to swap back to an older piece. This place had tons of good loot. It even had the better magic mirror, which actually works across dimensions. After grabbing literally everything from this structure, I got up to level 59 and decided to come home. The first thing I did was re-enchant another set of armor. This time, after some rolling and combining, I got really good enchants on each piece. I even managed to get a nice diamond sword as well. I ended these days by redeeming some of those coins. For the gold coin, I actually got a sword called Frost Slayer. The monster coin I used on XP and the copper coin I used on random loot crate rewards. Then I enchanted and put Unbreaking on the Frost Slayer, but even with that, the durability was super low. I also combined two bows together and made a diamond quiver to hold all the arrows I had. Day 67 to day 68, now that I was equipped somewhat well, I wanted to take down a dragon. And of course I wanted to take down the one closest to my base. Immediately I was able to do a good amount of damage with this Frost Slayer sword. But this dragon's ice breath made it super hard for me to escape. Luckily for me, this thing just stayed on the ground and I was able to take out major chunks of its health. Eventually, this dragon flew back up, but I was able to take it out with my bow. That fight ended up being surprisingly easy and I grabbed all the loot from this dragon. I also went out to find another one that was really close. Now for this guy, I actually ate an enchanted golden apple and swapped to my diamond sword. Again, almost immediately I managed to just ruin this dragon's health. And it flew up for a bit and when it landed again, I was able to just destroy it and and grab all of the loot. After killing those two dragons, my dragon slayer level was level two, but I needed like six to be able to wear all the dragon skill gear. Then I decided to complete some ice and fire quests and also made a dragon bone sword. When I enchanted the sword, I got looting three on it, so I just kept it safe in my backpack for now. That night, I went towards some snowy areas to hopefully enter those dread dungeons, but instead, I actually found these ice castles. I jumped all the way down in one of these staircases and ended up in the bottom maze area. This place sucked though and had no loot other than the totems from these frost mancers. I got out during the morning and stayed in that snowy tundra area. Here, I ended up finding a monastery and killed a hundred skeletons. The top floor also had some really good loot as well. I ran through some other structures around here but none of them were pretty good. At night I leveled up my endurance like crazy with the quest rewards. Then I gathered these snowberries and blueberries to increase my food diversity. When I came home I planted these source berries as well but those are for mana potions. A 69 to 70 it was time to increase the difficulty. I grabbed soul sand and wither skeleton heads then I found an area to dig down to and cleared some space to summon a wither. I got very lucky that my first one wasn't enchanted. Uh, and that actually made the fight super easy. Well, I mean, it was pretty easy until the first super attack this wither did. I ended up having to eat an enchanted golden apple. With that, I was a lot safer and climbed back into my tunnel. And doing that, I did tons of damage to the wither and managed to take my first one out. Now the game is in expert mode. Here's everything that's actually changed. For some reason, I couldn't get enough, so I decided to take on another wither. And again, for some reason, this guy was significantly easier and I took it out in no time. I needed the extra nether star for a spell book upgrade. That night I also made a set of dragon scale armor but of course I didn't reach the dragon slayer requirement. Next up I made 12 eyes of ender and while looking for this end stronghold it turns out this entire thing was really close to my base. I ended up breaking in through some jail and I picked up this essence of undeath from a zombie and also made an extra grave as well. After that I basically spent the whole day trying to find the end portal I was losing my mind. When I finally found the room, I bought a waystone and placed it down. Then I came home. I also saw these warp plates in the shop as well, and I set up two of them, one underground and the other one on the surface. Day 71 to day 73, I started these days by grinding out smithing levels, then repaired my sword. After that, I was ready to go to the end. I placed all the eyes down and hopped in. Immediately, I flew around breaking the crystals. With that taken care of, I launched arrows until the dragon perched and then did tons of damage. In the next perch, I got the dragon's health down to a third and started collecting the dragon's breath. Finally, after all of that, I ended up defeating the ender dragon. 
I got up to level 81 and then also grabbed the dragon's egg as well. After that, the difficulty increased to master mode and I grabbed all the other quest rewards plus opened this loot bag which was sick. With all that done, I slowly made my way towards the outer ends. My main goal here was to look for mending gear and of course find the elytra. The first end city had tons of loot in the chests. There were enchanted gear, new relics, and even dragon scales. This place also had tons of tomes, which gave me a lot of levels. Sadly, there was no ship, but uh, after stripping this place clean, it was still worth it. I had to keep moving on though, and the only things I was really trying to avoid were these things called ender scents. It took about a day of traveling, but I finally found some structures. The first place was this uh, separated end city, and the second place was an end pyramid. The chests in the pyramid were pretty incredible, and right above it was a giant phantom structure, which also had pretty stacked chests. None of these structures were as important as this end ship though, which finally got me elytra wings. I didn't equip the elytra because I had different plans for it, and then I started making my way back towards the main islands. Before ending these days, I actually placed another grave down. The next day, I put all the enchanted books I had into the library. Then I grabbed every tool that had mending and tried to scrap that off of them. For now, I just had two mending books. Next up, I wanted to upgrade my spellbook, so I made this thing called a Tablet of Summon Wilden. I went near the coast and placed this tablet into the brazier. Once the ritual finished, a Wilden Chimera spawned, and this dude's first phase wasn't too bad, but it turns out that there are multiple phases, and uh, this one just happened to break a bunch of blocks. At the same time, my armor pieces were breaking, so I had to retreat a little bit. I actually thought that the boss was dead the second time I got its health down, but it was going to phase 3. I ended up having to retreat one more time, and after restocking, I was able to take this dude out, finally. My reward was a Wilden Tribute, and with that, plus a Nether Star, I could now access Tier 3 Glyphs with this spellbook. Really quickly, I re-enchanted my armors again and then made a glyph of Amplify 2, which launched me even farther. Before the night ended, I made an Ender Buddy card binder and filled all that up with the packs that I had collected. Once that was done, I drank a potion of mana regen and basically flew all over this entire snowy tundra biome. I was actually going to a fire dragon's nest that I saw on my map, and while making my way there, I was actually fighting the Cyclops as well. Now this dude was just annoyingly tanky, so I switched to my spells to save arrows. After doing that, I took the Cyclops clops out and made my way towards the dragon's nest. Immediately I ate a golden apple and while looking for a potion to drink this dragon actually saw me and attacked. I was able to slash down more than a half of its health but then I played it safe and teleported back home to gather myself when uh, it started attacking back. This actually ended up working even better since I was able to get really good enchants on my sword and with this new sword I went back to attack the dragon just as it was waking back up. That ended up taking the dragon out and I grabbed all of its scales. Before the night ended, I used these monster coins on endurance levels and made these dragon eyes to help me find bigger dragons. The next morning, I actually followed the ice dragon eye and when I dug down to where it was pointing, it was right on top of a tier 4 or tier 5 dragon's nest. For now, I just set a marker down and came back home. Here in my farm, I decided to make another row of potatoes and then fill up my lunch box. After that, I made 15 end shelves, and with these, I could get enchants worth up to 80 levels. Day 77 to day 78, I made a set of sapphire armor and rolled enchants for those as well. I actually had to keep re-enchanting this chest plate, but eventually, this new set of armor was pretty good. So I went out to explore some more. I was back in that snowy tundra biome and ended up finding an enchanted frost maw. It didn't matter though, since I had no issue taking it out. Later that night, I ran through another roguelike dungeon again. These dungeons were so easy now, I just breezed through each floor. I eventually found one of those trapped ore structures. After dismantling the thing, I grabbed all of the rare ores in there. Eventually, I got to the final room, and because I had the break spell, I was able to just clear this floor in no time. I even took out a boss mob really easily. Once I grabbed all the loot, I came back home. Turns out I had tons of raw meat, and I cooked all those up to keep in my lunchbox to increase my food diversity. While waiting for that, I used this soul to uh, disenchant a chest plate, and then put those books in the library. Then I made another tablet of scrying and grabbed one of those ancient debris that I had. I went into the nether, found a safe area and started digging down to ancient debris level. Once I was here, I did the ritual and threw in that ancient debris. After that, I had 5 minutes of ancient debris being highlighted. At first, I thought I messed up because I only had an iron pickaxe, but it turned out that the break spell works just as well. Of course, just like last time, I was rushing, but it, I actually noticed this vain goblin trader who had a really good trade for these ancient debris. I think this got me 2 extra netherite scrap. I kept moving along though, and once the effect ended, I had 13 ancient debris plus 10 netherite scrap. On the way home, I picked up 2 nether coins and used them on gas tiers. Oh yeah, I also swapped to the other magic mirror, which got me out of the nether. The only issue is that this thing kind of glitches out your levels. Before cooking those ancient debris, I made a blank portal key, 3 gilded portal blocks, and 1 portal keystone. 
With those, I built this random portal that I had no clue how to use. The next day, I learned how to activate those blank keys and I used them on an end portal block. Once I came back, I put the key into the portal and it opened a portal to a gold dungeon. So I hopped into the portal and I got teleported to a place with tons of rooms that had puzzles in them. For this one, I just had to wait for the ice to melt. It actually didn't matter and I was able to reach the chest anyway. And inside of it was a mending book. Most of these rooms were very easy puzzles, but the chest kind of sucked. There were only like three chests that were good here. One had a key for a nether dungeon. The other one had an efficiency five book. And the last room had like a nice set of boots. Before deciding to leave, I ended up killing a zombie who dropped another key. And I also found a key inscribing station in one of the chests. I even fought this vindicator in one last room and got the chest in here. Let me know if I missed any other room in the comments. I quickly came back home and placed this inscribing station down then I put all the books I got into the library as well after that I hopped into this nether dungeon and this one was worse there were more puzzles and less chests I did however kill 50 blazes which was nice I spent a good amount of time in here and really got nothing good since I had another nether dungeon key I decided to try again and was way more diligent even then I really didn't find any other chests, so I'm probably missing something I called it quits on the dungeon delving and re-enchanted my chest plate which was actually really good now after that, I made my way towards that desert biome and along the way, I fought this monster box in a mine shaft and a sea serpent. As soon as I made it to the desert, I found this cool structure, which I jumped down into and then immediately found the loot room. These chests were actually pretty good though. The rest of the night, I fought a cyclops, which I pushed out of its house and then I took out a giant death worm. Day 82, I found a village where I picked up this horn statue, but this one was cursed, so it didn't take the spirit orbs. After that, I activated the village's waystone and found a Miramex nest. In here, I took out the queen, but all the loot sucked, so I resurfaced. As I was flying around, I found a pillager's tower, and while fighting these dudes, my helmet broke. Once the top floor was cleared, I gathered these giant dragon bones next to him, and then started making my way down the ladder. There were tons of pillagers down there, and they actually did a bunch of damage to me, but I ended up surviving and took them all out. The chests in the bottom were actually really good too. Then once again, while flying around, I found a pirate ship, which also had really good chests. But on top of that, it had an even better treasure room. Once I looted that pirate ship, I found another really cool bone structure looking thing. And this place also had tons of emeralds in it. Finally, I came home to put all the books away and collect my quest rewards. Since I now had a 40% boost to my endurance XP, I got up to level 60 endurance now. After that, because I had a ton of levels, I put protection on my helmet and chest plate. I also used the unbreaking books on the other pieces as well. With that being done, I actually tried to take on that huge ice dragon. I quickly broke into the nest to get a good view of this absolute beast. I also had drunk this uh, potion of bear as well. Almost immediately, I jumped down and started hitting this dragon as much as I could. I ended up doing a ton of damage to the dragon, but eventually the dragon's breath started freezing me up and I started almost dying, so I had to magic mirror my way out of there. So instead, I decided to take on smaller dragons for now to level up my dragon slaying, and I actually used this fire dragon's eye around the savanna and desert biomes. For some reason, the eye would work sometimes, and then sometimes it'll tell me it didn't find anything. Either way, I couldn't find another fire dragon the whole day. Instead, I came home to make netherite armor. I put the dragon scale gear on an armor stand. I kept the netherite gear in my backpack until I could strip the enchants off of my sapphire set. Since I was going to start putting mending on my gear, I also made an experience upgrade for my backpack and then a tank upgrade. After that, I made a diamond stack upgrade, which held even more experience as well. I made sure to constantly have 30 levels and then set all the experience to go to my mending tools. Day 84 to day 86, since I was waiting for the grave to collect some souls, I leveled up my smithing too. Once that was done, I extracted some affixes and made a chest for them. Then to complete some more quests, I made this catalyst thing. Since I was already waiting, I decided to add a row of chests to the storage system. And as soon as that was finished, I made a portal to the undergarden dimension and lit it up using the catalyst. I actually spent the rest of the night just grinding smithing levels until the morning when I got up to level 40. With that done, I went into the undergarden to see what was up. For the quests, I just needed to collect undergarden versions of iron, gold, and diamond. These were actually on the ceiling, but I didn't know that yet and just kept looking down below. As I moved forward, I fought a rotling and a rotwalker. Then I ended up fighting a fish called a sploogy and met a stoneborn trader. Finally, I found out that iron spawns at y equals 175, so I started making my way up. 
in this gigantic area, I found tons of ore that I needed. With my break spell, I grabbed everything I could. This ended up completing all the mainline quests and I was able to come back home with a bunch of XP. On day 87, I forgot to record myself actually building this a tomb portal, but it was just sandstone laid up like this with a pool of water in the center. Then all you had to do was just throw a scarab into the pool. I quickly decorated it with stone brick stairs and then decided to extend my spruce fence all the way behind this portal. I scattered mage light all around the base and moved the under garden portal right next to the tomb portal as well. Before the night ended, I actually moved my enchanting apparatus all the way back as well. Day 88 to day 89, since I had space, I moved the graves into my base and then repaired my sapphire armor. With that done, I hopped into the tomb dimension and looked for a pyramid. Since I already had collected nebu ingots from a quest reward, I had like 6 nebu torches already. I broke into the pyramid and lit the top floor up. Then I went down through the maze into the boss area. After clearing out all the side rooms, I had the four torches on the sides lit up and summoned a pharaoh. Now I think my sword didn't have any spite on it, that's why it wasn't doing a lot of damage. So uh, this pharaoh was actually super tanky to me. I actually had to hide behind this doorway and just take pot shots. Once the pharaoh started making its way out, I was able to take it out and then for some reason another one spawned right on top and this guy was even stronger. At least now, I was able to break the blocks so I created some separation. As if things couldn't get worse, another pharaoh spawned right after I killed this one. So I just went behind another room and I kept hitting this pharaoh through a hole in the wall. This one was the strongest I faced, but I did manage to take it out. As soon as I was done, I flew far away and grabbed all of my quest rewards. After that, I decided to explore all the structures around this area and then put a bunch of levels into the backpack. Since I killed a ton of undead mobs, I was able to make another grave and put that down to my base as well. After all of that, I started scrapping enchants off of some of the sapphire gear and then prayed for souls so that I could disenchant my chest plate. Then I was able to make a protection 4, unbreaking 3, and mending netherite helmet. Later that night, I got very lucky and stripped tons of enchants off of the sapphire chest plate. Finally, I was able to make a super stacked netherite chest plate. Day 90 to day 91, I learned that you could chop up these buddy cards to get this uh, buddy steel blend and then smelted that to get buddy steel ingots. With those ingots, I made a buddy steel vault, but that basically overrode my binder and I lost all the cards that I had been collecting. I still had the speed effect though, so it didn't really matter. Later that day, I made a netherite tower shield and camped around this dread dungeon hoping a lich would spawn, but I think the whole thing was bugged. Then in the morning, I defeated a pillager tower which gave me the bad omen effect. Past that, I found a ruined portal that had a ghost skin talisman. Now this thing is super overpowered because it makes projectiles go through you, but I had to get rid of my obsidian skull since you need to uh, equip a belt to be able to hold talismans. Later that night, I ended up in that castle which was abandoned aside from one legendary skeleton in the dungeon room. Then the rest of the night I actually spent fighting through these spiders in the spider cave. Day 92 to day 93, I enchanted the ghost skin talisman and then went into the end dimension to look for more armor pieces. I ended up getting inside a bunch of these structures and grabbed all the armor pieces that had mending or protection. Mostly, yeah. I also fought this ender scent who was actually kind of tough. I was just paranoid that I would get uh, teleported elsewhere. I ended up finding a few more structures with cool armor pieces and then came home to scrap them for enchants. With that, I got new leggings which had protection 3, unbreaking 3, mana regen 2, and mending. For the boots, I got protection 4, unbreaking 3, and mending. With all the base enchants done, I scattered these mana regen and mana boost books into everything else. Last but not least was this dragon bone sword which I was able to get like sharpness 5, unbreaking 3, mending, and some really cool sounding enchants like sage's blessing and Ares grace. Day 94 to day 95, I used my elytra wing and this mythical clay to make a glyph of gliding. I added that onto my launch skill and now I could glide after every launch. After that I put looting 3 on my dragon bone sword and went out to take on that giant ice dragon. This time the dragon barely did any damage and I was able to just start chopping it down. Once this dragon died, I looted the corpse and got tons of scales plus an ice dragon egg. Since I had so much raw beef already, I was also able to make a ton of dragon meal. As soon as I got back, I put the ice dragon egg in water and equipped this dragon scale armor as a cosmetic since I just like the look more than netherite. I also had 30 copper coins which I spammed on these random loot crate rewards. That filled my inventory up with a bunch of random stuff, but now I was able to make more dragon meals though. As soon as my dragon hatched, I got it to be rideable which was like stage 3 immediately. 
and this actually broke a few blocks in my base. I put it back in the horn for now. Once that was done, I made this thing called a fossil bait, which summons a boss and went to a random island to fight it. This boss was called a swamp jay and it was super easy to take out. Honestly, it only took like a few arrows and this thing was already dead. To get quest rewards, I also made this thing called a caged heart and then summoned another boss. Now this guy was called Dame Fortuna and it was a little bit stronger, but that's not saying much. It was still super weak and I easily dismantled this dude. Later that day, I went around these hotter biomes and used my fire dragon eye, which actually ended up breaking. I did get super lucky though and landed on a lightning dragon's nest. This dragon was super small, so the fight was super quick and I got my dragon slayer ability to level four. After that, I decided to come home and make another diamond stack upgrade for my backpack. Then I enchanted these hell shells so I could make a shelf of sight. Day 96 to day 98, I went into the nether to take down a bastion. And this place was actually kind of a challenge. The loot was really nice and once I looted everything, I actually tried to go to the stalwart dungeon to grab more wither skeleton skulls. I then checked my inventory and saw that I already had 12, so I just came home. As soon as I came home, I went back to the original place where I summoned a wither and started fighting another one. Now this dude was enchanted, but there wasn't a single time where I was afraid of my health anymore. This fight actually took forever since I didn't have smite. Either way, I managed to take it out and with these nether stars, you could get diamond coins. And with those diamond coins, you could get a sick artifact of your choice. I already had one piece of the Ankh charm, so I used all of these nether stars to fill the entire Ankh charm requirement out. The first thing I did was get this black dragon scale, and luckily this one grants immunity to the wither effect. I then took down the next wither and used that star on a bazaar. Quickly I made a pit stop into the nether to get extra wither skeleton heads and then fought the next wither. For this one, I grabbed the forbidden fruit. I then took out another wither and used this star for vitamins. The one after that was also enchanted, which just meant it took a very long time and with this star I got a shulker heart. One more to go. Finally I got the ring of overclocking as well. All that remained was just combining some of them. I already combined the bazaar and the dragon scale and just like that after the combining the last two I got the Ankh Charm. This thing makes me immune to most negative status effects. Day 99 to day 100, I had to quickly go to the end to grab these rose crystals. And with that, I was able to craft four end crystals. So I resummoned the Ender Dragon, and for some reason, the pillars glitched and spawned on top of each other, which was super annoying. That ended up not mattering though, and I broke all the crystals, even the ones that were hidden inside some of the other ones. The whole time, I was still doing a good amount of damage to this guy with my bow. A few purchases later, I demolished the Ender Dragon for a second time. Then finally, to end these days off, I made a beacon block, upgraded to a diamond paxel, and placed a two-layer beacon down right inside my base. I decorated it, covered it, and gave myself resistance one. Day 101, I started these days by trying to get into these dread dungeons. Luckily, this frozen lake finally spawned some of the dread mobs. I fought a bunch of thralls and ghouls and eventually a lich spawned. It actually ended up taking a bit, but after defeating a ton of these guys, I got two keys. I used one of them to open up this dread dungeon and started clearing the area. This place had a crazy spawn rate and tons of enchanted mobs as well. As I made my way towards the second floor, I was taking a bunch of damage, so I had to retreat really quick. I then managed to clear the first two areas and grab all the chests, which had tons of dragon materials. Then in the last huge area, I was basically just fighting these mobs on the staircase forever. Luckily, I had this projectile break spell, so I broke a bunch of spawners. But then a legendary mob froze me and almost killed me, so I had to teleport back home. While I was here, I extended my beacon by adding another layer and put on strength 2. The next morning, I went back into the dread dungeon and tried to clear it out for good. It was a lot more clear now, so I could break most of the spawners in the final area. Eventually, my shield broke, so I had to make an extra one. But after that little debacle, I was able to go around and break more spawners. This ended up doing tons of damage to me, so I had to hide out on the staircase for a bit again. Finally, this dungeon was cleared and I could grab these ice dragon forge blocks. Before leaving, I cleared out all the chests in here as well and grabbed my quest rewards. As soon as I came home, I repaired my relics and combined these two baubles to make a horseshoe balloon bauble. I also had a few enchanted gear which I scrapped and put the books into the library. I actually spent the whole night scrapping and salvaging all these gears. As soon as morning hit, I made one draconic end shelf and increased the total power of my enchantment area. Then I rolled some enchants on this new bow and decided I wanted mending, so I hopped into the end dimension to go looking for end structures. 
First I found this end pyramid which had some unbelievable amount of loot in each chest but no mending gear. Before moving on I opened these ender buddy cards and put them into the binder. Along my travels I found this tower looking structure which had some really decent loot. I then also found one of these uh, stalwart boss structures which needed a nether shard to activate it but I didn't know about that just yet. Day 104 I put all these books away, prayed on the gravestones and hopped into the nether. I was looking for the stalwart dungeon again and along the way I fought through this bastion which had an elite piglin brute. Once that dude was taken care of, I looted the chest, and as I left, I actually took the wrong turn. Since it would take me forever to go around, I just decided to come back home. I then decided to explore some areas that I hadn't seen yet and found a dragon corpse. Past that, I slaughtered a fire dragon and harvested its blood. Once that was done, I raided a wizard's tower, which gave me more affixes and rare gear. Then I cleaned out this battle tower, which had tons of iron and gold blocks. Later that night, I broke into a giant pyramid and looted the main chest. Also in this area, I finally found one of those normal goddess statues and traded in tons of my spirit orbs. Of course, I also picked that up as well. Before those nights ended, I raided two structures. The first one was a pirate ship, which had tons of illagers. The loot room in here was really good though. After that, I found this little bone structure, which just had one spawner. With all of that done, I came home to put this regular and cursed statue side by side. Day 105 to day 106, I updated the mod pack and tons of things were changed. First, Spice of Life was gone, so most of my extra hearts were also gone. Uh, this meant that food diversity wasn't important anymore. I also grabbed tons of new quest rewards as well. I got these emblems for my specializations, which I forgot to put on for a while. To complete more quests, I went through this upgrade tree of backpacks and worked my way up to another diamond backpack. I also noticed the entire coin shop changed, so I was very glad I got this onk charm before the update. For this new food mod, I just had cooked mutton, carrots, and apples in my backpack to start off. Then to make sure I had enough protein, I put some fences down and used these cow spawn eggs. The next morning, I enchanted a bunch of tomes and put them into the library. Next up, I used my gold coins for some of these choice rewards. I grabbed a bunch of golden carrots and these randomite ores. Before mining all the ores, I tried to get fortune on the Paxel. Then I actually decided to extract some affixes as well. I then noticed that I had 61 copper coins, which I ended up using on all these loot crates. I completely forgot that there was a new option to put the coins in bulk. These loot crates gave me tons of random items. I also had some iron coins which I used on more loot crates and the monster coins on gathering levels. Finally, I put fortune 3 on the Paxel and mined the randomite ores. With all that done, I upgraded this gold stack upgrade to diamond in my backpack and then went into the under garden. In here, I flew up very high, added fortune on my break spell, and mined as many diamond ores as I could. I manually mined a bunch as well, and I thought that they removed vein mining for now, so I didn't really use it. Now that I had tons more diamonds, I decided to come back home. As soon as I came back, I looked through a ton of enchantments and decided to put mana boost and regen on my chest plate and boots. With that being done, I picked up some raw beef and decided to go and explore. I found this really cool prairies biome and also hopped into this roguelike dungeon. Things were going pretty smooth at first, but one of these rooms ended up being packed with mobs and they did tons of damage to me. Once I cleared those sections out, I started moving lower and lower. With these break spells, I was able to clear out rooms before I even got into them. I ended up taking out 200 zombies as well, which unlocked more quest rewards. And I made it to the final rooms. Since the difficulty had increased, most of the mobs I've been seeing were enchanted. And because of that, I spent a long time on one floor just clearing out these guys. After taking care of those zombies, I ran through the final floor, looting all the chests, and ended up in a boss chamber. These bosses are super important because they drop insane gear that you can strip the affixes from. This guy specifically was a tank and the armor it dropped was an ancient level affix. Since all that was cleared, I came home and redeemed my quest reward for 200 zombies, which leveled my gathering up. Then since I had so many new pieces of armor, I started scrapping a bunch of them. That gave me tons of very important enchants. Once that was done, I used a bunch of levels to enchant these weapon tomes as well. I also made to stock up my backpack with different types of food and replace these regular bookshelf corners with hell shelves. Later that night, I put stable footing on my boots and started making these end fibers. Those were just to make this archmage armor, which just looked even cooler. This gave me tons of quest rewards and my next goal was to wait for souls to hit the graveyard so I could scrap my old armor. For now, I just put an extra grave down and uh, set this armor aside. Day 110 to day 112, I made the biggest mistake I possibly could. First of all, I didn't know that you could just make an obsidian shield 
shield, so I wanted to summon a wither and try to get it through a diamond coin. I quickly gathered three wither skeleton skulls using my scythe and then went back to the area I summoned all the past withers. Now here was a giant mistake. This wither was enchanted. It said arctic, but I'm pretty sure it was also lively, which meant that it kept regening its own health. Not only was this dude an absolute tank, his little minions also happened to be enchanted as well and they did even more damage than the wither itself. I was able to get away from the minions, but the wither kept regenning and lagged the game like crazy every time I did the super attack. I tried my hardest for a bit, but after almost dying, I magic mirrored back home. Trust me though, this fight gets significantly worse. I came back and put tons of amplify on the harm spell, which I thought would help. It didn't, and this wither destroyed even more of this little area I was in. So for the rest of these days, I basically magic mirrored when I was in trouble and kept attacking this wither over and over again. This was an actual nightmare. I ended up having to enchant a whole new sword with smite on it to just take down more than a quarter of its health. It took forever and almost broke me, but I finally got this wither out and uh, the destruction it left was pretty incredible. From its minions, I got a bunch of enchanted books and I also had to take a lot of my relics off since they all almost broke. The funniest thing is that even with the nether star, it needs two submissions now. So I was still three levels shy of getting a diamond coin. Day 113 to day 114, all of my levels were gone and I had to reorganize my baubles and relics. Once that was done, I looked at some of these structures around my base to see if there were mobs around. I found a single spawner, which helped a bit, and past that, I found a cyclops den. And since I had some arrows, I was able to level up my archery quite a bit just hitting the cyclops. Once the arrows ran out, I switched to my spells and I was able to take this big dude out. I made sure to slaughter the sheep here for mutton as well. Finally, I found a structure and it was one of those redstone airships. From the first two floors alone, I was able to get a ton of XP, but the real loot was at the top floor. Here, I got some really good loot and tons more XP from the enchanted mobs. I was almost at 100 levels. The next structure I jumped into was the jungle pyramid and this place was jam packed with silverfish. At one point there were so many of them I was actually pretty scared I was gonna die. It also connected to a zombie dungeon as well but by staying about one block above them I was able to take them out pretty easily and also inside some of these chests were tomes that gave me a ton of levels. So I think this place might have been bugged out since uh, more and more silverfish kept spawning even after I I clear the structure. Nonetheless, I got my diamond coin and of course, because I had horrible luck, the obsidian shield was no longer part of the rewards. I settled for the power glove which apparently increases damage. After that, I just held my remote in my hotbar so that I could still use two charm slots. Also, since I didn't have any more levels in my backpack, I needed to go out and search for structure to grind out mobs. Exploring these different biomes gave me a bunch of XP and I learned that vein mining still works but just for ores. Eventually through this cave, I went inside a little dungeon. There was nothing too scary in here aside from this legendary skeleton. I kept my distance though and I was able to take it out. I had a few extra levels now which actually repaired all of my armor finally. With all that done, I set down a few more graves and put on this archmage armor as a cosmetic. While waiting for a soul to hit the graves, I actually inscribed a key and used it on this portal. This dungeon was very similar to the ones I was in before, and even after looking a bunch of stuff up, I still couldn't figure out some of these uh, other puzzles. The rooms that I could finish though had some really good loot. I ended up getting a bunch of new keys as well that I needed to check out. The first one I checked out was one called Heaven of Order, and once again, all the rooms are pretty similar. In one of the chests, I got a new item from one of the new mods. These were called capsules and sometimes they have a whole entire structure in them or just some other cool stuff. There was also a really cool wither skeleton room where you could just farm skulls, but I'm pretty traumatized at this point. In one of the final rooms, I got a green key, but that was for upgraded portals, which I didn't have the items for just yet. Oh yeah, so with this new food mod, you could also engorge yourself. So randomly, I get slowness sometimes. Since I was back home, I activated that capsule and tons of ores spawned. I mined all of them and it just happened to be a one-time thing. After that, I sped through another dungeon and this one happened to be nether themed. There was also a mimic who dropped two power gloves. All of that gave me a bunch of quest rewards as well. Day 116 to day 117, next to my base, I started planning out how to place these dragon forge items down. I had enough space to make like a third of the dragon forge. Once that was done, I swapped back to using uh, this dragon scale armor cosmetically and placed down a dragon bone fence to see if my dragon would fit. I had to move the forge back one block and since I re-equipped my netherite backpack, I actually unlocked the quest reward for it, which gave me another diamond coin. This one I spent on a modifier book, which was a complete waste. 
On the bright side, I got the mending off of these leggings and put it in the library. Then I opened these spare buddy card sets and when I opened the last end card, I actually managed to complete the whole end set. So this end set metal gives you resistance permanently instead of speed like the base set. I also had a bunch of these Vitae 5 books which I put on my helmet to increase my hearts. With these new hearts, I decided to go out and explore. I ended up fighting through a pillager tower and finally found something I really needed. Inside of this beehive was a whole other dimension that I got into using an ender pearl. This place was called a bumble zone and I was very lucky that I could fly otherwise I'd be getting stuck all the time. The first thing I did here was grab all these honey blocks and that actually ended up waking all of these bees up. And these bees were super strong and angry. With those honey blocks I got tons of bottles of honey which I used to make a bucket of honey and that helped me tame this thing called the behemoth. I collected my quest reward, saddled up and rode this thing. Now this guy was super slow so eventually I had to abandon it to explore the rest of the area. Uh, in here I picked up some sugar water to complete some quest rewards and then I grabbed these honey crystal shards. With those I could actually make a honey crystal shield. I explored for a bit more but I really couldn't find anything else. So I came back home and saw that I had this cool item that I could equip on my body slot. Once that was equipped, I set out to explore again and some of these newer chunks were really buggy because of the updates. I ended up running through another pillager structure and fought this boss mob and its entire group of mobs. The next morning, I made my way into another roguelike dungeon and it was connected to a boss chamber. After taking that guy out, I went on to clear the rest of the roguelike dungeon. Maybe it was the update again, but a lot of these roguelikes now look way more ruined. On one of the lower floors, I fought another one of those boss mobs who dropped a really nice helmet. Then after I took a lot of the levels from these tomes, I almost died to this elite zombie so I had to come back home. As soon as I came back, I equipped this cobalt shield and these cat slippers to scare away creepers. Once that was done, I actually used some of these capsules and one of them was for an uncommon well, which just ended up building a well for me. So I made sure to light that up and filled it with water. With that being done, I extracted more affixes and used my dragon scales to make a few more dragon forge blocks. In 119, as I was looking for more dread dungeons, I stumbled into a village that I had started a raid in from a while ago. I decided to take this raid out and I just started attacking the pillagers. Most of the guys in the first wave were just normal types of pillagers. The second wave though immediately doubled the spawn and also spawned this black iron golem which was just huge and tanky. Once that dude was gone, I moved on to the next wave. And here I managed to take out this illager general and now there was also a ravager attacking me as well. The last dudes were these uh, squad golems and the illager king both of which were pretty easy to take out for some reason the raid was still going on but i just could not find the last few mobs so i decided to just move on i made my way into this uh, dread dungeon which was right next to a village and cleared most of the beginning floors then an elite dread beast almost killed me so i had to come back home quickly here i grabbed all my quest rewards that i got from the raid and noticed one grave had a soul after that i saw a recipe for a pretty good food item so i grabbed tons of buckets of milk and made a bunch of these things called stuffed potatoes which were very nutrient dense. I managed to only get like 10 of them. The next morning I went back into the dread dungeon finally and I was able to throw a bunch of light around. Once I got into the final rooms I lit it up quickly and then ran around trying to break all these spawners. That one body item I had equipped was awesome since it has the chance to just get rid of damage sometimes. With this dungeon cleared I grabbed the forge blocks from the center, looted the rest of the chests and came home. I happened to be missing just one more aperture and the core. With that done I went out to explore and noticed a bunch of charred blocks in this random little area. Then from the ground a fire dragon sprung up and started attacking me. It surprised me for a little bit, but I was able to just land a bunch of melee hits on this dragon and eventually take it out right on top of its own nest. For this guy, I just took its scale and I then noticed that I had a bunch of bottles of XP that I just used. As I moved along, I picked up Bad Omen again and stumbled into this mushroom structure. These guys were super easy to take out and they had tons of food in their chests. After that, I fought another boss mob and then came home to make a glyph of dispel. For some reason, this thing just did not work on the Bad Omen effect. Day 121, my storage system had way too many items so I just dumped a bunch of items into this lava pool. Then I decided to expand the chest room as well with two more layers of double chests. I put the finishing touches in and went out to explore once again. I ended up in another jungle pyramid and, and this time I was super careful and managed to not get tons of silverfish to spawn. 
The chests in here were really nice, and on the way out, I actually found another wizard's tower, which had even more affix books and gear. Past that, I found a huge illager structure. This place had a loot room in the center, being guarded by a black iron golem. I took the golem out, removed some of these obsidian blocks, and then went down to kill these pillagers. Once they were all taken care of, I was able to loot every single one of the chests in here, and they were all stacked. I ended the night by activating this waste zone nearby and coming back home. Day 122 to day 123, I flew around these snowy regions looking for ice dragons to fill out the dragon forge. I was spamming this eye for a pretty long time uh, through a bunch of different biomes and it still didn't catch any dragons. In the meantime, I grabbed everything I could from these structures in this village. I also had an extra fire dragon heart so I was able to make a fire dragon eye as well. So I was basically just searching for either one, swapping in between. I got lucky and ended up in another wizard's tower where I got even more affixes. Later that night, I found another pillager structure which was pretty small and then decided to hop into this cooler looking roguelike dungeon. I grabbed everything I could from the first floor and then just decided to come home to put all these enchanted books away. I also got rid of all this random jewelry that I wasn't even using. The next morning I enchanted a few tomes and more importantly I realized I had some extra ice dragon scales so with those I made some more dragon forge blocks. I had just enough to make a core and another aperture. This completed the forge and I placed my dragon down. Now I ended up having another issue. Even with these iron ingots and ice dragon blood my dragon wasn't breathing ice into it. I remade this thing a few times and even tried to do it manually but my dragon didn't even try breathing on it. My guess is that my dragon slayer level is too low but I'm not sure. I spent the whole day troubleshooting my dragon. I even held the breathe button manually for a good amount of time and it still didn't do much. Eventually I scrapped the forge because I wanted to build it somewhere else. Day 124 to day 125 I remade the forge again right on top of the hill behind my base. This time I used a dragon staff to command my dragon to stay. Still it wasn't working so I tried one last thing. I redeemed these copper coins that I had trying to get a bunch of food items. I thought I needed to make my dragon larger, so I ended up getting more items and made some dragon meals. I fed my dragon until its health stopped increasing, so I'm assuming it was basically stage 5 now, and it still didn't use the forge. So once again, I put my dragon away and scrapped the forge. I then ended up going to the nether. I was just there to hopefully find some boss mobs. I ended up eventually finding a pretty big bastion. I was able to handle a lot of piglins on the walkways and when I jumped into the center they all came down and started attacking me. Luckily I was able to push them off on the edge and make my way down to the loot area. This place had tons of gold blocks and the chest had some ancient debris plus a golden hook which apparently increases XP. Before equipping that I opened all these nether buddy card packs and that already filled up my binder a good bit. After running through this bastion, I managed to complete the whole nether set. Now this metal actually gives you complete fire resistance, which in my opinion is the best, but for now I just kept the end set metal on. I flew around the nether some more and found another stalwart dungeon. In here I just grabbed a tungsten ore and came home. That night I teleported around the desert area and because of this chunk error, I noticed a huge fire dragon nest in this glitched cave. I broke down to get a good look and it was a huge fire dragon. To be safe, I ate an enchanted golden apple and jumped in. Immediately I was able to reduce the dragon's health for a good amount of time. I managed to survive the onslaught until I was on the last layer of my hearts. This is when I recalled back home. Once I started healing, I came back, ate another golden apple and tried again. This time I ended up having the dragon's health one more time to around 140, but I was on two hearts and barely managed to survive. So after catching my bearings, I went back for the third time and the dragon just ended up being suffocated in the wall so I couldn't even get the dragon slayer XP. This guy ended up dropping tons of dragon skills and a fire dragon egg as well. The next morning I had this fire dragon egg in some burning netherrack and just waited for it to hatch. I slaughtered a bunch of my cows as well to get the dragon meal ready. As soon as little guy hatched I just kept it in my backpack for now. For the rest of these days I went around the areas that the fire dragon was looking for some structures. I couldn't find any other dragons but I did manage to clear this little pillager structure again. Later that night while fighting this absolute unit of a boss I started an undead army raid. Now I hadn't faced these guys in master difficulty so I had no clue what to expect. First I put all of my effort into defeating this tank which took forever and once that guy was taken care of I moved on to the undead mobs. Now since I was in a weird biome these guys all spawned in the weirdest area so it was super annoying to find them. I figured out that if you just wait a little, these mobs end up being highlighted, so that made clearing wave 1 much easier. Wave 2 started having enchanted mobs, but since I knew where these guys spawned now, I took care of them pretty easily. Wave 3 started in the morning, and this wave was surprisingly easy. Once again, the hardest part was just finding where these guys spawned. Wave 4 had even more enchanted mobs, but it was still super easy. Finally, on the last wave, these tankier and taller husks spawned, but they were super slow. Once I took all those guys out, I noticed there was one mob left. Now, this dude was legendary and had the most annoying 
annoying legendary enchants. I somehow managed to crit it, I think, because it just ended up being taken out by that last shot. All these mobs already gave me tons of rewards, but I was looking for these treasure bags instead. Once everything was done, I came home, stocked up on more food, and disenchanted this smite sword. I placed down a few more graves and extracted the enchants off of my chest plate. Once that was done, I was able to enchant this brand new archmage robes with some really incredible stuff. That wasn't all though, I also made sure to put an affix that added four more hearts. With all that done, I then grabbed a tablet of scrying and ancient debris. This was because I needed a block of netherite for a new glyph. While looking for a place to mine, I actually ended up in a stalwart fortress. And this place had some really good loot in the chest. With the blaze of I also managed to get tons of blaze rods and nether coins. There were even more rooms below the structure, which ended up also having even more of these weird blazes and even better chests. Once I cleared all of that, I found a nice area and dug down to Y equals 15. From here, I did the ritual and had five minutes to find as many ancient debris as possible. Since I now had the diamond paxel, I could end up vein mining these things as well. In total, I grabbed 45 pieces of ancient debris before coming home. As they were cooking, I used these nether coins for some XP and obsidian. Then I put mending on my paxel. In the morning, I used all of my netherite scrap to make ingots and turn those into one block of netherite. With that and some mythical clay, I put them in the glyph press and got amplify three. The first thing I did was put it into my launch spell and now it launched me even further than ever. So with this new spell, I went into the end to try and get more mending gear. I ended up finding this end city type structure to start and after looting that, I ended up near a end pyramid. Now this place always has the best loot. I ended up getting this artifact called a crystal heart which increases my maximum health. Since this new artifact was replacing my obsidian skull, I swapped to my nether set metal as well. This was better because it gave me full fire resistance. Further into the end, I found a structure which had some really nice armor sets that I could scrap for later. I also ended up picking up these end shards which become important later. It took absolutely forever but I found another end city and I started clearing this entire place out. I put a bunch of these new books into the library and went to complete these Ars Nouveau quests which were really easy. To end the night off, I made a cooking pot for some quest rewards but once I looked at the recipes, I realized it was really useful now with this new food mod so I set it up above my campfire. Day 131 to day 132, I decided to explore pretty far away hoping to find some dragons again. Along my journey, I looted this sunken ship, cleared out a battle tower, and found a bunch of weird structures, like this one with an empty spawner in it. As it started turning dark, I found one of those homes again and met this dwarven trader. Since I had tons of coal, I traded with this guy and got some fey gems. Past this place, I made my way inside of a jungle Miramex nest and took out the workers plus the queen. I traveled the whole night and in the morning, I found a brand new structure. This was a pillager castle. Now this place had tons of enchanted vindicators. The most annoying guy here for sure was this legendary evoker. Everywhere I looked, there was like a new enchanted mob. These guys all dropped emeralds, which was pretty awesome. I was able to clear out the stragglers on the outside and then made my way into the structure. Everyone other than the legendary evoker was pretty easy to take care of. I ended up chasing this one dude around the whole time and managed to trap it. Then I focused my attack on the dude that was trapped and with that guy taken care of, I cleared out the first floor. The second floor was pretty much the same but there were no legendary mobs yet which made the jobs much easier. I was able to loot this floor much faster and then completed a good amount of quests. But I was running out of food. I was still in the structure till the morning and things were going great until I got to the third floor. While I managed to take out 30 vindicators, this legendary one spawned and it was way too strong. So I looted as many chests as I could and left. Along the way I found another pillager structure and this this place was more like a camp. These mobs were significantly easier to take out and I was able to just roll through this place and grab all the chests. I also ended up getting the bad omen effect again and I activated this cool capsule thing that I got. So at this point I had that emblem on from my specialization which gave my gathering XP a 300% boost. That plus these quest rewards boosted my gathering up 8 whole levels. As soon as I came home I had to stock up on food again and after praying to the graves I put another skill point into the scribe skill which maxed it out. With that being done I scrapped a ton of gear and enchanted these archmage leggings with some really good enchants. I made sure to keep my old leggings to disenchant later. Day 134 to day 136, I put Vitae 5 on my leggings for more hearts and looked through my affixes. I couldn't really find good ones to put on so I just moved on to these infinite dungeons. First one was called the Residence of Fortune. Before hopping in though, I found a new food to make. This beef stew thing was super easy to make and had tons of nutrients. I made sure to farm a ton of potatoes and gather more beef. The only issue for me was the mushroom now. My whole diet just ended up becoming pumpkin pies and beef stew. I also slaughtered too many cows, so I used like two stacks of copper coins to redeem two stacks of loot crates. I opened all of them and they filled my storage system up with tons of junk. With that done, I flew around a bit and I fought this mob who had beehive armor on. The next morning, I had to clear a bunch of items, so I threw a bunch of things I didn't need into the lava pit. It was mostly the junk that I got from the crates. After a little bit of storage reorganizing, everything was cleaned up and ready to go. 
I then teleported far away to go dragon hunting some more. Just like the other times, I looted tons of random structures and even found a new area, which was for like a mini cyclops. There were also a few wizard's tower, which gave me more affixes. And finally, after all of that, my fire dragon eye found something. I started digging down and saw the top of a dragon's nest, but I was attacked by a bunch of pretty strong mobs, so I had to recall home. After that, I went right back into it and lit that place up. This ended up being a red dragon and I jumped down doing tons of damage. At first, I felt pretty invincible since I was healing as well, but eventually this dragon got me to my final row of hearts, so I had to recall. The second time, I withstood the dragon's attack and managed to take the whole thing out, which meant I got some dragon slayer XP as well. I didn't need the blood anymore, so I harvested the scales and looted everything else in the nest as well. Before the night ended, I extracted a rare affix and put that on my leggings, increasing the total armor rating. The next morning, I did the exact same with another affix on my chest plate. Now this armor set was looking really good. I managed to put an extra affix on top of the chest plate, which increased the armor rating even more. Turns out I had tons of affix books that I could just use for the future. With all that done, I went out to explore one more time. I realized that one of these waystones was right in front of another dragon's nest. This one was an ice dragon and looked like it was only like tier three, so I wiped it out pretty easily. I grabbed this thing's blood and noticed that it didn't even fully level up my dragon slaying level. During my travels, I found a few more structures. The first one was this really cool looking tree thing. In here, the chests were pretty good and the mobs were very easy to take out. Later that night, I found another one of those mushroom structures, which always had tons of food. Then behind that, it was that dwarven trader's house again. And this guy actually had a bunch of trades I could advance. I advanced it like two times, but then I ran out of fey gems and this dude just wasn't restocking. To end the night off, I fought this boss mob who dropped a really nice helmet. Day 137, I went out exploring again and I found a cool mushroom village. Past that, I took out another battle tower and I ended up in a village. As I activated the waystone, I heard a dragon and it turned out that this dragon was fighting a cyclops. As soon as that cyclops died, I actually attacked the dragon and finished the job. This got me more skills and leveled up my dragon slayer up to seven. With this, I could finally use these dragon blood infused swords. I was hesitant on the lightning sword since it causes too many fires with the lightning strikes, so I stuck with the ice sword. Then to make things even more OP, I put a 23% attack speed affix on the sword, plus leeching three, and my new favorite enchant, perpetual strike eight, which increases the damage with each hit. Day 138, I made these feather white ingots accidentally, but it did give me quest rewards. I could also use them to craft a better shelf of sight as well. While I was brewing these night vision potions, I was able to disenchant my old leggings. Then as I was doing that, another soul hit the grave, so I disenchanted my boots as well. Now that I got those enchantment books back, I was able to make a very overpowered set of archmage boots. And on top of that, I even upgraded the protection on my chest plate and leggings. Even more, I was able to put Vitality 3 on my chest plate as well. This all increased my hearts like crazy. And I ended up getting the shelf of Masterful Sight as well. Later that night, I ended up putting two affixes into my boots, one increasing the armor rating and the other increasing my hearts. Before the night ended, I actually put an extra affix, which increased the hearts on my leggings as well. With all this new stuff, I went out to look for stronger mobs to take out. I found Barako the Sun Chief almost immediately and took this guy out with a few hits only. Then with these quest rewards, I used them all on gathering XP. This was because I I wanted to upgrade to a netherite pack so soon. Once I was done with Barako, I found a pirate ship and on top of the ship, I saw my first ultimate tier mob. This skeleton was the best way to check out this perpetual strike enchantment. I was able to hit it a bunch and my damage increased every hit. Once that was done, I made my way down to the main area of the ship and cleared this place out as well. The only thing left were the bottom two floors and these chests had some pretty decent loot. I spent the rest of the day exploring and at night I found these boss mobs. Then I landed on a battle tower which had a bunch of mobs piling up on the stairway. This is when I realized I didn't have sweeping edge on my sword. The next morning, I went inside a roguelike dungeon to really test this armor out. No matter what happened though, my heart really wouldn't go under this specific level. So I was able to demolish this place with no issue at all. I got tons of levels and even completed a bunch of quests. The final floor actually had a boss chamber and this guy was a breeze to take out as well. Day 141 to day 142, I decided to come back home and put all the books away. Then I extracted more affixes and used my bottles of XP. After that, I collected these quest rewards and used my coins. With the copper coins, I used it on 32 loot crates and the monster coin, I put it into the 10 times reward. I also saw that I had an affix that increased my critical hit damage. So I put that on my sword plus sweeping edge three. With all that done, I went out to explore till the morning. I ended up finding this really cool village that was built on top of trees. Past that, I found a pretty big jungle structure, which had some maze-like areas and puzzles. I ended up having a fire resistance, so a lot of these traps didn't work, and I just broke into the final room, which was really nice. 
In here, there was an enchanted golden apple and blocks of diamonds and emeralds. Then, while traveling some more, I took out a lightning dragon and grabbed all of its scales. After that, I ended up in another one of those big binding structures. This place had some really strong mobs though. One of the zombies was legendary and it did a lot of damage, but it was even more scary since it also paralyzed me. Luckily, the launch spell worked and after healing a bit, I came back to take out the top layer of enemies. This structure probably has some of the best loot imaginable. Every single chest was filled with rare ores and these tomes. I went down each floor, clearing out the mobs and looting the chests. Eventually, I had the entire main area cleared. So I just left, and when I came home, I scrapped a bunch of enchantments and made a soul campfire to get rid of these useless affixed gear. Day 143 to day 144, I sprinkled these soul braziers around the base as well, and then I started working on these dark magic quests. First thing I did was make this book, which started the entire chain. Then I made this apothecary stand and put it right next to my brewing stand. After that was done, I made some wooden altars and put rotten flesh into the blast furnace. I ended up making too many wooden altars since I had no clue what to do with them. I picked those things up for now and made two more items, a magic workbench and a crucible. I put the crucible on top of the campfire and put water in it. The first time I threw materials in it, my game crashed so I had to remake these things and uh, this time I threw all the right materials in and started stirring. That ended up giving me arcane gold ingots. With that, I just made a basic amulet to start and on the magic workbench, I made this thing called a mind shielding plate. No clue what it does, but my head slot was empty so I equipped it. Once that was done, I made a few more random things for quest rewards and expanded a path toward all these new things. The next day, I went into the nether to look for two specific mushrooms so I could go into a nightmare dimension. This surprisingly took a long time. I was looking everywhere and I even managed to loot an entire bastion. I went through a couple more structures as well like this nether pyramid and a nether temple. It took a long time but I found the two mushrooms and I made this thing called a strange bed. I hopped into the dimension by clicking on the bed and this place was pretty creepy. There were some new mobs in here like this tormentor and apparently even Hero Brian. Also, lightning strikes happen like crazy in this dimension which meant this place would be perfect for farming boss mobs. I stayed here for a while just fighting legendary mobs and I even fought an ultimate skeleton as well. Since I was done for now, I came home to enchant this archmage helmet. This thing ended up being stacked as well and only got better once I started adding affixes that increased the hearts. I only noticed this now but the helmet actually had protection 8. To end these days off, I completed a new set of end quests which involved me making a book, then a diamond hammer which I turned into a netherite hammer and after that smashing these ender pearls on a thalassium anvil. That gave me ender dusts and I could complete even more quests. Final thing I did that night was set up a little ritual area just in case. Day 146, I made more pumpkin pies and used these sheep spawn eggs to fill out my pen again. Then with all these dungeon keys, I made a chest to organize them. I checked on a few keys that I had didn't know about and uh, the ones that were technically finished, I put them into the chest. This nether one was kind of new so I speed ran it really quick. This time though, I actually had a warped fungus on a stick so I could complete this extra puzzle with a strider. There was another nether dungeon that I cleared out and this one had a mimic but for like the ninth time, I ended up getting the same bauble that I already had. Once morning it, I also disenchanted my old helmet and went to check on these last four keys that I had left. I found a cool puzzle that lit up when I activated the jukebox, but it didn't do anything else new. All the other keys were just the old dungeons, so I inscribed like four more new keys and had to replace this inscribing station. So I'm just gonna skip over a bunch of these dungeons because they were all essentially the same. I really did try to get the blocks to upgrade the portal, but I couldn't find any one of those items. Instead, I got a ton of gear and enchanted books, which were nice. All that meant is that I couldn't use this one green key. Eventually, I called it quits and came home to put all these enchanted books away. I also made sure to cook more beef stew while I was here as well. On top of that, I could finally fill out the 10 time monster coin reward and I put that XP into archery. To set up for the next adventure, I made an ever bright portal. I also hopped in really quick to check out the land and unlock the quest chain. Day 150 to day 151, my gathering level was finally high enough so that I could craft a netherite paxel. I made sure to disenchant my old paxel and stack this new one instead. With that done, I filled up on this beef stew and went into the end to look for these end shards as well. I looked through a ton of structures and went through every little cave in these end islands. The main spot you can get these shards from are the pyramids, I think. I spent about 40 minutes going through every single structure I could and looting these chests, hoping to find a bunch of these little end shards. I even made my way into some end fortresses as well. This entire trip got me like one end ingot and a few more shards, plus a firework star. With the firework star, I was able to make an AOE glyph. On top of that, I also made an explosion glyph as well. With those two, I crafted an exploding version of the harm spell and it was working pretty well. I now had 
four ingots, so I turned my netherite armor into end armor, and it managed to be worse than my archmage armor, so I just kept it in my chest for now. The next morning, I cleaned my storage system up and opened a ton of these end buddy card packs. With that being done, I hopped into the Everbright to challenge my first blue skies boss. My regular sword was doing fine damage for now, so I just stuck with it. I grabbed all the keys like I've done a million times in this structure and went into the boss room. Now, once again, this boss wasn't too hard. Its minions were super annoying though. Some of these golems ended up being enchanted and could paralyze me. Aside from that, I just played cat and mouse with the summoner and very slowly lowered its health. I got about halfway through its health and it took forever, so I had to swap to a blue skies weapon. I ended up choosing an aquite sword. This sword helped just a little bit, but it still ended up taking a good bit longer. Eventually though, I had taken the summoner out and learned some valuable lessons. This loot bag was pretty good and the arc increased my speed. The quest rewards were also really nice and before challenging the next dude, I stocked up on more food. Day 153 to day 154, I ended up taking a little detour and made this thing called an undead battle standard, which summons the undead army. I found a nice plains biome and spawned this army once again. This time, it was much easier since I could see most of the enemies in the plains. I got rid of the first two waves and even traded with the wandering trader to get this iron hide amulet, which took up an artifact slot. As it was turning dark, I got up to wave four and it was getting a little more tough since more and more mobs spawned. One of these mobs was also legendary, so I had to be very careful. But once that monster was taken care of, I cleared wave four in no time. Wave five ended up being significantly easier since there were no legendary mobs and I defeated this army really quickly to get my treasure bags. For my food though, I now had two limiting factors. I kept running out of potatoes and mushrooms. The potatoes, I just used bone meal to farm, but for the mushrooms, I hopped into the nether. I got very unlucky since I went through a bunch of different biomes and couldn't really find anything. Eventually, I found an area that had grown brown mushrooms, so I harvested a bunch of those. Finally, I could make more bee stew. To end the night off, I opened some capsules. One of them gave me blueprints to my own castle, but this second one was just a complete 9x9 farm. So I cleared out an area next to my base and activated the capsule, which just plopped down a structure. I made sure to light that area up and connected it to my base with a path. Day 155 to day 157, I did some light decorating around the new farm and traded with this goblin trader. I got a stack of randomite ores and some iron coins. After that, I decided to harvest all the crops in this new farm, and it was a really good amount of crops as well. Once that was done, I placed all 64 of these randomite ores. All this was very satisfying and leveled up my mining and gathering skills a bunch. Once that was done, I inscribed a new key, and this dungeon actually looked kind of new. So I hopped in, and of course, it was only the main room that was different. The rest of the puzzles were pretty much the same. I made sure to empty this cow spawner room though. Once I finished everything, I came home to use 64 copper coins on these choice rewards. There wasn't anything good, so I just chose the coal. I ended up deploying even more ore capsules, which leveled up my skills again after I mined them. To complete some more quests, I made an altar of the sea. Now this thing takes four enchanted gear and recycles it into random enchanted books. The only catch is that it takes a bunch of levels to finish the ritual. I did it with a few more items and then went underground to grab some ores. This was all just to complete some basic quests like making a pickaxe and some armor with different materials. I slowly worked my way all the way up from iron to emerald gear and then it turned out I needed to make an end stone smelter. To make these emerald ingots, you need to alloy tin ingots and emerald blocks. I needed one more tin ingot, so I went underground. It took a while, but I found some tin and crafted the emerald pickaxe. To complete the whole quest chain, I made a netherite pickaxe as well. Before the night ended, I expanded my beacon by another layer. Day 158 to day 160. Finally, after being stocked up with food, I enchanted this aquite sword, which ended up being a mistake since this new boss is weak to axes. I quickly hopped into the Everbright and grabbed some of these logs as well. Then I made my way towards this nature dungeon. It took me a pretty decent amount of time to get all the keys, but I was set to take on the Starlight Crusher. I hopped into the boss room and immediately realized that swords would not work properly on this guy at all. So I grabbed and made some extra blue skies axes to help break down the walls. This fight was super repetitive. All I had to do was just wait for this guy to stop attacking once in a while and hit it. Then all I had to do was break down its walls whenever it came up. I repeated that hundreds of times and eventually had to swap to this enchanted axe that I picked up in the dungeon. This one barely did more damage. Once the crusher's health got to around 25%, it started moving out of the center and laying down outside 
outside. Here, my sword was able to do even more damage than the axe. Slowly but surely, I took care of this monster as well and I picked up the best arc from the loot bag. The nature arc provides two extra hearts. Day 161 to day 163, that boss fight took all of my food so I had to restock. And while looking around, I noticed I had an extra diamond coin. So I tried to look up what artifact would work for me, but I'd already filled out most of the slots. So I chose this superstitious hat, which is supposed to apply an extra level of looting on killed enemies. As soon as I was done, I flew around looking for the blue skies buildings to hopefully get some lunar stone bricks. Along the way, I found a pillager windmill, which looked really cool. There was an ultimate zombie right in front of it though. While fighting this tank, a bunch of pillagers decided to pop up out of hiding, but I was still able to take out every single mob. The windmill itself had even more pillagers. Those guys are pretty easy to beat. The bottom floor was where all these mobs piled up. Once I cleared that place out, I started looting. And since I knew there was a TNT trap here, I tried to remove some of the redstone, but that activated the trap. This blew up a good portion of the basement, so I went back up to loot the rest of the structure. As soon as I was done, I went into the nearest roguelike, and this place also had a boss spawner as well. Once I defeated the boss, it dropped an ancient level gear. The rest of the dungeon was very easy, even with these random structures connected to it. I grabbed literally everything I possibly could and recalled back home. To remove one of these ancient affixes, I put an older ancient gear in a soul campfire. Then I combined this ancient shard with this book of scrapping so I could remove an ancient affix from one of these gear. It's a little complicated, but it all makes sense. This affix happened to be not that good. With that done, I made a portal to the twilight forest as well and finally learned that you can craft an obsidian skull. So I combined that with a cobalt shield and then finally made an onk shield. I kept that thing in one of my slots. Day 164 to day 166, before I hopped into the twilight dimension, I made sure to enchant this shield that I was using. With this and tons of food, I was finally ready. I flew around this beginning area and found the first boss really quickly. This was the Naga. And it only took like a few seconds before this thing was completely gone. I grabbed my quest rewards from this boss and moved on to the next one. Now this boss was a Twilight Lich and I made my way into its castle. The loot in here was pretty good so I started from the bottom looting as many rooms as I could. Once I made it to the top, it was then time to fight the Lich. Now this boss was pretty unique. It summons a bunch of clones and you have to smash each one of their shields by hitting the ender pearls back at them. This one took me a little to get right, but once the clones were gone, I easily got rid of the Lich. The quest rewards from this guy were pretty incredible. Next up, I looked for a swamp biome to fight the Minnow Shroom. I found the maze and hopped into it. Down here, I fought a legendary Minotaur who is stronger than all of the bosses I've faced so far. I ended up getting deeper into this structure and found tons of mushrooms. Finally, I saw the Minnow Shroom and took it out very easily while it was distracted. Then with all this Smeef stroganoff, I needed to turn my feeding upgrade off so that I could eat it eventually. I had to teleport home though since I couldn't find my way back. Once I got back into the dimension, I ended up in a dark forest. This structure was for the night phantoms and it was massive and confusing. I was here for literally forever. Then when I made it to the night phantoms, one of them was legendary and I noticed that my sword with the freezing effect just ended up sending these guys down to bedrock. So it took me even longer to beat these guys as I'd have to wait for them to come back up. Eventually, I took care of them and got the trophy plus the quest reward. So I had already eaten the stroganoff, but I decided to take on the Urgast first. This was by far the worst boss battle I've ever done. First of all, this Urgast was enchanted with Lively, which meant it regenerates health. I managed to lure it in once and then do tons of damage to it, but then it just vanished out of nowhere. Turns out this dude was just chilling underneath the main building, regening health for the absolute longest time. The only thing I could do was just launch over to the Urgast and hit it once in a while. I did that for literally forever and you couldn't even build close to it either so I was out of reach to spam attack it. I toughed it out though and took this mob out and then I grabbed all of its reward from the chests and the quest reward as well. Day 169 to day 170, I took a quick break to scrap some more armor and redeem my coin rewards. From the monster coins, I got a pretty decent bow and I decided to enchant it. It took a little bit of work, but when I put the enchanted books on it, it ended up being incredible. This was basically perfect for the new boss who was the Hydra. Now this is by far the coolest looking boss in the mod, but it still really wasn't a threat. And similar to the Lich, all I had to do was just launch its own projectile back at it. I kept firing these arrows, but paid real close attention to when it launched fireballs because those do tons of damage to it. In record time, this boss was taken care of and I decided to strip its layer clean from all the ores in the walls. Next boss was the Alpha Yeti who spawns in an ice cave. This dude was an absolute cakewalk and I'm pretty sure he didn't even land a hit on me. I think the next one was the final real boss. It was the Snow Queen and she's in the Aurora Palace. I ended up picking just one corner here at random and broke into it. Turns out I guessed right and landed right on top of the Snow Queen. All I had to do now was wait for the Snow Queen to come down so I could do tons of damage. Lucky for me, my sword somehow 
somehow froze the boss and she never really flew back up. So I was able to take her out quickly. That basically completed all of the bosses and the next ones weren't really fights. All I had to do was basically find a Twilight Highlands biome and then dig down into a cave. After lighting up and clearing the area, I opened this small obsidian box and grabbed the magic bean from the chest inside. With my break spell though, I could actually break into the larger obsidian box as well and I grabbed the lamp of cinders. To complete the quests, I planted the magic beans down and went up to the clouds to pick up a giant sword and a pickaxe. This basically completed the entire mod and I made my way over to the final tower which gave me another quest reward. Day 171, as soon as I came back home, I equipped this thing called a caged heart which reduces a bunch of damage. Then I summoned one of these old bosses again and uh, my ice sword kind of glitched it pretty hard so I had to resummon it and beat it with another weapon. Now I was using my bow and sight so I was able to properly take this guy on for the second time. This was all just to make this item called a slicer's dice which could sometimes increase damage. I also summoned this thing called a swamp jaw again and uh, this guy only took like three arrows to beat. I needed to make an item called a bone raker from its loot. That was supposed to increase my attack damage also. Before the night ended I also grabbed like 64 more loot crates and opened them all up. Day 172 to day 174, I cleared an area out behind my base and used some of these capsules and they all happen to just be little structures. After that, I decided to use some of these castles blueprints and messed up putting them down. These ones for some reason you couldn't redeploy. I had to remove one of these things manually, but the next one I opened on top of the previous structure. After a little bit of adjustment, it actually looked decent. I moved on and decided to cut up more of these buddy cards to make buddy steel blends. First up, I made a block of luminous 2 which completed a quest. And then while the buddy steel was smelting, I did an enchanting ritual to make a potion flask. This thing can hold tons of potions, so I started brewing more mana regen potions as well. As that was going on, I made a dull trinket and did an even bigger enchanting ritual to make an amulet of mana regen. I also learned about this potion jar thing, which I stocked up with these mana regen potions that I was brewing. Turns out you could also enchant this flask as well. So I made eight glyphs of extend time on the glyph press. With this thing upgraded, any potion in the flask was extended by 50%. The next morning while I was still brewing mana region potions, I decided to put some affixes on my bow. The first one increased draw speed and the second one increased sniper damage. More importantly, I put this enchant on called Endless Quiver, which was just a better form of infinity. Finally, with this potion jar filled up, I could also fill up my flask. Day 175 to day 178, I went out to explore and with all this mana region, I could use even more spells. I ended up raiding another wizard's tower and dove into a roguelike dungeon. Now that I could spam this break spell, I was breezing through this place even faster than I usually would. I even wiped the boss mob out super easily. As I got to the final few floors, I found another boss spawner, and of course, this guy was no match for me. The only thing that put up a fight was this legendary spider, and that's because of the bleeding effect it caused. I cleaned out this dungeon and came home to put some affixes on my sword. With that done, I collected more quest rewards and recycled some more gear that I had. This is when I tried to get a new item. It was called a Phantasmal Ingot and it had a 2.5% drop rate from ghosts. The only reliable way I knew to get ghosts to spawn were from these haunted chests. So I went to the graveyard and constantly kept opening the chest to spawn more and more ghosts. The first time though, I realized my ice sword would just glitch these mobs out. So the next day, I enchanted a scythe and spammed these ghosts like crazy. I mean, I fought like hundreds of these guys. A lot of them were enchanted which made them a little bit harder and the rest were just normal. I spent the whole day here and finally got one of these ingots to drop. With that, I made a phantasmal blade which had a special attack as well. I then got rid of all these enchants on my old sword and put them into this one. Day 179 to day 182, I went into the Atum Dimension again to defeat some pharaohs. I already had a bunch of Nebu torches so I could get into the main rooms pretty quickly. The first pharaoh I defeated dropped two necklaces. The next pharaoh was a little harder but it dropped something that I already had. The very next pyramid though was back to being easy and once again I got the same necklace I already had one more time. Finally though, in the pyramid right after I managed to get something new. I got two feet of autumn. With all that done, I came home to use all these coins I had gathered again and decided to farm chicken since all of my sheep disappeared. I also picked up this everlasting beef artifact and cooked it to get eternal steak. That night while fighting some mobs, I started an undead army right behind my base. I think at this point the mod pack was almost breaking since I could see the spawners that brought these mobs out. Well anyway, it took the whole night and a little bit of the morning for me to defeat this raid but it was super easy and these raids always give a ton of loot so they're usually worth it. Next up, I went into the nightmare dimension and fought a ton of mobs but I was looking for Herobrine. It took a little bit but I found him and beat Herobrine with just a few hits. 
Day 183 to day 185, I noticed that there was an achievement for defeating 16 undead army raids. So I made a whole bunch of summons and started challenging them. It took me almost the whole day to defeat one of these raids on this frozen lake. So I knew I was in for some crazy challenge. I fought two legendary mobs in this little icy area at that night. And as the night was ending, this next guy, who was also legendary, was an absolute tank and got me down to my last row of hearts. Once I took care of that, I went into the plains and summoned another undead army. This one actually ended up being really quick since it was in a plains biome and I could see most of the mobs. I fought another raid that night and it extended till the morning. But as soon as I finished it, I just tapped out. These things just took way too long. At least the loot was always solid though. In the meantime, I scrapped some gears, removed some affixes and made a bunch of end crystals. Day 186 to day 188, I quickly went into the nether to do the scrying ritual again. This gave me tons of ancient debris. I ended up doing the ritual like two times. So I had a stack and a half of ancient debris when I was done. I tried looking for another goblin trader and during the search I took out a bone serpent and raided a bunch of structures. I also cleared another treasure bastion which had some insane loot in the center. I didn't have any luck on the goblin so I came home and put the ancient debris into the endstone smelter. These things always manage to give you one extra netherite scrap. So a good bit of netherite cooked, but I think I had some sort of brain damage or something because I decided to make a glyph of Amplify 3 again. Since I already knew this spell, I just wasted an entire block of netherite. Anyway though, I decided to make a pretty overpowered heal spell instead. The next morning, I decided to use all the coins that I had, and this time I ended up having some gold coins as well. I also had 32 iron coins, and I was able to open a ton of these uncommon loot crates. Then once I fed these chickens, I got this really cool little relic. It was an idol of fertility. So with all these these new blocks of netherite, I was still short 5 blocks, but I did get to put in an extra stack upgrade though. Day 189 to day 191, a grave guardian spawned, so I tried to advance its trades as much as possible. After that, I found a way to turn spirit orbs into emeralds. Turns out you could just turn your stamina vessel into emeralds through the curse statue. Then of course, you could just get the stamina vessel right back using the regular statue with spirit orbs. So I did that a bunch of times to get a ton of emeralds. Once I ran out of spirit orbs, I made my way towards the end dimension to summon the ender dragon a bunch of times. I got kind of sidetracked though because I had to fight a bunch of these endermen first. Once I took care of most of them, I put the crystals in the center and realized I had something else to worry about. These shulkers sometimes break the crystals before the dragon even manages to summon. I didn't realize that until I wasted like 8 crystals. At this point, the mod pack was basically breaking down though and it spawned the end pillars even higher. That didn't really matter though since I could fly and I broke them all down anyway. With that taken care of, I beat this dragon pretty easily. These end treasure bags are by far the best. While being very careful, I had just enough crystals to summon three more dragons. I did just that and one by one defeated each dragon for their loot. I got up to level 117 and decided to come home. My goal was actually to beat the dragon a bunch more times to get the advancement, but it wasn't working out too well. To end these days, I collected a bunch of quest rewards and even made this ghast gate pearl. So I went into the nether to fight waves of ghasts for their tears. I fought up to wave 4 and then ended up running out of time. Day 192 to day 200. I put all these days together because the game started crashing a lot and being pretty unstable. So first up, I found lunar stone bricks in a blue sky structure. With that, I built the Everdon portal and hopped in. I then went to look for the blinding tower and it actually took a good amount of time to find. Once I got inside, I grabbed this spear and all the keys. I went in to challenge the alchemist right after that. Now this guy was supposed to do poison damage, but I was immune to all that. This ended up being another one of those cat and mouse games and eventually I just cleared this dungeon out as well. Well, I got the Dusk Arc, which wasn't that good. The next structure though was the Poison Dungeon, and I think it might be the largest. I made sure to enchant a new Blue Skies weapon though before I hopped into this dungeon. After what seemed like forever, I got 4 keys and was in the Arachnarch's Lair. Now this guy was enchanted, but somehow it was still easier than the Starlit Crusher. I just had to keep swapping between my sword and bow over and over again. It took a little bit, but with this guy taken care of, I got the Poisonous Arc, which is completely useless to me. But on the bright side, I did manage to complete a majority of quests in this mod pack. There were only a few more things left for me to do, and one of them was to get a coconut. These items were all required to make a piña colada and a white chair. Once I sat on the chair and drank the drink, I got teleported to the tropics. Now this dimension was meant to be relaxing, but they still had tons of mobs spawning. I ended up returning home though, since there was still one major enemy left for me. I stocked up on water breathing potions and filled up another potion jar with them. After that, I found an ocean monument and went in to defeat the elder guardians. 
Thankfully, with my Ankh shield, I wasn't affected by mining fatigue at all. This place was pretty confusing, but eventually I found my first Elder Guardian and wiped it out. I opened the treasure bag and fought another one of these guys. One more left to go, but this one was being defended by a legendary Guardian who did a great amount of damage to me. Once that little guy was taken care of, I defeated the final Elder Guardian as well. The next day, I went to challenge a Gorgon as well and put a blindfold on. Since the Ankh shield prevents blindness, I could still see perfectly. I grabbed the Gorgon's head after I took it out and uh, while messing around in my base, I accidentally used it on my armor stand which basically turned my end armor into stone. As day 200 was nearing, I ended up using every single one of my coins. I made sure to use some of the rarer coins to fill out all these artifact slots in my inventory. To finally end the journey, I killed a bunch of chickens to feed my fire dragon and I was finally able to ride this thing too. I survived 100 days in Minecraft's new hardest mod pack. Dawncraft is a massive mod pack which completely changes Minecraft's combat system. On top of that, there's tons of new insane bosses and structures. In these 100 days, my goal is to take down as many of those bosses as possible and hopefully get overpowered. Day 1, on the first day of this adventure, I spawned somewhere very far up. This map and atlas also didn't help much either. Luckily, there was this Korok here who explained why I was summoned into this world. Turns out I needed to defeat the bosses and collect the unique ender pearls to bring balance back to the realm. After I was done talking to this guy, I got a spirit orb from the Korok and somehow had to find a way to get down. So this place was a boss structure, which meant I needed to get away pretty quickly. I found some stairs and searched the lower outskirts of this island. Eventually, I found some water and hopped down. Almost immediately, I got shot by an arrow and had to run. I ended up on top of another floating structure and started going through these little huts. I found a rare level stone pickaxe and some more food. As I was grabbing these hay bales, I got attacked by another skeleton so I had to relocate. Once I was safe, I made tons of bread and the rest of my stone tools. With that taken care of, I went through more of these huts to stock up on even more food. Eventually though, I stumbled into a room with tons of coal and iron ores. My pickaxe also had this cool effect so I was able to mine all of this really quickly. For the rest of the night, I smelt the iron ore, made a stack of bread and also made this lunch bag for all of my food. With that done, I was able to craft an iron pickaxe and upgrade my lunch box with iron as well. That ended up being a mistake since it erased all of my previous food I had in there so I had to stock up again. As the night was about to end, I started making iron armor and I used this cutting board to get the leather off of this old leather gear. I even made a shield and then decided to start exploring. At first I felt pretty safe with iron armor but then I got chased away by a little mouse. Once I was safe, I started following this map which was leading me straight to a village. Along the way, I noticed a hunter's cabin which spawned pillagers. This would be really helpful for later. I also noticed a roguelike dungeon here. I made sure to mark all these down as well. Past that, I saw a goblin castle which is gonna be helpful later as well. It was turning dark and I started taking damage randomly. Lucky for me, there was a village right in front of me. Before sleeping, I checked out some of these chests in the village and also found the guildmaster's hut. There was an empty home right next to it, so I chopped down some trees, placed some chests down, and uh, made this place mine for now. Turns out I had enough leather to make a backpack as well, and I upgraded that to iron. With all of this done, I crafted a bed and went to sleep. The next morning, I fought this mushroom looking mob which did tons of damage. Once I took care of that, I went to talk to the guildmaster to get my first real quest. It was actually pretty simple. I had to take out 10 pillagers to learn a very important skill. Before going to that cabin, I ran through some houses and looted chests that the villagers couldn't see. This filled up my lunchbox some more and then I moved on. Along this path, I faced some barbarians who I dodged really quickly. I then decided to explore this roguelike dungeon first. This first floor wasn't too dangerous and the armor in the chest were slightly better than the ones I had. As I went into different rooms, I got golden apples, more food, and these unique items. I even stumbled into a random little area that just had an enchantment table and a block of emerald hidden under some carpet. Since I also managed to get some gold, I upgraded my backpack as well. Once that was done though, I actually had to eat a golden apple since I almost died by this zombie. The floor underneath was a little more challenging, but the loot was even better. I fought a new mob called a Crystallian. And with all this loot, I also decided to make a feeding upgrade. This actually did not work with the lunchbox, but it would be super important for later. I kept it in my backpack anyway and fought this epic boss hoglin. It took me a whole 5 minutes of attacking to take this tank out. At least it dropped a cool chest plate, even if it was gold. For the rest of the day, I was just clearing this entire floor. I started off by lighting up as much area as I can and then breaking the spawners. Once all that was done, I finally was looting the chest as well. Eventually, I got down to another floor and saw a new type of mob. These were called imps and they were absolutely awful. I took out the first group of these guys just by building up above them. 
and then the second group by blocking them away from me. On this floor, I actually managed to get a diamond sword and a diamond shovel. Day 6, I was sick and tired of the roguelike so I surfaced up and went into the cabin. I took out my first few pillagers in here and saw a counter in the bottom. So I just stayed in this room fighting a bunch of these guys until I had taken out 10 pillagers and completed the first quest. I also had the bad omen effect, so I emptied this bucket and went to grab some milk before going to the village. By the time I got home, it was dark and the stupid guildmaster was just hiding all the way in the back of its hut. So I instead cleared out a good amount of space in the house and placed down a double chest for all the items I had in my backpack. I also chopped down this tree but because my axe had an ability on it, it damaged a part of my house as well. I only noticed it after placing the chest down and had to do some really quick work to cover back up. Before the night ended, I cleared out all of my items and even made a shield. Finally, the stupid guildmaster decided to talk to me and I was able to submit the quest in. I ended up getting a skill book for rolling and could now use other skill books as well. My next quest was to take the Goblin King down since I got the map to its keep. Right behind my house, I found a waystone and another guildmaster who explained to me that the corrupted eye was with the Goblin King. In the meantime, I gave this guard 15 emeralds for a skill book called Active Guard but it needed a base guard skill first. Then I gave 10 emeralds to another villager to be able to use Fletcher's tables. I ended up making one for myself and crafting a few arrows with the stuff I had collected. Turns out there was another villager here who could teach me how to use a grindstone for 10 emeralds so I managed to do that as well. Then for a good chunk of the night I used this cutting board and a shovel to get flint out of gravel. Then I made an extra golden apple and started exploring as it was turning into day. As soon as it became morning, I found myself in a puzzle area. Now there's tons of these scattered around and the reward for all of them are spirit orbs. This one had a button that you had to do parkour up to and once you press it, a sound plays. I figured that you would have to kind of match the sounds, but this thing was super tedious so I just moved on. Behind this puzzle was another village and the first thing I did was talk to a few of the villagers to get some quests. Once that was done, I grabbed a bunch of loot and activated the waystone. I ended up ransacking this village some more and even took out some of their chickens for their feathers. Then it started turning dark so I decided to come back home. Before the night ended, I took out a rare boss mob and then used all the feathers to craft some arrows. Last but not least, I crafted a bow as well and then made a spell book so I could hopefully start learning and using magic. Day 9 to 10, I downloaded something called Better Dawncraft which just adds more quests in the quest menu and then went to challenge the Goblin King. As soon as I got to the keep, I fought this little archer guy and a knight. This is when I realized I'm not that safe in iron armor at all. With these guys in the front taken care of, I opened up a little entry and tried to take out as many goblins as I could from the outside. There was this large dude who I had to use most of my arrows on, and once he was gone, I was left with the little guys. With the entrance cleared out a little, I made my way inside the keep and felt pretty safe until this purple dude jumped down and did tons of damage. I had to tactically retreat for a little bit. I ate my golden apples and as I was defending myself, my shield broke. So before hopping back in, I had to make another one. The second time over, I got deeper into the keep and even fought a mimic. But I noticed that Goblin King started to take damage randomly. By the time I made it up to the throne, the boss's health was already fully gone. Plus, I couldn't even find the guy. I did see some weird item that was glowing, but I had no clue that this was the boss respawner just yet. I ended up staying here until the morning, looting all the chests and grabbing whatever blocks that weren't being protected. Once that was done, I tried talking to the guildmaster to see if I could get another map, but uh, that wasn't possible. I then decided to go explore past the other village I had found. Along the way, I took out a bunch of sheep for the wool and made a sleeping bag. Since I was out in the wild, I slept the night away as quickly as possible. I went back to explore once the morning hit and I really couldn't find anything for a good while. I did manage to slaughter some more chicken and even make more arrows, but this area was pretty barren so far. As I moved on, I found some archwood logs which would be important to make spells later. Then I finally saw a structure which turned out to be an orc camp. I marked it down and thought I could take it on until I saw a legendary mob, so I decided to move on for now. Behind that structure was a weird tower. I looked in through the windows and saw these really creepy looking dudes. Since I had my bow on me, I took out one and this little mob called a hollow lamp popped out and did a good amount of damage to me. As soon as this little guy was taken care of, I made my way to the entrance and took out as many of these guys as I could very safely. The bottom had no chests, so I had to make my way up to the second floor. Here, I fought another hollow let and took out the last huntsman. This floor had chests, but they sucked. The only thing good were the food, which I started cooking. 
While waiting, I made a scribe's table and decided to jump down, which was a mistake because a bunch of zombies attacked me. I had to slowly take them out, but they still ended up doing a ton of damage. The next day, I was out exploring again and saw this house, which I tried to get into. This place had an elite hunter illager who could open doors, so I ran as fast as I possibly could. I then ended up in a tiny little farm village, which had nothing too good except for more food. I ended my journey here and started making my way back towards one of the villages. I noticed that this village was actually right next to a pillager camp as well. That meant that the guard villagers and the golems were just constantly fighting these guys. Then since it was dark, I came back home, put most of the items I collected away, and crafted this food book. In here, I saw some ridiculous bonuses for food diversity, but the requirements were pretty ridiculous as well. Day 12, I took out this rare mob right in front of my house and went back to the ruined keep to check on the goblin. Once again, I took out some stragglers in the front of the keep and then made my way to this glowing thing. After messing with it, I was able to resummon this guy. I had to retreat really quickly since I was getting attacked, but once I cleared out that little knight, I hit the goblin king a bunch of times. This dude eventually ended up being in the water, so I took more of its health down. During this entire fight, I actually ended up running out of golden apples. I almost died a few times as well, so I had to do tons of tactical retreats. Slowly but surely, I took down a bunch of the Goblin King's health and finally managed to take this annoying guy out. I also missed this loot room on my first try, so I made sure to grab everything I could this time. Then it was time to report to the Guildmaster that I got my first unique Ender Eye. My next quest was to take out the corrupted ogre who seemed to be really far away. I spent a good chunk of the night getting flint from this cutting board and uh, crafting a bunch of arrows. Then when I went out to explore, I got attacked by zombies, so I hid in some random villager's house. Once the path cleared, I went out and followed this map again. Along the way, I grabbed some copper ores, and as I kept moving, I found a sunken ruin, but my map wasn't even budging. Past that structure, I ended up in an ice maze-like biome. At this point, I had no clue just how big this biome was. Lucky for me though, there was a village right next to it, so I activated the waystone and went to sleep in there. Day 14, I stepped out onto the village and spoke to a blacksmith. Now this guy wanted a mushroom stew, so I used the waystone to teleport back home to make one. I managed to pick up a goddess statue too while I was here, and then when I came back, I couldn't find that same blacksmith again, so I decided to just move on, and I saw a pillager tower in this ice maze biome. I slowly made my way towards it and hid behind some blocks to take out a few of the pillagers that I could see. I did this for a good while, and as as I got closer, a boss type mob just jumped down. Now this guy couldn't reach me when I was on top of this little ice area, so I was pretty safe and that made it really easy to take the guy out. I think this dude dropped a turtle shell which I equipped since it was better than my iron gear. As soon as that dude was done, I made my way into the structure and started looting the barrels. For now, I only took the gems, leather, and the bones, but eventually I came back for the fish. The next floor managed to have even worse loot and the floor above actually had a vindicator who did a ton of damage to me. I was able to loot some of the chests away from that guy and open some of these pirate pouches. Slowly but surely, I took out the Vindicator and made my way to the top of the structure. There was another pillager in here, and after that guy was taken care of, I looted all the chests. In here, I picked up a bunch of emeralds and iron ingots. On the way back down though, I grabbed all the raw fish that I skipped. To stock up my lunchbox, I put down all the fish on the campfire and just waited for everything to cook. In total, I got around 15 of these two types of fish and like five whole levels from these quest rewards. With that done, I decided to move on and this ice maze was so gigantic. So halfway through, I decided to come back to the closest village so that I could go across this biome from another angle. Day 16 to 17, since this ice maze biome was unnaturally large, I started off the next journey going slightly to the left and even found a waystone along the way. Eventually, I also found a shipwreck, which I thought I could take on. I managed to clear a little section of it, and uh, when a couple of them started chasing me, I had to run away. This is actually where I spent most of the time, just basically going north. It took until the night for my map to finally start moving, so I knew I was doing something right. I crossed past this snowy ocean where I got shot by a pillager and went down to half a heart. Once I healed, I kept on chugging along the same path. I felt safe enough to sleep halfway through the night on a beach, and when I woke up, I finally saw a few structures. The first one was a hunter illager cabin, and these two guys were not too hard to deal with since they weren't enchanted. I then saw three structures next to each other, uh, a blacksmith's house, a goblin camp, and a roguelike dungeon. I took on this goblin camp first and tried to clear it out as much as possible. This ended up taking a good bit since these guys still do tons of damage to me. Once they were dealt with though, I hopped into the villager's house. In here, I found a chest that had two netherite scales and other ingots. Behind that chest, I also found some iron ore and an iron block. This place also had armor stands with iron armor on them as well, which I used to replace my almost broken set. 
With all that done, I set a waystone down here as a checkpoint and came back home to finish off of an old roguelike dungeon before hopping in this new one. I made my way back to that little dungeon I was in and started going down the stairs. Then finally, I ended up in a new floor. Since I was still made out of uh, paper mache, I had to be very careful. I made sure to block off as many mobs as I could and light up the areas before breaking the spawners. Even while I was super careful, this floor felt like a nightmare. Any one of these random mobs could have killed me very easily. The chests were pretty good though, I was actually getting a lot more valuable items. I ended up having trouble with these imps who just shred my health. As I retreated though, I found a boss mob. I was able to stay a safe distance away though, and I actually took it out. Finally, my luck kicked in and this dude dropped a netherite chest plate. This was huge and I knew that these food quests had a mending mixture as a reward. So I grabbed that to repair this piece for later. Before entering this one room, I had to take out a gorilla. Inside these chests, I got my first diamond. Then finally, I was at the lowest level of this roguelike. The first thing I did was light up some of the areas and I got attacked by a wither. I also fought an elite vampire and had to take out another one of these gorillas. After all of that, I looted my first chest in the final room and it was pretty good. From there, I went even deeper into the structure and looted even more chests. But sadly, none of them had diamond armors or diamonds in general. Before going to the other side, I used this mending mixture to fully heal my netherite chest plate. While I was on the other side though, I got trapped. On one side, I had to deal with a boss evoker and on the other side were wither skeletons. I decided to just dig in the wall and then try to get out that way. This worked and I was out of there. As soon as I was back home, I made a warp stone, put all this new stuff I got into the chests, made even more arrows and used a lot of these gold ingots to make more golden apples. Day 20, I hopped into the other roguelike dungeon that I was planning on going into and uh, the first floor was pretty simple and I was able to fill my lunchbox here as well. As I got lower into this place, it started becoming even more dangerous so I had to take it very slow. I ended up basically being stuck on the staircase for most of the day since tons of mobs started piling through the floor below. Eventually, I called the quits and made my way back to the blacksmith's house. I replaced some of my damaged armor with the ones on the armor stand and then made my way to another structure. This was a little pillager castle, which only had two pillagers. I grabbed whatever I could and then followed the map to the corrupt ogre just for a little bit. Then it ended up becoming darker, so I teleported back to my home really quick to do a few tasks. First, I cleared my backpack and replaced some of my armor pieces. Then I made some of these uh, bundled emeralds to make these villagers happier. I put one in this guildmaster's chest and went to sleep. My reputation was pretty bad, so this just neutralized it. After that, I teleported to another village which had double the population and tried to do the same thing. First though, I gave this shepherd some shears which unlocked a shepherd's trade scroll meaning I can now trade with these guys. Then I talked to a blacksmith who needed 15 iron ingots, which I provided and after it needed me to kill five pillagers. I also had a quest for a bottle of honey, so I grabbed some stuff and went into that one cabin. I was at last time to hunt the pillagers. In here, I only took out one pillager. I even tried to go to the top floor, but there was nothing here other than the lectern. I was able to sign the contract at least, and uh, while gathering these quest rewards, one pillager spawned. But uh, more importantly, with the better Dawncraft quests, there was a quest that gave you pillager spawn eggs. It was just bugged for now. Day 23 to day 24, after restarting the game, the quests loaded and I grabbed two pillager spawn eggs from the quest reward. I only took out one of them because the other guy was a raid captain. So I went out to grab a bucket of milk really quickly. And when I came back, this guy despawned. So I had to spawn another one in and I completed the quest. When I tried to submit the quest, I went to the wrong village, but here I met a farmer who needed eight bones. So I decided to just do that quest instead. I only had seven on me, so I had to teleport back home to grab more. Once I submitted that, I got an emerald as a reward and put this bundled emerald into the guildmaster's chest. For the rest of the night, I stocked up on food, equipped this crossbow, and finally went out to fight this corrupt ogre. I set off towards the X on the map from this blacksmith's house and along the way, I marked down another roguelike dungeon as well. Past that, I ended up in a savannah village which had a huge crater in the center. This was the ogre's lair. Before trying to take this guy on, I activated the waystone and learned a new skill from the guard. I couldn't use these skill books yet since I still needed to learn the guard ability first. With all of that done, I tried to take on the ogre. I lit up the outside, made a few holes in its lair, and then started firing off my crossbows. At first, I did a good amount of damage, but then this dude started doing ranged attacks on me, which hurt like crazy. So I changed up my strategy a little by making holes on all four sides. This ended up working pretty well, and I was able to dodge the range attacks better and do tons of damage to this guy. But I had one issue now. I was running out of arrows. Luckily, I had tons of feathers, so I went back home to try and dig up more flint. Before challenging this dude again, I had refilled my arrows and equipped a quiver. 
It took way too long, but with all these new arrows and the new strategy, I was comfortably fighting the ogre. Then as I kept moving, this dude got stuck in a corner and allowed me to hit it multiple times with the crossbow. The ogre was at half health and I snuck in to do some melee damage as well. I ended up finding a new way to cheese this guy and spam my arrows from this weird angle. This did the trick and the corrupted ogre was taken care of. It dropped the lost eye and essence and its liver. I grabbed some of these skeleton skulls in here and went up to the village to submit my quest. My next mission was to take out the night rober and I unlocked blast furnaces and smokers. Once that was done, I hopped back home to organize the stuff and also I made a paraglider as well. Once that was done, I collected a ton of quests, cooked even more food and made a chest for these new eyes. This took up until the morning where I also set up a blast furnace to make steel ingots. That'll be for later. In the meantime, I went back to the savannah a village to explore. There was a castle here with a few knights. I was able to take them out by blocking them off and one of these guys dropped a netherite sword. When the area was fully cleared out, it seemed like the perfect place to make a base. So I chopped down all the trees inside and used the wooden hoe to clear all the grass. Once that was done, I lit up the entire area and opened the chest inside which had a mending mixture and that allowed me to repair this netherite sword. Day 27 to day 28, while I was clearing some of the rooms in this castle, I found a secret area leading to a chest. But the chest had nothing really good. I cleared my entire inventory and teleported home. In here, I grabbed everything I possibly could from the chests and only started to head back when my backpack and my inventory was filled up. Then I picked one of the corners of the castle and made this my main storage area by filling it up with dark oak chests. Since this area was going to be for mass storage, I really didn't care about organizing. I only separated the enchanted books and the eyes for now. Once I put everything away, I lit up the area a little more and did one more trip to gather the rest of the item. Then I picked up the waystone in this village and got like 5 levels from a quest reward. At that point, I was just waiting for the warp stone to fully recharge. This ended up taking a long time though, and I accidentally teleported to the wrong area anyway at first. Regardless, I made it back, set a waystone down in front of my new home, and filled out the basic storage area. The next day, I also separated all the gems into a chest and grabbed all the items I would need in my backpack at all times. So with all of that done, I set up a crafting table, furnace, smoker, and a blast furnace right next to these chests as well. Then, I checked out these new chests and made one iron and one gold version. Last but not least, I set up the goddess statue in here and went to sleep in this place for the first time. Day 29 to day 31, the first thing I wanted to do in this new home was to start a farm so I could get source for magic. I fenced off a little area and went into the village nearby to see if they had other crops. I really couldn't find any, so I just stuck with wheat and carrots. Then I tried to make a source jar, but I had no glass. So to kill two birds with one stone, I went out to look for the night robber as well. I teleported pretty far away and just went southwest to hopefully find this new boss. At this point, I had no clue how far this guy was going to be. And uh, during my travels, I found one of those NPCs. These guys actually required specific items to be recruited, so I was out of luck. The next morning, I got sand though, which was huge, and bought a ton of these little goblin guys in their structure. Since the map wasn't budging much, I knew that I was going in the right direction at least. I did, however, find a mega tower, and right next to it, another boss structure. So I marked those down for later. After sleeping the night off, I thought I found another waystone since I was in a village, but even after going through each and every building, I still couldn't see a waystone at all. I did however find this giant's den. Now this dude was chilling inside of his cave for a little bit, so I was able to do a good amount of damage. It then ended up getting pretty annoyed, so it broke through its den, and at this point I was terrified and ran. Now this giant was a lot faster than I thought, and it threw something at me which almost killed me, so I just decided to uh, teleport back home. The sad part is that uh, I would have to make that huge journey again. But the good news is that I could make this agronomic source link and a few source jars. To end the night, I grabbed these quest rewards for collecting the eyes. Day 32 to day 33, I spent these days going back to the location I was at before. And that first journey ended up taking a long amount of time. There was still a good amount of traveling though since I had to cross an entire ocean. Luckily, I found a village with a waystone and right behind it, I saw the arena for the night rover. I needed to prepare really quick, so I just came home. So full disclosure, I've tried this boss like a million times on uh, previous tries, so I know just how ridiculous it's going to be. My gear was really bad, so I made a bunch of steel ingots and tried to craft a set of this gothic armor. Once I was fully kitted up, I used my one and only diamond to make an advanced feeding upgrade, and this would be used for boss fights only. So just like I said, this boss is unbelievably hard, and for the first time, I really had to cheese it. I grabbed an iron golem from the village with the lead and brought it towards the arena. I cleared a path for the golem and let it go inside of the arena. 
This thing basically aggroed on the Night Rover and I tried to sneak in a few hits but the Golem basically eradicated the Night Rover way too quick. So I had to resummon the boss once again. I tried to sneak in some hits once again but the Golem got to it first again but this time for some reason I got the Rogue Eye to drop. I promised to take this dude on for real during this whole video. For now though, I submitted this quest into the Guildmaster and I unlocked the ability to use tons of new items. The main ones were the anvils and the rest were for the create mod. Day 35 to day 37, I started off the morning by making this mage-like glyph on the scribe's table. With this, I wouldn't need torches anymore and I sprinkled that all around the base. As soon as that finished, I made an imbuement chamber to get some of these source gems. Then I went to that blacksmith's house really quickly and stole all the anvils I saw. I stacked them all up on a corner and started going through the enchanted books I had. I couldn't make anything too good, so I just crafted a night vision spell and then wanted to go to this roguelike dungeon that was close to my base. I had to hide out in these two houses since I was getting attacked by some massive mobs. Once they cleared out though, I made it closer to the dungeon but a boss mob was standing in my way. Thank god for my arrows which allowed me to lay back and snipe this dude from far away. It almost managed to take me out still. With that guy cleared, I made my way into the dungeon. I started off by lighting up the stairways and as I got closer to the first floor, this spell actually made it so much easier to just explore the rest of the rooms. I was able to throw light into each room before I even hopped in. On the first floor, I got some okay loot, uh, it was mostly food. The second floor was a little bit more challenging since it had these imps who have to be the most annoying mob in this mod pack. In here I got more ores plus I saw a rare boss who I blocked off and slowly took out. I usually turn combat mode off for these because uh, sometimes these guys can hit through these blocks and I don't want to be moved up. This guy dropped some cool axe and an enchanted book, plus I got an enchanted golden apple in its chest. The next floor was surprisingly easy and I looted most of the chests without much challenge. I did almost manage to die when I fell through this hole and got shot by a ton of strays. I was able to run and block myself off and then eat this golden apple. Once I was safe, I slowly built back to the floor above to start again. I managed to fight another one of these boss mobs who locked the chest in here and I finally moved down again. So in this floor, I was having a really tough time getting past these imps. I had to eat a golden apple and after sneaking some arrows in, I could finally loot this one room. Plus now my backpack was getting filled up. Before moving on, I made some arrows on the fletching table and picked up this rare diamond helmet. With that, I made my way down to the final floor. I had to fight through a couple of these initial mobs and I lit up the place as thoroughly as possible. Just my luck though, I actually had to face these stupid imps in the first room I was trying to loot. This took a good bit since I was very careful and I looted the chest that was in the center. I got a really good set of golden leggings which I equipped and then went to check out the rest of the rooms in here. This entire trip got me one more diamond but at least i had a diamond helmet safe in my backpack i spent the rest of the day putting all these items away and once that was cleared i grabbed most of the bone meal i had and used it on the farm i was actually trying to fill it out and grab a bunch of potatoes i wanted a stack of bread and baked potatoes in my backpack at all times so i could just turn on the food upgrade during boss battles while all the potatoes cooked i made some tomes of scrapping and ripped some enchants off of some gear but i didn't realize how much this costed it took me 20 plus levels to make a single good diamond helmet then I combined two iron swords together and looked at the map for my new boss who was called the Nine Tails. Day 40 to day 41, I wanted to challenge the new boss right away so I teleported towards one of the first villages I was at and collected my quest rewards as well while I was here. I then decided to try this one puzzle room again so I parkoured up, pressed the button and I really tried to listen and solve this thing but it took me the whole day to try every single combination and it still just didn't budge. I called it quits on this puzzle and went to sleep really quickly. From here, I positioned myself perfectly on the map and went straight towards the X. Along the journey, I fought these uh, church doctor looking guys and ended up in a ghost town as well. As I got closer, I marked down an illager structure and found another puzzle structure. This one was actually super simple. It looked complicated because of all the create machines on the side, but all I had to do was just parkour up the center. When I got to the top, I picked up the two spirit orbs. Before leaving, I checked out the rest of these structures by pressing these buttons, but they just turned out to be distractions. So I placed the waystone down and came home. I had two spirit orbs already, one from the Korok and one from a quest reward. With all four, I got an extra heart container. I really didn't want to spend more XP, so I waited the whole night until the warp stone recharged. As soon as this warp stone recharged, I hopped back towards the X on the map. 
I ran through Morocco and this entire desert biome. Eventually, I saw another big body of ocean, so I had to craft another boat. And since I brought a saddle, I decided to get a personal horse too while I was here. These horses teleport to you, so I didn't have to worry about going too far away. A wandering trader also spawned, and this one sold some really good leggings, which I just couldn't afford yet. It took me until the night to finally get close to this boss. Once I was at the farm where the Ninetale stayed, I placed a waystone down and slept so the mobs wouldn't attack me. Then I turned my feeding upgrade on and went to attack this guy. My goal in this fight was to get this dude into the corner of this fence and do tons of damage. At this point, two hits would still completely ruin me so I had to be very careful. I somehow managed to have the Ninetales health before it even transformed. This is when things get super dangerous since now it can hold you and do poison damage as well. After hitting it a bunch of times, I got this guy down to about 25% of its health and it hit me really hard so I had to retreat back into the ocean. Here I ate my enchanted golden apple and decided to launch a full scale attack. This worked out perfectly and I had defeated the Ninetales. I picked up the exotic eye and decided to slaughter the animals in this farm before coming home. Then I finally went to the guildmaster to report the quest in. Once I did, I could now use an enchantment table and a smithing table as well. Plus, my next boss for the evil eye was a skeleton overlord. For this, I was 100% sure my armor wasn't going to be enough. To help me though, I cleared out this side room in the castle and made a bunch of bookshelves. I turned this place into a basic enchantment room. I didn't have enough levels to enchant anything, so I ended the night by repairing a few pieces of gear. Day 44 to day 45, in order to get geared up, I needed to explore a lot more. I started off by going across this village and I ended up completing a quest to unlock a cartography table somehow. As I crossed the river, I ended up in a jungle and here I found a spawner on top of a chest. This chest was stacked and I got diamond boots plus a diamond pickaxe from there. I crossed another ocean after that and ended up in a dark forest biome. I slept quickly to get rid of the mobs and managed to hit the jack pot. I was in a mining, mushroom-like structure. To be safe, I ender pearl to the top and found a safe spot. From here, I used my boat to take out as many mobs on the top floor as possible. There were only a few who were actually dangerous like this elite skeleton. Once all that was cleared, I could finally loot these insane chests. Immediately, I got some very nice gear and 6 diamonds. The next chest had a protection 1 diamond chest plate and 17 more diamonds. Once I grabbed all the loot here, I broke some blocks so I could see the floor below. Before hopping down, I made sure to light up the area as much as possible. This floor didn't have any diamonds, but it did have enchanted gear and tons of ingots. I did the same thing on the floor below this one, and once I cleared out everything here, it turned into daytime. I then needed to deposit everything, so I came back home. Here, I put all of my gear into one chest, gathered some quest rewards, which got me 11 levels, and filled up my lunchbox. To clear some space, I turned a bunch of ingots into blocks and used these mushrooms that I had to make stew. Then I used my levels to enchant this netherite sword. I ended up getting sharpness 3 on it. To use the rest of the levels, I stripped Unbreaking 4 from a pickaxe, combined two protection books together, and put that on my new chest plate. Once that was done, I used another three levels to combine two crossbows together, and finally ended the night by crafting a steel heater shield and of course some more golden apples. Day 47 to day 48 to put these new items to use I went out to explore again. This time I went to the left of this snowy village. Since I had a horse this journey was a lot easier. The first structure I found was a hunter illager's cabin and in here I took the mobs out, grabbed the smithing table and made my way to the attic which had a bunch of food. Past this structure I found a fisherman's hut which barely had any loot. As I kept moving I ended up in another goblin's castle. To really put my new gear to work, I slashed through the guards in the front and opened a little area in the front of the castle. I got rid of the bigger guys and steamrolled a good amount of goblins. These knights though still managed to do a good amount of damage to me. Regardless of that, I made my way up to the top and the goblin king was nowhere to be found. I decided to grab whatever was on top here and in the loot room and then decided to just move along. From there, I ended up in a roguelike dungeon. I placed a waystone down in front as an emergency exit and started moving down this place. For the first time, I actually wasn't scared of these dungeons. Well, I was still scared of these boss mobs though. An actual challenge came on one of the bottom floors and it was a legendary baby skeleton who summoned Silverfish. Then aside from these stupid imps who still shred through me, this place was very manageable. As I got deeper into this structure, my backpack was getting close to being full. I did end up getting some diamonds, but this time I had to actually mine them. My leggings were also almost broken, so I repaired that quickly and then went down to the second last floor. Down here were more of the same mobs, but I did take down another boss mob here as well. Sadly, the floor below was basically ruined. This floor was broken up badly and ended up having only half of the chest it should have had. I did get one diamond from here though. With this structure done, I teleported back up, I broke my waystone, and then waited for the warp stone to recharge since I didn't want to go out and fight mobs. 
my armor wasn't looking too good anymore. Day 50, I reorganized some of the items I had been collecting while I was cooking even more food. I stocked up on more arrows, repaired more gear, and even crafted new leggings and boots, which I enchanted. Then with the rest of my levels, I scrapped more gear, but that ended up taking every little bit of levels I had. So I actually tried to uh, look for the skeleton overlord, but I ended up traveling a little too far away from the X mark on the map. I still decided to explore this little area anyway, and I found an ore camp here. There were tons of zombies and skeletons in the front that I had to fight. This helped a lot though, since I got enough levels to come back home and put unbreaking on my leggings. The next morning, I looked through some quests and got an idea. I grabbed tons of cobblestone, smelted that into regular stone, and then turned that into arcane stone. Then with this arcane stone, I made a few pedestals. This was all just to craft an air essence. The air essence and three rabbit hides were used to make a glyph of launch. All of that ended up being a waste of time since this spell was disabled in the configuration. This meant that I had to travel the hard way and that's exactly what I did. I teleported towards the ice maze biomes uh, villages and journeyed from there. This journey was long and tedious, but I did manage to find another mega battle tower here though. This place had too many mobs for now, so I kept moving on. In the morning, I had to cross another ocean and the map finally budged, so at least I was doing something right. This island I ended up on actually had a dragon, so I marked that down and kept moving on. Finally, I found a village and activated a waystone, and luckily the skeleton lord was right next to this place. Day 53, I ender pearled onto the structure below the boss and placed a waystone down. Then I used these acacia logs to build up as high as possible and get into the boss's structure. I immediately attacked the skeleton lord with my crossbow and did some slight damage. This guy's moves were simple. One of them was setting runes on the ground, which I had to dodge. Another was launching these cloud monsters. And the final one was like a drag and uh, it would hammer you when you got too close. As I was dodging around, I managed to take down a quarter of its health. Once in a while, I retreated outside and its minions started attacking me here as well. The game plan though was very simple. I would just wait till this dude loads up and then get my melee hits in. With that, I got this guy's health down to half. Also during this fight, I was just running through my golden apples. Very, very slowly, I got this guy's health down to 25%. I got a quick break and I did a good amount of melee damage, but now I only had two more golden apples left. I finally got this dude down to one hit and had to retreat the heal. From here, I used my crossbow to take out the skeleton overlord and picked up the magical eye. With that done, I grabbed my waystone and came home. I picked up some quest reward and tried to turn this into the grandmaster, but I just could not find the guy here. I had to teleport to another village to submit this. From here, my new quest was the Sentinel Knight, and I was pretty sure I had seen the boss structure before. In 54, I decided to get close to the Sentinel Knight uh, just to place a waystone down, and along this journey, I fought a Hippogriff. Now, this dude actually ended up bringing me down to half a heart and almost ruined my world, but I clutched it at the last second. As soon as that was done, I placed a waystone down in front of the boss's lair and came back home. I got very lucky as a wandering trader came to my base with a perfect trade. So I quickly made a diamond sword and immediately gave this guy 64 diamonds for a sharpness 5, looting 4, unbreaking 4, mending diamond sword. Before this day ended, I smelted some glass and repaired as much of my gear as I could. Day 55 to day 57, with the glass and these pistons, I was able to craft an advanced pump upgrade. I didn't have enough for an XP pump just yet. I did have enough to make an iron stack upgrade for my backpack though, and of course some more golden apples. With that done, I wanted an automatic food and mob farm. So I grabbed this Drigme shard and made two cage traps. Then I made some of these source gems and cleared out this section in the castle to house some mobs. I made sure to separate these areas and then made an enchanting apparatus plus an arcane core. This was all just to craft a dominion wand, but I still needed more items. The first one was a source relay, which would move the source around from far away. This one actually took me a while to set up, but it ended up working at the end. The agronomic source link would send the source to the relay and the relay would move it into the jar next to the Drigmies. Then with these basic things done, I fenced off more of the mob area and expanded my farm. From here, I needed to set up the enchanting apparatus and make the Drigme charm. Now I could place these mobs down. I grabbed a cow from the village and tried to get a skeleton, but I couldn't find one who actually was holding a bow. I placed the cow down though and named it Milker. Then I crafted a backpack and upgraded it to gold. I then grabbed some mossy cobblestone and used this Drigme shard on it. Finally, a Drigme showed up and it started doing its magic. At first, there were no items being deposited, so I panicked and picked up the backpack. I swapped it with a gold chest instead. Turns out, one Drigme just takes a long time. 
Then since it was nighttime, I decided to go out to look for skeleton once again. I fought a bunch of mobs and it wasn't until the morning that I trapped the skeleton who had a bow. I named this dude Bones and put it right next to the cow. Also the chest finally had items and I was so excited. The next thing I wanted to do was to automate the source and luckily I also had a Starbuncle shard. I placed this gold backpack right in front of the farm and did the ritual for a Starbuncle charm. Once I summoned this little guy, I used a Dominion wand to connect it to the backpack. This Starbuncle didn't really like the regular crops, so I planted some source berries down and bone mealed a ton of them. This place became decked out with source berries and the Starbuncle would then harvest them and put them into the backpack. The growth of these berries would generate source and that goes into the jar to power the Drigmies. The only thing I needed to do now was just to add more of these guys. A 59 to 60, it was now time to challenge the Sentinel Knight. I teleported over to its boss area and jumped right in. I shot a few arrows in and the knight blocked it using its shield. After dodging a few hits, I got my first hit on this guy and uh, for the first quarter of its health, this knight actually felt kinda easy. Then this guy started doing these dash attacks which almost ruined me several times. I think it broke my shield too. I got down to one heart and ran away really quickly but the knight followed me. I managed to dodge his attack though and got its health close to 50%. Also since my shield broke I had to dual wield swords for the rest of this fight. And these dash attacks got me down to half a heart again. The rest of this fight for me was just about positioning and I had to make sure to dodge these dash attacks mainly. My uh, DPS was super high though and when I got the opportunity I was able to do tons of damage. This allowed me to get the knight's health down to 30% but at this point I only had one golden apple left so I had to be extra careful. I did manage to get another opening and did tons more damage. Then because it got dark some more mobs spawned and this knight was shielding up more than usual so I had to retreat back up to its base. From here I actually ended up running out of golden apples and my helmet broke but after one good dodge I was able to take out the rest of the golden knight's health and get the key that it dropped. I used the key on the guardian's eye and got out of here. When I came back home I made some more golden apples and saw how toast my armor was. Before doing anything else though I tried to submit this to the guild master so I had to teleport to another village. In here I picked up a horn statue and just randomly completed two quests which I had no clue about. I came home in the morning and made some boots and helmets just temporarily and then repaired my diamond stuff. I also placed this horn statue down as well. Finally, I submitted the quest to a guild master and got tasked to the final boss who was called a fire giant. I got a map and a knot of its hair. Day 61 to day 62, I set down a grindstone, got on my horse and went out to explore. During this journey, I found a weird structure. Inside of it was an armor stand which had a totem of undying. Turns out this place was for a boss called the Conjurer. Now this guy goes invisible a bunch of times and summons bunnies. It somehow did less damage than the Vindicators did though. I took it out and got its hat, plus I had picked up a witch's pupil from in here. Later that night, I ended up in a mushroom village and this place was packed with piglin brutes. I was struggling to run away and for some reason, I I just kept getting slowed down even with full stamina. Regardless, I kept pushing forward and ended up in front of this huge skeleton structure. I spent the rest of the night fighting these tigers since they were close to a Drigmi I needed. This broke my helmet but I was able to get a good amount of Drigmi shards. Further along in my journey, I explored a fisherman's building and saw a random village. These in turn got me a few diamonds to bring back home. I stored all the items away and kept this witch's pupil very safe. Once that was done, I did the ritual for two more Drigmi charms and placed these little guys down. After that, I crafted a ritual brazier which would be in my backpack at all times. So with these new diamonds, I made a helmet with protection 2 and unbreaking 3. I also put protection 2 on the boots, but then I completely ran out of levels. For the rest of the day, I put diamond armor on my horse and went out to explore. Turns out to the north of me was a sentinel knight, but more importantly, this massive pillager structure which was filled with loot. I built my way up to the place and broke the spawners in the first little room. The floor above this was significantly harder so I ran around breaking the spawners first. With that done I started looting the chests in here and immediately started getting tons of gold and diamonds. As I moved up I got even more loot from the new room but my totem popped in here and I had to retreat. Day 64 to day 66 I re-equipped my shield and since it was daytime less mobs spawned which made it easier to loot the rooms. These diamond armor wearing guys still managed to do insane damage though so I dodged them as much as I could. Could. Eventually, I found a walkway which connected two of these buildings together. I crossed over to the other side and there were less mobs there, plus it was closer to the top. 
Now here was where all of the best loot was hiding. Every single chest on the top was stacked. There were so many pieces of gear, all of which were either affixed or enchanted. Plus, my backpack was getting filled up so fast, I had to reorganize a lot of these nuggets and ingots. I also found some ender pearls, and with these, I crossed back to the other building and started making my way up this one. I fought a boss mob on one of the floors and was able to block it off, which made the fight much easier. While I was looting the top floor, I fought these little cloud monsters. I got even more loot and had to do another round of reorganizing. The rest of the exploration became super easy with these ender pearls, and I just decided to explore the top floors only. So I went through each and every building and even fought this evoker boss who chased me around but didn't do too much damage. At this point, I had almost a stack of iron blocks and tons of enchanted gear. If that wasn't enough, I also fought a boss pillager, and this guy dropped a piercing 4 power 5 crossbow. I also had so many diamonds that I decided to upgrade my backpack to a diamond backpack as well. With all that done, I came home and put these things away which took forever. Before these days ended, I made a witch's eye with the pupil and looked through all of these enchanted gear. Once that was done, I made some stack upgrades with all these new blocks I had and decided to go out and explore. I ended up uh, teleporting to the wrong place, so I just went to sleep in this village. Once my warp stone recharged, I ended up in the right village and followed this map to the fire giant. I spent basically the entire day traveling and in the morning ended up in this pillager city little area. With my new crossbows, these guys weren't that much of a challenge at all. I looted every chest that I saw and pushed forward. Here I also found a wandering trader stall. Then finally, as I crossed the ocean, I noticed the map start to fill out. I found myself in the fire giant structure and set a waystone down. Then to be really safe, I just slept. Initially, I actually wanted to fight this dude, but I knew it was gonna wipe me out very easily. So I came home to set up a little more. The first thing I did was set up a nether portal and then I went out to look for a specific type of wood. Now this actually took me the whole day, but I did find the vexing archwood logs I needed to make these tablets of scrying. With all of this, it was time to go look for netherite. As soon as I hopped into the nether, it turned the game into expert mode. I then found a quick area and started digging down. I needed to get down to Y equals 15. And uh, once I was down to where I needed to be, I actually ended up in the bottom of a fortress. Here I just took out a few blazes, picked up some nether works, and grabbed some of the chests on the bottom floor. There wasn't really anything else here, so I went back to my tunnel to hopefully just get one piece of ancient debris. I did find a nether goblin who I put in my cage trap. So I think I forgot to show you, but I also got this pickaxe from a wandering trader and it was really stacked. As soon as I got one piece of ancient debris, I immediately used it on the scrap ritual. This highlighted all other ancient debris around me for 5 minutes. Which meant for 5 minutes I was rushing to get as many of these things as possible. I ended up with uh, 27 pieces and let my goblin trader out who turned that into 30 netherite scales. Day 71 I called it quits on the nether and came home to put all the stuff away. I ended up with 8 netherite ingots from this trip alone and wanted to make these things that could salvage and reforge my gear. The reforger took one netherite ingot, lava, and some nether bricks. I set all of that up next to the anvils and got more quest rewards. I then used another netherite ingot to upgrade my OP sword and grabbed all of these rare level gear to salvage it. From there, I reforged my sword with something that adds fire damage and crit damage. That also unlocked a socket where I put in this base overheal gem. Before the night ended, I crushed a bunch of gems and salvaged some epic gear as well. Day 72 to day 73, to test out this new sword, I went out to explore. I managed to find another one of Baraco's villages. Here, I tested the base overheal and saw that I was getting absorption hearts above my regular hearts. This fight against Baraka was actually pretty challenging. I kept running out of stamina while dodging its attacks. I was able to knock off a quarter of its health though from far away. I tried to get in close once this guy's minions started healing, but I ended up taking a lot of damage so I rolled back a little. After getting Baraka to near half health, I decided to go in guns blazing and this worked very well. I tanked a lot of its beam attack, which made it super easy to take this guy out. So this guy actually ended up breaking my helmet, which meant I had to equip these masks instead. The rest of the night, I took out this monastery and made my way to the top where I got a random map. The next morning, I ended up being in another village and tried to get more quests from the guards but had no luck so I decided to come home and clear my inventory. While I was here, I scrapped a mending and unbreaking book from a piece of armor and put that on my netherite chest plate. I didn't have enough levels to get protection on it just yet. Before the night ended, I decided to fence off the Drigmies since they were going too far away and I upgraded my quiver to gold. Day 74 to day 75, I just needed more levels and I thought these Drigmies would produce enough experience gems to help. So while waiting for all that to happen, I used some of these blaze rods to upgrade my my spell book and unlocked tier 2 spells. After that I decided to go explore again and found a roguelike dungeon. 
This was way more efficient than the experienced gyms. So I did the basics. I went through every room and with these lights and the crossbow it was fairly easy. I ended up taking out a boss mob who dropped a nice chest plate and started making my way down this dungeon. Turns out it was mostly the boss mobs who give tons of levels since this one dude at the bottom gave me 8 levels. I got up to level 22 and scrapped these leggings and put them on my new chest plate. With this plus base over here, I was now steamrolling through the rest of this dungeon. I ran through the final floor as well, looting every chest and breaking the spawners, uh, which got me up to level 28. Day 76, I combined two boots together and scrapped another mending gear for the mending book. Then I used these experienced gems to get up to level 3 and created a great set of boots. I turned it into netherite as well. Since I had a bunch of mending gear ready to be scrapped, again, I was just lacking levels. Day 77 to day 78. Now that I was better equipped, I decided to explore some of these nether structures. I purled over to a fortress and immediately immediately started ripping through these blazes. Then I found the center room of the fortress as well and this place was stacked. It didn't have tons of ingots and random stuff but it did have a bunch of these epic level gear. From the top levels of the fortress I was able to fill most of my backpack with a bunch of gear that I could salvage for later. I picked up a wither skeleton skull here as well. With all this new loot I was able to get a ton of arcane sands which meant that I could put these epic affixes on my gear now. First I scrapped this armor for the mending book and that unlocked a few quests which gave me mending mixtures as well. I had also swapped to a diamond helmet since I picked up a pretty good one. With my backpack cleared I hopped into the nether once again to get more levels and went into the other direction where I ran into a bastion. All these piglins just piled up on the stairs so I was able to thin the herd out a lot. The loot in the chest were not that good but I did get a bunch of levels which made the trip 100% worth it. I used those levels to put protection 3 and mending on my helmet and then upgraded it to netherite. Now my leggings were the last piece that needed the upgrade. I ended the night by brewing fire resistance potions and and uh, completed the quest that asked for these rare materials. A 79 to 80 with these new potions I wanted to go much deeper into the nether and grab more gear. After a little bit of traveling I ended up in what looked like a piglin village. The only thing in my way was this boss piglin who did tons of damage and another dude who had the poison effect. I got rid of the poison guy but I had a lot of trouble defeating the boss. Eventually I got this guy underneath me and spammed my crossbow to take it out. The rest of the structure was alright aside from the gear in the chests which happened to be really good. With my paraglider I got into another piglin structure and this place also had a boss mob but this guy was easy to cheese. The chest in here sucked so I moved on and hopped into another fortress. Just like last time I got a bunch of gear from the center room but no nether eye just yet. As soon as my backpack got filled up I decided to come home. I crushed a bunch of mediocre gems first and salvaged a ton of my new gear. Then my enchantment books filled up so I had to make another gold chest. With all that done I reforged my boots then helmet and chest plate. I really didn't know what I picked but I was just looking for the socket slots and with those I put base crit damage, total damage and base current HP damage gems into my armor. I then swapped leggings and put critical burst 2 and critical strike 2 on my sword. To get more levels I went to grab another cow from the village since my old one died. Here I accidentally started an undead army raid and since there were tons of golem in the village I only had to help a little bit. I ended up just grabbing the cow and leaving anyway. Day 81 to day 82 I actually wanted to take on a dragon so I thought I was teleporting to the nearest location. Instead this was some random village and I ended up just exploring from here. The first thing I saw was a pillager structure that had ravagers up front. It also had some vindicators around as well. Regardless, I wiped this place out and freed this little baby villager from its cell. Sadly, I couldn't return it home. Later that night, I found a pillager tower. Now this place was perfect since it had bottles of enchanting which I needed to make an XP pump. I picked up a few ender pearls as well from this enderman and fought a ghost. The next morning I took out a boss pillager who dropped another really good crossbow. With most of this area explored I came back home to put a bunch of stuff away and then finally made the experience pump upgrade as well. To utilize this I needed to also make a tank upgrade as well. Since I had also upgraded my spell book I decided to make an extend time glyph and summoned another starbuncle. Day 83 I had looked at my cursed statue and figured out a way to get a bunch more hearts or stamina. I hopped back into the corrupted ogre's little area and re-summoned the guy. The first time it was a little hard since this guy was enchanted but I got rid of it fairly quickly anyway and picked up an essence. These guys continued to get easier and easier though. I basically ran through 6 of these ogres in under 4 minutes. 
Before coming back home, I destroyed six more. With these essences and emeralds, I picked up two heart containers. I wasn't done though, so I hopped in once again and took out another four. And this time, on the fifth one, another enchanted guy spawned. Now this guy was elite and had lively plus molten. Uh, this made it significantly harder to take out. I actually had to retreat once, but when I came back, I managed to take this ogre out as well. Before coming home once again, I grabbed six more essences. I got two more heart containers as well. On my last go, I went all out and tried to take out as many as possible. The total ended up being 12, and I put those two into stamina. At this point, I was ready to take on the fire giant, but I wanted to clear some more lower level bosses out first. So I teleported towards some of the first villages I saw and made my way towards my spawn. From here, I kept going until I saw a floating structure. The same waterfall I used to jump down, I was climbing up it now. When I got to the center of the structure, I met the boss. This guy was called the Magispeller. Turns out this guy was nothing special because I was able to wipe it out with no issue. It did drop something very useful though. These totems of banishment get rid of any vexes around me. Before leaving though, I decided to stick around and farm these uh these gigantic rats that spawned in the structure the big ones drop essences so i was basically watching out for those it ended up taking forever to just get six essences but as soon as i did i came home to grab another heart container to upgrade my last piece of armor i disenchanted this nice set of armor and put those enchants on my leggings then i used the mending mixture on it and turned it into netherite i also made sure to get a diamond heater shield and put smite 3 on my sword now it was judgment day i teleported over to the fire giant and put this knot into the hand that was raised out from the ground. From here, a massive monster dropped down and started throwing down its arm. Then, uh, just watch this massacre I put on. My critical hit triggered, I'm pretty sure, and I took out this boss in two hits. Luckily, there was a dragon in front of this boss, so I uh, went to challenge that too. I picked up the giant's eye and this cool necklace as well. From far away, I started firing arrows off on this dragon, but it just didn't want to engage. When it did, I was able to get a good amount of shots off, eventually dropping it to the ground. From here, it was toast, and I picked up the fire dragon heart, which I didn't know what to do with just yet. I then reported the fire giant's death to the guildmaster, who told me that I would have to craft or find the rest of these eyes. I decided to go dragon hunting again, and for some reason, these dragons just did not want to fight. They all just ran away. With that plan also failing, I went into the nether to find any one of the two eyes in here. I managed to get myself inside of a pretty large bastion and then got to the center of it. After picking up tons of gold blocks, I looted the chest and got the corrupt eye. Day 88 to day 90, while putting a bunch of stuff away, I noticed I had 8 whole eyes of ender in here. Then I scrapped this critical resistance book, but I didn't have enough levels to put it on yet. That night, just like I promised, I challenged the night rover once again, but for real this time. Well, it was real for a little bit, and this night rover actually seemed like it was going to be easy, but it did its special attack and I was actually in trouble. <laughs> Once again, this iron golem saved me, so it seems like this guy is still the hardest boss by far since I couldn't even beat him properly. During the night, I raided an orc camp and fought these enchanted orcs there as well. Past that, I activated a waystone inside of a village and found a weird structure. This house had some mob heads, so I snatched up two wither skeleton skulls. I also decimated Barako the Sun Chief once more and decided to speed through this roguelike dungeon. I basically ran through each floor trying to get each of these spawners to break by itself since there's a limit. I got myself all the way down to the bottom with 42 whole levels. I put a bunch of levels into the backpack so it could consistently repair my gear. When I came home, I prepared for a wither battle by grabbing all the skulls and getting some soul sand as well. The last few things I decided to do was reforge a netherite sword with an epic affix and for this I had to turn the GUI up so I could see what it was saying. At this point my leggings also had mending too so there were no excuses. I teleported to that one blacksmith's house I was at a long time ago and summoned this boss. So the wither actually was not that challenging it was just super tedious. This guy kept healing and summoning his little minions. All I needed was a little window to do melee damage and I would just destroy this guy. As I got the wither's health down by 25%, an undead army just happened to spawn randomly. So now things got a little more complicated. Just to tell you how annoying this wither fight was, it would only do its melee attack when I turned around. So it would go back to flying once I got back up. This whole night, I would try to get the wither's health down and as soon as it got down to around 60%, it would spawn its minions and then heal again. All that destruction got the undead army up to wave 4 at least. As the morning hit, I finally managed to do enough damage to get this wither to the melee stage. And here, as soon as I got a good hit, I managed to take it out super easily. Turns out I released the world of the wither spirit as well. My rewards were of course another star, 
two wither eyes, and a wither treasure bag, which gave me a netherite scale. Before coming home, I cleared out the rest of the undead army and hopped back to clear out all this junk. I now had nine unique eyes. Day 92 to day 93, I really wanted to get this nether eye, so I looked through these fortresses once again. I basically cleared this entire fortress out, which happened to be the first one that I found, but I still couldn't see any chests here. After traveling around a bit more, I ended up in another fortress and got unlucky again. I did, however, grab even more of these epic level gears. Past that, I ended up in another treasure bastion where I got more gold and an extra corrupt eye. This nether trip was worth it though because eventually I did find a nether eye in one of the fortress chests. Now I have 10 in total. Before that night ended, I reforged my shield. Day 94 to day 96, there were still like two bosses I wanted to take out in the nether and I was basically looking around for the whole few days in here. I finally ended up finding something new and this place was called the Forbidden Castle. On the top floor, there were a bunch of piglins who were pretty strong. I actually ended up taking out one of these guys and it dropped an almost broken elytra. I looked around for a little bit more, but this elite piglin scared me, so I had to come back home. The first thing I did was scrap a mending book and put that on my elytra wing. Then as I put it on, it was being repaired from my backpack. To travel around, I used a lot of my gunpowder and paper to make fireworks. From there, I went out towards this ice maze biome to look for a specific shipwreck structure. I was in this biome forever and could not find that one thing that I needed that dropped the shell horn. Instead, I did find a pillager castle, which I marked down for now. Day 97 to day 100. At this point, I didn't have enough time to grab the rest of the eyes, so I decided to take down a mega battle tower. This one might have been bugged a little, so some of the rooms just didn't have spawners in them. Still, it managed to take me a decent amount of time to go through each room and grab the land monolith keys. With the three keys I got, I went to the top and plugged it into this little thing. After a cool noise and a lightning strike, a tower golem summoned, and this guy was pretty easy to take out. It only took a few hits. I grabbed the chest from the top and flew away as this tower started to collapse. Since this place was next to the Sentinel Knight, I wanted to challenge that guy as well. I summoned the boss once more, and as it was warming up, I got his health down 25%. Then while dodging around, I managed to have the knight's health. But then there was this weird brain sucker mob which slowed me down. I dodged around for the rest of the fight, and after a little bit, I managed to take the knight out once again. From here, I came home to put some new enchants on my gear. They were both uh, critical resistance too, and I put that on my helmet and chest plate. I socketed an armor gem into my chest plate and grabbed some materials to fight another boss. This boss was the Wild and Chimera, and I needed it to make an Archmage spellbook. So I made a tablet of Summon Wilden and went over to where I fought the Wither to summon this guy. I put the tablet on the Brazier and threw in a Wilden Wing, Horn, and Spike. That summoned the Chimera, and I was able to take the first stage of this boss out really quickly. The second stage made it so that this dude could fly and dive straight at me. It also set itself on fire, so I used that to my advantage and did tons of damage. This stage was also handled out. After that, and it went to stage 3. This time, the Chimera was on the ground for a good while, which made it so much easier to do tons of damage. It also summoned other Wildens as well. Once I got his health low enough, it flew up. I managed to dodge that attack and took this guy out, picking up the Wilden tribute I needed. Now I needed a Totem of Undying, so I went towards the Pillager Castle. In here, I fought through tons of Vindicators and survived a barrage of arrows from these Pillagers. With those guys taken care of, I equipped the Totem of Banishment to get rid of the Vexes, and went to look for evokers. As soon as I got the totem, I came home and used a nether star to craft the Archmage spellbook. With that done, I ended my 100 days. I survived 100 days in a brand new mod pack. Fantasy MC adds brand new Souls-like bosses into the game, each with their own story. It also changes Minecraft's combat system and adds brand new skills. In these 100 days, I want to defeat those major bosses scattered around the world and eventually take out the Ender Dragon, which requires 12 unique eyes. Day 1, before stepping into this brand new world, I had to make a choice on my origin. I chose to be a human with the Arcana skill and the Charger feet. With that choice being made, I spawned in front of a village with a ton of books. I learned how to roll and also read this quest book as well. These quest rewards gave me a leather cap, torches, and bread. I then activated the waystone in front of me and started exploring this village. I grabbed some hay bales to breed cows, but my farming level was too low. I checked the menu to see how to level up, and while I was there, I used these two skill points on health and defense. Deeper into the village, I found a crafting table where I made tons of bread, and then I chopped this acacia log down to craft a pickaxe. From there, I started exploring the surrounding area. As I ate this bread, I got seven levels and then another five levels from this quest reward. Next, I found this structure which had gold blocks. I couldn't mind that yet, so I moved on and ended up next to a boss structure, I think. Well, they gave me mining fatigue, so I just kept moving forward. 
Eventually, I was next to a pyramid which was split in half and connected to a random building. This place was filled with husks and witches. The husks were pretty easy, but the poison from the witch had me running away a lot. It took until the night for me to clear out these mobs, and when that was done, I hopped into that building. This was some sort of concrete factory, so the chest in here sucked. After surviving a spider attack, I mined a bunch of cobblestone and made stone tools. This also unlocked a few more quest rewards. I managed to pick up an almost broken leather chest plate. Inside one of these corners, I found an efficiency 2 iron pickaxe, and with these new tools, I hopped up on this broken pyramid and found an enchantment table. I picked that thing up, knocked the skeleton off the pyramid and uh, stayed here till the morning. Once the sun rose, I moved forward and found this random chest which had some goodies. I threw some of the books that seemed useless into the chest and for some reason after equipping the leggings, I got two absorption hearts. This made me feel pretty brave so I decided to take on this pyramid. I was able to block one side of this structure and decided to explore the top first. As I made my way up, I broke a spawner and had to take down a skeleton. This gave me another skill point. This chest was also pretty good. I got some iron ingots, a charm of sinking, and an old eye. The next chest had more ingots and a helmet. With all that iron, I decided to make a chest plate and some boots. I was way more confident now. There was nothing too good in the other chest, so on the way back down, I put one point into strength as well. I had enough iron to make a new sword and started going to where the skeletons were. So on the map, I could see that there were tons of mobs here, so I was very careful and slowly inched my way into the center. I got another skill point which I put into health and uh, picked up a bow. From this blocked off little area I was able to take out a ton of skeletons. It was enough for another skill point. Then I decided to use the bow as well and for the next two skill points I decided to uh, up my defense and then put another point into health once again. Once most of the skeletons were cleared I ran in to break one spawner and that gave me tons of levels. I was able to put another point into mining and uh, one in defense as well. With that done I broke all the spawners and I was getting an absolute ton of levels. These two went into agility and trade. Now now I could actually uh, trade with these villagers. With that structure cleared, I disarmed the TNT trap, grabbed all the gold blocks, and looted the chest. From there, I made my way back towards the village to sleep. The first thing I did once I woke up was uh, check the villagers' trades. There was nothing good at all, so I moved on. I collected these sugar cane and found the chest as well. When I tried to open it, it started attacking me. These guys were called mimics, and I uh, actually had to eat two golden apples to fight this dude. Once I took it out, I saw the exact same chest again, but this one wasn't a trick. The loot in here was pretty good. Moving forward, I found this vindicator, shack and I uh, broke the window to safely get rid of this dude. That gave me another skill point which I put into defense. The loot in here sucked so I moved on. These next structures were a little bit better. In the first one I grabbed some emeralds and in this uh, ruined nether portal I got some obsidian. As I kept moving on though, I found a village and this place was super important since I needed to observe a guard to start the story mode quests. One of these quest rewards was a treasure chest which just popped out a ton of loot. My next quests were to observe some villagers and these cultists. With that being done, I crafted the rest of this iron armor I needed to complete one of the final two quests for this chapter. A 4 to 5 from the village, I moved on and found this hot air balloon looking thing. I started building up towards it. This chest in here were pretty good and I picked up this uh, vampire glove thing which absorbs health. Then another iron pickaxe, a lost eye, and in the other chest I got a life changing artifact. These were called Aqua Dashers, and they allowed you to walk on water only when you're sprinting. There were also a few golden apples in those chests, and before I hopped down, I put another point into my health. To complete this last quest, I killed some cows and submitted the raw beef. I couldn't get any mutton from these sheep though. At least I had a bunch of leather from the cows. As the day progressed, I found a farmhouse and this place was packed with chests. I ended up getting two diamonds from the front two chests and then finally had enough to make a frayed backpack. From then, I also had just enough to craft an iron backpack and then more than enough to make a gold backpack. This cleared my inventory up and one of the quest rewards gave me a cross necklace. I swapped that for my uh, charm of sinking instead. With those diamonds, I could now access the mine cells dimension and I got a treasure chest as a reward. I then made a sleeping bag and quickly slept. I went out to explore the next morning and stumbled into an underground village. Now this place didn't have really good loot. I ended up only getting like food and emeralds. I got out of there and kept moving forward. Here I found a tower structure. These chests were already pretty good just from the bottom floor. I picked up some arrows and raw meat and was able to submit them as I climbed this place. On the top floor, I got a waystone, one golden apple, and a piercing two crossbow. There was also another ruined portal here where I picked up a mending hoe and finally saw a mine cells portal. The village I ended up being on was pretty massive, so I started taking out as much sheep as I could here for their mutton. I only ended up getting one and decided to start looting the houses instead. I ended up finding these boots of swiftness and uh, flaming quiver artifacts which would help me a lot later. Finally, I ended up having enough mutton to submit and uh, found this uh, packed villager structure. Inside of these chests, I got this thing called an antidote vessel which reduces the duration of negative effects. Before the night ended, I found what looked like a dungeon. 
I slowly hopped into this structure and started breaking some of the blocks looking for traps. One of the sides led to a dungeon-like area. On the minimap, it looked crazy. I built down while staying a safe distance away and started taking out as many mobs as I could in here. This already started giving me skill points and I now had 6 points on my health. Since this area was a little bit safer now, I started dropping down and then had to retreat pretty quickly since these cave spiders almost ruined my world. I picked up a soul star from one of the zombies and on my second go around, I lit up even more of the place. I also completed a quest that required 20 zombie kills. Then I put another point into strength and had my hardest fight yet. This killer bunny. So this little guy had a hundred hearts and moved extremely fast. It also hit me through this block for some reason. This fight was super scary but once this bunny was trapped in the corner, I managed to take most of his health down. Eventually I couldn't find this bunny anymore so I broke the spawner and made my way out of here. I had seven points in my health now and also a decent amount of loot. For the rest of this night I made an iron knife and eight bowls. Once those were submitted I only needed raw chicken. Luckily the knife almost guaranteed the meat to drop so I was able to complete the final quest. This got me to chapter 2 and rewarded me with a ton of food. I managed to get my strength up to 4 as well and hopped into this mine cells dimension to see what was up. Day 7, this place happened to be like a giant prison and the mobs were already spawning pretty fast and one of these guys did a lot of damage to me. I was being extremely careful and trying to block these mobs off as much as possible. This projectile firing guy still managed to do an insane amount of damage though. Eventually I took out all the variants of mobs from this part of the dimension and in the quest rewards I managed to get a crystal heart. I replaced the antidote vessel and now had even more hearts to work with. My armor ended up breaking so I had to retreat and while doing that I managed to level up my defense once more. I came to the overworld and opened this chest in front of me. Here I got 12 raw iron ore which I started smelting. I remade a bunch of iron armor and then started chopping down trees so that I could reach this uh, floating village. I underestimated how high this place was so I threw an ender pearl which missed and I was back on the ground so I just kept moving forward. Over the hill I noticed a house right next to the waters. When I hopped in this place it was pretty empty and only had like a few chests which were too good. I picked up the brewing stand to see if there was a quest reward and then went upstairs to clear this place out. With that done, I grabbed the chest from below and decided that this was going to be my new home. I tried to separate the items and then I placed this waystone down below. With that being done, I lit up the surrounding areas and chopped down some logs. That was all so I could craft a ton of bookshelves and set up an enchantment table properly. Day 8 to 9, I enchanted my chest plate which was pretty nice and then did the same for the boots and this glaive. As soon as that was done, I noticed this little ravine like area next to my house and uh, mined this ore that I hadn't seen yet. This ended up leading me down to a cave opening. I started lighting up the area as much as I could and moved deeper and deeper in. I fought some skeleton and mined these uh, mythical metal ores as well. At this point I had no clue just how strong some of these metals were. I also mined my first iron vein and that gave me a quest reward. I grabbed all these cool looking ores and then came home to smelt them. While that was happening I made a grindstone and tried to disenchant things but that didn't work. Instead I went out to fight mobs and noticed a tower structure close to me. I looted all the chests and it turns out I had opened a hundred chests now which gave me a statue. The chest at the top had a waystone and with that done I came home to make some charcoal. In the morning I fought off this giant orc and then made a ton of torches with those charcoal that I was making. I tried exploring the cave again but an enchanted mob pulled me down from a really far distance. I thought my world was over at this point. Luckily I survived so I kept my distance. I also kept using my water bucket as well to survive the throwing. This guy was still too much so I had to hide for a bit. Once the mobs despawned I was back at it in this area and I met a goblin trader and also picked up some lapis ore. I ended up with three skill points so I put one on health, one on strength and the last one on mining. Then I grabbed Moonstone Ore which happened to be the first quest for chapter 2 and started making my way down towards diamonds. I didn't find any diamonds but I did get more Moonstone and as I delved deeper into the cave I found two little dungeons. I broke one of the spawners and made my way towards the other one. I had to clear the mobs here first though. The only thing good in the chest were these paladin leggings. On the way out I used this goblin to get more iron ingots and uh, once I was back to the surface I fought a bunch of pillagers and even ended up getting the bad omen effect from the tower. I cleared it and made my way back home. As soon as I got back I put another skill point into my health which was at 10 whole points now. Then I put a bunch of items away and started enchanting my gear. I got fortune 3 on my pickaxe and put any enchants that said protection or unbreaking on the rest of my armor. Before the days ended I got a sharpness 3 iron sword sword and another pretty good pickaxe. Now that I had some enchants I wanted to explore more of the mine cells dimension. I made my way into the portal and jumped in. At first I started lighting the area up but I realized that's pointless. Just with my gear now I was steamrolling through these guys. Each chest in this dimension was pretty much the same though. They had paper, strings, some ingots and if you're lucky you could get diamonds or enchanted books. 
I managed to get diamonds in one of the chests and put a skill point into archery, which triggered a hidden quest. Apparently, all of my stats got a plus two bonus now. Moving through this dimension some more, I picked up a balanced blade, which had sharpness and fire aspect. To help with the loot, I put a skill point into luck. The loot started getting better as I started going down these chains as well. Eventually, I had four diamonds, which I used to make a bejeweled backpack. All of my armor at this point was heavily damaged and I had to replace them. I also managed to get to level 30 and had like nine points on my strength now. This is when I started raking in diamonds. I already had 10, but at this point, my bag was filled with enchantment books. I had to take time to recraft even more gear, but after that, I found another portal, which brought me to an area called the Promenade of the Condemned. In here, I killed a mutated bat and explored around a little. Then I took out another mob in here called the Runner, and after taking the quest reward, I placed the waystone down. I ended up calling it quits for now. So in total, I had 12 diamonds, and after I put all the items away, I made an anvil just in case. I also decided to move the books to a separate chest and then went out to start a farm. I placed some fences down in this circle shape and lured cows in. I wasn't able to breed them just yet, so on the other side of this little pond, I made a small wheat farm as well. Then I used some diamonds to make a sword, and when I enchanted it, I got super lucky. The sword has sharpness 4, sweeping edge 3, unbreaking 3, and this thing called radiance 3. With that done, I used up like 10 levels to re-enchant some armor. To complete another quest, I used these moonstones to make a moonstone compass. This thing always points towards the bosses. At this point, I had no clue about that, so I decided to follow it anyway, just to see. Along the journey, I ransacked this house for all their loot and made sure to grab a bunch of coal too. I also found this large tower, which I thought had a waystone at the top, but it was only a paraglider. Eventually, this paraglider just ends up being essential. At first, I had no clue how to use it and I almost died. As I kept moving forward, I found these buried treasure maps and saw that the radius enchant worked for these mobs too, so a lot of these mobs started uh, regening as I was attacking them. I ran through another tower structure which had a waystone and I kept pushing forward. In the morning I found a really cool dungeon though. Almost immediately I got some skill points and got my farming up to level 3. After taking out all the spiders and breaking the spawners, I got another skill point and I was able to get my strength up to level 10. Deeper into the cave I completed a quest that required me to kill 50 zombies and was able to put another level into my health as well. With that place cleared out, I followed this compass till the night uh, when a blood moon rose. Luckily, I was at my destination, so I put a waystone down, labeled it boss, and came home. I was finally able to breed my cows as well, and before the night ended, I made like five more golden apples. Day 15, I used up half of my diamonds to make a chest plate and then enchanted it. The enchants weren't too good, but once I combined it with some books, it actually ended up looking pretty decent. I then decided to go towards the boss again and just explored some of the areas surrounding the place. I found a village, which had some decent chests, but more importantly, I actually learned how to use the paraglider properly. With that, I made my way across the river and saw this giant tower. It took a bit to climb, but once I made it to the top, I had to fight a witch and then survive an attack from an evoker. It ended up not being too hard and I defeated them both. I picked up a totem and some diamond gear from the chests. Plus, I had another skill point. I put that one on my defense. Past that structure, I glided over to this villager structure and got attacked by a ton of mobs. Phantoms also started spawning in as well. I picked up this thing called a ghost cloak from one of the chests and the quest reward gave me another treasure chest. I ended up fighting phantoms the whole night. Once the sun came out, I found another mind cells portal and before hopping in, I put another point into my defense. This time with my new sword and diamond chest plate, I was able to roll through this place. I picked up diamonds and immediately started going lower and lower. I ended up leveling my stamina up this time and already had like 9 diamonds. There was also so much paper and string in each chest, I had to stop grabbing them. My stamina was up to level 2 now as well. Every room was basically the same here. I cleared everything out and looted the same items over and over again. My luck also ended up getting up to level 3 at this time, and I was back on the final few floors. Since I had so many diamonds, I decided to make full diamond armor. With that done, I made my way back out of this place, and I now had only 4 diamonds left over, so I started making my way back home. Along the way, I stumbled into a village with the waystone, and then checked out this tower again. Once I looted the chest up top, I found a pillager structure, which happened to be empty, and inside one of those chests, there was a scarf of invisibility. I grabbed that and made my way towards a ruined portal, which had an obsidian skull in the chest. I equipped that over my crystal heart, which slashed like 4 hearts away from me, and then came home. Day 18, I enchanted my diamond gear, and then looked at all my artifacts. I now had this thing called a pocket piston as well. After combining a few books with my armor, I decided to take on the boss. But first, I had to go back and grab my crystal heart. With that done, I hopped into this structure and started attacking this monster. I only managed to do like 6 damage per hit. One slam from this dude almost ruined me though. I kept attacking while circling and managed to get this guy's health down to around 300 
300 hearts. It ended up uh, giving me like weakness or something since I barely started doing damage after a little bit. At this point, I was running away and hiding just to heal. I managed to grab enough blocks though and then got out of there. I was not prepared to beat this monster. So at this point, my armor was kind of toast. So I used another chunk of diamonds to repair them. To stock up on more loot and stuff, I had to go to the nether. I decided to build a portal right next to my house. Inside the nether, I grabbed some quest rewards and put the obsidian belt on. With that done, I started looking for any structures. It took me a bit of flying around to find some items first, uh, like these nether reeds. But I did, however, stumble into something terrifying. This was a boss of mass destruction's lair right in front of me, and I really didn't want to wake this guy up at all. Instead, I climbed up this nether tower next to it, which had some blazes, we didn't drop anything, but I did get a waystone from up top. I felt a lot safer with that and continued my journey. I finally found a fortress and in the first chest here I got a nether eye. I took out a few blazes and still had zero blaze rods but I did get another skill point which I put into my health and got it to level 16. I then made my way towards the center of this fortress where I looted everything I possibly could. These chests suck though and they only gave me like a few diamonds. However, I ended up getting a quest reward for taking out 10 wither skeletons and my reward for that was a wither skeleton skull and some soul sand. From there, I decided to explore some more and I saw this boss structure. Now this one actually needs a nether star as a sacrifice and I really didn't want to fight it right now. Further along in the journey, I ended up in another fortress and here I finally got some blaze rods. Plus my health skill was up to level 17 now. One of the quest rewards gave me a fire gauntlet, but uh, that was actually worse than the vampire gauntlet I already had. This time I took the stairs all the way down to the bottom floor and I was on Y equals 13. That meant this area was good to mine ancient debris in. So I dug into the wall and dug around these chunk borders for a bit. I managed to clear a large area but I ended up getting nothing so I set a waystone down and came home. I used my levels to get a nice diamond pickaxe and then combined it with a fortune 2 book. Day 21 I made another shield, re-equipped a crystal heart and started putting all the stuff away. Once that was done I repaired as much of my armor as I could and, and went out to look for gravel. I butchered some cows while I was there and since that was cooking I started digging gravel for flint. With that done I made an abyss watcher which is like a one use waystone. This meant I could explore for a while and I picked a direction to move on to. I ended up in a jungle village area that was connected to a temple. The temple was way more interesting so I hopped right in. I defeated the mobs in the corridors and went into the room behind them. Now these rooms had all right chests but the ores were some of the best. I grabbed the diamonds and redstones for now. On the way back I broke some spawners and saw some water elevators. Before going down though I explored the rest of this floor and went into another corridor which had like four spawners. Behind it was the same room which meant I got more diamonds. The last room was a library on this floor so I cleared it out and took the elevator down. On this floor I immediately broke two spawners and got a skill point which I used one on smithing. This was because I needed 20 smithing to get netherite armor. The other rooms on this floor were the same except for one and this one ended up being a TNT trap one. I tried to outsmart it by placing blocks down but I slipped and fell into the lava underneath. Also a TNT dropped on me but I was very lucky that I had golden apples. I managed to build above the lava pool and went back up top. The chest room in the back sucked so this room was definitely not worth it. I got out of this temple in the morning and kept moving forward. Over the hill I saw that one uh, killer bunny structure again and decided to challenge this place once more. I hopped into the lower dungeon part of this structure and was kind of scared by this uh, creeper explosion. Turns out I was fine though since I had that regen thing on my sword. I broke the spawner in the center and when I started looking around this place I noticed that there was a spider spawner all the way hidden in the back. With that cleared I grabbed the chest and got a few more diamonds. Then with the skill point I was able to max out my health and then I uh, managed to unlock some quest rewards which increased my health by one. It also gave me two more skill points which I put on strength and defense. By the time I was out again it was nighttime, and I quickly made my way over to this tower structure and grabbed the waystone. From there I flew over to another relatively empty pillager structure where I got a golem kit and these artifacts are by far the best. Inside of this structure there was also this uh, superstitious hat which applies an extra level of looting towards killed enemies. I put that on and managed to get a corrupted eye as well. That wasn't all though and on the top floor I picked up this thing called everlasting beef which I could cook to get uh, eternal steak. From there I flew around this mesa biome and ended up in another desert as well. I decided to clear a pyramid while I was here to get a bunch of levels and gold. I was able to put two more points in a strength and defense. From there I ended up in another village where I activated the waystone and then finally came home. At home I placed down a smithing table and then moved a ton of items into the chests. I then noticed I had a titan shrouds chest plate which I ended up spending a ton of levels on. I also ended up using more levels on repairing my diamond armor after that. After sleeping the night before I decided to go back to the nether and mine for ancient debris. I was back at that same place I cleared out and just started expanding the area. I used an iron pickaxe to clear out the area first and then a diamond one to get my first two pieces of ancient debris. I got a quest reward for the ancient debris and another one for meeting this nether goblin. This 
actually ended up taking a pretty long time. I was clearing out huge chunks of the nether and only managed to get like this Midas gold ore instead. Then I ended up moving away from this area and went up two levels. This got me some more ancient debris immediately and uh, ended up getting some extra netherite scrap. For a good chunk of the days, I did the same mind numbing task. I cleared out huge chunks just to get a few pieces of debris here and there. In total, that area got me 10 more, which I obviously used to trade with a goblin. I now had 20 pieces of scrap. I let the two pieces of ancient debris cook and uh, the Midas gold cook as well and I was able to make five netherite ingots. This is when I figured out I needed uh, smithing level 20 so I just had to tough it out with diamond armor for now. I did however finally get the turtle steak which was a lifesaver and also this Midas gold thing could be used to make chests that were like three times bigger. For now with the ones I had I could only replace two double chests so I had to go back to the nether and uh, get 38 more ores. This meant I was able to replace all the main chests in the front with these new massive ones. Day 26 to day 28 I used some of these new weird nether ores to make this sword but after rolling a bunch of enchants I didn't get anything good. I still kept it in my backpack though and decided to explore. I started from the first village I spawned in and tried to get into that boss chamber I remember from like day one. Since it was blocked off a little and the mining fatigue hit, I just couldn't get through. Eventually, I managed to dig through it and I made my way inside, but there was nothing there. I don't know if it glitched or maybe I just didn't have the right items. There was also nothing else in here, so I just kept moving forward. It took until the night for me to find another structure and it ended up just being a village. This place did have a rune crafting station and some runes though, which I grabbed. It was also in front of a pyramid, so I decided to clear that out to get some quick XP. I ran through this place and got my spithing up to level 4. Then I managed to get inside of this uh, desert temple, which was underwater. I broke a block and water started pouring in. At first I thought I was safe because uh, one explosion did nothing. Then the entire structure managed to just evaporate. As it was turning into morning, I found one of those large towers again and started climbing. This place had a few illagers, and when I got to the top, I managed to push the evokers off as well. The chest in the middle was alright. With all that done, I ended up on a river where I saw an underwater chest and inside of it was a suspicious key. I looted everything I wanted as well and then decided to use this key on the chest, turning it into a mimic. This mimic didn't drop anything too good so I just kept moving some more. I ended up finding another mine cells portal and I didn't find another structure until the night. Luckily it was a stacked dungeon so I remade an abyss watcher just in case and I went down the stairs. Now the first floor was absolutely packed to the brim with mobs but with the regen on my sword I took care of it pretty easily without losing much health. Once they were cleared I opened up every single one of these trap doors to break the spawners and loot the chests. This allowed me to level up my smithing to 6. I then went down to the bottom floor and this place was packed as well but I almost died so I had to retreat. I then collected a quest reward for killing 5 witches which gave me 10 levels. After healing I went back down to clear out a few of these rooms. Each of them had spawners which helped me a lot with levels. While fighting these guys I completed even more quests, uh, most notably this 125 zombies killed one. So with this entire place cleared I was up to level 53 and got my smithing to level 8 plus I put an extra point into strength as well. To end these days I rolled some enchants once again and got nothing good on the sword. Then I had to repair my armor once again. I ended up combining two helmets as well. Day 29 to 30 I had a huge mess up but my footage for day 29 was corrupted because this mod pack crashes way too much. It basically just restarted my computer. Yeah, I went mining looking for this thing called verglass which I got like six of and it was pretty rare. And while doing that mining most of my enchanted armor was broken. I did get this sword called sting which took two verglass to craft and it was very OP. I also managed to get sharpness 4 on it as well using my books. I really hadn't tested the sword yet so I went out to look for mobs. I found some really cool looking structures but none of them had the mobs that I wanted. I was out until the night and I noticed a floating island so I decided to climb up this place and saw that there was only one villager here who was a librarian. I set a waystone down and then went back to grab some paper and books. I was trying to roll the trades this dude had but he just wasn't budging. So instead I trapped the dude in the house and then started advancing all the trades as much as I could. I got out of the expert level but the trades still weren't getting any better. I quickly came home though to put these books away and then I slept back at that villager's house. Day 31 to day 32 from this floating island I paraglided down towards the plains and moved forward. I ended up finding another one of those villager structures down here and looked through some of the trades here as well. Behind that structure was an actual village so I grabbed the waystone from there and put it between these two structures just for convenience. I quickly traveled home to grab a ton of emeralds and went back to advanced and armorers trades. I got this guy to start selling diamond gear and then I hopped into another one of those killer bunny structures. I hopped into the main area and was able to light up most of it. Then with my new sword I destroyed the zombies. The only thing that scared me was the killer bunny who was still very challenging. Once I got rid of the little guy I noticed it dropped like 8 diamonds. Plus it turns out that there's 3 little rooms in the structure. There's a room for a skeleton spawner, another one for the spider and of course the main zombie one. Breaking all of them I ended up getting another skill point which got my smithing up to level 11. The whole night I was terrorizing mobs and had to swap 
my chest plate and leggings too. Once the morning hit, I found myself in a floating village which looked more like an end city. In here I grabbed as many chests as I could and I even broke some of the ores laying around. This gave me a quest reward and with all that done I decided to come back home. At home I organized all my loot and used some levels on my boots and leggings. For the rest of day 32 I decided to go exploring once again but in a direction I hadn't been in. During this I found a pretty good structure which had a chest in the middle. Here I picked up a cool looking sword and a snorkel. This snorkel is super useful. The whole night I was basically running on water and when I did end up on land I fought some cool mobs like this illusioner. It wasn't until the next morning that I found a good structure and after grabbing the waystone from this tower I also ended up in a village as well. Inside of one of these guys houses I got a villager hat artifact which ended up giving me massive discounts on trades. There was a librarian in this village who I leveled up and uh, they sold fortune 3 books. This was my sign to max their trades out. I found another one of those towers which have waystones and this place happened to look like a lighthouse. All this traveling ended up leveling my stamina up through a secret quest and I had plus 3 on that stat now. During the night I wanted to take on this pirate ship and in front of it was another structure that I had to clear first. With that done I went to clear out the spawners in front of the ship and uh, this is when a bunch of illagers started jumping down. There was only one dude who actually ended up being a boss mob type so I focused my attack on that one. Very slowly I took care of that guy and made my way back onto the ship. I ended up pearled up and used my golem kit to help. Turns out they were all hiding under the deck so I just wasted some durability for the golem. I defeated all of them, cleared the spawner and then mined some of the ores down here. The chest sucked but I was able to get up to level 13 on smithing which made it worth it. That was basically it for the ship so I tried to find some land. Day 34 to day 35 after exploring the land some more I found another one of my favorite structures again. I set down a waystone and I started defeating all the mobs on the first floor of this structure. Now this place is very nice because of the spawners and breaking those are the best way to get skill points. With the first First floor cleared my armor was now in bad shape but I kept pushing along. On the bottom floor I fought the skeleton who ended up having like 4 different enchanted abilities. Once I took care of that dude I got another skill point and then with the main hall cleared I checked out the rooms. Now these rooms are super concentrated with mobs so I ended up taking some serious damage. Plus the spawners are in here so I did end up getting a bunch of XP as a reward. I also picked up a quiver which allowed me to store all my arrows in one place and I now had 16 levels on my smithing and I was super close to unlocking the netherite gear. The final room in this structure had a wither skeleton skull so I grabbed that and noticed my backpack was getting close to being filled. I surfaced back up to grab the waystone and ended up finding another one of those large villager structures. This time I unlocked the quest reward for interacting with villagers a hundred times. I tried to level up the librarian and decided to uh, name this place on the waystone. I renamed another similar structure as well and decided to come home to put all this new stuff away. Since I was getting really close to smithing level 30, I enchanted some more gear and went to explore the mine cells dimension again. Every single mob in here was pretty easy to take out now and I ended up finding this elevator which brought me down to another structure. I started slowly making my way through this brand new area and I was super surprised at all the good loot in the chests. Now there are also these uh, protectors here as well who end up healing other mobs but luckily the chests in here have way more diamonds than anywhere else. I started going through each room and got my smithing up to level 17. From the first floor alone I was able to rack up 10 diamonds and 2 skill points. Then as I started getting deeper and deeper into the structure the chest started getting better. The mobs also just stayed the same so the only issue for me is, uh, started becoming my armor durability. Floor 2 had more enchanted books which was nice but I didn't get any skill points from there. I ended up making my way down to floor 3 and after getting to the end I had to fight one last mob. Now this guy was super easy and left all of the very valuable ore alone. In this final room I managed to pick up 10 diamonds and a ton of emeralds. The chest in here also had a vine rune which I had no clue how to use just yet. I then took this portal back up to the surface and started exploring more of the structures up here. There were alright chests here but uh, more importantly I was able to get my smithing up to level 18. So I stuck around for a little bit longer and found another one of those elevators leading down. At this point I already had around 30 diamonds. This time I tried to waste no time and went through the structure as fast as I could. It wasn't too hard but I did have to craft some diamond armor again. Eventually I made it back to the final floor and I was able to loot all the goodies down here. I ended up with 46 diamonds and 2 and a half stacks of emeralds. With that done I came home to put everything away. Day 30 to day 39 since I was really close to smithing level 20 I wanted to go through another mine cells portal real quick. While I was making my way towards that I mined some coal and ended up getting a skill point from that. I then fought some illagers and after taking those guys out I only needed one more skill point. Lucky for me I found a mine cells portal set a waystone down in front of it and then hopped in. Since I was even stronger now this task kind of became mind numbing. I was basically running through each room grabbing all the chests and defeating like 2 or 3 mobs. I did that for a very long time basically all of day 38. This finally got me the last skill point I needed for smithing on one of the last floors. I kept chugging along though and on day 39 I made my way through the promenade from this portal. I stayed around this area for a little bit collecting the loot and eventually decided to come home. The first area the prison quarters always gives you tons of enchanted books so I had almost filled up a large Midas chest now. 
With my inventory cleared, I made a brand new set of diamond armor and I was able to upgrade it to netherite. I managed to get some okay enchants on the boots, but the helmet and chest plate were really good. Both of them had protection 4. For the leggings though, I didn't have enough levels to properly enchant it. I started using these books instead and got protection 3 on my leggings, plus soul devourer 2 on my sword. Since I had some spare netherite, I also upgraded my pickaxe as well. I felt much safer and ready to take the boss on again. Day 40, I hopped back towards the old champion and luckily, its health was pretty much still the same. I ate a golden apple, jumped down, and then summoned a golem to help me. From here I was able to do tons of damage on this guy. My golem would attack this guy from the back and I would attack it from the other side. Once the champion was gone the frenzied shade spawned. Now this guy was much harder to fight. I had to actually eat my enchanted golden apples and uh, predict when it would sweep in. With the help of my golem though I actually managed to take the frenzied shade out. And for some reason a little part of the game glitched and one of the quests that asked me to take out the old champion didn't track properly. So the moonstone compass just wouldn't work anymore. Anyways, my netherite armor was in real bad shape because of this boss battle, but I did get my quest rewards. With this Lord Soul, I could also get a really good weapon. Before selecting that though, I put skill points into my defense and strength. I then came home and submitted the items I needed to get this cage. And I knew exactly which sword to get. I wanted the Moonlight Sword. Just for the name alone, but I soon figured out that that was the best choice anyway. Turns out you could swap this sword to a two-hand variant and a one-hand variant anytime you want. Plus, it has a special charge attack. While looking at the quest, I saw that the the old champion boss didn't track and again it was super annoying. Before the day ended I favorited all the unique eyes I would need and I then made a witch's eye. The next morning I realized I needed armor replacements really badly so I smelted some of these mythic metal ores. Then I grabbed my snorkel and tried to find a cave underneath the waters. I ended up breaking into one and stripped it clean of the resources. Then using my mini map I was able to break into the other caves from here. The best ores I found were these orc halcom ingots. I also found some runite and diamonds as well and then I found this really weird thing called unobtainium. Once that was and I picked up more Oracalcum and uh, found a very small lush cave. I fought two mimics here. One gave me flippers and the other one gave me uh, power gloves. The power gloves were amazing. I put a level into mining, but I think that might have been a waste. Deeper into the cave, I defeated a copycat zombie whose quest reward was a treasure chest. With that done, I made an abyss watcher and then came home to smelt everything. I ended up getting a really good amount of these ingots. Since my netherite armor was almost completely gone, I swapped this Oracalcum gear instead. It looked cool and I was able to roll some enchants on it until I like completely ran out of levels. From here, I traveled to one of those villager structures to roll book trades. This took a few minutes uh, and I didn't get mending, but I did get Unbreaking 3, which was huge. I also forgot to equip the villager's hat, so I wasted a bunch of valuable resources. I eventually put the hat on and got four of these books in total. I labeled the waystone and combined one book with my leggings. I tried advancing another librarian, but this dude's trade sucked. So I came back home to roll a ton of enchants on my boots and leggings. These still ended up not being that good. So with all that done, I put a lectern in my backpack and decided to go and explore. During my travels, I got this one looting three stick, which was actually really cool. Day 44 to day 45, right next to that chest was a mine cells portal. So I hopped in really quick to uh, clear this place out. These guys now were doing even less damage, so I wasn't worried at all. Once again, I was just bulldozing my way through this place. These chests though always had tons of enchanted books, which uh, are always going to be helpful. So I had no issue just clearing every nook and cranny. I picked up a bunch of diamonds, did a lot of damage to my armor, and found the same portal that would take me to the promenade once again. The promenade's best structure was of course the one with the elevator, so I was looking for that for a while. I only decided to loot the very easy structures along my way. I ended up finding one of those and was able to steamroll through this place as well. My armor was also holding up surprisingly well. Finally, I got to the bottom, grabbed everything I could and made an abyss watcher, which brought me right back home. I re-enchanted some of the armor pieces and then repaired them after. For the next day, I actually wanted to see if I could uh, find the next boss's lair. This is when I realized the compass was broken since it only pointed back towards that old champion structure. I followed it anyways and even ended up in one of those villager structures where I advanced a librarian's trades. Once again, these trades sucked so I moved moved on and ended up in an underground village where I decided to sleep the night away. Day 46 to day 47, these villagers were all stuck in one area so I was able to roll through these trades quickly. One of these guys ended up selling protection 2 books so I locked that trade in. I then ended up grabbing a bunch of those items and set a waystone down. I needed to grab a few more emeralds to advance the trades though. Before I went back to the village, I put protection 4 and unbreaking 3 on the helmet and I grabbed a bunch more protection 2 books and was able to get another really good enchanted book as well. This in turn took all of my levels so I went back to look for for another boss structure and then really found out that this uh, compass was actually broken. I kept traveling from there though since I still needed more levels. At this point I also realized that my paraglider was broken so I had to travel the hard way across these biomes. I looted some structures and fought some witches but other than that this night was pretty eventless. In the morning I found like the 
strength villager structure. And while rolling traits, I made one of these golems mad accidentally. Now these guys did a lot of damage, so I just moved on. I grabbed another waystone from a tower and ended up in a snowy village. To get some easy levels, I bought tons of bread from this guy, which ended up being enough to combine these two books together. I still needed nine more levels to put it on my boots though. I then wanted to challenge another boss and get a bunch of levels, so I grabbed a set of diamond armor just to wear temporarily. Plus, I made another paraglider as well. Day 48 to day 49 for the levels, I went back to the old reliable, which was the promenade once again. I had a waystone close to a dungeon, so I hopped in and started chopping away. Since I was just wearing temporary armor, I was being pretty reckless. Even then, this place wasn't much of a challenge. By the time I got close to the final floors, I had close to 10 diamonds and it was up to level 13. Also, since my skill level was so high, it started taking me forever to get like a skill point in the final room i mined everything which got me up to level 17 and i was back out on the surface to look for more structures i took out a lot of the easy structures while looking for another elevator and that got me up to level 21 when i found that large structure again i spent a whole lot of time clearing the whole thing out at least i had close to like 30 more diamonds from these places though my backpack was filled and i had to make even more diamond armor but when i got to the final room once again i realized that i was up to level 75 on my skills menu when i teleported back home i clicked on the wrong waystone to Twice, but it ended up working out well since I just decided to run back. I ended up completing a quest by killing 10 creepers so I got 5 levels on top of what I already had. For the rest of the night I was slowly trying to come back home. Day 50, I got distracted by one of those underground dungeons and just had to explore it. Just like last time, the first floor had a good amount of mobs, but I lit the area up first and then cleared them out. With that done, I opened those trap doors and started breaking the spawners. I think I might have gotten a mending book from here as well. The bottom room was a little more dangerous since all the mobs concentrate in a small room. It didn't matter too much though, and I even ended up getting another skill point from taking all these guys out. Before clearing the rest of the rooms, I put one point into strength and then grabbed this wither skeleton skull after clearing all the spawners. Plus now, I was one point away from from maxing out my strength as well. With all that done, I explored a little bit more and then ended up finding this witch's house next to a large villager area. And this thing basically ruined my computer, so I set a waystone down and had to come back home. Day 51 to day 52, I combined a bunch of these sharpness books together and was able to get sharpness 4, sweeping edge 3, and leeching 3 on this moonlight sword that I had. Then I used more levels to deck out these orichalcum boots. I quickly grabbed an unbreaking book also and uh, put that on my sword. From here, I was really looking for a challenge and the first thing I did was go really far away. I looted one of these evoker towers again and ended up in a ravine after gliding all the way down. In there, I mined some coal which gave me a skill point. And from that skill point, I was able to max out my strength stat and grab the quest which gave me two more skill points. I put those two into defense. The next day, I made an abyss watcher so that I could reroute and go another way. Since I went underwater into a cave and as I got deeper into this place, I saw the void blossoms health bar pop up on my screen. Before challenging this boss, I cleared some of the spawners out in the dungeons around the cave and saw this gold chest too, which I couldn't open now for some reason. Just to be safe, I set a waystone down as well. Day 52 to day 54, right before I jumped down, I placed an anvil down as well and repaired my orichalcum gear. With that done, I hopped into the lair and summoned an iron golem as well. I was able to do an absolute ton of damage towards this void blossom immediately. It took less than a minute with a focused attack to get this void blossom's health to under half. This is when the regen started becoming really fast for this guy so i ran around looking for those little uh, leaves that healed the boss for some reason i didn't notice them so i summoned the golem again and i was able to get the void blossoms health down to the final level this time i saw the plants that healed it and started clearing them out with that the void blossom was completely done for my armor was in okay shape though and uh, for the quest rewards i ended up getting a netherite scrap plus a really good bow. With that done, I swapped to my diamond armor and started surfacing back up. I decided to run back home and found another one of those killer bunny structures, which I had to try and clear. Doing that gave me another skill point and I got my defense up to level 16. I then got back home and enchanted my new bow. It only had unbreaking at first, so I combined it with a power three book. Then I used this uh, mithril ingot to make a set of armor that was also pretty powerful. With that, I put on my old set on and then used the mithril set as a backup. I also wanted to enchant this set, so I had to go and grab a ton of protection books and since i forgot to wear that hat once again it cost me extra i then combined a ton of those books and spent the whole night expanding this uh cleric's trade i managed to get a bunch of ender pearls so i looked at the quest reward and realized these gave a ton of unique eyes out i picked up an undead eye and then grabbed a bunch of unbreaking books as well at this point i was completely out of emeralds so i had to trade whatever i could with all that done i put unbreaking three on my bow and repaired my sword 
day 55 to day 57, I spent these days in the nether since I wanted tons of blaze rods and hopefully more wither skeleton skulls. The first thing I did was go to the closest fortress I could see on the map and started taking out blazes. I picked up one rod and then noticed a much cooler looking structure on the map so I just went there instead. This place ended up being the hall of the piglin king. I took these ladders down to the bulk of the structure and fought these piglins right away. These guys broke my boots so I had to swap back to wearing these crystal hearts for more protection. Since there weren't any boss type mobs, this structure was very easy to take out and the chests had loads of gold in them. I got some quest rewards for taking out a bunch of brutes and after collecting these redstone lamps, I was close to getting the rogue eye as well. While fighting some more of these guys, I got a skill point which I put on my defense and the rest of the structure was pretty much the same. I went through as many rooms as possible and took out the piglins. There was nothing but gold in most of the chests. I did manage to pick up these gilded blackstone shards though. It took me a day to clear everything but I eventually moved on. The next structure I found was a watchtower looking thing which had a hoglin trapped. I took that hoglin out and picked up a magical eye from the chest. Right next to that structure was a fortress and this place had nothing good but gold and more nether eyes. After traveling even more, I found another variant of that watchtower and this one was significantly better. I made my way up the center, breaking the spawners which gave me a skill point and then when I made it to the top, I got some netherite scrap from the chests. There was also a bastion map in these chests, so I decided to follow that as well. Along the journey, I ended up in another one of those watchtowers which gave me more netherite scrap and a mending diamond helmet. That's not all though, I discovered that my uh, boots artifact allowed me to run on lava too. Before coming home, I cleared out this bastion, but the chest in here sucked aside from one, which had ancient debris. As soon as I got home, I made some netherite ingot, which I used to upgrade this mending helmet. Once that was done, I combined it with my old helmet and it was pretty much perfect now. So I made a little mistake again by putting protection four and unbreaking three on my mithril chest plate. I actually forgot that I had one mending book. So I grabbed that and used it on my almost broken netherite chest plate. The next morning, I decided to kill some cows for some levels and then cook the raw beef for the levels as well. That ended up only repairing like a little bit of my gear. The 58 to 60, while looking around for more resources like coal, I ended up in a little cave and started branching off from there. As I was getting lower and lower, I noticed my map start to change and show these weird structure. I happened to be in an ancient city. I flew over to the center of this place to check the whole area out. Since I accidentally dropped, I noticed a warden spawn. And because I had taken down a much harder boss, I thought the warden was going to be a walk in the park. I even managed to take like 100 points of its health down. I ended up being very, very wrong though. And after taking like three of its attacks, I was almost dead. I started munching down on golden apples and, and summoned a few iron golems. This warden's ranged attack was doing so much damage to me. I I had to stay at a safe distance the whole time. Luckily, my bow managed to do some really good damage to this guy. I actually had to block myself off eventually, and for some reason, this guy ended up not attacking me too much, so I was able to really do some serious damage. Because of that, one of my golems managed to take this guy out, so I picked up some of the loot, but wasn't able to complete the quest, since it wasn't a kill. I called it quits on the warden and set a waystone down so that I could come home. The first thing I did once I was back was make a vanguard shield. Then that night, I smelt a bunch of stone to make stone bricks and used that to craft a stone brick forge controller. With all these stone bricks, I made a level 1 forge right next to my house. A 60 to day 62, this recording is super choppy because I had to recover this footage since it was corrupted. I started off the day by gathering some flint to make some abyss watchers. I then made this thing called a local void, which was useless. With that done, I went to the promenade of the condemned to look for a new portal to hopefully challenge a boss down there. I got to the deepest parts of the structure, but still didn't find that portal to the boss. Since I couldn't find anything in here, I actually went to look for the next boss in uh, chapter 2, who is called the Returning Knight. Along this journey, I cleared one of those big underground dungeons that I love and was able to max out my defense stat. I then combined two diamond axes together and picked up a wither skeleton head. Then my game had a massive crash. So I ended up going to the nearest village before recording because I really thought that my world was corrupted, but luckily I didn't lose anything. I spent the rest of this day traveling and at night I finally found the structure I was looking for. I really didn't want to start the fight immediately, so I was very careful. I looted some of the chest in here first and put a waystone down. Once I came home, I put all the items I had collected away and then started grabbing a bunch of protection 2 books. After combining everything, I had 2 protection 4 unbreaking 3 enchanted books ready. I needed more levels and of course this golem kit to fight this boss. For the levels I had to hop back into the mind cells dimension to get as much XP as I could. I got up to level 10 and put some enchants on this new set of diamond boots. Then I decided to take on a cave. I went inside of one of these uh, spider caves and started fighting a bunch of these guys. There's spawners all inside of the wool and by breaking all of those I was able to level my archery up and get all the way up to level 15 as well. When I surfaced up I took out some more spiders and that gave me a quest reward which was 5 more levels. I even fought this enchanted zombie that night. Before the day ended, I traded with these villagers for levels and in the morning I made my way back home. 
I put the enchants on my leggings and was ready to take on the boss. Well, or so I thought. A 64, so folks, here are the boss fighting shenanigans. At first, everything was going pretty great. I equipped my proper gear and summoned a golem plus this V that also helped. After that, I used this thing called the Essence of Evertide to summon the fallen icon. Already from here, uh, the name was different, so I was a little thrown off. I then ate a golden apple and used my special move, which launched this boss in the air. From here, the boss fight was uh, very challenging, but there was nothing too weird going on. I just focused on drawing attention and uh, let my golems do a lot of damage too. Then this guy started spawning a bunch of minions who were very easy to take on. The whole time though, my summons and I managed to take down more than half of the boss's health down. I had also eaten some uh, enchanted golden apple, but I was managing pretty well. Eventually, this boss started taking a knee and I thought I had completed the quest and defeated the boss, but this is when the shenanigans started. So the fallen icon now becomes the harbinger of moonlight and is significantly more annoying now. Since my golems were hitting this guy, the same time I was shooting my bow, I just kept thinking my bow was doing something, but uh, it wasn't doing anything at all. I still managed to take down more than a half of this guy's health down with the help of my golems, and it ended up not mattering though, since most of my armor broke and I had to get out of there. After doing some research, I realized that this guy and the returning knight aren't the same, and this boss was stronger. At the time though, I had no clue, so I started to repair and replace some of my gear again. I spent the whole night in the desert looking for dungeons to get some XP. Day 65 to day 66, I found a spawner in the morning and had repaired my chest plate up pretty well. Once I was done with that, I was in the village where I got one of those B spawner artifacts again and two golem kits from the chest. With this and the harbinger only having like a third of its health, I thought I had this boss fight in the bag. So I got in close and summoned the golem once more to uh, try and fight this guy again. I still fired some arrows because I'm an idiot and uh, while slowly running back and forth, I was able to summon golems on top of this boss and that ended up chipping a bunch of its own health down. I even managed to get it all the way down but it regenerated again so I had to retreat really quickly. As morning was coming, I was on the other side of the hill without a helmet. At least my golem still managed to do a good amount of damage. I very stupidly carried on doing the same strategy I was doing before uh, by getting my golems to fight the boss. And at this time, the strategy was actually working really well. I already had this guy down past like half health for the third time. In fact, I had gotten the Harbinger down all the way to very low health once again, but for some reason it kept healing. So I had to call it quits for now and my armor was basically gone. Aside from my chest plate, I did however get a bunch of these soul ingots from its minions, which were really good pieces of armor. With that being done, I started working on uh, some spell crafting to relax after that frustrating fight. I grabbed some diorite and made this uh, spell binding table. I got some treasure chests as rewards, and since I already had some runes, I pushed through a bunch of these quests. Turns out to go through more of the quests, I had to go back to the nether and grab a lot of blaze powder. Day 67 and day 68, to make some of these fire mage gear, I needed to go into the nether. While making my way towards the fortress, I ended up in a quartz tower and met these little gaslings. I didn't have enough farming levels to do anything with these little guys, so I just kept moving on. I finally ended up in a structure with blazes and even a wildfire. These guys still managed to drop nothing though. Past that, I ended up in another fortress and here I was finally getting blaze rods. I might not have needed all of them though, since the nether chest already had a fire staff in it for me, but I decided to get like 30 plus rods just to be safe. Once that was done, I picked up some ancient debris from this tower structure and took the portal back home. I was then able to make two netherite ingots and three eyes of ender to also get this rogue eye as well. I had around eight eyes so far. To get more quest rewards, I made a fire sword and used that to make a fire claymore as well. In 69 to day 71, these blaze rods were super handy since it allowed me to get another unique eye. I picked up the cursed eye. I then used some levels enchanting these soul ingot armor and put unbreaking on them. Since I was at that villager area again, I advanced the trade for this cleric and noticed an evil eye at the bottom. At first, I didn't realize that that X meant uh, it wasn't available, so I thought I would just need a rabbit's foot. In the meantime, I picked up a cryptic eye as well. Another eye I could easily get was the wither eye, so I grabbed the skulls and the soul sand. I found a cave, dug down deep, and cleared the area to summon this wither. Once this guy summoned, I also spawned my golem in as well, and I started shooting it. That ended up doing tons of damage so when I switched to melee, I took out the wither in no time. I ended up with two wither eyes, a nether star, and a lord soul. Now I had like 11 eyes in total and I didn't know which one to get next. As for the nether star, I made a pocket wormhole, which was super worth it. Then for the weapon I could get by defeating the wither, I decided to pick up a scythe called soul reaper. That night was a blood moon so I tested this weapon out and it summoned ghosts to help me. My moonlight sword was still a lot better though. After that to prepare for the end, I made an infusion pedestal and set up a proper infusion area. This was a priority because you could make mending books from the rituals. Day 72 to day 74, a little bit of the footage got corrupted because of a crash, so sorry for the quality, but I was basically trying to get the evil eye from the cleric. I was out in the desert to hunt rabbits for their feet. 
From there, I explored this pyramid really quickly, hoping to get some luck from the chests. I broke the spawners underneath the structure and took all the gold blocks here as well. From there, I jumped into another structure which was glitched into this one and cleared that one out as well. Still no luck on that rabbit's foot. I did, however, make my way on a pirate ship and laid waste to all the mobs on there. That ended up filling my backpack up and gave me a skill point which I used on stamina. After putting everything away, I decided to go out and look for another eye, the cold eye. Now for this, I either needed a snowy temple or five of these isolager mobs. I ended up finding one of these guys near a hut, so I was already having way more luck. I spent literally the entire day exploring these snowy biomes and didn't find a temple. I did, however, find this ice woodland mansion. From here, I went room to room clearing out the mobs and uh, actually had a hard time since these vexes and vindicators started attacking together. Also, some armor pieces broke, so I was much weaker, but I ended up taking most of the mobs out regardless. By the next morning, I had to run and come home. And here, I submitted the Eyes of Ender for a magical eye, but then I realized I already had it, which was a slight mistake. Mistake. I also had a rabbit's foot as well, which I tried to use and figured out that the villager didn't even have the item. So for the rest of the day, I tried to level some more villagers up to get emeralds. And I ended these days off by using these runite ingots to make some extra armor. The next few days, I tried really hard to level other clerics up, but after leveling this one guy up, it didn't even display the eye. I did have another skill point though and put that on my stamina. Once that was finished, I made an aether portal for the levels and hopped in really quickly to see if I could complete these quests. For a little bit, I flew from island to island looking for slime-like mobs. I ended up seeing nothing so I was back in the overworld looking for isologers. I found one more of those guys who dropped blue ice and, and as I was exploring I nabbed up this mythical mount. Since I had a saddle on me I just rolled this large animal through these biomes. During that night I managed to kill those five isologers and because I didn't care about this mount too much I just grabbed my saddle and came home to submit everything for the cold eye. With this I now had the 12 unique eyes of ender. I put all of them in my backpack and started reading this mythical mounts book. With that I grabbed some food and made a nature's compass to go out searching for one of these guys. I wanted a flying mount and one of them spawned in a snowy slopes biome and luckily as I crossed this hill I saw that griffin immediately. I only had to feed it like once and it was already tamed. The controls were a little wonky at first but I eventually got the hang of it. Then I tried to get this griffin to like not fly away. It eventually just started going to sleep as it was getting dark. I also had all the materials for the summoning staff aside from a bell and uh, before trading for that I used up all this wood to make an area for my griffin to be safe in. Then I used a ton of diamonds to make horse armor. A 78 to day 81 I grabbed a bunch of items to level up a toolsmith in one of those villager areas. I'd also equipped like a totem trinket of some sort. Doing this I got the bell and was able to craft a summoning staff. I then bound it to my griffin and now had a way to reliably call my mount back. So from here I started a 4000 block journey. At least with my griffin it was uh, way more fun. The first structure I explored was a witch's tower and this place was kind of tough. I couldn't really see the witches too well and took a lot of damage from the poison. The chest in here also kind of sucked so I moved on. That same night I found another one of those big evoker towers and landed my griffin up top. I cleared up those mobs pretty easily and looted the chest in the center which had some decent books. Once morning started though I ended up in some really funky biome. The stronghold ended up being really close from here though. So I put on my snorkeler and after parking my griffin I started digging down to wherever one of my eyes told me to go. I ended up in a cave and then eventually broke into the stronghold. This place was absolutely gigantic though so I picked a single direction to start off and started looting these rooms. There was some pretty good stuff on the chest but I was still nowhere near the portal. It ended up taking me super long but I finally found the portal room and broke the spawner inside. Once that was done I started placing the eyes. I went around the perimeter but the portal didn't activate the first time. Turns out I just had to replace one of these existing eyes that was already there. With the portal up and running I set a waystone down and came home to prepare for the fight. I rolled through some enchants for my gear then I made sure to teleport my griffin down to the portal room. With that done I still needed a bunch of arrows so I crafted a fletching table and spent the rest of the next day chopping down trees for emeralds and then traded that for more arrows. Day 82 to day 86, from these days it was now time for me to challenge the ender dragon. The first thing I tried to do was I uh, get my griffin into the portal but that didn't work out at all and I had to put the fire out. So while my griffin healed I actually hopped in through the portal and from there I ender pearl toward the main island and started using my bow. I broke some of the crystals really quickly and got some hits on my dragon. I realized that I was actually doing really good damage with the bow. I finally managed to pearl up to an obsidian tower and started blowing up all the crystals. With that done, I fired at the dragon a bunch waiting for it to start perching. One hit from my sword ended up doing a lot of damage. So I continued and got the dragon to under half health. From there I just fired off arrows which ended up doing even more damage and by the time it perched once again, it only took one shot from my sword and I freed the end. The rewards were crazy, I got 29 levels, the dragon egg, and 15 treasure chests. Oh yeah, plus more levels from the quest rewards as well. I kept everything in my backpack and took the gateway toward the end islands. I immediately saw the Obsidolith's lair, but I continued to move on. 
During the journey, I picked up tons of thalassium as well. So I made a little mistake and went pretty far away before realizing I needed these things called uh, Hydrolux pedals. Those ended up being in these uh, Spring Canyon biomes, so I had to go all the way back. I equipped my snorkel and managed to pick some of these pedals up. Further along my end journey, I found an end city, and when I went up towards this structure, I noticed an end ship as well. For some reason, the ship was glitched and cut in half, so I couldn't find any elytras in here. I explored what looked like an end fortress too, and uh, past that, I mined like a stack and a half of Aurora crystals as well. It ended up taking forever, but I finally got an elytra wing and a mending book from the quest rewards. I called it quits there and teleported back towards the end portal. I then surfaced, teleported my griffin, and rode that griffin all the way back home. Once I put everything away, I opened up all the treasure chests at once to see how much stuff I would get. So day 86 to day 88, I had another crash for the last time in this entire world though, and this corrupted the footage, so sorry for the quality, but I ended up doing this ritual for like four mending books after enchanting those uh, Hydrolux petals. Once that was done, I made some more diamond armor and started rolling enchants for them. I wanted them to be stacked before I put unbreaking and mending on them. In the meantime, this protection villager for some reason wasn't restocking, so I just got the unbreaking books first. I was then able to finalize the helmet even though it was only protection 3 and I upgraded it to netherite. The leggings were also protection 3 and I was able to finalize that and turn it into netherite as well. I did the same for the rest of my armor after that. There was also a way to upgrade past netherite so I grabbed these gas tears and eyes of ender. With all of that, I made 8 end crystals because I wanted to summon the dragon once again. To make everything easier, I also needed a Eternium ingot. So I decided to hop into the end really quickly to grab a bunch of end stones and even more thalassium. With this, I was able to make an end stone furnace and a thalassium anvil. I also had to use up my last netherite to make a netherite smith hammer, and that was just to crush these ender pearls. I smelt the dust and the thalassium together to get one terminite ingot. Now I just needed another netherite ingot as well. I ended up getting very lucky as I went inside the nether and I found one of those towers again. From the second chest, I got one whole netherite ingot. Smelting the terminite and netherite together, I got my eternium ingot, and I was able to get an elytra that I could also wear in my cave slot. Before fighting anything, I stacked the elytra with enchants as well. With this, I hopped into the end and put down the four crystals. I was able to fly now and I destroyed the pillars, which allowed me to defeat this guy super easily. This time I picked up a purple Lord Soul as well and came home because uh, I forgot to bring the bottles. My third time uh, fighting this boss, it was even easier and I actually remembered to grab the dragon breath at the end. Once I filled all those bottles, I got rid of the third dragon and that ended up giving me like plus one on all three of my maxed out stats. I quickly came home and brought more ender pearls and was trying to craft this heart of the end item. When I looked for a second longer, I realized that an upgrade to this metal ergium ingot was even better. Plus I also had this uh, unobtainium as well at home. So I came home and grabbed the rewards for my levels. Then I decided to make a level two deep stone alloy forge instead. I had a bunch of these ingots required to make this OP ingot. And the only thing I needed more of was this uh, mithril. With one of these metallurgium ingots, I was able to get two more from a quest reward, and I quickly went down to the mines for more mithril. I then had enough metallurgium to fully upgrade my armors, plus I had one to spare. Day 89 to day 92, finally with this brand new armor, I felt way more comfortable to fight this Harbinger of Moonlight once again. So immediately I was able to start raining down hits on this guy, and while swinging and spawning in golems, I managed to get this dude down on one knee once again. So once again, it regen, but unlike last time, I actually used my brain for 5 seconds. I decided to check out the rest of the structure, and there were a few dark sorcerers here who I assumed were uh, resurrecting the boss over and over again. Once I took care of those guys, I looted some of the stuff around the area and decided to try the fight again for the final time. Slowly, I was able to get this boss back down to 200 hearts after a bunch of flying around. As I started to whittle its health down, I was very optimistic that this would work, and uh, just like that, this guy was finally put down, and as you can see, I was super excited. My armor also held up very well, and I got some really good quest rewards. I quickly went to grab some XP from these other structures so I could repair my armor, and uh, the most important thing that happened was that now I could progress to chapter 3. I grabbed a bunch of rewards, which just happened to be gold ingots, and looked through some of the new quests. It asked me to talk to 10 villagers, so I did that, and then sat through all this boring dialogue. The quests were finally catching up to me now. I hopped into the nether to complete as many of these basic quests before fighting the next boss. I took out three wither skeletons and defeated a bunch of blazes as well. Also my moonstone compass was finally working, so I spent the rest of these days following that. It took me quite a bit, but I ended up finding the next boss I needed to fight. After setting up a little more, I hopped back into the nether to fight the decaying king. Before I attacked this guy though, I had to fight off some of these annoying mobs who attacked me first, but then I realized I could also just use my bow against this decaying king. Doing that, I managed to get it down to half health. 
This is when a bunch of like zombie piglins started attacking me for some reason. And I was able to get a quest reward for defeating 10 of those guys. Once that was done, I wanted to finish this boss off with my sword. So I ran over to the structure. With my great sword, I circled this boss around and, and was able to withstand its attacks. Even though it summoned like a pool of lava. Now this boss was surprisingly easy compared to the last one. It dropped a pretty incredible sword and the quest rewards are pretty great as well. I then came home to enchant this new blade. I was disappointed at first with the void strike enchant, but it turned out to be extremely overpowered. I was able to get my bow to power five and then put unbreaking three, leeching three plus mending on this new blade. So the next boss I needed to fight was also in the nether and I have had quite a history with this guy. So I was very careful. I made my way towards the nether gauntlet structure and broke the block that woke the nether gauntlet up. I was expecting a crazy fight, but after a few strikes and a heavy attack, I had already like halved its health. Then as it was preparing for an attack, I managed to one shot it. These rewards were crazy. I got three nether stars and was able to add three levels to my health skill. When I came home, I started on chapter 3.5 and for this chapter, I just had to craft a bunch of items like this red bed and then I picked up a bunch of items I already had. That all gave me a ton of quest rewards and for chapter four, I had to take on the Lich King. So since I had all these soul stars piling up, it was time to follow them. Day 95 to day 100, from here I was basically just trying to speed run all the boss fights. I made my way over to the Lich Tower and filled up these four altars with these uh, soul stars. Then it turned dark and the Lich King appeared. Now this fight wasn't too hard, I just had to be precise. Since I could fly, I was able to also sneak in some melee hits once in a while, but I relied on my bow for a good chunk of this fight. When I did get my melee hits in though, I managed to take off huge chunks of the Lich's health. This got the Lich down to its final two stages. From here, it was pretty much the same. I whittled its health down until I was able to do two melee hits, which completely wiped this boss out. I got a bunch of quest rewards and then came home to put everything away. Chapter five started after I submitted one of my nether stars and it also ended up counting a bunch of things I had already done. I grabbed a bunch of obsidian and crying obsidian and then made some end rods as well. With that, I made a platform to sacrifice a dragon egg and summoned the eye. This boss was super annoying. It, it seemed to like fly higher and higher. Uh, I ended up wasting a ton of fireworks. It wasn't too hard though, it was just super annoying. So when I managed to take out some of its clones and it countered as a quest reward, I decided to just move on since I was running out of time. The next boss was the Obsidolith and I had already found a structure before. I grabbed an Eye of Ender and popped it down on the altar. So immediately this boss spawned and I did my special heavy attack which knocked its health down to half. But from here I had to deal with these runes that started spawning. This part was actually kind of challenging. I took a lot of damage while trying to break these runes. Eventually I got rid of all of them and was able to focus my attack on the Obsidolith. A few special attacks later I had taken care of another boss of mass destruction. The final quest for chapter 5 was just to get a regular elytra wing and this actually took me a good bit of time. With all this done I moved on to chapter 6 and this was all like warden and ancient city related stuff. The first thing I did was hop into an ancient city and observe all of these weird blocks. Once that was done I basically destroyed a warden which unlocked even more quests. To further a quest I had to observe a warden and this one was very hard to do because the one I was observing was actually enchanted and did a lot of damage to me. As soon as that was done I came home to despawn that guy and then my last quest of chapter 6 was to go to the other side and defeat the main mobs in there. So after clearing some skulk off of this portal I could finally activate it and hop in. This unlocked the night vision goggles which were uh, gonna be crucial for this. So I quickly came home to make a warden helmet as well, which I enchanted, and then I finally started exploring the other side. Now I was in here for a little bit until I finally saw a structure, and these places had some pretty good loot, but I was just looking to fight two mobs. One of them was called a Shriek Worm who barely even moved and I took care of that guy super easily. The second was a Stalker who was also relatively weak. I swear the wardens were much stronger than these guys. With this, I basically managed to complete every single quest in the story mode. I was however missing one boss, the Conjunctivitis. But even after spending the rest of these days looking for this guy in the mind cells dimension, I just couldn't find it. Anyways, I had survived 100 days in Fantasy MC. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like 